Day three of French Quarter Fest is well underway, everybody, and we are so excited to be bringing you more artists' interviews here from our love Louisiana stage here in Spanish Plaza. Joining me now is a girl I have been waiting to interview since I first heard Be Your Girl years ago. Tidra Moses is joining me, everybody. Hello, beautiful. Hey, baby. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Happy French Quarter Fest. Happy French Quarter Fest. And I am so glad that you are performing at French Quarter Fest and sitting down with us here in our Love Louisiana stage. A little birdie told me this is your first year performing at French Quarter Fest. You're performing tonight, 6.40 p.m. on the Jack Daniel stage. Talk to me about this performance. How does it feel to be here for the first time performing? It is awesome. It's awesome. You know, I live right up the street. I got a house right up the street. So it's like I just come on down here and perform for the people. But more than anything, I love this city. And for a long time, my hard work didn't really get a chance to be shown here. So I feel really good that I'm able to do it in such a, um, a great festival, such a massive festival. Absolutely. And you're closing out the stage tonight. Some people may call that the headliner right. for tonight, <laughs> OK? And I love that you're going to be doing it because you're a New Orleans girl. You're from here. You started at Bonneville for a while. Shout out to Jefferson Parish. Jefferson Parish. And I heard your sound check earlier you sound absolutely great but let me tell you everybody a song i was hearing was not that classic be your girl talk to me about some of the songs you're going to be performing for us tonight um you know i really just wanted to um show my uh influence from the city you know what i mean and for me the influence from the city is so many different things it's rhythms it's gospel it's a lot of different things hip-hop you know what I mean? Which is something I think that sometimes get overlooked for New Orleans. And I learned most of my hip hop being here as a child. You know what I mean? And um, so I'm going to explore all those different sounds that influenced me as a child. That's that's my goal, is to explore all those sounds. And those co that come within the records that I've written. Absolutely. You know, I say all the time, the crowd at French Quarter Fest is a special crowd. You came for the first time last yes. year as a person who was just checking out all the music, and now you're going to be up on stage. What are you hoping for from that crowd tonight who's going to come see Tidra Moses? Just reception and energy, you know, because I'm going to pour myself out. I don't know any other way. If it's two people, if it's 10,000, I pour myself out. So just the energy. What you give me, I'm going to give you back that 10 million times Absolutely. over. Yeah. And we're going to give you all the energy. I love it. And I mentioned it earlier, but I remember when I first heard Be Your Girl, and I was like, uh-uh, wait a <laughs> minute. I'm not even a woman, but I understand what she's saying. You right, know what I'm right, saying? Right. And then the Kate Tronada remix came out. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So much. Talk to me a little bit more about that song, Be Your Girl, because if you all don't know, it's celebrating 20 years this year. Yes, the original is celebrating 20 years this year. My first debut album, Complex Simplicity, is celebrating 20 years this year. And um, to be honest, Kate Tronada and I came up with that record somewhere around 2012. So it was well after the, al the song was already yeah. out. And, you know, it was just a connection. And that's why I love DJs, because DJs can change your life, you know. And he made a record for me that changed everything. And it brought more attention to everything outside of that record, you know. So, yeah, Be A Girl is just a... I think it's one of those records, like a maze record, or one of those records just is gonna live forever. And I'm just grateful to be a vessel for it because Absolutely. I didn't know that was gonna happen when I when I made it. <laughs> and that's what's so great about the song because, like you mentioned, the original came out in 2004, then yeah. the Kate Shinada came out around 2012. 2012 yeah. Talk to me about that 2004 song when you first heard it, when you first recorded it. Did you think it was gonna be the song that it was? I or didn't. that it is, right? I didn't I didn't think you know, well, when you're a new artist, you don't think about what is gonna perform and what's not gonna perform. You're just pouring yourself out, right? And I had a crush on this guy. This really massive Didn't crush we all, on this guy. baby? <laughs> didn't we all? Still do, still do. <laughs> I don't have a crush on him no more. But I had a crush on this guy and I just wrote it from the perspective of if he was in my neighborhood, you know, and how I would feel. And I was so shy. I was such a big crush girl when I was younger, you know. And so I was just really, really shy and I wrote it from a perspective of if I could tell him how I felt. Mm. 
And I think that's an 8 to 80 subject matter, you know? Everybody can relate to that. Absolutely. And whether it's 2004 or 2024, that's what's so great about the song. It still resonates today. And baby, you are still making music. You actually have a song that just came out last month in March with my boy, Pell. Yeah. Talk to me about this record. Yeah, come run home. Run home mm -hmm. is what it's called. And I love Pell, first of me all. Too. He's a really, really talented artist that is so diverse mm -hmm. in his ways. It's not like stuck to like one way of doing uh, music. And I was interested in working with him. And then I would see him out and I'm like, hey, Pell, blah, 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 whatever. We kind of just would see each other. And one day he hit me and he was like, yo, I want you to get on a record. And I was in Miami at the time. And I said, I can't really get out there. He said, well, I'll just send it to you. And we just worked like that. We collaborated like that. And it came out really, really wonderful. I really love that record. You know, it's a jam because if you all don't know Pell, he's a rapper, he's a DJ, he's a well-rounded artist. He even sings a bit. He does yeah. sing as well. I've yeah. interviewed him before and boy, can he do a little something. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. Pell and got I appreciate it. that you're still working, that you're still making music. What does the future for Teacher Moses look like? It's really cool, you know, to be here 20 years after my debut album and still doing it. And, and still able to do it at a nice level you know what I mean and so the future for me is we're putting out a new record within the next month okay. I want to say it's May May something yeah, uh, I'm not good with the dates That's okay, it's a locked day but I can't sometime remember but in spring. May we have it sometime in spring yes um, in May we're going to put out a record um, called With All My Heart which mm. is a very good beautiful acoustic record but the words aren't very acoustic you know if I can't really get into it too deep but with all my heart someone hurt me with all my heart and now I want to express well, with listen, all my heart I how I feel the about them. the 9 a.m. show here on WWL, Great Day, Louisiana. When that record comes oh, yes. out, baby, you have to come on oh, and yes. perform for oh, yes. us. So, oh, yes. <laughs> can I ask you this? You know, I have one more question for you. We're at French Quarter Festival. The music is great. The weather's going to be beautiful yes. this weekend. I know you're going to be serving us a look for Already. sure. But how does T.J. Moses French Quarter Fest, when you're not going to be on stage, where can we see you? What you gonna be eating? What you gonna be drinking? Tell me all of that. Well, you know, first and foremost, she's gonna have a hat on. <laughs> Shield her from the sun. Okay, because it's everybody. Okay. <laughs> and then secondly, I'm going to have a pair of sneakers on. I'm going to have me a cute little backpack today. I got my Louis Vuitton backpack. All right. And, you know, that's how I festival anyway. But then I, I want to hit, I love the music, but I think for me, French Quarter Festival, I really love the food. So I try to go and check. So we just spoke about Adiz Nola, and I hadn't had a chance to get over to the restaurant every time I come here. But then I'm walking around and I see a D Snola. So I'm searching for food. I'm trying to stay out of the sun. Mm -hmm. And when I and whenever there is a, a artist that I'm really interested in, I'm gonna rush to that stage. Is there somebody you're most interested in seeing? You know, we still have two days, everybody, to check out a lot of great music. And if not here right now, who's an artist you're listening to right now? Who's in Tija Moses's like Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube Music, whatever platform you use? You know, um, as far as the artists here that I wanna see. I'm not exactly sure. There's so many. I have to kind of like narrow it down because oh, yeah. I have to get out of here. Yeah, <laughs> so many. But uh, as far as who I'm listening to, I love Keon Dixon. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He's a soul singer. He's an independent. I'm pro independent artist because I'm an independent artist. I love Keon Dixon. Um, there's so many different people. Lucky Day, who's also from Absolutely. New Orleans, and I think people Lucky don't Day. know he's from Louisiana. Mm -hmm. um, uh, who else am I listening Did you to? Hear that Cowboy Carter yet? Cowboy Quad, I haven't heard. Oh, baby, I haven't. You to listen to that. We'll okay. Wrap this up, okay. okay? All right. There are some jams, but before we listen to all of that Cowboy Carter, we're listening to Tedra Moses yes. tonight, everybody. 6 40 p.m. right behind us at the Jack Daniel stage. She's our girl. She's my girl. <laughs> and you are that girl. Tedra, thank you so much for thank being you, here. Thank you, baby. I appreciate of you so course. much. And look, everybody, we have a lot more coming up, more artist interviews. So stay right here. Wherever you're watching us from, we have a lot in store. We'll be right back everybody we're getting ready to celebrate french quarter festival presented by chevron it all takes place april 11th through 14th get the schedule at frenchquarterfest.org and download the free app today from wwl louisiana getting ready to perform tonight we are having a beautiful day for french quarter fest aren't we in my life every day i wake up is a beautiful day I love that outlook. <laughs> I love it. So tell me, what can people expect from your set tonight? What are we? What are you going to perform tonight? They're going to get Irma. They're going to get Irma. Yeah, okay. I don't. I don't work from a set list. My audience is my set list. Tell me about that. Are you speeding <laughs> off the energy? What do you mean? My audience is my set list. Okay. I come on stage. I sing a few songs. My audience yell out what they want to hear, and that's what I sing. 
Wow. So that's my set list. I feel like not too many people can do that. You, I mean, you've been doing this a long time. I've been so doing just... it that way for years and years and years. Wow. Because I used to, I, I've never worked from a set list. Hmm. Because most of the time, my audiences are folk who've been around me for years, and they want to hear their favorite song. Since I can't read their mind, I sing what they want to hear. I love that. <laughs> we were talking a little bit about... Uh, you know, Mother's Day, things have changed a little bit since the pandemic. How have things changed for you in recent years? What, well, what we haven't done Mother's Day since the pandemic yeah. originally. And so other than that, I've gotten older and I've slowed down. I don't take as much work as I used to. And I just finished doing a gospel CD. And so yesterday I was in the studio till 8 o'clock last night. So, <laughs> wow. And we still have to do photo shoots and all that good stuff. So, and Gosh. I just completed an album with Galactic and it's going to be uh, Audience with a Queen is the name of the the album. So, so two anyway. new albums we can expect from you soon? Huh? You said two new albums then that we can yeah, expect one, from you Yeah, one, one gospel and one R&B. <laughs> wow. Because I've covered the, covered so the game. What was, why do both at once? Or what's, what's the answer? How it do you do it, both it just once? worked out that way because the people who involved were, are from Europe and they wanted to come while the French Quarter Festival was going on and, and be able to do two things. So mm -hmm. that's how it worked out. <laughs> so when are we gonna? When can we hear them? When? When's the gospel? Well, album this one, out? the one that I finished last night, probably won't be out until somewhere this summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You just performed at the Dew Drop In, the reopening of the I Dew did Drop the In. Can yes. you tell me about that? What that was like for you? Well, yeah, it was. It brought back a lot of memories. And I did a lot of the songs that I used to do when I worked the Dewdrop. Yeah. We're, we're talking 60 some years ago. <laughs> wow. What, what was that flashback like? Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. It was fun. Are, are, are things, obviously the world is so much different, but are things at the Dewdrop in different? Are you glad to see it back? I think that they, they did a beautiful job remodeling it. And I think a lot of the younger people who will be playing there will appreciate what the Dewdrop was all about. Yeah. So hoping they bring a little bit of a younger crowd in and... Uh, well, yeah, because most, most of us old ones are gone. <laughs> so they're going to have to bring in a lot of the younger ones. But you're keeping that memory alive and, and you're going to perform I'm tonight. <laughs> I'm trying. Um, what, what is that like to appeal to the younger, the younger generation and see some new faces out in the crowd? It's fun. Uh, a lot of them have done their homework and they've, they've listened to some of my music and they yell out what they want to hear. And I'm honest enough with them to sit, tell them because I carry an iPad with all of my lyrics in it. And I'm, I'm smart enough and wise enough that if there's something I haven't done in a while, I'll let them know that I haven't done it in a while. And if it's in my cheat iPad, I'll look it up and sing it. <laughs> That's so <laughs> smart. That is so smart. I want to talk about French Quarter Fest because there are so many local acts here yeah. and new people on the scene. Yeah. What are you listening to right now or who are you hoping to see? I'm a game show network. <laughs> the game show network. <laughs> well. I mean, but who at French Quarter Fest or any I, local artist? I artists? don't have time to listen to anybody at French Quarter Fest because when no? I come out here, I'm on my way to go to work. Okay. And, I, and, of course, this interview with you guys, and, of course, by the time I get back, it'll be almost time for me to go on. So yes, <laughs> I don't get a chance to hear anybody. That's fair. Very fair. <laughs> All right, so you're gearing up to perform in just about 15 minutes yeah. here. My very um, first French Quarter Fest was played with Ronnie Cole. Wow. And what, when was that? Oh, a hundred years ago. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even, at that time, there wasn't even a, a, a stage. We, we played from a platform, so. Yeah. Isn't that amazing how much it's grown oh, in that yeah, time? It has grown tremendously. Wow. Yes. Wonderful. All right, well, Miss Irma, thank you so much. It My was pleasure. wonderful speaking with you. My pleasure. And I, I, I know there's a lot of people very excited to watch you perform tonight, so we're going to let you go. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. We're getting ready to celebrate French Quarter Festival. Presented by Chevron, it all takes place April 11th through 14th. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app today. From WWL, Louisiana. Welcome back. We're here live at French Quarter. Day two is the best day. We're at the WWL TV Love Louisiana stage at Spanish Plaza, which the French Quarter Fest has expanded to Spanish Plaza this year. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Go off. And I'm joined by People Museum. You guys, the first time you came on the morning show, we were like blown away. We weren't sure what to expect. <laughs> and then it was like, they are so good. So first of all, introduce yourself and then we'll talk about how this came about. Hi, I'm Charles Newmar. I'm playing bass in Tuba. Awesome. I'm Jeremy Phipps and I play trombone for People Museum. 
I'm Aaron Boudreau. I'm playing drums and making my conducting debut. Oh, yeah. And I cannot believe this is your first year for French Quarter Fest. Yeah, exciting. What took us so long to get you guys? That's a great question. I wish I knew the answer. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows how the industry works sometimes, you know, but we're, but we're here. So, yeah. And you guys are going to be playing right behind us at the Jack Daniels stage coming up at 3.30. Cannot wait for that. You guys are so unique. You're so electro pop, and I had never even heard of that, but it just stops you in your tracks. Like, that is so cool. There's no bands like that around here, probably not a ton in the world. So, how did you guys even get into this? Um, I think that we just, I, we kind of like all collectively love pop music, and then we're just from Louisiana. So, like, okay. the things that we have access to are like tubas and trombones and like just like all, all types of influences so okay. that's that's what i think yeah and i mean there is definitely like a community in this city that makes this type of music for sure but um i think just the addition of the horns and like you know yeah. the, the, especially when charles entered with the tuba and all this stuff i think that that's sort of what solidified our identity in that sort of electropop with horns jeremy calls it future new orleans okay that's his that. like the, you know, his coins <laughs> term, which I, I love. I think it's perfect. So, yep. how did you guys all get together though? And how do you? I always want to know, like, where did the name come from? Oh, they, I, I, I came up with the name. Okay. No, no okay. big deal. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, once I was in, I was living in LA for like a year. Okay. And then out there they have the VMAs, mm -hmm. and at the VMAs, um, a bunch of people stand outside the like the big stadium window and watch the stars like go from their dressing rooms and it's like a thing out there that i like i never seen before but i i made a joke to a friend of mine i was like it's like a people museum because you're like <laughs> behind this glass or whatever and yeah. um, i don't know i just, just i thought stuck. it was funny yeah and i was like oh that could be a band name at some point but then like years later we um we started the band i love it yeah and do you guys are you best of friends are you kind of like brothers where it's like all right, dude, I just need the day. Yeah, I, I hate these know. guys. It's the worst. <laughs> They're the worst. No, we're, we're, we're pretty tight. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, everybody is cool. I, I look up to everybody in the band. Oh, I feel nice. like I learn from them, Yeah. you know, constantly. It just it, it keeps it keeps us all just engaged. It, it keeps me young as the elder of the band. <laughs> the elder? Charles you is look, the elder from Moody. Oh Charles gosh. is ageless. Let everybody he know. Is, Charles yeah. has no age. That is true. He's, He's 80 even. and 14 at the same time yeah, for sure yeah. oh so you're an old soul but you're also fun and i love your glasses too i love the blue it just pops he's got the style you got to tell me about the mustache too because it's there to so say? impressive I, I mean, no, i'm asking like is it like a playoff mustache or this is all the time oh, oh my gosh yeah, I mean, we're okay let it, the jazz. let it be playoffs, known baby. <laughs> let it be known this is i come from a long lineage of proud cajun and mexican men okay this is genetics this is not this is not a costume this is my a part of my identity it's a way of life i so. love it i love it and talk a little bit about claire who's not here right now because she's getting ready for y'all's performances pretty soon oh yeah claire's the singer also she writes all the lyrics and she also helps produce and she is an amazing singer, amazing person, and she's from Monroe, Louisiana. Upstate? Yeah, we're all from <laughs> Louisiana in some way. I'm from New Orleans, Butte, yeah. Lafayette, respective, respectively. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah. And um, you and Claire actually got together originally. You were writing together, and then the whole group kind of came about. Yeah, um, okay. it, it started off with me and Claire. It was like in the Treme neighborhood. We uh, I met through a, like a friend of mine. And like, yeah, we just started writing songs the same day that we okay. met. Um, and then we started the project like immediately. And so like, we kind of like grown as friends awesome. as, as doing it. And then yeah, and all of us have grown as friends like doing this really. Um, and at what point, I mean, you guys are such a big deal now. Like when did that happen? Cause we'll have people on the show um, and it's like, oh my God, we just blew up last night. Like yeah. what was that moment for y'all that people written you were like, oh, people know who we are now, you know? I, I don't, I mean, it, it would be really nice to say that there was like this thing that happened, but I don't know. It's just being a part of a scene, being a part of community and yeah. playing shows with other bands and sure. kind of sticking to what you do and growing. And, and I mean, Jeremy and Claire had other iterations of this band before we were in it. So there was a lot of morphing and I don't know, it'd be cool if there was like one singular, like, oh, we were in a, Amazon commercial, yeah. but I don't know. We're just we're still growing, and and um, if you stick with something that you believe is is great, and you stay true to your Living heart, the then product. then it's gonna eventually people will take notice of that, and, and we we're lucky to have a good 
proud of people who support us. So yeah. Of course, we're at French Quarter Fest, but what was it like last year getting that call to play Jazz Fest for the first time? Oh, that was amazing. Because yeah. Jazz Fest Incredible. is like, I've been watching Jazz Fest my whole life. So it, it was a bucket list thing for me personally. Awesome. Um, yeah, it was cool because we also were on a little kind of northeast and then west coast tour and Jazz okay. Fest fell right in the middle. Nice. So we've been like gone. Perfect. Yeah, we've been gone for weeks and we came home, played Jazz Fest, and then took off again the next day. Wow. And you guys are going to start touring again late summer. Tell me a little bit more about Relic. I know this is something you took your time on. You had been working on it since after Hurricane Ida. Was that sort of the whole inspiration behind it? Or it was just like the timing you had some downtime? Yeah, I would say that was definitely a part of um, a, a part of the inspiration because the whole album, the theme of it is like flood and like rebuilding and re rejuvenating. Um, and yeah, so I would say yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that 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 whole time of being like split up and sort of, I mean, ev everybody went through it. You know, it was crazy. Um, that was definitely a big inspiration. Claire always says it's kind of a love letter to New Orleans, and we always we always talk about New Orleans as being this place that we like love so much, but it's like it's challenging. It's it's like an uncle that you have that's like you love him, you know, but but he shows up to some of the functions. Maybe maybe it's a little chaotic, you know, but okay. but you can't help but love. You know, that's the relationship people tend to have in South Louisiana where they're from because of the weather. And um, but yeah, so that was Ida was the big start of, of that whole process and then okay. coming back together and finishing it was really fun. So. And you told me that's the fun part actually writing. I mean yeah for making music and performing music is I know that probably sounds obvious I don't know to people who are musicians but well, we know there's so much behind the scenes and yeah. it's got to be so hard to like turn it on every night because you know everybody's got a bad day but you can't have a bad day like this might be the only this fan comes to your concert so you have to give it 110 percent every time. Yeah, Thank you for wrong. saying that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it must be like physically exhausting, but also mentally exhausting. And you guys do such a good job, though. Yeah. Thank you. H tell me, like, give me the lowdown. Like, who's the class clown? Who's this person who's gonna show up after Aaron's the, the first class clown? Okay. Who's be there it is not. Like oh, that. Yes. Oh, oh wait, you got it. You already. Got oh it. my God. You you just figured us all out so fast. You did your research. Yeah. 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 Well, Claire will be. We'll, we will beat the sound engineer at to the venue. Loading in it. and stuff, which, by the way, is way better than being late. So we, that is sure. not that is not a flaw. That's a feature, and we love it, and it's it's great. It's all about time. But Claire's always punctual. I guess I'm a bit of a clown. Charles is the goblin. Charles will just start. We call him. He has goblin energy. When he's in the van on tour, we'll just get on some crazy discussions. And yeah. He's, he's, the, so he's awesome the energy. That you know what I mean? We I do. I really yeah. feel like the genuine care and the yeah. um, And I did want to mention your. You do some in the Relic um, on your album, The Voice of Your Father. What is that? Explain that to me. Oh, yeah. So it w that was that was Claire's idea. Um, okay. But I just recorded my dad talking. I asked him, and she had a list of questions I asked him. And, um, yeah, and it was just like, it, it was funny because, like, my, my dad, we, we don't, the things that she asked, it was stuff that I had never even asked him. So it was why, she, why he was explaining to him, I was like, wow, I've never heard you talk about that. So it was it was a very interesting, like, cool. beautiful experience for me as well. Um, I felt, like, closer to my dad in some ways. But then, um, yeah, we, we chopped that conversation up, and, yeah, and we put it on. And he's also, like, a really big People Museum supporter. Oh, um, <laughs> he, he comments on all the uh, social media and posts. So yeah. he loved it just as much as you did. Yeah. I, he, well, he at, <laughs> And I do think we have a reporter position open if Claire's interested. Oh. You know, she can do oh. both. Yeah. I mean, okay. she sounds like she really pulled it out of it. Oh, yeah. I mean, That's yeah. the magic yeah. of Claire, yeah. 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 <laughs> There's a funny story, though, about Jeremy's so dad with here. the... With Oh yeah, no. So I, it, I was like, I'm not gonna tell them until we release the album. And then we released it. And then I was like, Dad, you heard of, you heard the album? And he was like, Oh yeah, I heard it. And I was like, Did you notice anything? Like, <laughs> and I was just like, He was like, Wait, what? It was like, That's you talking. And he was like, That's me. And, and like, <laughs> he he, probably like he never heard his voice. Okay. Yeah, he never heard like oh, he, he hasn't heard no any clue. like recordings of his voice. So he didn't even know it was him. <laughs> and then so he was like, Oh, I gotta go listen again. And then you know he was like bragging to his. Uh, to his friends and stuff like you know he's like on the album oh, but yeah awesome. it was funny <laughs> i did not expect that out of we, all the we were on tour at a mexican restaurant in the middle of like tennessee or something <laughs> and jeremy goes on the phone he was like y'all never believe this my dad did not know that was him he was listening to that's so funny you remember exactly where you were 
They used to have those moments when you guys were in the Hall of Fame, you're going to be like, remember that time? Find the music, baby. Yeah, there we go. Speaking of which, like, where do you see, you, you've grown just so fast. Where do you see you guys in a year and 10 years? Ooh, that's such a good question. Actually, it was two. I, I have an answer. <laughs> so, let's say next year this time. Uh-huh. We'll still be, we'll do Prince Porter Fest, we'll do Jazz Fest, but maybe we all do Bonnaroo, Coachella. Oh, hey! You know, maybe we pop over to Europe, do a couple of those festivals. Okay. You know, we'll have a couple pockets, like in LA, where we can kind of fill some big rooms in New York. You know, handpick some cities and grow, sure. grow some communities. Because it's such a, you, you guys are so talented and it's so unique. I think that would definitely, you need to hire somebody full time to be doing that for y'all. Oh, we, yeah, have. we have a great team. We do have a great team okay. of people okay. working with us that, yeah, <laughs> definitely with UTA and, and um, our whole crew is really great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Los Angeles, the city, we, we've kind of like built up some, some audiences outside of Louisiana and we're going to try to just like, you know, cater to those cities, the people who, who've showed up on tour and, and awesome. do that. And yeah, Europe would be great. I mean, we've always wanted to you know, our take the show over the pond. Former co-anchor, she was in LA. I'm sure she would have you guys on the morning oh, show. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, we need to set Come that on. up. We need to yeah. set that up, but Sheba. we need you always coming back. Of course. That's one thing about this festival, French Quarter Press, over 300 performances, 1,800 different artists, all local, 100%. That's insane. That's so awesome that they make it a priority to do that. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. I agree. You know? Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, um, yeah, it's so unique to New Orleans. I mean, we have so yeah. much talent here. It's like I know. insane. Sometimes when you think about it, it's like, man, it is like. But there's so many different venues. Yeah. I mean, we should have that much talent. There's so many awesome places to play yeah. here. Yeah. What do you want people to know coming out 3.30 this afternoon? Um, Which is pretty quick. Oh, Thank yeah. you guys so much for your time. Oh. Go, yeah. I want you to know that we all had coffee. We <laughs> all ate. We are ready to We're ready. give you a show. Yes. 1,000%. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. You're at home watching this. You, you got time. You can yes. make you it out. You definitely have plenty of time. Yeah. I think we have, we played outdoors since last year's Jazz Fest. Oh yeah, no, it's been a oh, while. Yeah. I'm so sorry I didn't bit. think to ask you about the challenges of the venue. Oh no. <laughs> it's it's such a beautiful day. It's it like is a gorgeous pretty much day. indoors. And people yeah. can hear the music from afar and come up and sure. discover, you know. That's I know you're going to be pulling people from the French Quarter. Yeah. Yeah, everybody coming over here to Spanish Plaza. Just so you know, it has expanded to Spanish Plaza this year. Jack Daniels stage, it's an amazing, amazing stage. Thank you guys so much for your time. Yeah, People's you. Museum, they are fantastic. If you don't know anything about them, crawl out of that hole you're living in and definitely yeah. stream their music because they are amazing. It is day three of French Quarter Fest in WWL Louisiana. So excited to be bringing you coverage from the festival. I'm Malik Mingo coming to you from Spanish Plaza. We have a lot going on here at our Love Louisiana stage. You have to come by, get some giveaways. We've got fans, we've got bags, we've got cups, and we've got koozies. All you have to do is play the Price is Right inspired game, Plinko. And unfortunately, if you can't be here, first of all, thank you so much for watching us from wherever you are. And if you can't make it here, we're bringing you great interviews from great artists. It's all happening right here, wherever you're watching this from. So stay tuned all throughout the day for more coverage from French Quarter Fest 2024. I tell you what.
French Quarter Fest. Hearts have moved. It's a beautiful day. Chef Jimmy, it's always to be with you. Thank you, sir. It's always a pleasure to be out here. The, now, now, Chef, you're the Creole Concepts. Family runs. I don't think folks realize how many restaurants are in Creole Concepts. And you're the executive banquet chef now. Yes, I've got about 40 locations throughout the city, Metairie and one in Mississippi. And then with four or five facilities that do special events, weddings, banquets, I run all those ones. And you're representing Kingfish today. So Kingfish on Charter Street 337, uh, this is one of their signature crackling nacho. And this is actually what we're going to be serving at the festival. No, no, it's because this is something. Paul, are you going to be able to come get a shot of this? You have to describe exactly what is in this. Who came up with it originally, but I have a feeling it was somebody that might have been drinking because it's a perfect like this today. It's a, a big boat full of crack and cracklings with some creole seasoning on it and then you have a like old mustard barbecue pork and then it's smothered in pimentoso and then it's topped with a, a poblano pio and some green onions and a little bit of sour cream to fit but it is just i mean it is the perfect food for a festival it, it goes great with a good you know with a good beer it goes great hanging out in the end and you're doing besides this you have something else at the booth right we're gonna do our duck our duck gumbo uh duck and andouille gumbo with uh, popcorn rice i tell you what this the slow cooked pork on it it's amazing it, i know this is a crazy question but i think everybody has in their mind oh yeah i would love to have a boy it's easy to do but this takes a long time, a lot of, and and the weather's going to be good. So you're going to be doing a lot of pork. Yeah, we've been, uh, we, we cooked several hundred pounds of pork. Uh, we've got about gallons worth of pimento cheese queso. Uh, we've been doing this for, for now. I know we've been talking and meeting with French Quarter Fest for several months. I know you Quarter Fest have been planning it for probably since the end of last year. Uh, but it, it's a lot of fun out here, beautiful weather. Louisiana musical food, local artists, you know, it's, it's a really is a fun for locals to come down and see. Are you going to get a chance to go see any of their music? I'm Anybody you're looking forward to seeing? I'm hoping to see Big Frida and Tank in the Bank. Okay, that'll be a nice combination. But I tell you, where you, you got to take credit for this, okay? Since we don't know who exactly you did, because... I, 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 I know you had some because I know you like sweet and savory. Oh, absolutely. And I know you think of you as a Satsuma King. So to put the mango in the salsa, that'll give it that sweet pop with that pork. Yeah, it's great. It's, you've got spice, you've got salty, you've got roasty sweetness. Uh, it, it works really well together. Like I said, it's a great afternoon dish. We do it at Kingfish on all day long, but especially at happy hour. So be ill of me, and don't talk, don't, don't, don't talk about me at home way. What about taking some of this crackling and pork and dropping it in? Uh, I love that idea. I think actually if you dipped the crackling into the used it like a spoon, that's the way to go. Yes, that is definitely the way to go. Gang, we've got a lot more food coming up, coming up for being here at the river. Peyton, tell us how this weather is going to be. Louisiana. What can you say? There's nowhere else like it. Brimming with history, overflowing with culture, a melting pot of beautiful people. Some generations deep, others still getting used to the humidity. It's waterways bus industry, it's streets alive with artistic expression, and the food, oh the food. But what makes Louisiana great is its people. It's wonderful people, still standing, still persevering, still fighting. Because here's the thing, we got problems too, and we own up to them. We're not scared of tough issues. We don't back down from tough questions, and we aren't gonna run away when things get hard. Sure, we got problems, but WWL, that's why we're here. We uncover lies and find the truth, expose injustice, and get people what they deserve, keep people informed, and keep them safe. We dig deep, find solutions, solve problems, and get stuff done. <gasps> We tell stories and start conversations. We celebrate the good and try to fix the bad. We support local businesses and help them thrive. 
we work hard, do good, and have fun doing it. From Plaza to St. Bernard, Homa to Covington, Metairie to New Orleans, WWL TV is now WWL Louisiana. We love Louisiana and fight for it. Hey there, it's Devin Bartle. So much for joining us. I'm here with musician George Porter Jr. You just stepped off the stage. Yes. How did it go? It um, was a very, very good evening. Um, it was a beautiful day to be out. The sun was out, nice breeze, you know, and, and the crowd was very beautiful. It was great. Yeah, it's nice out. I mean, the, the weather could not be more perfect. Crowds are also so energetic. There's a lot of people out here. Did you have a pretty good showing, a lot of people out there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not good at counting out numbers, but <laughs> I would think there was a few some people there. For oh, sure. yeah? yeah? That's pretty good. So uh, you told me for the night, but you're going home to pack. So yeah, you but, stay busy. Tell me where you're headed. Yeah, uh, you know, it's, I guess that, you know, at 76, you got to either stay busy or you're going to be lazy, you know? But I, I think I'd rather stay busy. <laughs> around that time but you you've got gigs and trips and all kinds of stuff what what, what keeps you going I, I have a really good band you know I have a really great band to play with um, um, and you know and, and I think the most important thing is that um, the, the, the guys I play you know are, are, are great musicians and they wonderful people that hang out with so you know we, we can climb into my in, um, in my transit van you know, and drive thousands of miles and not kill each other, you know, because we all have we having fun and joking. And not laughing, killing each know. is very important when <laughs> you're on a road <laughs> trip. <laughs> well, you, so you, be the driver. That is, yeah, and they control the radio. That's the rule, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're headed to Mexico for a for, uh, performance yes, this weekend. Um, Tell me about that. It's called Panic on a Playa. It's widespread mix. Um, I guess they call it a, a somewhat of a picnic, but it's not really. It's, it's a, a concert at a hotel at the Hard Rock Cafe, and uh, you know, and it's, they sell it out. You know, and and I, I've done this will be my seventh year. Wow! I've done it, and I've, I've played with an all-star all, um, all outfit. You know. Oh, that's so cool! I mean, you have so many, so many musicians throughout your years. When you look French Quarter Fest, you see all these local artists. Who are you linked to, or who are you? Excited to see at French Quarter Fest. I don't get to see anyone. No? Usually, um, the only time, in fact, festival season for me is, is uh, I go out, I play my performance, and uh, and I, well, like today, I might see, I'll see some of them because you know, I, you know really, she gave me my first town gig when I was 17 years old. Oh yeah. wow! So. Uh, so yeah, I will I will stay for Irma and see her. Mm -hmm. You know, usually I will see the band that plays before me. I'll see some of their stuff. Most of the time, once I'm done, yeah. uh, you know, uh, I go. You know, I'm done. You know, yeah. I go have some food and go go home to the television. You know, it's funny because we talked to Irma about an hour ago, and she said very similar. She doesn't really get to see a lot of acts. And I said, well, well who are you watching? At the Game Show Network. Yeah. So <laughs> it sounds like she was gonna go relax after a yeah. long day too. So yeah. well, you know, it wasn't, wasn't really a day for us. You know, um, I think we left the house around. It must have been around 1:30. Yeah. And we got out here close to two. And um, you know, we went. We took the stage at 3:30. Played the full 30. Yeah. And then um, you know, I got in the car and came over here. Well, we're glad to have you here. I, I must ask you what you know, this is such a big year for you it sounds like but what is your what is the best part for you about spring New Orleans oh uh, well I don't know and I don't know I don't have a real answer for that no? you know, spring you know uh, um, for, for me it's, I like I like the fact that well I like the, the warm days and the cool nights you know uh, um, and then right now as, as situated at home, I have to, um, I still haven't, I haven't made my, my home a, a, a bachelor pad. I mean, I, I lost my wife, but it's going on seven years ago now. And so my daughter tells me all the time, she says, Dad, you need to, you know, you need to turn into a bachelor pad, you know. And, uh, but I haven't done that yet. No. It's still so much of her still there, you know. Yeah. 
Well, thank you so much for sitting down and talking with us after your performance. You need to go home packed. Yes. So we'll I'll let go you go. Pack. George Porter Jr., thank you so much. And I hope you enjoyed your French Quarter Fest day. Yes. And I hope you enjoy Mexico. It's going to be good. Great. It's going right. to be good. It's been nice. It's going to be good. All right. Hi, I'm John Boutte, here with my Fred Grove from Chevron and Mia X. We're getting ready for French Quarter Festival, which features over 300 musical performances on more than 20 stages. Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of New Orleans music, culture, and cuisine. It all takes place April 11th through 14th. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarters.org and download the free app today. Don't miss French Quarter Festival from WWL. Speaking of food, one of my favorites, one of my favorites, Robert Harrison is joining me. Yes, and I'm does. saying he's my favorite. Malik knows why I'm saying he's my favorite, right? Yes, he does. He does. It's so awesome to be out here with you today. You, you know what? If you don't know Robert, you need to get to know him. He's Loretta's authentic pralines. And let me tell you, Miss Loretta, thank you. Um, you know, thinking of her, obviously. And you've now taken the helm and moving this forward. Yes. I have to say, you have some of the most unique pralines in the city of New Orleans. And the unique beignets, by the way. Yes, we have our red beignet. We have our famous Pauline beignet, and it's all a, a legacy. My mom, we wanted to continue it, and she took two things that were so New Orleans, right. and she mashed them together. You have the Pauline filling, Pauline ice, and then we have the nerve to do powdered sugar on top. Oh, yes. It's yeah. so amazing. Look, you know, one of my favorite things is sweet potato cookies. Oh, yes, yes, and we have that out here. We also have our Shuso, our Proline cookie, and our original Proline. I want to tell you this, now that you guys are moving forward, I know that you're very busy, staying really busy. Any major changes that are happening right now? Something new you introduced to the menu that we'll see at French Quarter Fest? So we also have our Proline Shuso, which is a flat pastry made of cinnamon sugar, a little bit of pecans and cinnamon on it. We also bought out our world famous, pictured here, Ooh. stuffed crab meat beignet. Okay. And we do that with lump jumbo crab meat, uh -huh. a little bit of awesome sauce, Okay. and we just throw the holy trinity in there. It's you know so what? Awesome. You make sure you stop by and you get you some, Robert. Thank you so much thank for you. joining us and taking a picture over at the WWL. Yes, Love Louisiana. Yes, yes. Say somebody to come on out. Oh, please come on out. First Quarter <laughs> Fest 2024. It's all on the WWL-TV app. Breaking news. We're following breaking news out of Jefferson Parish. Local weather. We are expecting an active weather day, so make certain that you are weather aware. Original stories. It's a story you'll only see on WWL-TV. Impactful investigations. Changes are happening after a WWL-TV investigation. The latest from the field. We are live in Covington. With and the Dome. And it was a high drama day in the Superdome. Download the WWL-TV app. Welcome back to Friends. Yes, we are at Spanish Plaza. This is the WWL Love Louisiana, and we are so happy to be here. We were with Bon Bon Vivant, Abigail, Abigail, excuse me, Cosio, and Jeremy Kells right. with us. Thank you guys so much for being here. Yeah. Because I know it's such a busy day. You play afternoon on Esplanade. Yep. On that stage, which is an amazing stage. Kind of take your day leading up to a big uh, festival performance. It's like a buildup. It is. It's a lot of fun. Today was kind of fun because it's to walk all the way across. We live just outside of Esplanade. Perfect. And speaking through here and seeing everybody like sparking up and having fun. Yeah. And it's really, there's a great crowd out there today and the weather's awesome. I mean, the traffic is incredible. Was I was like, oh, it's a pain for people trying to get up. It's great news. It's good. Last year, almost 900,000 people came out. Is, this is 100% Just, just uh, a lot change over time. Mm -hmm. 
and we go and play a lot of festivals and watch them. And I love that this festival is kind of homegrown. Yeah. And, you know, it's like local indie bands that we play with Friday night at BJ's or whatever. Yeah, Are legends. here on the stages. Yeah. So legends and big and the hot eight. Robert you know, Thomas. all of these people are wow. on the top. It's awesome. Yeah. It's well, a really I, good collection of music. artists are in different I'm like wait I just saw you on yeah. that stage now you're over here and they're kind of bouncing around so yeah. you can in all their elements that's I, true we uh we, we play a little bit with Charlie Tropicalis and or Tropicalis and looking at his schedule oh, he played in like 10 bands I think over the next few <laughs> days he, uh, that's working. we're working down. yeah it's amazing. good everybody's working when you when you walk from stages you see your friends on all the stages it's, yeah. it's very very that way yeah that's what I was gonna ask do you get along with most other bands? Oh and yeah, kind of, um, you know, share players, and it's a really uh, all community when you when you get down to it. Especially yeah. we're a Frenchman Street band last night, and you know you know each other, and you see each other across the street at a Spotted Cat. You think, oh hi guys. So, nice. Yeah. Let's start. If people haven't seen you play here for ten years, start with how you got the name. Well, I I knew the word bon vivant. It's French. It means to live well. Kind of uh, refers to a person who likes to enjoy a lux lifestyle. They like to drink and eat and dance and be merry. And I, for an ethos, that's a really good idea as a band. This is just living well. And uh, we added the extra bone. It means good, good. So <laughs> double down. Perfect. Commitment. Yeah. <laughs> and you guys are actually, how does that work out? Great. It's a wild time. It's a wild huh, time. <laughs> we, we got, we've gotten really good at spending lots of time in small places. That's it. Yeah. Tell me about your other bandmates that are already out there getting the sound check and ready. Yes, we can. Mark Quinn is an incredible drummer. He's going to be on the drum kit today. We call him our little Buddha. He's very, you know, quiet, soft-spoken. But yeah, just like look to boot, look to Deacon to see what's going on. We've got Jason Jerzok on the sousaphone and electric bass. A lot of in that guy, he's Kid Kaboom. And on a trombone today we have Eberling, just a lovely tall drink of water. Great and dude. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and you're the saxophonist. Yeah, yes. I, I play saxophone. And we're going to have a spent uh, out uh, an MC called uh, Black Soul, in the, up for yeah. a couple of tunes, which we're really excited about. Yeah. Any, can you give us any matter? We've been kind of playing with him for years at Negril. Uh, he sits up and does these incredible off-the-cuff rhymes that are just I have to try not to stare at him while he does it because I gotta look cool <laughs> he's just riffing act like you've been there before yeah. but you're really like oh my god I sat down and wrote this but he's just going off the cuff and it's just an incredible art watch on stage yeah, we were playing we were playing with him a little he was jamming with us last night so we were like we should come tomorrow yeah. we'll do, the, do this again Love so he's coming and hanging out with too. us that yeah. is so amazing yeah. and are you of course songs yeah but you yeah. kind of explain to me the process. Like, you write it, but then there is a band to put it all together. That's right. It's kind of like bare, bare bones. I sort of, like, I, I put the bones together mm -hmm. of a skeleton. And band, we sort of put the skin and the hair and the whole. We build it up from there. We're definitely a, a little democracy of musicians. So. Yeah. So cool. It's really fun because uh, Abby will come with an idea of the chords and lyrics and kind of a story, you know, something that she's wanted to express. And, you know, sometimes it comes out of the music room as a, and it's this beautiful ballad. And then we start to kind of play through it. It becomes this uppo dance song. Yeah. <laughs> but still, all the words and these are, are ballad-like. I don't know. It's really fun, it's the fun to see how, what they end up. I mean, that's collaboration. Is it, And you, I like to to think the song is and then give it over to the band and watch it become a different thing. Oh. So it's but sometimes you could probably get two songs out of it. Yeah. You let it really mean and this is what it turned into and they're both beautiful. And we actually <laughs> over the years we played some of it entirely differently. Huh. Uh, we'll say, oh tonight is this version or it's gonna be this version of that song. So it's it's a, it's a really joy. Yeah. <laughs> Do you at, you know, I'm sure you get that feeling it's gonna be a big hit. Is it normally, is your feeling normally right? Hmm. I've been wrong every time. <laughs> <I've been. laughs> no, that ain't present. Predict the football game. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes, you know, I have to say, being that he's my husband, he gets, he hears, and sometimes I'll be on the, 
you know, the living room floor and I'll say, hey, what about this one? And one time he did say, that is, that's an incredible song. It is one of our headlines. You know, our, our hits. So you were right, baby. We got one <laughs> time. Got and this is on tape, so that's fantastic. There we go. It's proof. Yeah, it's funny. Sometimes um, we'll get in the stu studio, especially, you get really attached to a song, excited about it. And then, you know, you kind of, once you record it, you said to the universe, you don't get a say on who likes what, and yeah. what people hear, and what people respond to. And it's fun. Some, some of the ones that kind of fall off, and then unexpected songs that work for you really well and hear them and they, I mean, like, man, I didn't see that one coming. On how that resonates with a fan that That's you right. have no idea. Yeah. Maybe they're going through that. Like, yeah. You have yeah. no idea and it just really hits them. Yeah. yeah. Just about your genre because you're so unique. Your sound, I feel like it's storytelling. It's so New Orleans, but it's got so many other things. Oh, uh, Leslie. Yeah. The, uh, I, I think we kind of early on, I love to write, love to tell stories and it's a little bit harder to find a song that isn't isn't my narrative necessarily. I'm just, I'm inspired by a story and I want to tell someone else's iteration of their life. Sure. So that's kind of where the bones is. It's just, what's a good story? And um, we build it together and sometimes it'll be, you know, Deacon goes, what about floor? And then it goes to a different direction. And so, but the genre's off these days. Yeah. Um, I feel like and it's so- you probably so, don't want to be in one. And that's kind of grown up. I've been like, you know what? Instead of being able to rattle off my hit elevator pitch, I just want people to listen to the music <laughs> and telling them a genre that they might say, I don't like that. Uh -huh. I mean, I think the music for itself, but sure. you know, some of the fun ones we've got is uh, Cabaret Cabaret was one. I, I like that. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. What you... Yeah. Um, I think I think with the, the different kinds of instruments that exist here that you can pull from, like sousaphone instead of bass guitar, all the horns, uh, accordions, or a washboard, all of those sounds are normal here. And so when you leave here and go on tour with all those things, even though we're kind of a rock band, I think, folk rock, folk indie, folk rock, whatever this, um, <laughs> with, the, with the cool colors that you can hear musically, yeah. you just I get to transform into whatever you want. Fun. Speaking of which, because everybody in New Orleans loves you, but you tour all over. What's going on right now? Like, are you coming out with an album? Are you yes, touring? What? Yes, we're actually uh, some. We're putting singles out right now. We're building up a, a to, to single in the springtime, maybe the end of the month. Nice. Maybe so, I say okay, it on air, okay. and uh, we'll be doing that every month or so. Release our full album this summer. Okay. So wow. yeah, we. Uh, it's a new game. It's a music. It's everybody's. You know doing it differently these days and we thought well singles are lovely because I like to work on the song then and there and build it to completion right so instead you're doing a little bit all over I like to sort of present this song as as its entirety and say here we go this is that so it's yeah. so interesting getting in your brain for a minute <laughs> okay how, I know you've been doing French Quarter Fest for 10 years how long have you guys been together and how did this band even form I mean, did, was the relationship first and then? Yeah. 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 Okay. We, we uh, had a musical relationship for two days. It became a regular relationship <laughs> pretty, pretty quickly. Um, I think both respected each other's musicians. I mean, the first time I heard Abby sing and own songs, I was just like, I can't believe what's coming out of them. It, it, it's really, so it's really sweet. incredible. And so I ran up there and bought her a drink. <laughs> And, fu and fussed a lot. Or, it was a rum and coke. Rum and I was a younger nice. lady. Nice, classic. Okay. <laughs> yep. okay. And then we started playing music together and writing songs. We made an album pretty on. And, yeah. Um, Nearly 20 years. So. Yeah. And then wow. with new iteration. You guys look so young. Oh, thank you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> this iteration, it's been fun to just kind of, it went from folk Americana to funky horn bands. Yeah. And kind of. Now, for she writes, we play, and yeah. it turns out whatever it is, which is so you say, what yeah. genre do you like? Okay, we can do something with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whatever. Like, I want to do a country tune. Cool. Okay. It gets to be limited by genre when your songs. I feel like I, I, I don't necessarily want that boundary. Yeah, I know. Uh, you know, uh, answering your question, Jay's. Well, it's New Orleans music. It's about the lives we're living. As a lot of these songs are literally about our lives as New Orleanians and got instrumentation that's known locally.
locally, a sousaphone, horn, so we say New Orleans music. Yeah. <laughs> we got a boat coming through. I love it. Oh, wow, all kinds of boats. Such a great atmosphere. I'm glad we yeah. um, Spanish field trip. Part of the French Quarter Fest. Yeah. Because you guys are playing tonight at 4.30 to 5. Esplanade. I do want to talk real quick. You're making your own outfit. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 so I, many hats. <laughs> and you do it all well. True. I, uh, you know, as, as New Orleans, we costume, and uh, I started getting sewing machines. So I, nice. I thought, well, of all things, I couldn't find clothes I really love in the stores necessarily. So I tear them up or make them all. And so I made a little something for today. What's the color palette? It's silver sparkles. <laughs> <laughs> Some sequins. Okay. Yeah. It's going to be fun. I can't wait <laughs> to see you, it. Liz. Anything else you want people to know? We'll see you at 4.30 at the Esplanade in the Shade until 5.30, babies. Come out and dance grass. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you so Good much. Good morning, everybody, and thanks for joining us for the Eyewitness. Let's get straight to our local weather expert, Peyton Malone. Hey, good morning, Eric. The cloud in. You will want your umbrella by this afternoon. And make sure you give it extra time on the roof today. Leslie, we're coming out to break the news. And we have the news out of Jefferson Parish. Let's send it out to our crew on the scene. Leslie, I was here at 18th and Severn where you can see crews are still working in the area. This morning, we got your recipe. Tune in weekdays from 4.30 to 9 on WWL. WWL has the best online news in the country, and you can with the WWL TV app. Far down the drain, investigative team has tells get hyper local forecasts from your local weather experts. Some showers into by Sunday, but more so into early next week. Watch breaking news the moment it happens. We have live team coverage tonight. See what's happened in your neighborhood. Personalize your alerts. Stay informed with the WWL TV app. Sponsored by Auctioner Health Innovate Care. Every day we're flying. I'll be in Lafitte at the Seafood Festival on Saturday at 5.30. But then Sunday, French Quarter Fest, one of my favorite. Everybody come down. We're going to have a good time. We're going to Leslie Bonto on the Chevron stage, 6.40 to 8. Ain't no best French Quarter Fest than the Dupes away because we're going to shock a lot of rock on it. There we go. Uh, Dupes, the party never stops. Do you ever get tired? I, I never get tired. I sleep for about three hours, then I get up. I work out. That, that's 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 the life of the rock. That's the life. That's how. I, Thank you so much, Dupe. Thanks for having me. And look, Colleen didn't finish the split for y'all. Splits on the concrete, but I'll do it for y'all on Sunday. Let's play jumbo. Me, not me. I'm not musically inclined. Well, try this. I bet you got it. Come on, Miss Louisiana. Well, good. Indian restaurant will be a food vendor at French Quarter Fest. It is a really big honor for us. They're coming out the gate swinging. It's going to be the Kima roll. This is Indian Chinese influence to our something we are doing out of the box, which is not in our regular menu. This is our Kima. This is the goat. This is what gave us. This is the butter chicken. We have fed a lot of people around the city. So I think this is going to be a different experience, but we are definitely, definitely ready for this, yeah. It's, it's insane. It's the fourth year at Southern, so they already know what to expect. Like, we literally have a line every time we're open, and that's the award-winning chicken sandwich. That chicken is mine for many, but they're bringing back a crowd favorite, too. That sandwich. We slice these cucumbers ourselves, marinate them from scratch. We made more than enough pies for anybody who made our family's century-old recipe. Seasoned French Quarter Mrs. Wheat's Meat Pies will be back again for the 40th year. They'll have some festival exclusives, too. 
crabbing on and then the shrimp and I do is kind of like a Cajun gumbo roux. Of everything they do, but it's the people that keep them going. My fam, uh, best family and friends that I build relations. It's like a reunion every time we do this. To meet more new people, you know, the biggest excitement for me. Leah McNeil, WWL. Sharice Gibson coming to you live Louisiana stage right next to the Jack over here at Spanish Plaza a French Quarter Fest 2024 and it is a cool day the weather is perfect complete opposite to what it was yesterday here with one of my favorite DJs well he really is my favorite DJ DJ Raj Smooth and I know that all know who DJ Raj Smooth is how you doing today I'm doing great okay so you're not just out here enjoying the festival oh no we were just having a conversation of DJ uh, stage that they the have Ozzy now Jen, DJ staying yeah. on right in Spanish Plaza yeah you got Next that you were involved with that yeah, I helped out. I helped uh, curate some of the DJs and, you know, put the whole eye together. So, you know, I'm, I'm just happy to be a part of it with French Quarter Fest that we can hip hop to the to the scene out here. You know what? And if they don't know you, the younger people may only see you at Ace. Younger people may see you DJing, whether it's at the Pelicans games or there's at the Saints games. You're the DJ of New Orleans. You are everywhere. But you have a storied history. I mean, we go all the way back to Cash Money. I mean, even before that, like right. that was that was a decade in. You right. know, like I started in junior high school. Shout out to all the living seagulls <laughs> out there. Uh, you know, but through junior high school, high school, college at Dillard. Right. Um, it's it's been my life. It's been my career. Like I've I've never had a day job. Right. So you know, it's, it's been uh, an amazing experience, and you know, 30 plus years doing it, and you know, I'm just happy that I can still get on stages and talk to people. You know. Like this. Well, so. you know, I love the fact that I can see you everywhere. I mean, my, you know, I always give you a hug when I see you at A's. I always recognize when, you know, when Raj Smoove is playing. Trust me, he always gets the room turned up, whether it's a game or anything, you know, just you have a particular touch. What a secret. Is there like a Raj Smoove sort of DJ secret you have? It's just, just paying attention. That distinguishes you? Paying attention to the room and, and making sure, you know, you play the right at the right time. Right. You know, like. There's a, a lot of different, you know, vibes, genres, energies, um, and just, you know, trying to find that, that middle ground and get everybody in there having a good time and just loosened up. Well, I know that right now there's a big demand for different genres of music. So you have Afrobeats that's really getting hot right now. Hot. It's getting a lot of people out there on the scene and on the dance floor. How do you keep up with all of it? Do you just kind of pay attention to what's on the charts? Um. I don't really pay attention to the charts. Like, I, again, I pay attention to the people. You right. know, like, what might I hear somebody playing when they're driving down the street? You know, what is it that uh, folks come and request? Like, what are the people that I'm around listening to? You know, what are some things that I happen to come across that I like? You know, right. a lot of times the songs on the radio are not the records that go all the way up. Really? So, you know, just finding those, you know, the little niche songs that you play and people like, yo, like, I didn't know anybody else knew about that. Like, right. I appreciate you for playing that for me. Right. So, you know, being able to make those personal connections even within a larger crowd, I think is very important. I have to say, as a person who sometimes is on the club scene in New Orleans, the club scene in New Orleans is typically different mm -hmm. uh, than the club scene in other cities. Mm -hmm. So what is it different for you? Like when you play and you DJ here, what gets the crowd moving here versus someone in Dallas or someone in New York City? I mean, every, Region kind of has its own style of music, right. you know, like we have bounce music and once you kind of get like 30 miles outside New Orleans, you got like ratchet, you know, saying right, music right, and, right. Uh, you know, the jig stuff, you know, Texas has their own style, Atlanta has their own style. So, you know, a lot of that just comes from the culture and from the experience, like a lot of the music we rock to down here with the bounce music has a lot of, you know, jazz and brass band. Right. influences in it with the rhythms and all second line stuff so you know playing music that speaks to the audience that you're in front of so even when I would travel and you know be out of town doing stuff what's hot in those cities you know right. what I'm saying and knowing what those people react to because it's not uh, like I'm there to play what the people want to hear right so that they can have a good time do you typically find yourself now you're how many how many years in the game oh my goodness 34 34 years in the game. Do you feel like you have served now as a mentor to other younger DJs that are coming up? Because I I've, see a I've, lot of people in your way. I've definitely tried to uh, reach back. You know, saying like my dad 
um, is a is a jazz musician and composer and uh, an educator. You know what I'm saying? So it's like when when I was little, little, and people would be coming to the house, and he would be like schooling them and teaching them, and you know. If, if there's nothing else I've tried to do to father, follow in my father's footsteps was, right. you know, to, uh, to be a mentor in that regard and pass on the knowledge and the things that I've learned to the next generation. Well, you told me earlier today that you had some involvement with the stage for the DJs mm -hmm. now. Um, you were also on the board for yes. French Quarter Fest. So how did this conversation come about? Why did you think having your own stage was important? I mean, you know, I, I've been doing my thing um, in the city for a while and uh, French Quarter Fest has always, from my experience from dealing with them for the short amount of time, are very interested in expanding the experience and, right. and catering to different audiences to be more inclusive. Right. So, um, you know, definitely try to reach a, a younger generation and trying to figure out some cool ways to do that. And, uh, you know, I guess the DJ idea had been floating around for a while. So, you know, me coming into the mix, it was like, yo, we, Let's, let's bounce this off a ride. I was right. like, we definitely need to do that. And it's, it's came to fruition now. I think the conversation about inclusivity and all activities within Jazz Fest, whether it's French Quarter Fest, Jazz Fest, Armstrong Festival, whatever it is, I think that's something that's been at the forefront. And so having people like you at the table on the planning stages of this, it seems like it came to fruition what it is that you wanted. I'm, I'm just happy I get to help put my people on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, like, cut my people a check. Like, right. let's go. You know, put them on the platform. Uh, let's give everybody a chance to shine. And, you know, that helps to expand the whole experience, you right. know, and make it greater year after year. Is there something this year that you're looking forward to? I know that you are DJing everywhere and you're consistently busy all the time. Mm -hmm. You just He just ran down his schedule to me for this weekend, and I don't even see how he's going to give room for sleep. What do you look forward to this year? Um, I don't know. Like, I, I think what, what I was excited to see has already happened. Like, everybody is in place. You know, like, right. the opportunity has been given, um, and people whose names are on the schedule that haven't had a chance to, you know, like, they might have been out here as a fan or a customer to kind of, like, see what was going on. Right. But now, you know, they have a chance to officially be involved as a part of the weekend um, and deliver that experience you know, to the fans out here. So, right. you know, having, you know, like my homie DJ Halle back sent me a text earlier today. He was yeah. like, yo, like I'm done, you up next. Like, <laughs> I feel good, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I played a part in, you know, making sure he got an opportunity to be on stage and do his thing. You know, yeah. I'm doing it tonight. Tomorrow, um, I, the artist is gonna be out here DJing, you know what I'm saying? I help get her plugged in. And right. uh, Hot Sizzle's gonna be out here with TBC Brass Band. Everybody get your zone. Sunday, <laughs> 504 Icy Girl and Poppy H gonna be out here on the Gumbo um, little set. Yeah. Uh, Flag Boy Gears and the Brass of Hall is gonna be playing. Oh. Water C is gonna be out here doing their thing. So it's like being able to be involved with all of my people out here and help to contribute, like, that's, that's what I look forward to, and that's right. what I'm happy about. And that is why we need people like you at the table, though, so that we can get more of our people on the scene. Yeah, we, we need to be here, you know, we represent. Okay, so tell me this. You're going to get on the stage. You're getting on the stage this weekend. I'm, I'm going on in like 10 minutes. Oh, he's, going, time, no, he's going on in 10 minutes. What's the clock? You, I don't know. <laughs> what time you have 30 more minutes. Okay. It's 5 o'clock. 5 okay. o'clock. <laughs> he's going into 30 minutes. But when you get up there, when you typically play a festival, obviously different from playing a club, give me the DJ secrets because I, uh, my friend DJ Vintage, I love him very That's much. My dog. But I always like joke with him when he's playing, like, I can easily do this. And he said, you wish. How do you develop the skills? I don't even know how to play the next song on my playlist. It's just just years of practice and experimentation. Like Is every there anything time that went bad for you? My first gig. Your first gig? What my, was that my like? First, my first DJ gig, um, it was a 13-year-old birthday party uh -huh. for my friend Carmen, who used to live across the, uh, the, the, the apartment from me in, uh, when I used to live in Georgetown in the east. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. She moved, uh, you know, they moved on up. They got a crib out of Eastover. Yeah. And, you know, I was a partner, so it's like I DJed her 13th birthday party. She went to Fantasy Williams. Right. And, you know, I'm young. I'm 14 years old, and I think everybody likes the same music I like. <laughs> so when I go on this party, like, I'm playing Tribe Call Quest and yeah. Brand New, being in, like, all of this backpack, hip-hop, New right. York, East Coast stuff. Um, you know, I thought it went well. But then the, the next year, this girl, you know, we just have to be talking um, at 35, you know, beginning the first couple of days back to school. She was like, um, oh, you DJ Carmen party. 
And I was like, yeah. She was like, I heard you can't DJ. Oh, and I was no. Like, <laughs> Like, no. like just, ah. <laughs> so that was kind of like, you know, the, the early dawn on me that everybody does not like what I like. Right. And I need to find out what the people want to hear so that they can be like, yo, we had the greatest time ever. Right. So like after that, you know, I was off to the races. Like, let me see what, you know, then, I, then it was kind of like a, a science thing for me. Like, let me check this out. Let me right, see right. if this works and find out what goes on. And then, um, you know, when I was at Dillard University, uh, like second semester of my freshman year, I started doing like all of the events. So the basketball games, the parties, the poetry nights, like, oh, we just need some music in the cafeteria. Raj, come set up. Right. So, you know, I really kind of had a laboratory to figure out uh, what people wanted to hear, how they wanted to hear it. Um, you know, and I'm still figuring it out now. Like every every gig is practice for the next one. Right. All right. So people can see you on which stage? The Posigen stage in 30 minutes, 5 right. o'clock. So if you're not here, Drive fast, get here, we're we going to do it. All right, and it's pretty good crowd. Louisiana, what can you say? There's nowhere else like it. Brimming with dream, overflowing with culture, a melting pot of beautiful people. Some chins deep, others still getting used to the humidity. It's what bustling with industry. It's streets alive with artistic expression. And food, oh, the food. But what makes Louisiana great is people. It's wonderful people. Still standing, still persevering, still fighting. Because here's the thing, we got problems too, and we own up to them. We're not scared of tough issues. We don't back down from tough questions and aren't going to run away when things get hard. Sure, we got problems, WWL. That's why we're here. We uncover lies and find the truth, expose injustice, and get people what they deserve. Keep people informed and keep them safe. We deep, find solutions, solve problems, and get stuff done. We tell stories and start conversations. We celebrate the good and try to fix the bad. Support local businesses and help them thrive. We work hard, good, and have fun doing it. From Laplace to St. Bernard, Smart to Covington, Metairie to New Orleans. WWL TV is now WWL Louisiana. We love Louisa and fight for it. And welcome back to French Quarter Quest for French Quarter Fest 2024. We at the Love Louisiana stage right here, sponsored by WWL TV. We're speaking with Troy Sawyer and the Elements. The Elements are, I guess, are on a break right now. Yeah, they're on a break. They're trying to get some food now. Yeah, I don't blame you. You guys opened the festival today on yes, this third day on the stage behind us here. Kind of run us through what that was like being out here on this gorgeous day. I just think the sunny weather makes the music sound better. It does. I don't like to play when it's cold because I'm a trumpet player and it turns my trumpet into ice. And it's hard to play a cold trumpet. So this is perfect weather, it's so beautiful. But by us being out here early yes. to open up the fest is an honor um, to open up the fest and set the tone for the rest of the day. You know, I got to listen to the last part of y'all sets. I mean, it, it's this big fusion of, yes. you, have, you have funk, you have soul, you right. have rock in there. Yeah. And I just saw the crowd gra started gravitating towards the stage, especially when you guys did the encore. Right. Where did this sound come from? It comes from New Orleans, being born and raised in New Orleans and um, traveling around the world. Yes. So like any type of genre of music that I'm attracted to that I like, if it's good music, good music. <laughs> and so I fuse it all together. I don't say I'm going to write or compose music for this particular genre. I just create. So whatever comes out is what comes out. So it's a gumbo and a fusion of all these different elements and styles and influences. Um, growing up in New Orleans. And it's really been a long journey for you, especially as the leader now, but you yeah. didn't start that way. I did not. I did not. So I was playing with different bands before, but after Hurricane Katrina, I came back to New Orleans and I decided to start my own band, step out as a band leader. So it was a Troy so your Trio, <laughs> which we were performing at the King Bowdens. It was called King Bowdens on Rampart Street, now it's Bar Tiny. And so that was my first um, consistent gig every Wednesday night as a band leader. You know, one thing I didn't know about you is, of course, we know you as a trumpeter. 
but you didn't start out that way either. Like you were initially in strings. Yeah, so I picked up the violin when I was in pre-K kindergarten. I played that for a couple of years. And I told my mama, I said, Ma, she said, what, boy? I said, I'm not feeling the violin. (laughs) So she said, okay, which instrument are you feeling? Well, do you want you want to play another instrument? And I was like, yeah, I do, but I don't know which one. But I heard this band marching down the streets of New Orleans, the St. Augustine Marching 100. And I heard this instrument, and then my mom took me to a jazz concert to hear the great Winton Marcellus play. And I said, Ma, that's the instrument I want to play. So I picked up the trumpet in fourth grade, and I've been do playing it ever did, since. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Do you think you did strings because your grandfather had that yeah, whole interaction great, with Armstrong? Yeah, Arnold my great Trump? grandfather played all of the strings, and he co wrote songs with the great Buddy Bowden, played around time with Louis Armstrong, played at Preservation Hall. And so I have I come from, I come from a musical family. Yeah. And I think that's in my blood to pick up the strings and um, play around with it. But I love the cello, so I'm gonna pick up the cello one day. Yeah, I think you can do it. But when you talk about you weren't feeling the the strings, that just goes to show you how much music is a feeling more than just a sound. Right. Yeah. Why is that so important in New Orleans culture for you guys? The feeling, it comes from, you know, our ancestors, of the things that they have gone through. And I, I feel like everywhere I travel all over the world, it's nothing like a New Orleans musician because we have gone through a lot. Our ancestors have gone through a lot. And that pain, and we turn that pain into purpose. And so I feel like we coming from that place <laughs> of feeling, of soul. And your soul is your energy. So our energy is really connected to the universe and people can feel it. I tell you, we can feel it from all the way over here while you're playing oh on yeah, the stage. Oh yeah, you were rocking with us? You, you rocking your soul? Had, oh yeah, we, you <laughs> say, we rock, we roll, we rock, we rock your soul, yeah. right? Yeah, oh And that's man. something you guys did with Doopsie. Yeah, so um, I met Rockin' Doopsie in Paris a couple of years back, and he said, yeah, little brother, when we get yeah. back to the States, we're gonna work together, and then we finally uh, worked together. I sat in with his band, and then um, when I started working on my album, I was at the Ellis Marcellus Center mm-hmm. for music, because I live in the Musician's Village, and I said, hey, Rockin', I'm over here at the Ellis Marcellus Center. I'm hearing you on this, this track, this song. He's like, okay, where you at? I said, Ellis Marcellus Center. He said, all right, I'm on my way. So he came through and <laughs> put his verse down. He was like James Brown in the booth giving you that energy. And that's what I love about him. He has a good energy. He, he's a good person. And he's all about helping the next generation out. You know, you're, not, you're no stranger to festivals. You're no stranger to music venues across right. the city. When you come to places like French Quarter Fest and you see the different stages, you see the different artists of all different genres, what is it like to see that as a New Orleanian and an artist who is true to the music? It's beautiful to see people that I grew up with when we were kids Mm -hmm. going to the Satchmo Jazz Camp, playing music as kids, where we still playing. It was refreshing actually to see some of my, um, even the the older musicians still playing, you know, like uh, Wendell Bruni is and all the rest of them. I saw them Thursday for the kickoff ceremony. And it just, it's just refreshing. It's inspirational to keep this going because we're the ones that got to pass it down to the next generation. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, it it just makes me feel awesome and it makes me, uh, feel more inspired to keep doing what I'm doing. And, you know, part of what you're doing when you talk about passing things down is your, your educational components right. that you really work on. How have you seen that really transform lives in the kids that you work with? Uh, so I, I started teaching in the school system after Hurricane Katrina mm-hmm. um, through this organization called Artist Corps New Orleans, which is an organization that would get professional musicians that have degrees to teach at a school that didn't have enough money in the budget to pay for a full-time music teacher. and. I started teaching, and I'm all about self-expression, and then I felt like it was my responsibility to be there because those kids are looking at me, and they want something from me that I have to give. And I just kept on doing it to become a better teacher, and then I decided to step out of the system to create my own system, which is called Girls Play Trumpets 2. It's my nonprofit called Girls Play Trumpets 2. I know a lot of folks look up to you for doing that. So, okay, so you just did the set. Yeah. How do you guys decompress after a set like that? Because that was a lot of energy. Oh, a lot of energy. And you know, you're almost right in the sun. You have a little shade there, but yeah. the crowd was rocking with you. So, yeah, you know, drinking lots of water. Got to stay <laughs> hydrated. And then, you know, and there's a lot of energy. I have to, like, come down from this high. So now I'm calm now because it's a high when you're performing and uh, you got to bring that energy, give the people your all, and I always give my mm-hmm. the people my all, because you never know that may be my last time performing, so you always got to perform like it's your last time performing. All right, so let's talk about the fest. What are you looking forward to, food, other artists? Yeah, so um, they have a bunch, of Tidra Moses is closing out the Jack Daniel stage, and that's a friend of, um, of mine, and we go way back, mm-hmm. and like, we're going to start working on um, some music together, some 
I'm eager to check her out later on. There's a lot of people want to see this performing um, Sunday. I'm looking forward for my nonprofit to perform too because the girls been practicing and rehearsing uh, for a minute to prepare for this moment. So they perform tomorrow on the okay. kids stage from 1215 to 115. Is that the one in front of the aquarium? Is that where that is? I think that's the one on Decatur around like H&M where it splits off. That's right, okay. Yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm excited. Even the food, I'm about to go out there and check out the food see what they have to offer you know I, I like to eat good food i mean we can smell it from down here i'm <laughs> sure you guys could smell it on the stage the oh whole yeah. time when i came out here i was like oh yeah i smell that food i can't wait to eat i can't wait and to I get off the eat stage before i play because i blew that food straight through the trumpet and my band members <laughs> didn't know troy doesn't eat before he plays but you know what after he's done he's gonna oh, be hitting up I'm all going the food i'm going in i can't wait all right so when's your next performance for folks who may have missed you out here today so my next performance is um we're working on something at the Columns Hotel. We got some other private gigs coming up. Um, Jazz Fest is coming up, doing a lot mm -hmm. of cameos. Um, Girls Play Trumpets 2 is performing at Jazz Fest also. So yeah, just we, rock, we actually lining up the, the world tour for my album, Rock Your Soul. So that's our focus, to really travel around the world promoting the good news, which is the album. All right, Troy Sawyer, we had you. We appreciate everything you've done, especially for the younger generations of the music. Troy Sawyer and Elements performing, already performed on Jack Daniels stage. Mm -hmm. Stick around with us. We have a whole lot more for you coming up on, from French Quarter Fest 2024 right here at the Love Louisiana Festival. Thanks for watching, no matter where you're from. And if you can get out here, come out and see us. Louisiana, what can you say? There's no one like it. Brimming with history, overflowing with culture, a melting pot of beautiful people. Some generations deep, others still getting used to the humidity. It's waterways bustling with industry, it's streets alive with artistic expression, and the food, oh the food. But what makes Louisiana great is its people, its wonderful people, still standing, still persevering, still fighting. Because here's the thing, we got problems too, and we own up to them. We're not scared of tough issues. We don't back down from tough questions, and we aren't going to run away when things get hard. Sure, we got problems, but WWL, that's why we're here. We uncover lies and find the truth, expose injustice, and get people what they deserve, keep people informed, and keep them safe. We dig deep in solutions, solve problems, and get stuff done. <gasps> We tell stories and start conversations. We celebrate the good and try to fix the bad. We support local businesses and help them thrive. We work hard, do good, and have fun doing it. From Laplace to St. Bernard, Homa to Covington, Metairie to New Orleans, WWL-TV is now WWL Louisiana. We love Louisiana and fight for it. And speaking of food, one of my favorites, my favorites, Robert Harrison is joining me. Yes, and I'm does. saying he's my favorite. Malik knows why I'm saying he's my favorite, right? Yes, he does. He does. It's so awesome to be out here with you. You, you know what? If you don't know Robert, you need to get to know him. He is of Loretta's Authentic Pralines. And let me tell you, Miss Loretta, thank you. Um, you know, speaking of her, obviously. And you've now taken the helm and you're moving this forward. Yes. I have to say, you have the most unique pralines in the city of New Orleans. And the unique beignets, by the way. Yes, we have our crab beignet. We have our famous Pauline beignet, and this was all a legacy. My mom, we wanted to continue it, and she took two things, was so New Orleans, right. and she mashed them together. You have the Pauline filling, Pauline icing, and, and then we have the nerve to do powdered sugar on top. Oh, yes. It's yeah. so amazing. Look, you know, one of my favorite things is sweet potato cookies. Oh, yes. yes, and we have that out here. We also have our shoe sole, our Pauline cookie, and our original Pauline. I would tell you this, now that you guys are moving forward, I know they're very busy, staying really yes. busy. Any major changes that are happening right now? Something new you introduced to the menu that we'll see at French Quarter Fest? So we also have our Pauline shoe sole, which is a flat pastry made of cinnamon sugar, a little bit of pecans and cinnamon on it. We also bought out our world famous pictured here, Ooh. stuffed crab meat beignet. Okay. And we do that with lump jumbo crab meat, uh -huh. a little bit of awesome sauce, Okay. and we just throw the holy trinity in there. It's just what? All awesome. You make sure you stop by and you get you some, Robert. Thank you so much okay. for joining us and taking a picture over at the WWL yes, Love Louisiana yes, yes. stage. Tell everybody to come on out. Oh, please come on out. First Quarter <laughs> Fest 2024. All right. All right.
And welcome back to French Quarter, Qu French Quarter Fest 2024. We are on the Love Louisiana stage right here in Spanish Plaza. The Jags going behind us. The artists are already going, but we're going to talk about something a little different when it comes to this, and it's the food and the amazing things you can find out here because it is hot. And one of the things that you're going to want to have to get is something to cool off. Italian ice is the way to do it if you're going to be out here in Spanish Plaza with us. is the mastermind behind it all. Keisha DeVerney, appreciate you being with us. So the first question is, what is Italian ice? Italian ice, um, it is a soft, fruity um, dessert. It has the consistency okay. of ice cream, but it's non-dairy. Non-dairy, so mm -hmm. good for everybody. Yes. And we have six wonderful flavors out here today. And what's so amazing about Italian Nights, all of our flavors have fun names. Um, we have Oh My God Pina Colada, that's a big <laughs> seller. We have Kiss My Strawberry, and it takes two to mango, uh, mango. We also have Cotton Candy, Blew My Mind, Raspberry, and uh, Watermelon Blast. So this is your first year as a vendor out here? This is my first year as a vendor. I've what is it like to see all of it happening and coming to fruition? It, it it was amazing. It was uh, a lot of nervousness, a lot of anticipation, a lot of ice making. Uh, we we made we've been making ice for three months for this event. So I'm very elated to have this opportunity because I've been coming to the uh, French Quarter Festival all my life. Where do you store all that ice? We have a warehouse. We have a warehouse in Bell Chase where we store the ice. Do you expect to have have to bring more over here? We did today. Wow. We did today. Uh, we uh, we sold out a lot yesterday, and we had to replenish this morning. So, kind of tell me a little bit about where this idea came from, where the where the business came from. Well, um, actually, I've been eating Italian ice uh, for a very long time. Uh, there's a, a company on uh, Carrollton and Canal. Okay. Um, and I've always eaten Italian ice. So, I lost my son, and some, something comforting for me at night was to eat Italian ice. And I'm like. I eat this a lot. Let, 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 let me see how to make Italian ice. So I actually uh, looked it up, re did the research, took a class, went to Florida, bought the um, all the equipment and stuff. Uh, we saw. I started this company in uh, February 2023, and we have gained a lot of traction. We have done a lot of major festivals last year, and this year we do a lot of private and corporate events. Uh, and we've also added a mobile Italian ice trailer onto the company. So we've gain a lot of traction real fast within a year's time. Growth is the way to go. And you, yes. your business sense, uh, a piece of that comes from, as you mentioned, losing your son because you took up his entrepreneurial spirit from yes. his beverage company. Yes. Um, actually, my son inspired me to uh, actually become an entrepreneur. My son was Devin Espadron. He was the uh, creator and CEO of Element Beverage Company. His dad and I, uh, David Espadron, we still continue the company, Element Beverages, and just this is an extension uh, from Elements. You know, for folks who may have tried this for the first time out here at the fest, which one do you recommend they go to first? I would say uh, the mango. The mango. I, I like the, I, well, my favorite is the mango. But um, a lot of uh, customers, they're, you can mix your flavors. So a lot of customers there are actually, <laughs> they're actually doing mango and pina colada or mango and uh, strawberry. And of course the kids, they're getting cotton candy. So if you have kids, all the kids have been ordering the cotton candy. What type of reaction are you getting from folks who try this for the first time? Oh my God, this is so good. It's so soft. Oh, this is, I mean, I've had repeat customers. They have, there, there is one guy, he's the manager out here. He's been back seven times. In the same day? In the same day. Wow. Seven times. All the same flavor have been mixing No, up. he's gotten all the different flavors. Well, that's the way you got to do it. Yes, you got to try every single one of them. It, yeah. So, and I came up with the name Italian because it's Italian with an E. So it's Italian Happy Ice. We want you to be happy eating Italian ice. Well, we certainly are. We, Keisha, we appreciate you being out here. And if you want to come Thank try you. this out, it is right behind us, actually. You can see the tent from where we are. Out here at Spanish Plaza, right by the fountain. We're going to be back with so much more from French Quarter Fest 2024 from the Love Louisiana stage. I tell you, French Quarter Fest, the clouds have moved. It's a beautiful day. Chef Jimmy, it's always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you, sir. It's always a pleasure to be out here. The, now, now, Chef, you're the Creole Concepts, family-run business. I don't think folks realize how many restaurants are involved with Creole Concepts. And you're the executive banquet chef now. Yes, sir. So we've got about 40 locations throughout the city, Metairie and one in Mississippi. Uh, and then we have four or five facilities that do special events, weddings, banquets. Uh, and so I run all those ones. 
And you're representing Kingfish today. Yeah, so Kingfish on Charter Street, 337, uh, this is one of their signature dishes. It's a crackling nacho, and this is actually what we're going to be serving at the festival. Now, now, who came up with this? Because this is something, Paul, are you going to be able to come get a shot of this up close? You have to describe exactly what is in this. I'm not sure who came up with it originally, but I have a feeling it was somebody that might have been drinking, because it's a perfect food for something like this today. It's a, a big boat full of cracklin, pork rind cracklins with some Creole seasoning on it. And then you have a like a Carolina gold mustard barbecue pork. And then it's smothered in pimento cheese queso. And then it's topped with a, a poblano pico de gallo and some green onions and a little bit of sour cream to finish it off with. But it is just, I mean, it is the perfect food for a festival. It's shareable. It goes great with a good, you know, with a good beer. It goes great hanging out in the afternoon and eating it. And you're doing, besides this, you have something else at the booth, right? Yeah, so we're also going to do our duck our duck gumbo uh, at, at the booth as well. A duck and andouille gumbo with uh, popcorn rice. I tell you what, this crackling, the slow-cooked pork on it, it's amazing. It, it, I know this is a crazy question, but in preparing, I think everybody has in their mind, oh, yeah, I would love to have a booth at a festival. Oh, it's easy to do. But this takes a long time, a lot of preparation, and, and the weather's going to be good. So you're going to be doing a lot of pork. Yeah, we've been, uh, we, we cooked several hundred pounds of pork. Uh, we've got about 30 gallons worth of pimento cheese queso. Uh, we've been doing this for, for quite a little while now. I know we've been talking and meeting with French Quarter Fest for several months. I know y'all at French Quarter Fest have been planning it for probably since the end of last year. Uh, but it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of fun. Out here, beautiful weather. Louisiana music, local food, local artists. You know, it's it's a really is a fun weekend, especially for locals to come down and see. Are you going to get a chance to go see any of their music, or are you, uh, I'm anybody ho- you're looking forward to seeing? I'm hoping to see Big Frida and Tank and the Bangas. Okay, that'll be a nice combination. But I tell you, this is something where you, you got to take credit for this. Okay, since we don't know who exactly came up, I think you did because. I, 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 I know you had some influence with this because I know you like sweet and savory. Oh, absolutely. And I know you, because I, I think of you as a satsuma king. <laughs> so to put the mango in the, in the salsa, that'll give it that sweet pop with that slow roasted pork. Yeah, it's great. It's, you've got spice, you've got salty, you've got roasty pork, you've got sweetness. Uh, it, it works really well together. Like I said, it's a great afternoon uh, dish. We do it at Kingfish on all day long, but especially at happy hour. So would it be ill of me and don't talk, don't, don't, don't talk about me at home. What I'm about to say, what about taking some of this crackling and pork and dropping it in the gumbo? Uh, I love that idea. I think actually if you dipped the crackling into the gumbo and kind of used it like a spoon, that's the way to go. Yes. Yes. That is definitely the way to go. Gang. Louisiana. What can you say? There's nowhere else like it. History overflowing with culture, a melting pot of beautiful people. Some generations deep, others still getting used to the humidity. It's waterways with industry. It's streets alive with artistic expression. Food, oh, the food. But what makes Louisiana great is people. It's wonderful people. Still standing, still veering, still fighting. Because here's the thing. We got them too, and we own up to them. We're not scared of tough issues. We don't down from tough questions, and we aren't going to run away when things get hard. Or we got problems. The WWL, that's why we're here. We uncover lies and find the truth, expose injustice, and get people they deserve, keep people informed, and keep them safe. We dig, find solutions, solve problems, and get stuff done. We tell stories and start conversations. We break the good and try to fix the bad. We support local businesses, help them thrive. We work hard, do good, and have fun. From Laplace to St. Bernard, Homer to Covington, to New Orleans, WWL-TV is now WL Louisiana. We love Louisiana and fight for it. Hi, I'm John Gucci. Here with my friends, Bravron and Mia X. We're getting ready for French Quarter Festival, which is over 300 musical performances on more than 20. Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of New Orleans music and cuisine. 
It all takes place April 11th through 14th. Get to FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app today. French Quarter Festival from WWL. Sweet yeah, hold on close, hold close to your mouth whenever you talk. Like, what are you playing? All of them. I play all of them, but my main instrument is saxophone. You gotta make sure everybody's in line. Yeah. Y'all can just ignore the cameras and just look at me. Just ignore, ignore the cameras. Okay. And welcome back to French Quarter Fest 2024, where we are rocking and rolling with a lot of artists who are making French Quarter Fest what it is. We are on the Love Louisiana stage, sponsored by WWL TV. With us now is the Abrams and Psy Academy Brass Band. You guys have done so much work over the past year. Uh, first, let me introduce yourselves in regards to the, uh, to the band. Uh, my name is Mr. Johnny Van Buren. I am the band director at Abrams and Psy Academy. Uh, my name is Kiran Johnson. I'm the band captain at Everson High Academy, and I play trumpet. Trumpet, right? Trumpet. Uh, how y'all doing? My name is Cesar Mahir. I play trombone for Everson High Academy. You know, I'll start with you. You know, when you think about French Quarter Fest, what is it like to know these younger musicians are coming into the fold of what we're seeing for these, you know, legendary artists here in New Orleans? I think it's like an amazing, an amazing um, event, amazing time for them to come out here because it's give them an opportunity to like be like performers, mm -hmm. and like this may be. They, this may be something that they want to do once they get older, and they may be the ones that everybody's like legendary yep. one day. So like this is like the beginning stage of them. Okay, then maybe this is something I can do, and just move forward with it from this point on. And how have you seen that have an impact on children, kids' lives? I think a lot of the times, like a lot of kids have a lot of different options. Uh, um, music is like one of the biggest things, especially in our city, that kids like gravitate to. I think that with these kids, that these brass band kids, they see a lot of the second lines, they see a lot of the culture. Yeah. They're big on the culture of New Orleans. So I think with them, they, and they also like, you know, <laughs> I get a little little money every now and then for doing some particular um, gigs. So it's like an eye open to them. So them pursuing it will be great, you know? And as a young musician, what, in, what makes you want to do this? Um, it's really about the culture, the culture of yeah. New Orleans. It's like at a young age, you just start doing the culture, being around all the all the people that do the culture and they like pass it down to you so you can learn once you get older and pass it down to the next generation it's really just like a trickling effect and what is it like to see that as a young musician that these older musicians are really part of that culture as well that they want you guys to take up that legacy i mean they care they don't want they not selfish they like to pass the knowledge down to the younger so we can pass it once we get older and we can do the same thing so we can just keep it going and, and you as well, you know, when you think about the musicians around New Orleans, there are so many of them. Why be a part of that and come into that fold? It's a special thing. Like, since you're talented, you don't want to go to Weiss. You know, build up the culture, have fun, and just enjoy yourself. So kind of tell me about the practices that you guys have done to gear up for this performance. Practices we've kind of done, it's like, there's a lot of hard work. We're going to <laughs> learn the songs. Uh, a little bit of fussing and all that, but it's all hard work. You know, we end up having fun. 
I was going to ask, it, it does take a lot of hard work, especially as young adults. You could be doing so many other things, but this is where the passion comes in. Why for you a passion? A passion, it really comes from, like, he really helped us stay out of the streets. Like, he yeah. wanted us to become successful young men. And a passion is really just about having fun. And what would you say to other kids who are out there who maybe want to dabble in music as well? Uh, just try. Just try. If you don't try, you never, you're never going to know if you, like, got talent to do something if you don't try it. You could just pick up a horn and play a note, and then boom, you like you might like it, and never put a horn down again. So kind of talk about the performance that you guys are going to be doing today. Y'all going at 150, not far from here. So what, what can folks expect from the performance? I just think they're going to be expecting, like, the energy and, and, and entertainment from these kids, man. One of the things, like, just teaching them, I was big on the performance thing, like, entertaining the crowd, like, yep. seeing the crowd, entertaining them, understanding them your um, your crowd that you have. So. Everybody wants to come to see a show. Nobody wants to um, come and see anybody boring. They want to see a show. So I just think when you see the um, show today, it's just basically going to be very entertaining. They're going to sound good. But mo most, most important, they're going to have fun with it. And that's what sets New Orleans musicians apart. You know, are there, do you guys have some favorite musicians that you look up to? My favorite is Louis Armstrong. Is it? Yeah, Louis I Armstrong, because he played trumpet. And what made you want to pick up trumpet? Did you go to another instrument first, or was trumpet the first one? I used to always be at home drumming on the cone. I was like, Mom, I want to get in the band. I want to get in the band. And then, boom, I just picked up a trumpet. I played the note and never put it down again. And why trombone for you? Originally, my freshman year, I was on saxophone, but you know, we lost a whole lot of trombone players that year, so Mr. Van Barrett decided to put me on trombone. It's like I you have to feel the sense. music. Sometimes you have to go to where the direction leads you. What, how have you seen that really work with the musicians that you work with? I think with them, out, you know, teaching like young musicians, like you got to teach them about playing from the soul. You know, a lot of the times what separates a lot of musicians is like playing with that feeling, like playing with like, yeah. you know, some people could just play, but playing with that feeling that makes people gravitate to what you play. And that's one of the things like I really try to get them to like understand, like you just can't play the instrument. You gotta put your heart and soul. If you if you're going through something on that day, you put your, your what you're going through into that instrument, and you will just be amazed how people will just love what you're playing at that particular time. And that's really what New Orleans musicians are all about. That, mm -hmm. that we see it in every stage around here. What is it that you're hoping, not just these young musicians, but also the audiences can take away with them after listening to a performance? I just want to just take you know just take away that these kids are doing some positive things in the city, like um. I know a lot of the times our kids, sometimes we see a lot of negative negativity and stuff, but they are kids that's really doing some positive things in the city. And I just want, when they leave, that the crowd, the people that see them perform, just say, I can't believe, I, I want to see those kids again. Like, all these kids are going somewhere. I want to see these kids again. And I also want them to encourage the kids, yeah. be like, when they come on stage, be like, man, y'all did a good job. Y'all should continue this. Like, let's like, keep it going, keep it going. Don't give up, you know what I'm saying? But it certainly don't give up. Appreciate you all for being with us. You know, best of luck to your futures as musicians. I know you guys are going to do well. Appreciate you everything that you've been doing as well. And stick around because we're going to have so much more for you coming from French Quarter Fest 2024 right here on the Love Louisiana stage in Spanish Plaza. Hi, I'm John Boutier here with my friends Greg Rowe from Sean and Mia X. We're getting ready for French Quarter Festival, which features over 300 musical performances on more than 20 stages. Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of New Orleans music, culture, and cuisine. It all takes place April 11th through 14th. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app today. Don't miss French Quarter Festival from WWL. Welcome to WWL Plus, where you are streaming Happy French Quarter Fest, the kickoff of French Quarter Fest. You can hear the music here behind us. We're in the Spanish Plaza at the Love Louisiana WWL stage. We're having so much fun today. We've had a ton of people already come out, won some great prizes, but we get to be the very first of the interviews here at the brand new Love Louisiana stage. So I want to welcome Zita here. Thank you so much for having guys. us. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. We're really excited to have you. Just go around and just introduce yourselves. Sure. Um, I'm Michael Mullen. I'm the lead singer and trombone player, and I do weird things with the trombone, and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I'm Bradford Lewis. I'm lead and only guitar, I guess. I tell Michael, plinks away at the guitar. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, Dylan Calluet, I play lead bass, also the loudest guy on stage, predominantly. Nice, nice. Always. Uh, I'm Kai Melanson, I play drums, and I don't do weird things with my trombone. It's good to know. Thank you for sharing, even oversharing. We're really excited to have you guys here. I, I want to start for the first question that I asked you earlier, because the way we got the name is very interesting. I'm always intrigued when we find out how a band decided to choose what they're going to go by, because that's everything, right? That's your, that's your logo, it's your brand, it's how identity, people know yeah. you, it's your yeah. identity. And y'all's is very fun. So who wants to share that story? So we started off as Next Gen 5 uh, with a Roman numeral. Okay, wait, you didn't tell me that part. <laughs> yeah, so there was a lot of that confusion there because everyone thought we were Next Gen V. And okay. we, we, were look, we were looking for a name change, and there was this shop in Mandeville where we were going to high school called Zetas that sold like a bunch of crystals and cool t-shirts and jewelry and stuff really like that. Really earthy and holistic. Yeah, we okay. used to go there all the time, and we just decided to name the band after that. We eventually got the blessing, and now Zeta herself, the owner of the shop, is like renting her one of her houses to me. And I'm, We've been writing the record there and doing all that stuff. So yeah, I love it. Very, very homegrown, very local. Yeah. Oh, Grassroots there. Full yeah. circle thing. Yeah. Shout I love out that. Next Gen V. Shout out. Mega shout <laughs> that's out. the throwback. Yeah. That's that's your throwback <laughs> Thursday. That's cool. <laughs> and so, how did we all meet? How did you guys get together? Um, I guess we, it kind of everybody kind of trickled in, but it was um, I guess Dylan and I are the uh, oldest original members to the Next okay. Gen Five sort of. Uh, family there but uh, we we a friend of mine I went to NOCA for high school and a friend of mine from there introduced me to Bradford and he was like this guy played Master of Puppets by Metallica at lunch today and it sounded identical to the record and I was like well, I gotta hear it so at lunch, we brought him okay. into jam, we brought him into jam. <laughs> Dylan's dad met Kai at a restaurant he was working at actually and was like you know he was like yeah I found this drummer from Japan and I was like screw it yeah you know yeah. and then and then he blew me away the first time I heard him yeah. so yeah, and then the rest is history. Next gen quality. Next gen quality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next gen quality. V. There you go. So we have the the origin stories. I like the dad joke. It was good. We have the origin stories here and how you guys met. Your sound is also. We're talking about this homegrown, very local. It's very, very. Uh, almost like throwback New Orleans because it has that like deep rock but also some funk bluesy and I would say it's something that a lot of people feel maybe that sound has kind of faded away and you guys are bringing it back in a really cool way yeah yeah I'd say that it also helps when you have George Porter as a mentor that's uh, been helping you out for years yeah, there you go. yeah, yeah. I think people like that we've been in the scene our whole life like all of us have been in the scene he kind of grew up in Japan and he's lived there until he was 18 but he was coming here for jazz fest every year doing stuff like that like all of us cool. were bred in this environment of like like he said george porter you know i grew up down the street from mike lemler his keyboard player uh ivan neville the neville family like they've been very nice to us like, you also have it in your family i have it yeah, yeah. my dad's obviously a new orleans musician himself and so and his as well his, yep. his are new orleans musicians as well so it's like we took those influences, but we grew up listening to classic rock music, all of us, and so that is like unequivocally the sound, but all of the influences that span our entire lives sort of inform that. And so, uh, and then it culminates in whatever the heck we do, so it's well, fun. It's weird too, because like, I, I did a lot of stuff with Donald Harrison and you did Noka, so we like have jazz yeah. background mixed in too a little bit. Yeah, that too, like jazz, funk, blues, I mean, that's kind of where the roots come from. Like I listened to a lot of Alan Toussaint when I was younger as well, he's like a blues master, like, Dylan, like you said, like doing jazz and funk stuff with a lot of people, and then Kai just being in music his whole life. I mean, that's it. yeah. So it kind of it spans everybody, and yeah, all our all of our influences, we wear them on our sleeve. That's really cool. And this is is this the second year you guys are performing at Jazz or yes, French yes. Quarter Fest? Second, okay. <laughs> yes. So I'm jumping ahead here, different uh, different <laughs> yeah. festival. So. <laughs> yeah, well, I have been up since very early. Yeah. So you guys are performing a second year. Um, you know, somebody who we're saying from Japan and then, you know, coming all the way to New Orleans to attend all these different festivals. What does it mean to be able to then be on the stage performing and doing what you love? Oh, it's definitely an honor and a privilege. Uh, well, my dad is orig originally from this area, so I wasn't full foreigner to this land. Military uh, family? No, is actually that? not. My okay. dad just kind of met a Japanese, my mom, in the West Coast, actually, and they moved over there. That's I grew cool. up there, but we would visit here. Uh, every time he would come down, it's usually either jazz festival season, or festival season or Saints, like, just football season. 
So just growing up, I was already immersed in it. So just be able to play like French Quarter Fest, you know, it, it, it's a great feeling. So. Yeah, and and to, to come back for year two, obviously like, the first year is always like really exciting. It's something new, you get the jitters out, you get the excitement, you get to be on the stage, but year two, everybody always wants to come back and do it bigger and better. Yes. And how are you and guys going to do that this year? it's not raining this year. We were on Saturday yeah, last sure, year, yeah. we got oh. rained out, our tent was flooded ankle Today deep. is gorgeous. Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. It's a beautiful today. day. Yeah, and so I mean last year the other thing was like, it was just very nerve-wracking, I think, because this festival means a lot to us, and like, like all of us, like this was my first gig ever as a musician. Wow! It was French Quarter Fest. Get out of here! Yeah, that's a pretty big first gig. Yeah, it was. I was terrified. I didn't sound very good, but uh, you know, I, <laughs> that was my first I love gig. The Still don't sound very good, but nobody we're should on it. ever look up my first anchoring reel. Yeah, I get it. I <laughs> yeah. get it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just hoping I don't rip my pants this year. Yeah, that did happen. That did happen, yeah. Wow, last year was eventful. It was eventful. Yeah, okay. We didn't think it would be, but... And yeah. so and so, you didn't feel like maybe it was your best ever. Yeah. But yeah. now you've had a ton of gigs and you've had a ton of practice, and I'm sure you guys now feel way more gelled and ready for this year. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Because if you don't, I'm hyping so. you up either way right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now you have to go on and do a good well, job. Hopefully yeah. we're going to sound better and have the right amount of holes in all of our pants. There you go. <laughs> How did we... How did you rip your pants? Uh, Are you I, excited? It was it was like this full corduroy purple suit that I had, okay. and it was a little too tight for me to be wearing. And we got off the stage, and I realized that my bright blue underwear was showing from under the purple. It's rock and roll, and, baby. It's yeah, like that. Exactly. We're good. I, I was like, mm, I was getting a nice breeze. I was like wondering where okay. it was coming from. You know? Suddenly, it's figured it out. It was all planned out. <laughs> right. He it says it like it's an accident. Okay. He's, yeah. that's it was a publicity though. stunt. Okay. Yeah. okay. Deal. <laughs> And so are we doing a wardrobe change before you guys hit the stage? A little bit. I think we're kind of, kind of in stage clothes. Mostly there. Like mostly I'm, I'm changing mostly my there. shirt. They okay. were getting on me earlier, but yeah, I'm going to change my shirt and then we're good to go, I think. Because yeah. you will sweat to death in that. I will. Yeah, well, I'll take this jacket yeah, off for sure. It's not too hot right now, which is nice. Yeah, actually, I'm surprised. A little surprised how cool it turned out to be today. This morning it was freezing. Right now, the sun when it comes out and the wind kind of stops, it's great. So yeah. it's you know it's a, great it's day. festival season. Yep. We'll put up with anything, but it's yep. always nice when the weather cooperates. Yeah. So what are you guys looking forward to this year being back on that stage? Hmm. Ooh. Well, we have Evan on sound this year. We, yeah. we had Evan on sound last year. We did. Oh, I didn't. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, last year was quite a doozy. As a lot you can of gigs. <laughs> I, um, I think I think l this year we're most looking forward to debuting a lot of the new material we've written for this next album. Yeah, let's talk about that because it's a nine-track album. Yeah, well, the next, the, the first one was this next one. I don't even, I don't even know. Oh, you guys have a, a new one that I'm we're, not even aware of. We're writing, yeah, yeah. Oh, we're, we're working yeah, on it now. Okay. In the, in the yeah. Too. And there's a live record that we're going to be releasing our first single from on 420. And, Very cool. Um, from the Maple Leaf. From the Maple Leaf. Yeah, we're doing a show there. Wow, so that's right show. around the corner, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so uh, we'll shout that out on stage today and, and sort of uh, make some posts on our Instagram and everything. But like, yeah, that's all this stuff that, all this new material that we've got kind of stockpiled because our last record was 2021 at this yeah. point. Wow. So we've been sitting on this stuff for a minute and we've been writing a lot of new stuff very recently as well. So it's like very fresh. Is it fresh. collaborative when it comes to writing or does somebody very, sort of take lead? Very, yeah. yeah. We, someone will bring like an idea or something. Uh, it's nine times out of ten it doesn't start with a full song written by no. one person it'll start with yeah. someone's idea then we'll bring it into the room and uh by the end of it hopefully we walk out with a song you know most of the time we do but then there's sometimes where it's like we keep adding more and more and then it ends up being like a 15 minute song or something like that <laughs> which we do have and we got to remember it you know yeah. <laughs> yeah that's fair and uh yeah yeah you put it well <laughs> The one thing I, we are probably looking forward to this year is last year, because it got rained out, we had a shorter set. So we actually get yeah, to play true. a full set is going to be is gonna get very cool. A 70 minute set, too. It's Instead last year like, we did 35. We did 35, yeah. Half yeah. Minutes, so. So we could double set. Yeah. To, to, and so will you have some of that new music today, or are you guys still in the process of putting that together? Oh, we definitely a little have bit of some of it. A yeah. little bit? OK. It's a mixture. I think we got two or three brand new ones that, um, yeah. yeah, that aren't released anywhere. And then some old stuff, and then we have some cool covers planned as well. Some blues stuff, some um, classic rock stuff, so it'll be cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Are you guys excited. looking forward to checking anybody else out for French Quarter Fest? Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah, Rebirth we're gonna we're gonna walk around. Yeah, Rebirth's playing after us, yeah. so that'll be a fun one to catch. Ivan's playing. I'm gonna check him out. Yeah, we're gonna go. Too, yeah, right? We're gonna yeah, go yeah, check yeah. Michael out with his pops band. Yeah. I'll be over at Abita stage with Bonaram at 4:50 right after we finish. So we'll okay. sprint that way. So you gotta <laughs> run from one to the yeah. other. Okay. <laughs> and um, when it comes to anybody who's trying to connect with you guys or check you out, I know you have another performance tonight too. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so you can shout that out. And then also just, you know, how people, if they want to check out some more of your music or, you know, connect with you guys, what's the best way to do that? Well, everything is stockpiled on zetaband.com. That's what I say. <laughs> uh, but you can find us. Our, our most up. active is probably Instagram, which is zeta.band. Yeah. So Zeta, if you look up Zeta Band, Zeta Band New Orleans online, you'll find us. And, uh, yeah, like you said, the landing page for all our show dates is the website. You'll see it on the front page. Uh, tonight at 8 p.m. is the door time. Doors open at 8 p.m. at Santos Bar on Decatur. Um, that is going to be the after show, the after party for French Quarter Fest tonight. Um, we're going to be doing two sets there, and we're going to be going pretty late. Uh, we'll see. We'll be going yeah. until we, we feel like falling over. So. Go until we <laughs> drop. Yeah, that's it. That's awesome. Well, thank you, guys. We appreciate thank you taking you. the time because I know you, you guys. Gotta get running in Yeah, a we do gotta get running. I mean, <laughs> Go ahead and check the time now, I yes. got you. Uh, so, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, so good. you got a little right. time, but I know you guys are getting ready to hit the stage. If you guys want to check them out, as they mentioned, check them out on Instagram and, you know, come by WWL in the morning show. We'll have you guys anytime. Wake, oh, wake all of our good. viewers up, but it was great having you guys in today. Yeah, Break you. a leg. This year is going to be even better than next year, pant ripping and all. Hi, I'm John Bucci here with my friends, Greg Rowe for Ron and Mia X. We're getting ready for French Quarter Festival, which features over 300 musical performances on more than 20 stages. Chevron is proud to support the festival, celebration of New Orleans music, culture, and cuisine. It all takes place April 11th through 14th. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app today. Dome French Quarter Festival from WWL. With the legendary Irma Thomas. You're getting ready to perform tonight. We are having a beautiful day for this French Quarter Fest, aren't we? In my life, every day I wake up is a beautiful day. I love that outlook. <laughs> I love it. So tell me, what can people expect from your set tonight? What are we? What are you going to perform tonight? They're going to get Irma. They're going to get Irma. Yeah, okay. I, don't, I don't work from a set list. My audience is my set list. Tell me about that. Are you speeding <laughs> off the energy? What do you mean? My audience is my set list. Okay. I come on stage, I sing a few songs, my audience yell out what they want to hear, and that's what I sing. Wow. So that's my set list. I feel like not too many people <laughs> can do that. You, I mean, you've been doing this a long time. I've been so doing just... it that way for years and years and years. Wow. Because I used to, I, I've never worked from a set list. Hmm. Because most of the time, my audience is a folk who've been around me for years, and they want to hear their favorite song. Since I can't read their mind, I sing what they want to hear. I love that. <laughs> we were talking a little bit about... Uh, you know, mothers say things have changed a little bit since the pandemic. How have things changed for you in recent years? What, well, what we haven't done Mother's Day since the pandemic yeah. originated. And so other than that, I've gotten older and I've slowed down. Mm -hmm. I don't take as much work as I used to. Mm -hmm. And I just finished doing a gospel CD. And so yesterday I was in the studio till 8 o'clock last night. So, <laughs> wow. <laughs> and we still have to do photo shoots and all that good stuff. So, oh and gosh. I just completed an album with Galactic and it's going to be uh, Audience with the Queen is the name of the the album. So, so two anyway. new albums we can expect from you soon? Huh? You said two new albums then that we can yeah, expect one, from you soon. Yeah, one, one gospel and one R&B. <laughs> wow. Because I've covered the, covered so the game. What was, why do both at once? Or what's, what's the answer? It, How do was, you do it, both it just once? worked out that way because the people who involved were, are from Europe and they wanted to come while the French Quarter Festival was going on and, and be able to do two things. So mm -hmm. that's how it worked out. <laughs> so when are we gonna? When can we hear them? When, when's the gospel? Well, album this one, out? the one that I finished last night, probably won't be out until somewhere this summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You just performed at the Do Drop In, the reopening of the I Do did Drop the reopening, In. Can yes. you tell me about that? What that was like for you? Well, yeah, it was. It brought back a lot of memories. And I did a lot of the songs that I used to do when I worked at Dewdrop. Yeah. We're, we're talking six some years ago. <laughs> wow. What, what was that flashback like? Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. It was fun. Are, are, are things, obviously the world is so much different, but are things at the Dewdrop in different? Are you glad to see it back? I think that they, they did a beautiful job remodeling it. And I think a lot of the younger people who will be playing there will appreciate what the Dewdrop was all about. Yeah. yeah. 
So hoping to bring a little bit of a younger crowd in and. Uh, well, yeah, because most, most of our old ones are gone. <laughs> so they're going to have to bring in a lot of the young ones. But you're keeping that memory alive and, and you're going to perform I'm trying. tonight. <laughs> I'm trying. Um, what, what is that like to appeal to the younger, the younger generation and see some new faces out in the crowd? It's fun. Uh, a lot of them have done their homework and they've, they've listened to some of my music and they yell out what they want to hear. And I'm honest enough with them to sit, tell them because I carry an iPad with all of my lyrics in it. And I'm, I'm smart enough and wise enough that if there's something I haven't done in a while, I'll let them know that I haven't done it in a while. And if it's in my cheat iPad, I'll look it up and sing it. <laughs> That's so smart. <laughs> That's so smart. I will talk about French Quarter Fest because there are so many local acts here yeah. and new people on the scene. Yeah. What are you listening to right now? Who are you hoping to see? I'm a game show network. <laughs> the game show network. <laughs> well. I mean, but who at French Quarter Fest or any I, local artist? I don't have time to listen to anybody at French Quarter Fest because when no? I come out here, I'm on my way to go to work. Okay. And, I, and of course, this interview with you guys. And of course, by the time I get back, it'll be almost time for me to go on. So. Yes. I don't get a chance to hear anybody. That's fair. Very fair. <laughs> All right, so you're gearing up to perform in just about 15 minutes yeah. here. My very um, first French Quarter Fest was played with Ronnie Cole. Wow. And wh when was that? Oh, 100 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even, at that time, there wasn't even a, a, a stage. We, we played from a platform. So. Yeah. Isn't that amazing how much it's grown oh, in that yeah, time? It's grown tremendously. Wow. Yes. Wonderful. All right, well, Miss Irma, thank you so much. It My was pleasure. wonderful speaking with you. My pleasure. And I, I, I know there's a lot of people very excited to watch you perform tonight, so we're going to let you go. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Day three of French Quarter is well underway, everybody, and we are so excited to be bringing you more artists in us here from our love Louisiana stage here in Spanish Plaza. Joining me now is a girl I have been waiting to interview since I first heard Be Girl years ago. Tidra Moses is joining me. Hello, beautiful. Hey, baby. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Happy French Quarter Fest. Happy French Quarter Fest. And I am so glad that you are performing at Fest and sitting down with us here in our love Louisiana stage. A little birdie told this is your first year performing at French Quarter Fest tonight, 6.40 p.m. on the Jack Daniels stage. Tell me about this performance. How does it feel to be here for the first time performing? It's awesome. It's awesome. You know, I live right up the street. I got a house right up the street. So it's like I just come perform for the people. But more than anything, I love this city. And for time, my hard work didn't really get a chance to be shown here. So I feel that I'm able to do it in such a, um, a great festival, such a massive. Absolutely. And you're closing out the stage tonight. Some people may call that the air right. for tonight, okay? <laughs> and I love that you're going to be doing it because New Orleans girl, you're from here. You started at Bonneville for a while, Jefferson Parish. Jefferson Parish. And I heard your sound check earlier um, absolutely great but let me tell you everybody a song i was hearing was classic be your girl talk to me about some of the songs you're going to be performing for us tonight you no know, i really just wanted to um show my us from the city you know what i mean and for me the influence from the city is so many it's rhythms it's gospel it's a lot of different things hip-hop you know what I mean? I think that sometimes get overlooked for New Orleans. And I learned most of my hip hop style, you know what I mean? And um, so I'm going to explore all those different that influenced me as a child. That's that's my goal, is to explore all those that come within the records that I've written. Absolutely. You know, I said crowd at French Quarter Fest is a special crowd. I came for the first time last yes. year as a person who was just checking out, and now you're going to be up on stage. What are you hoping for from that night who's going to come see Teacher Moses? Just reception and energy, because I'm going to pour myself out. I don't know any other way. If it's two people, if it's 10,000 out. So just the energy. What you give me, I'm going to give you back that in times over. Yeah. And we're going to give you all the energy. I love it. And I mentioned it earlier, but I remember when I first heard Be Your Girl, and I was like, ah, wait a <laughs> minute. I'm not even a woman, but I understand what she's saying. Right. And then the Kate Tronada remix came out. Yeah. Oh, so much. Talk to me a little bit more about that song, Be Your Girl, because if you all, it's celebrating 20 years this year. You know, it's celebrating 20 years this year, my first debut album complex simplicity 20 years this year 
And um, to be honest, Kay Trinata and I record somewhere around 2012. So it was well after the, uh, the song was already yeah. out. And you know, it was just a connection. And that's why I love DJs because DJs can change your life. And he made a record for me that changed everything and it brought more attention to everything outside of that record, you know? So yeah, Be A Girl is just a, I think like a maze record or one of those records is just gonna live forever. And I want to be a vessel for it because I didn't know that was gonna happen when I, when I made it. <laughs> that's the song because like you mentioned, the original came out in 2004, then yeah. it came out around 2012. 2012 yeah. Talk to me about that 2004 song. Heard it when you first recorded it. Did you think it was gonna song that it was? I or didn't. that it is, right? I didn't I didn't think you know, new artists, you don't think about what is gonna perform and what's not gonna perform. You're just pouring yourself out. And I had a crush on this guy. This really massive Did crush. Did we all on this guy. baby all <laughs> still do, still do. <laughs> But I had a crush on this guy and I just wrote it from the perspective of if he was good, you know, and how I would feel and I was so shy. I was such a big crush girl, you know. And so I was just really, really shy and I wrote it from the perspective of if tell him how I felt. And I think that's an 8 to 80 subject matter. Everybody can relate to that. Absolutely. Whether it's 2004 or 2024, that's what the song, it still resonates today. And baby, you are still making music. I actually have a song that just came out last month in March. Boy, Pell, yeah. talk to me about this record. Yeah, come run home is what it's called. And I love Pell, first of me all. Too. He's a really, really talented artist that is diverse mm -hmm. in his ways. It's not like stuck to like one way of doing it. And I was interested in working with him and then I would see him out and I'm like, hey, Pella, we kind of just would see each other. And one day he hit me and he was like, yo, I want it. And I was in Miami at the time. And I said, I can't really get out there. He said, well, I'll just send it to you. Like that, we collaborate like that. And it came out really, really wonderful. I really love that record. You know, it's a jail on no Pell. He's a rapper, he's a DJ, he's a well-rounded artist. He even sing, he yeah. sing as well. I've yeah. interviewed him before and boy, do a little something. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. And Pell I got appreciate it. that you're still working making music what does the future for teacher Moses look like it's really to be here 20 years after my debut album and still doing it and and still able to do it at a nice level you know what I mean and so the future for me is we're putting within the next month okay. I want to say it's May something yeah, uh, I'm not good with the dates okay, it's a lot baby. today but I can't sometime remember but have it sometime in spring yes um, in May, we're going to put out a record um, called Heart, which is a very good, beautiful acoustic record, but the words aren't there. You know, if you, I can't really get into it too deep, but with all my heart, someone heart, and now I want to express well, with listen, all my heart I how I feel the about them. Show you well, Great Day, Louisiana, when that record comes oh, yes. out, baby, come on. Oh, and yes. Perform for oh, yes. Us. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, uh, one more question for you. We're at French Quarter Festival. The music and weather is going to be beautiful yes. this weekend. I know you're going to be serving us a look for you. But how does Teacher Moses French Quarter Fest, when you're not stage, where can we see you? What are you going to be eating? What are you going to be eating? Tell me all of that. Well, you know, first and foremost, she's going to have a <laughs> shield her from the sun. Okay, because it's everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, I'm going to have a pair of sneakers on. I'm going to have me a cute little backpack today. I got my little bag. All right. And, you know, that's how I festival anyway. But then I, I want to hit, love the music, but I think for me, French Quarter Festival, I really love the food. I try to go and check. So we just spoke about Adiz Nola, and I hadn't had a chance to to the restaurant every time I come here. But then I'm walking around, and I see Adiz. I'm searching for food. I'm trying to stay out of the sun. And when I and whenever there's an artist that I'm really interested in, I'm going to rush to that Stage. Is there somebody you're before you know it's over? And welcome back to French Quarter Fest 2024 from the Love Louisiana stage. We are live coming to you from Spanish Plaza. There is art, there is culture, there is plenty of music as you can hear on the Jack Daniel stage behind us. And another thing 
is the food. The food out here is absolutely incredible. You can smell it no matter where you are. And one of the vendors with us now is Marsalis with Wolf Burger, a food truck, actually. Appreciate you being with us. You know, when did you guys start setting up this morning? Uh, we were out here probably about 7.30. That's yeah, kind of early. Yeah, 7.30 till about 8, 30, 9 o'clock at night. And you'll just immediately start cooking. Yep, yep. Get in here, start prepping fresh, get everything hot, you know, and start rolling from there. So kind of tell me a little bit, little bit about Wolf Burger, where you guys came from and how the concept started. Um, we've been around for about four years. Uh, it's all, we do all fresh patties. We do all fresh fries, you know, mm -hmm. nothing frozen. Um, just trying to get a good burger out there. There's a lot of people yeah. that have always told me that uh, you didn't have a, a quality burger you can't find that anywhere so that was our goal that was our aim so we came out with so what is it that make y your burger that quality one um it's fresh ingredients really you know i really think the fact that we prep daily you know yeah. uh we get in in the morning and we prep we you know we twist it up about 60 pounds worth of ground beef to just go through lunch today you know and you, you guys have more than burgers too at the truck too yeah we actually do uh sometimes we do chicken sometimes we do our grilled and fried chicken offer that with, along with our burgers or uh, mm -hmm. for Lent like we were going off with our catfish sandwiches and stuff. First time vendor? First time vendor for French Quarter Fest. So what's yes. it been like to be out here? Uh, it's been awesome. It's been veg very educational <laughs> and uh, it's been fun to be a part of it and look forward to doing it some more. So you guys are set up right between basically the Four Seasons and the Aquarium at the end of yes, the canal, sir. right? Absolutely. And what, what are the price points here for the burgers? Uh, we're going, uh, our burgers start at 11 for our, just our regular yeah. cheeseburger. And then we have our uh, our barbecue burger, a black and blue burger, and a mushroom and Swiss burger. And those are going at 13. We also have cheese fries, loaded cheese fries, regular fries, stuff like that. And one of the cool things that you guys do is burgers don't have to be just that generic burger when you think of bun and a, a meat patty. Right. You can go so far beyond that, especially when you fuse it with you know, New Orleans culture. Why yeah. is that so important for you guys to do? Um, it's just being in a part of the city. It's like yeah. our black and blue. Um, it was kind of uh, inspired for me from an uh, emerald recipe for a salad uh -huh. and steak, you know, but it, it makes sense to me. But there's a lot, of, a lot of love in the city we find and trying to just spread our, you know, what we do. How much work and preparations did you guys have to do before you even started on the first day of French Quarter Fest? Uh, about four. Four days of just getting everything done. Well, you know, we're in a truck, so we had to dismantle a little Space bit of it. Space is limited. Yeah. Get it out here, you know, uh, set it all up and everything. So, yeah. What type of reaction do you get from guests who try your food for the first time? Oh, uh, well, it, it's always the same thing. Uh, people, they, they look back at me and they're, they're surprised because they thought it was just going to be a regular burger. <laughs> and then when they come back later in the day and the next day and the next day. That, that's my response that I you know, get. <laughs> you, you, you guys are first or first time here at the festival, but you're not new to New Orleans. You guys go around your breweries, your different mm -hmm. spots for lunch. Kind of, where can folks find you if they can't make it out to the festival today or tomorrow? Yeah, if you can't come out, uh, we're on, we're, we park on Poydras, uh, right in front of PJ's in the Superdome on Mondays and Fridays. We do Tulane uh, Tropical Health and or public health and tropical medicine on canal every wednesday every wednesday night we're at uh at second line brewery uh in mid city how have you seen the food truck culture really shift and change the culinary landscape here uh it's fun it's it's really nice to be able to to, to do it i think it's growing down here uh mm -hmm. got bigger regions around the country that, that it's really hitting uh, but i think it's starting to be something down here um, Pre-COVID, it was a little bit bigger. Yeah. Uh, COVID kind of took a little bit of that noise out. We're all trying to get it going again, you know. And you know, what would be your vote or your your take on the future of that scene here? Um, I only see it. The sky's the limit. You know, yeah. there's more to come. There's there's more to come from us. There's more to come. I know a lot of people that are wanting to get into the business and do the same thing. So, I think I think. A lot of people are, you know, you got to get a lot of cooks and chefs that have been working in restaurants, doing things for other people, rightfully so, and ready to start doing things for themselves. Just a testament, you can get good quality food right from a truck. Yep, for every morning, every right. day. Rosales with Wolf Burger, appreciate you being with us. I know there are a lot of food vendors out here. Come out and try one of the burgers. You won't be disappointed because it is not just your generic burger out here, especially at French Quarter Fest. Stick around because we're going to be back with so much more from French Quarter Fest 2024. 
Hi, I'm John Butte, here with my friends Greg Rolfron and Mia X. We're getting ready for French Quarter Festival, which features over 300 musical performances on more than 20 stages. Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of New Orleans music, culture, and cuisine. It all takes place April 11th through 14th. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app today. Don't miss French Quarter Festival from WWL. And welcome back to French Quarter Quest for French Quarter Fest tour. We at the Love Louisiana stage right here, sponsored by WWLTV. We're speaking with Troy Sawyer and the Elements. The Elements are, I guess, they're on a break right now. They're on a break. They're trying to get some food now. Yeah, I don't blame you. You guys opened the festival today on yes, the third did. day on the stage behind us here. Kind of run us through what that was like being out here on this gorgeous day. I just think the sunny weather makes the music sound better. It does. I don't like to play when it's cold because I'm a trumpet player and it turns the trumpet into ice. And it's hard to play a cold trumpet. So perfect weather is so beautiful. But by us being out here early yes. to open fest is an honor um, to open up the fest and set up the rest of the day. You know, I got to listen to the last part of y'all sets. I mean, it, it's this fusion of, yes. you, have, you have funk, you have soul, you right. have rock in there. Yeah. And I just saw the crowd gra started gravitating towards the stage. It's when you guys did the encore. Right. Where did this sound come from? New Orleans, being born and raised in New Orleans, and um, traveling around the world, like any type of genre of music that I'm attracted to, that I like, if it's good music, and so I fuse it all together. I don't say I'm gonna, I'm gonna write or compose music for this particular genre. I just create. So whatever comes, what comes out. So it's a gumbo and the fusion of all these different L styles and influences. Um, growing up in New Orleans. And it's really been a long for you, especially as the leader now, but you yeah. didn't start that way. I did not. I, did. I was playing with different bands before, but after Hurricane Katrina, I came to New Orleans and I decided to start my own band, step out as a band leader. So it was a Troy so your Troy, <laughs> which we were performing at the King Bowdens. It was called King Bowdens on Renaissance Bar Tiny. And so that was my first um, consistent gig Wednesday night as a band leader. You know, one thing I didn't know about you is, of course, we know you as a trumpeter, but you didn't start out that way either. You were initially in strings. Yeah, so I picked up the violin. I was in pre-K kindergarten. I played that for a couple of years, yeah. and I told my mom, I said, Ma, she said, what, boy? I said, I'm not feeling the violin. <laughs> so she said, okay, which instrument are you feeling? Do you want you want to play another instrument? And I was like, dude, but I don't know which one. But I heard this band marching down the streets of New Orleans to St. Augustine 100. And I heard this instrument, and then my mom took me to a jazz concert to hear the great Winter Sellers play. And I said, man, that's the instrument I want to play. So I picked up the trumpet in fourth grade. I've been playing it ever did, since. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Do you think you did strings because your grandfather had that yeah, violin with all Yeah, my great strong? grandfather played all of the strings, and he co-wrote songs with the great buddy but then played around time with Louis Armstrong played at Preservation Hall and so I have comes I come from a musical family yeah. and I think that's in my blood to pick up the strings and um, play around with it but I love the cello so I'm going to pick up the cello one day yeah I think you can do it but when you talk about you weren't feeling the, the strings that just goes to show you how much music is a feeling more than just a sound right yeah why is that so important in New Orleans culture guys the feeling it comes from our ancestors of the things that they have gone through and I, I feel like everywhere I travel all over the world it's nothing like a New Orleans musician because we have gone through a lot our ancestors have gone through a lot and that pain and we turn that pain into purpose and so I feel like we come in that place <laughs> of feeling of soul and the soul is your energy so our energy is really connected to the universe and people can it. I tell you, we can feel it from all the way over here while you're playing on oh, the yeah, stage. Oh, yeah, you were rocking with us? You, you rocking your soul? Yo, we, you say, <laughs> we rock, we roll, we rock, we rock your soul, yeah, right? Yeah, oh, man. And that's man. something you guys did with Doocy. Yeah, so um, I met Rock and Doocy in Paris a couple of years back. And he said, yeah, little brother, when we get yeah. back to the States, we're going to work together. And then we found uh, work together. I sat in with his band. And then um, when I started working on my album, I was at the Ellis Marcellus Center mm -hmm. for music because I live in the Musician Village. And I said, hey, Rockin', I'm over here at the Ellis Marcellus Center. I'm here on this, this track, this song. And he's like, okay, what you at? I sent it. He said, all right, I'm on my way. 
So he came through and put his verse down. He was like James Brown, the booth giving you that energy. And that's what I love about him. He has a good energy. He he's a good person and he's all about helping the next generation out. You know, you're you're no stranger to festivals, you're no stranger to music venues across right. the city. When you come to places French Quarter Fest and you see the different stages, you see the different artists, all different genres, what is it like to see that as a New Orleanian and an artist who is true to the music? It's beautiful to see people that I grew up with. When we were kids, mm -hmm. going to the Satchmo Jazz Camp, playing music as kids, but we still playing. It was refreshing actually to see some of my, um, even the, the older musicians still playing, you know, like uh, Wendell Bruni yeah. is and all the rest of them. I saw them Thursday for the kickoff ceremony. And it just, it's just refreshing. It's inspirational to keep this going because we're the ones that got to pass it down to the next generation. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, it, it makes me feel awesome. It makes me, uh, feel more inspired, keep doing what I'm doing. You know, part of what you're doing when you talk about passing things down is your, your educational components right. that you work on. How have you seen that really transform lives in the kids that you work with? Uh, so I, I started teaching in the school system after Hurricane Katrina mm -hmm. um, through this organization called Artists Corps New Orleans, which is an organization that will get professional musicians that have degrees to teach at a school that didn't have enough money in the budget to pay for a full-time music teacher. And I started teaching, and I'm all about self-expression, and then I felt like it was my responsibility to be there because those kids are looking at me, and they want something from me that I have to give. And I just kept on doing it to become a better teacher. And then I decided to step out of the system to create my own system, which is called Girls Play Trumpets 2. It's my nonprofit called Girls Play Trumpets 2. I know a lot of folks come to you for doing that. So, okay, so you just did the set. Yeah. How do you guys decompress after a set like that? Because that was a lot of energy. Oh, a lot of energy. And you know, you're almost right in the sun. You have a little there, but yeah. the crowd was rocking with you. So, yeah, you know, drinking lots of water. Gotta stay <laughs> hydrated. And then, you know, and there's a lot of energy. I have to, like, come down from this high. So now I'm calm now because it's a high when you're performing and uh, you gotta bring that energy, give the people your all, and I always give my mm -hmm. the people my all, because you never know that may be my last time performing, so you always gotta perform like your last time performing. All right, so let's talk about the fest. What are you looking forward to, food, other artists? Yeah, so um, they have a bunch of, Otidra Moses is closing out the Jack Daniel stage, and that's a friend of, um, of mine, and we go way back, mm -hmm. and like, we're gonna start working on um, some music together, so I'm, I'm eager to check her out later on. It's a lot of people. Water Seed is performing um, Sunday. I'm looking forward for my nonprofit to perform too because the girls have been practicing, rehearsing uh, for a minute to prepare for this moment. So they perform tomorrow on the okay. kids' stage from 12.15 to 1.15. Is that the one in front of the – is that where that is? I think that's the one on Decatur around like H&M. Where it's the that's right, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm excited. Even the food, I'm about to go out there and choose. See what they have to offer, you know. I, I like to eat good food. I mean, we can smell it here. I'm <laughs> sure you guys could smell it on the stage the oh, whole yeah. time. When I came out here, I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. I can't wait to eat. I can't wait and to eat off the eat stage. I before I play because I blew that food straight off it. And my band members <laughs> didn't know. Troy doesn't eat before he plays. But you know what? After he's done, he's going to oh, be hitting up all the food. In. I'm going in. I can't wait. This performance for folks who may have missed you out here today. So my next performance is... Um, we're working on something at the Columns Hotel. We got some other private gigs coming up. Um, Jazz Fest is coming up, doing a lot mm -hmm. of cameos. Um, Girls Pit Trumpets too is performing at Jazz Fest also. So yeah, just we rock, we actually like the, the world tour for my album Rock Your Soul. So that's how I to really travel around the world promoting the good news, which is the album. Roy Sawyer, we had you. Thank, we appreciate everything you've done, especially for the younger generation. So say, Troy Sawyer and Elements performing, already performed on Jack Daniels Day. Stick around with us. We have a whole lot more for you coming up on, from French Quarter Fest 2020 here at the Love Louisiana Festival. Thanks for watching no matter where you're from. And if you can get out here out and see us. Hi, I'm John Boutte. Here's my friend from Chevron and Mia X. We're getting ready for French Quarter, which features over 300 musical performances on more beaches. Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of music, culture, and cuisine. It all takes place April 11th through the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app. Don't miss French Quarter Festival from WWL. Speaking of food, one of my favorites, 
one of my favorites. Robert Harrison is joining me, yes, and I'm does. saying he's my favorite. Knows why I'm <laughs> saying he's my favorite, right? Yes, he does. He does. It's so awesome out here with you today. You, you know what? If you don't know Robert, you need to get to know him. He is of Los authentic pralines, and let me tell you, Miss Loretta, thank you. Um, you know, for obviously, and you've now taken the helm and you're moving this forward. Yes. I have to say, you have some of the most unique pralines in the city of New Orleans, and the unique beignets, by the way. Yes, we have our key. We have our famous Pauline Beignet, and this is all a legacy. My mom, we wanted to continue it, and she took two things that were so New Orleans, right. and she mashed them together. You have Pauline. And welcome back to French Quarter Fest 2024, where it is all about the music, it is all about the food, the culture, the entertainment. And with us now is one of the artists coming up at 3.30 over on the Avita stage. It is going to be Sweet Crude with us now, one of the members. It is Sam Kraft. Now, let's talk about, first of all, how you guys you know, present yourselves. You're this indie pop rock group, a lot of percussionists on the team. So how do you sell yourselves to folks who don't maybe necessarily know who you are? It's kind of tricky, and we often have to do that what you just do. Yeah. It's like, oh, you know, there's a lot of drums. We play keyboards, uh, dance around, everybody <laughs> sings. But then uh, the other point is we have to make is that most you're going to hear a lot of French when we sing because yeah. we thought, um, you know, we grew up around a lot of Cajun and Zydeco music, and there's so many people who are masterful at that. And so, But, you know, we love the Talking Heads, and we love, uh, you know, Phoenix, and we love, you know, B-52s mm -hmm. and a lot, of, a lot of quirky pop music, I guess you could say. And so we decided that we want to take that dialect that we that feels so home to us and put it in new clothes and put it in a new context. So that's kind of what it is. There's probably a much shorter way to say that, <laughs> but you could say Cajun indie pop, Louisiana French pop, something like that. We love a long version here because we love a story here in Louisiana. Awesome, so yeah. that's going to work just fine. So you guys started, what, in 2013? You dropped your first album in 2017. I don't want to say relatively new, but you guys have been around long enough to have a journey in this. How has that been for you guys? Man, it still feels very new, and we still feel like it's kind of an experiment because every time we go out on the stage, we're doing this thing that, I don't know, we don't see it very much, which is, mm -hmm. which is Louisiana French, typically here in Cajun. Asian music, yeah. Zydeco music, we're putting it in this pop context, still feels very fresh, and every time we write a new song, it's like, is this going to work? Let's try this, let's try that. And I got to say, it's been pretty well received uh, for the most part, that weird amount of salesmanship. We used to feel like, every I used to like every time I go on the mic, I'm like, hey everybody, we're Sweet Crude, we're from New Orleans, you're going to hear yeah. a little French, a little bit of English, uh, uh, you, you, hopefully you'll get used to it. <laughs> but now I feel like that I wouldn't have to do that anymore. And I feel like when we go places, that story is just embedded in the music. Yeah. And I feel like it's been going pretty well, and we're very fortunate to be invited again to play French Quarter Fest. And sort of like, um, this is a huge point of pride for us to be able to play on such an awesome stage. And uh, yeah, we're happy to do it. And it, yeah, it still it feels great. How do you decide on a set list? <laughs> well, you know, we, we're at a festival. We want it to be lively. We want yeah. it to be exciting. We, we had actually a lot of brooding, dark stuff. Uh, especially through the pandemic, that was a weird time. So with all that, we try not to linger too much on the minor keys, too much on the sad. Um, so we, we decide on some upbeat stuff in our catalog. We play some choice, cover material. Maybe mm -hmm. we touch a traditional Cajun song that we've uh, updated, brought to new life. Um, but basically, we just want to get the crowd hyped. You know, what is it like as an artist to look around at a festival like this and you see so many different stages, so many different genres of artists coming through this festival, all really celebrating one thing, and that is the culture and the music of this city in southeast Louisiana. It's awesome. We're so glad to be a part of that context. And we're just telling a, one little sliver of that story, mm -hmm. which is the current state of Louisiana French. And so we're we're so glad to be just like in the same on the same uh, stage that like yeah. you know you might see an Irma Thomas or a Dixie Cups or something like that. Um, that's a, a huge honor. It's a huge um, I don't know. We're humbled by that. And do you draw your inspiration from those other artists like those legendaries? Absolutely, ones absolutely. You know, we try not to do like too close to the sun because <laughs> I mean we don't want to feel like that we're appropriating that. Right. But we can't help but be influenced by brass band music by the soul of New Orleans, soul music of New Orleans, by jazz and all that, and all, and all the above. Uh, we can't help but put that in our music in our own way and bring that energy to the stage. I know you guys want, you said you want to hype the crowd during yes. your set list. So how do you hype yourselves up, but also on the back end, decompress after a set like that? Oh my goodness. So we like to, before the set, okay, we all get in a circle. It's very weird. I'd be, I'd be uh, a little bit embarrassed if I ever got on camera uh, on WWL, but we can make uh, it happen. We can make that happen. We all get in a circle and we all do kind of an improv theater game where we all just like 
hoop and holler and make mm -hmm. noises together and just shake out all the nerves and stuff like that because it is tense leading right up to the yeah. stage and the hustle to get on stage uh, at a festival. So we, uh, we make our noises, we shake all of our tension out and then we go on stage and just get weird. And we try to do, we try to teach the crowd a little bit of French, you know, even if it's like, allez, or on est paré, which means we're ready. You know, like, allez, let's go, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And we can kind of use our identity and use the, and uh, blend that with the crest energy to kind of make something happen together. But really, even if you don't know French or Cajun French, you can relate to it because you're it all the time. I mean, I just I walk around and say "c'est bon," like yes, it's nobody's bon. business. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Les les bon temps roulés. You know, we all say "lagnab." We all say "this buku that." So we know these words and these phrases, yeah. even if we think we don't. Exactly. We have a song about that. It's we have a sweet crude mm -hmm. featuring Big Frida. Where we that, just, I was going to ask you guys about that. Yeah, your, your so team we, we that. did a collab with Big Frida, harping on and like embracing all of those token words and all yeah. of our vocabularies that we all say. And so, uh, you know, we want to embrace that, even if it's just those little phrases that we have from the, that are just lingering in our vocabulary. Let's lean into that. Let's use those as much as we can. And it shows you the uniqueness of the culture when it comes to the music here. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's what makes Louisiana exceptional uh, compared to the rest of uh, mm -hmm. what we have around us is that we have this this interesting heritage and so we want to celebrate that in our own little indie pop kind of way and uh, we think that Louisiana can stay on the map that way in a global context because the global French speaking world has Louisiana as, a, as its own uh, little vacation as its own island uh, culturally unto itself that they can be like oh my goodness how is this still happening how is this working what you know so it makes Louisiana fascinating I think. it works here for sure yeah. any artists that you guys are excited to see from your uh, own standpoint well we just saw Dixie Cups and that's what we we're most excited to see today I think I think they they really like embrace the soul nuance yeah. that, that's what's happening today that we were uh, super excited about so yeah I mean um, there, there's there's uh, this this festival has so much to offer and so you know we're grateful and also for the food you know we're so we're so looking forward to that every time it's like we want more time here we want to be able to stay out longer and longer we do have to be at our stage at a certain time reporting for duty so uh that's just awesome we're so glad to be here and being interviewed for wwl i mean you know uh, we all kind of as a group leaned on wwl mm -hmm. during katrina we lean on wwl now we go to wwltv.com look at that <laughs> radar thank you so much wwl for giving us amazing weather i'm telling you the music just yeah. sounds better when the weather is good <laughs> yeah y'all y'all did that uh, you know in terms of like how we you know depend on y'all for disseminating this information and helping us decide what to do what to wear uh so we're so grateful to be here today well, we're happy to do it i know you have to report for duty soon so yes, we'll let sir. you get yes, to sir. it same craft with sweet crude gonna thank be you, looking forward to seeing you guys over on the uh beta stage here in just a little bit so awesome. get to it thank Sam, you appreciate so it. much mike as appreciate always it. we're gonna have so much more for you coming up on wwl plus uh, coming from the french quarter fest 2024 right here at the love louisiana uh, festival our stage in spanish plaza stick around we're back later and speaking of food one of my fav one of my favorites robert harrison is joining me yes, and i'm does. saying he's my favorite Who knows why i'm saying he's my favorite right yes he does he does it's gonna be out here with you today you, you know what if you don't know robert you need to get to know him he is of loretta authentic pralines and let me tell you miss loretta thank you um you know thinking obviously and you've now taken the helm and you're moving this forward i have to say you have some of the most unique pralines in the city of new orleans and the unique beignets by the way yes we have our crabbing we have our famous Pauline beignet and this was all a legacy my mom we wanted to continue it and she took two things that were Pauline's right. and she mashed them together you have the Pauline filling Pauline and then we have the nerve to do powdered sugar on top oh yes amazing look you know one of my favorite things is sweet potato cookies oh yes yes and we have that we also have our shoe sole our Pauline cookie and our original Pauline. I'll tell you this, now that you guys are moving forward, I know that you're very busy, still yes. busy. Any major changes that are happening right now? Something new you introduced to the menu see at French Quarter Fest? So we also have our Pauline Chou Soul, which is a pastry made of cinnamon sugar, a little bit of pecans and cinnamon on it. We also have our world famous, pictured here, Ooh. stuffed crab meat. Okay. And we do that with lump jumbo crab meat a little bit of awesome sauce okay and we just throw the holy trinity it's just you know so what? awesome you make sure you stop by and you get you some robert thank you for joining us and taking a picture over at the wwl yes, love yes, louisiana yes. tell everybody to come on out oh please come on out first quarter fest 2020 the right. hi i'm john Boutier here with my friend from chevron and mia x 
we're getting ready for French Quarter, which features over 300 musical performances on 20 stages. Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of Charlotte's music, culture, and cuisine. It all takes place April 11th, 14th. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and hold the free app today. Don't miss French Quarter Festival in WL. I tell you what, best. The clouds have moved. It's a beautiful day. Chef Jimmy, always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you, sir. It's always a pleasure to be out here. The, uh, Chef, you're the Creole Concepts business. I don't think folks realize how many are involved with Creole Concepts. And you're the executive banquet chef now. Sir, so we've got about 40 locations throughout the city, Metairie and one in Mississippi. And then we have four or five facilities that do special events, weddings, banquets. Uh, and so I run all those ones. And you're representing Kingfish too. Yeah, so Kingfish on Charter Street, 337, uh, this is one of their signatures. It's a crackling nacho, and this is actually what we're going to be serving at the festival. Now, now, up with this, because this is something, Paul, are you going to be able to come get a shot of this? You have to describe exactly what is in. I'm not sure who came up with it originally, but I have a feeling it was somebody that might have been drinking, cook food for something like this today. It's a, a big boat full of pork rind cracklings with some Creole seasoning on it. And then you have a Carolina gold mustard barbecue pork. And then it's smothered in piece queso. And then it's topped with a, a poblano pio and some green onions and a little bit of sour cream to finish it. But it is just, I mean, it is the perfect food for a festival. It, just, it goes great with a good, you know, with a good beer. It goes great hanging out in the eating it. And you're doing, besides this, you have something else at the booth, right? We're also going to do our duck our duck gumbo uh, at the booth as well. A duck and andouille gumbo with uh, popcorn rice. Uh, this crackling, the slow-cooked pork on it. It's a, it, it, uh, I know this is a crazy question, but in preparing, I think everybody has in their mind, oh, yeah, I'm a booth at the festival. Oh, it's easy to do. But this takes a long time operation, and and the weather's going to be good. So you're going to be doing a lot. Yeah, we've been uh, we we cooked several hundred pounds of pork. Uh, we've got gallons worth of pimento cheese queso. Uh, we've been doing this for, for a while now. I know we've been talking and meeting with French Quarter Fest for several months. I know French Quarter Fest have been planning it for probably since the end of last year. Uh, but it's it's a lot of fun out here. Beautiful weather. Louisiana music, food, local artists, you know, it's, it's a really is a fun week for locals to come down and see. Are you going to get a chance to go see any of their music or are you looking forward to seeing? I'm hoping to see Big Frida and Tank and the Bangas. Okay, that'll be a nice combination. But I tell you, this is something where you got to take credit for this, okay? Since we don't know who exactly came up, I think you, because... I, 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 I know you had some influence with this because you like sweet and savory. Oh, absolutely. And I know you, because I, I think of you as a king. So to put the mango in the in the sauce, that'll give it that sweet pop with that slow roasted pork. Yeah, it's great. It's, you've got ice, you've got salty, you've got roasty pork, you've got sweetness. Uh, it, it works really well. Like I said, it's a great afternoon uh, dish. We do it at Kingfish on all day long, but especially at happy hour. So would it be ill of me and don't talk, don't, don't don't talk about me at home what i'm about to say what about taking some of this crackling and, and dropping it in the gumbo uh, i love that idea i think actually if you dipped the crack into the gumbo and kind of used it like a spoon that's the way to go yes yes that is definitely the way to go gang we've got a lot of food coming up we're going to have music coming up for being here at the river Peyton, tell us how the weather's going to be, please. Hi, I'm John Boutier, here with my friends, Greg Rowan and Mia X. We're getting ready for French Quarter Festival, which features over 300 musical performances on more than 20 states. Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of New Orleans music and cuisine. It all takes place April 11th through 14th. Get you at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app today. Don't miss French Quarter Festival from WWL. Welcome back. We are live at French Quarter Fest. Day two is the best day. 
We're at the WWL TV Love Louisiana stage at Spanish Plaza. The French Quarter Fest has expanded to Spanish Plaza this year. It just keeps getting bigger. Go off. And I'm joined by People Museum. You guys, the time you came on the morning show, we were like blown away. We weren't sure what to expect. <laughs> it was like, they are so good. So first of all, introduce yourself and then how this came about. Hi, I'm Charles. I'm playing bass in Tuba. Awesome. I'm Jeremy Phipps. And trombone for People Museum. <laughs> I'm Aaron Boudreau. I'm playing drums, making my conducting debut. Oh, today. oh yeah! And I cannot believe this is your for French Quarter Fest. Yeah, excited. What took us so long to get you guys? Good question. I wish I knew the answer. <laughs> yeah. Who knows how the industry works sometimes? You know, we're here. So yeah. And you guys are going to be playing right behind us at the Jack Daniels stage at 3:30. Cannot wait for that. You guys are so unique. You're so, a low pop, and I had never even heard of that, but it just stops you. And you're tr that is so cool. There's no bands like that around here. Probably not a ton in the world. So, how did you guys even get into this? I think that we just, I, we kind of like all collectively pop music, and then we're just from Louisiana. So, like, things that we have access to are like tubas and trombones and like all, all types of influences so okay. that's that's what i think i mean there is definitely like a community in the city that makes this type of music for sure um i think just the addition of the horns and like you know yeah. especially when charles entered with the tuba and all this stuff i think that that's sort of solidified our identity in that sort of electro pop with horns jeremy calls it new orleans okay that's his that. like you know his coins <laughs> term which i think is perfect so yeah. how did you guys all get together though and how do you i always want to know where the name come from oh the i i i can name okay no no okay. big deal <laughs> <laughs> no um i was in i was living in la for like a year okay and then out there they have the vmas mm -hmm. and at the vmas um a bunch of people outside the like the big stadium window and why the stars like go from their dressing rooms and it's like a thing out that i like i never seen before but i i made a joke to a friend of mine and i was like it's like a dim because you're like <laughs> behind this glass or whatever and yeah. um, i don't know i thought it was funny yeah and i was like oh that could be a band name at some point but then like years we um we started the band i love it yeah and do you guys are you best are you kind of like Brothers, where it's like, all right, dude, I just need the day. Yeah, yeah, it's the worst. <laughs> it's the worst. No, we're, we're we're pretty tight. Yeah, for sure. Everybody is cool. I I look up to everybody in the band. Oh, I feel nice. like I learn them. Yeah. You know, constantly. It just it, it keeps it keeps all just engaged and it keeps me young as the elder band. <laughs> the elder. Charles is the elder from Oh my Charles gosh. Charles has Let everybody he know. Is, Charles yeah. has no age. That is true. He's, he's 8 14 at the same time. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so you're an old soul, but you're all fun. And I love your glasses too. I love the blue. Mm -hmm. Just pops. He's got this. You got to tell me about the mustache too. What is there to so say? Incredible. I mean, look. No, I'm asking like, is it like a playoff mustache or this is all the time? Oh, oh my yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're Okay. Let it, <laughs> Let it be playoffs, known. Baby. <laughs> Let it be known. This is I come from a long lineage of proud Cajun men. Okay. This is genetics. This is not. This is not a costume. This is my a part of my identity. It's a way of life. I so. love it. I love it. Talk a little bit about Claire, who's not here right now because she's getting ready for your performances pretty soon. Claire is the singer. Also, she writes all the lyrics and she also helps produce. She is an amazing singer, amazing person, and she's from Louisiana. Upstate? Yeah, we're all from <laughs> Louisiana in some way. I'm from New Orleans, Lute, yeah. Lafayette, respective, respectively. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And um, you and Claire actually got together originally. You were writing together, and then the whole group came about. Yeah. Um, okay. it, it started off with me and Claire. It was, like, in the neighborhood. We I met through, like, a friend of mine. And, like, yeah, we did songs the same day that we okay. met. Um, and then we started the project, like, immediately. And so, like, we kind of, like, as friends as, as doing it. And then, yeah, and all the grown as friends, like, doing this, really. Um, and at what, I mean, you guys are such a big deal now. Like, when did that happen? Because we'll have to know, um, and it's like, oh, my God, we just blew up last night. Like, yeah. what was the moment for y'all that people ri you were like, oh, people know who we are now. You know? I mean, it, it would be really nice to say that there was, like, this thing that, I don't know, it's just being a part of a scene, 
being a part of a community and shows with other bands and sure. kind of sticking to what you do and grow. And I mean, Jeremy and Claire had other iterations of this band, but we were in it. So there was a lot of morphing and I don't know, it'd be cool if one singular like, oh, we were in a Amazon commercial, but, but we're just, we're still growing. And, and um, if you stick with something that you believe is great and you stay true to your heart, then, then it's gonna, Eventually, people notice of that, and, and we, we're lucky to have a good crowd of people who so. Yeah. Of course, we're at the French Quarter Fest, but what was it like last year getting out to play Jazz Fest for the first time? Oh, that was amazing. Because yeah. Jazz is like, I've been watching Jazz Fest my whole life. It, it was a bucket list thing for me personally. Awesome. Um, yeah. Cool, because we also were on a little kind of northeast and the west coast okay. Jazz Fest fell right in the middle. So we was like gone, perfect. yeah, weeks, and we came home, played Jazz Fest, and then took off again. And wow, and you guys are going to start touring again late summer. Tell me a little bit, Relic, I know this is something you took your time on, you had been working on it since after Hurricane Ida, was sort of the whole inspiration behind it, or it was just like the timing you had some down to? Yeah, I would say that was definitely a part of um, a, a part of it, because the whole album, the theme of it is like flood and like rebuilding. Re rejuvenating um, and yeah so I would say yeah, yeah I mean re yeah th that whole time of being like split up and sort of I mean every, every through it you know it was crazy um, that was definitely a big inspiration Blair always says it's kind of a love letter to New Orleans and we always wow. about New Orleans as being this place that we like love so much but it's like it's challenging it's, it's like an uncle that you have that's like <laughs> you love him but but shows up to some of the functions maybe maybe it's chaotic you know but, okay. but you can't help but love you know that's the relationship we tend to have in south louisiana with where they're from because of the weather and yeah. um, so that was ida was the big start of, of that whole problem and then coming back together and finishing it was really fun and so, you yeah. told me that's part actually writing i mean yeah for making music and performing is I know that probably sounds obvious, I don't know, to people who aren't musicians. There's so much behind the scenes, and yeah. it's got to be so hard to, like, turn it on every night. You know, everybody's got a bad day, but you can't have a bad day. Like, this might be the only time this fan comes to your house. So you have to give it 110% every time. Yeah, Thank you for wrong. saying that. Yeah. <laughs> Figured us all out so fast. You did your research. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Claire will be. We will beat the sound engineer at to the venue. Loading it, it so the way is way better than being late. So we, <laughs> yeah. that is sure. not that is not a flaw that you're, and we love it, and it's it's great. It's all about time. But Claire's always punk. I guess I'm a bit of a clown. Charles is the goblin. Charles will just start. We call him the as an energy when he's in the van on tour. We'll just get on some crazy questions. And yeah. He, he's an so awesome energy. Yeah. Time, you know what I mean? Really yeah. feel like the genuine care. And the yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna mention you. You do some in the relic um, on your album, the voice that. Explain that to me. Oh yeah, so it that was that was the idea, um, okay. but I just recorded my dad talking. I actually had a list of questions I asked him, and um, yeah, and it was just. It, it was funny because like my my dad we we don't the things it was stuff that I had never even asked him so it was why she, why he was explaining oh, I've never heard you talk about that so it was it was a very interesting like beautiful experience for me as well um, I felt like close to my dad in some ways but then um, yeah we we chopped that conversation up and yeah and we put it on it and he's also like a really big people museum support. He, he comments on all the uh, yeah. social media and posts. He loves it just as much as you do. Yeah. I mean, well, he, and, well, and he, I do think we have a position open if Claire's interested. Oh, you know, she can oh. do both. Yeah, I mean, okay. she sounds yeah. like pulled it out of her. Oh, yeah. I mean, That's yeah. the magic yeah. of Claire, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a story, though, about Jeremy's no, dad with here. the... With Oh, so I I was like, I'm not going to tell them until we release the album. And then we released it. And I was like, Dad, you heard of, you heard the album? And he was like, oh, yeah. And I was like, did you notice anything? Like, <laughs> and I was just like, he was like, it was like, that's you talking. No, he was like, that's me. And, and like, Probably, like, he never heard his voice. Okay. Yeah, he never heard, like, I mean, 
he had no clue. Like, like, his voice, so he didn't even know it was him. <laughs> and it's, so he's like, oh, I gotta go. And then, you know, he was like bragging to his, um, to his friends and stuff. Like, you know, he was like, oh, but, but yeah, it was funny. <laughs> I did not expect that out of the We were on tour at a Mexican restaurant in the middle of like 10 or something. Yeah. And Jeremy goes on the phone. He was like, y'all never believe this. My dad, no, that was him. He was listening to it. Behind the music, baby. Yeah, there we go. Speaking of which, like, where do you see you, you just so fast? Where do you see you guys in a year and ten years? Ooh, that's such a good question. Actually, it was two. I, I have an answer. <laughs> so let's say next year, this time, uh -huh. we'll still be the Super Fest. We'll do Jazz Fest, but maybe we all do Bonnaroo. Oh, hey. You know, maybe we pop over to Europe, do a couple of those festivals. Okay. You know, we'll have a couple pockets, like in L.A., where we can some big rooms in New York, you know, handpick some cities and grow sure. some communities. Because it's such a, you, you guys are so talented and it's so unique. I think that would definitely like, to hire somebody full time to be doing that for y'all. Oh, we, yeah, have. we have a great team. We do have a team of people okay. working with us that, yeah, <laughs> definitely with UTA and, and um, it was really great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Los Angeles, those city, we, we've kind of built up some, some audiences outside of Louisiana and we're trying to just like, you know, cater to those cities, the people who, who showed up on tour and do that. And yeah, Europe would be great. I mean, we've always wanted to you know, our take the show on. Former co-anchor, Sheba's in LA. I'm sure she would have you guys on the morning oh, show. Yeah. Come on. We need to set that up. We need to set that up. Yeah. up. Sheba. We need you always coming. Of course. That's one thing about this festival, French Quarter Press, over 300 performances, 200 different artists, all local, 100%. That's insane. That's the, they make it a priority to do that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, um, yeah, it's so unique to New Orleans. I mean, we have so much talent here. It's like and, uh, super insane. Sometimes I say, man, it is like. But there's so many different venues. Yeah. I mean, we should talent. There's so many awesome places to play here. Yeah. Yeah. What do you want to know coming out three thirty this afternoon? Um, Which is quick. Oh, Thank yeah. you guys so much for your time. Oh. Yeah. I want you to know that we had coffee. We <laughs> all ate. We are ready to We're ready. give you a show. 1,000%. Yeah. You're at home watching this. You, you got time. You yeah. definitely have plenty of time. Yeah. I think we have we played outdoors since last year's yeah. Jazz Fest. Oh, yeah. No, it's been oh, a while. Wait, yeah. it's so been sorry a I didn't bit. think to ask your challenges of the venue. Oh, no. <laughs> it's more it's such a beautiful place. It's a gorgeous place. Pretty much yeah. indoors. People yeah. can hear the music from afar and come up and sure. discover. I know you're going to be pulling people from the French Quarter. Yeah. 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 Everybody coming over here. Spanish Plaza. Just so you know, it has expanded to Spanish Plaza. Jack D. H. It's an amazing, amazing stage. Thank you guys so much for your time. Yeah, People you. Thank Museum, fantastic. If you don't know anything about them, crawl out of that hole you're living. Definitely yeah. stream their music because they're amazing. Hi, I'm John Boutier. Friends, Greg Grohl from Chevron and Mia X. We're getting ready for French Quarter Festival, which features over 300 musical performances on more than 20 stages. Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of New Orleans music, culture, and cuisine. It all takes place April 11th through 14th. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app today. Don't miss French Quarter Festival from WWL. Day three of French Quarter Fest on the way, everybody, and we are so excited to be bringing you more artists. Interview Love Louisiana stage here in Spanish Plaza. Join me now, a girl I have been waiting to interview since I first heard Be Your Girl years ago. Tidra Moses, body. hello, beautiful. Hey, Davey, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you, French Quarter Fest? Happy French Quarter Fest. And I am so glad that you are performing at French Quarter Fest and sitting down with us here in our love Louisiana. A little birdie told me this is your first year performing at Quarter Fest. You're performing tonight, 6.40 p.m. the Jack Daniel stage. Talk to me about this performance. How does it feel to be here for the first time performing? It is awesome. It's awesome. You know, I live right up the street. I got a house right up the street. So it's like, I just come on down here and perform for the people. But anything, I love this city. And for a long time, my hard work to get a chance to be shown here. So I feel really good that I'm able to do it. It's um, a great festival, such a massive festival. Absolutely, and you're closing out stage tonight. Some people may call that the headliner. All right. 
person, okay? <laughs> and I love that you're going to be doing it because you're a New Orleans girl. You're from here. You started at Bonneville for a while. Shout out to Jefferson Parish. Jefferson Parish. And I heard your sound check earlier. You sound absolutely great. But let me tell you, everybody, a song I was hearing was that classic Be Your Girl. Talk to me about some of the songs you're going to be performing for us tonight. You know, I really just wanted to um, show my influence from the city you know what I mean and for me the influence from the city so many different things it's rhythms it's gospel it's a lot of things hip-hop you know what I mean which is something I think that sometimes get overlooked for New Orleans and learn most of my hip-hop being here as a child you know what I mean and um, so I'm gonna explore all those different sounds that influence me as a girl. that's that's my goal is to explore all those sounds and those co that come within the written Absolutely. You know, I say all the time, the crowd at French Quarter, it's a special crowd. You came for the first time last year as a person who was just checking out all the music, and now you're going to be on stage. What are you hoping for from that crowd tonight who's going to come see Moses? Just reception and energy, you know, because I'm going to pour myself out. I don't know any other way. Two people, if it's 10,000, I pour myself out. So just the energy. What you give me, I'm going to give you back that. 10 million times Absolutely. over. Yeah. And we're going to give you energy. I love it. And I mentioned it earlier, but I remember when I first heard Be Your Girl, and I was like, uh uh, wait a <laughs> minute. I'm not a woman, but I understand what she's saying. You right, know what I'm right, saying? Right. And then K Tronada remix came out. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So much. Tell me a little bit more about that song, Be Your Girl, because if you all don't know, celebrating. 20 years this year. Yes, the original is celebrating 20 years this year. My first debut album, Complex Simplicity, is celebrating 20 years this year. And um, to be honest, Kate Trinata and I'm up with that record somewhere around 2012. So it was well after the album was already yeah. out. And, you know, it was just a connection. And that's why I love DJs, because DJs need your life, you know. And he made a record for me that changed everything, or attention to everything outside of that record, you know. So, yeah, Be A Girl is just... I think it's one of those records, like a maze record, or one of those records is gonna live forever. And I'm just grateful to be a vessel for it because Absolutely. I didn't know that was when I when I made it. <laughs> and that's what's so great about the song because mention the original came out in 2004, then yeah. the case of Nada came out around 2012. 2012 yeah. Talk to me about that 2004 song when you first heard it, when you first recorded it. Did you think it was be the song that it was? I or didn't. that it is, right? I didn't. I didn't think. Well, when you're a new artist, you don't think about what is going to perform and what's not going to perform. You're just pouring yourself out. And I had a crush on this guy. This really massive Did crush. Did we all, baby? Did we all? <laughs> Stale them. Stale them. <laughs> Have a crush on him no more. I, I had a crush on this guy, and I just wrote it from the perspective of if he was in my hood, you know, and how I would feel. And I was so shy. I was such a big crush when I was younger, you know. And so I was just really, really shy. And I wrote it from a perspective of if I could him, how I felt. And I think that's an eight to eighty subject matter, you know. Everybody relate to that. Absolutely. And whether it's 2004 or 2024, that's what's so about this song. It still resonates today. And baby, you are still making you. You actually have a song that just came out last month in March. My boy, Pell. Yeah. Talk to me about this record. Yeah. Come run home mm -hmm. is what it's called. And I love Pell, first of me all. Too. He's a really, really talented artist that is so diverse mm -hmm. in his ways. It's not like stuck to like one way of doing uh, music. I was interested in working with him. And then I would see him out and I'd be like, hey, blah, 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 whatever. We kind of just would see each other. And one day he hit like, yo, I want you to get on the record. And I was in Miami at the time. And I said, I can't really get out there. He just sent it to you. And we just worked like that. We collaborated like that. And it came out really, really wonderful. I love that record. You know, it's a jam because if you all don't know Pell, he's a rapper. He's a DJ. well-rounded artist. He even sings a bit. He does yeah. sing as well. I interviewed him before. And boy, can he do a little something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Pell I got appreciate it. that you're still working, that you're still making music. What does the future for Teacher Moses look like? It's really cool, you know, to be 20 years after my debut album and still doing it. And, and still able to do it at a nice level. You know what I mean? And so the future for me is we're putting out a new within the next month. Okay. I want to say it's May, May something. Yeah, uh, I'm not good with the dates. That's okay, it's a locked date, but I can't. But in spring. May, we have a sometime in spring, yes. Um, in May, we're going to put out a record called With All My Heart, which is a very good, beautiful acoustic record, but the words aren't very acoustic. You know, if, yeah, I can't really get into it too deep, but with all my heart. Someone hurt me with all my heart and. Now I want to express well, with listen, all my heart I how I feel about that. Well, show here on WWL, Great Day Louisiana. When that record comes oh, yes. out, baby, you have to come. 
come on. Oh, yes. Oh, us. yes. So, oh, yes. <laughs> can I ask you this? You know, I have one more question for you. We're at French Quarter Festival. The music is great. The weather is going to be beautiful yes. this weekend. I know you're going to be serving us a look for Already. sure. How does Cedra Moses French Quarter Fest, when you're not going to stage, where can we see you? What you going to be eating? What you going to be drinking? Tell me that. Well, you know, first and foremost, she's going to have a happy <laughs> shield her from the sun. Okay, because it's like everybody. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm going to have a pair of sneakers on. I'm going to have me a cute little backpack today. I got my Louis Vuitton backpack. All right. That's how I festival anyway. But then I, I want to hit, I love the music. I think for me, French Quarter Festival, I really love the food. So I go and check. So we just spoke about Adi's Nola, and I hadn't had a chance to get her to the restaurant every time I come here. But then I'm walking around and I snow So I'm searching for food. I'm trying to stay out of the sun. And whenever there is a, a artist that I'm really interested in, I'm going to rush to that stage. Is there anybody you're most interested in seeing? You know, we still have two days to check out a lot of great music. And if not here right now, who's this you're listening to right now? Who's in Tidra Moses's like music, Spotify, YouTube music, whatever platform you use? You know, um, as far as the artists here that I want to see, I'm not really sure there's so many. I have to kind of like narrow it down because well, yeah, I have to get out of here. Yeah, so, but uh, as far as who I'm listening to, I love Keon Dixon. I don't know if you heard of him. He's a soul singer. He's an independent. I'm pro independent artist because I'm. Indi I love Keon Dixon. Um, there's so many different people. Lucky Day, who's also from New Orleans, and I think people don't know he's from Louisiana. Um, uh, who else am I listening to? Kyle, I haven't heard. Oh, baby, I haven't. Gonna listen to that. We okay. Wrap this up. Okay. okay all right. Our dance. But before we listen to all of that, Cowboy Carter, we're listening to Tidra Moses, everybody. 6.40 p.m. right behind us at the Jack Daniels. She's our girl. She's my girl. <laughs> and you are that girl. Tidra, thank you so much for thank being you, here. Thank you, baby. I appreciate um, you so uh, much. We're getting ready for a French Quarter Festival. Presented by Chevron, it all takes place April 11th through 14th. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app today. From WWL, Louisiana. And today kicks off day two. We can expect to see a lot of great men. And Colleen Seeley talked with uh, Louisiana Zydeco Legend Jr. and Miss Louisiana USA. But we'll be a weekend long at the fest. All right, y'all. I'm back, back, baby. Let me dust this thing off. Critters. Let's do this. First of all, and this weekend I have rock inducing jigger. Well, this weekend, as everybody knows, it's been a favorite free festival, French Quarter Fest. And also, my weekend, I'll be in Lafitte at the Seafood Festival on Saturday, 4 to 5.30. But then Sunday, French Quarter Fest, one of my favorite festivals. Everybody come down. We're going to have a good time. We're going to Leslie Bonton Roulé on stage, 6.40 to 8. Ain't no better way to close French Fest than the Dukes away because we're going to shock a lock a rock a And if you know, uh, Dude, the party never stops. Do you ever get tired? I never, never get tired. I sleep for about three hours, then I get up, I work out, then I. That's 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 the life of the rock. That's the life. That's how. Thank you so much, dude. For Thanks for having me. And look, us. Colleen didn't finish the splits. It's hard to do splits on the concrete, but I'll do it for y'all on Sunday. Let's play, John. Oh, not me, not me. I'm not musically inclined. Well, try this. I bet you got it. Got it. Come on, Miss Louisiana. Well, good. <laughs> That was so much fun. I like how you dubbed in your musical part. Oh, yeah. Tell me for my music before I no, no. got on the news. No, dubbed in the music for No, it. I'm kidding. See, he, he, he was he, being mean and you were ready to yeah. be nice and just talk story. You know what? My Anyways. people will take up for me. So if you're watching, everybody pulls and tell them your email. <laughs> Run the inbox. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. Uh, and you should you should play with this band. Yeah, I've done before. Have you? I Rock and Bowl. Yeah, oh, years cool. ago, over a decade ago, actually. But you know, we all treat you like the king here, okay. right? 
I mean, do you feel like we? Oh, well, go ahead. Let's take a look at what Doozy has to say. We have missed the Louisiana. Hey, 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 hey. So, like. Colton might have a problem with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We better not tell Eric. Eric thinks he ain't a man, but I'm the Louisiana man. Eric, because I was born of you. <laughs> so now you get your starting a little drama this morning with the boys. You know, I, I did the story on his dad, and he had a big record out, so I, I've known uh, Doozy for a long time. All right, and, and it was fun. I'm, I'm glad you're in film with those pieces. Yeah, yeah. they're great. That was, you're going to talk to Miss uh, Louisiana USA yeah. coming up. She was newly crazy ago, yeah, so I'll sit down with her, her for next week, so it'll be next Friday's segment. Good, looking forward Will to it. Will Alexa on that one, too? No. Oh, good. I'm, I'm <laughs> wow. Not too bad. I'll see you more, Holly, and goodness. <laughs> And there's so much more that you Hi, I'm John, my friends, Greg Grove from Chevron and Mia X. We're at French Quarter Festival, which features over 300 musical performers on more than 20 stages. Chevron is proud to support the whole, a celebration of New Orleans music, culture, and cuisine. It all plays April 11 through 14. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.com and download the free app today. Don't miss French Quarter Festival from WL. And speaking of food, one of my favorites, one of my favorites, Robert Harrison is joining me. And I'm saying he's my favorite. Malik knows why I'm saying he's my favorite, right? Yes, he does. He does. It's so awesome to be out here with you today. You, you know what? If you don't know Robert, you need to get to know him. He is of Loretta's Authentic Pralines. And let me tell you, Miss Loretta, thank you, um, you know, thinking of her, obviously. And you've now taken the helm and you're moving this forward. Yes. I have to say, you have some of the most unique pralines in the city of New Orleans and the unique beignets, by the way. Yes, we have our crab beignet. We have our famous Pauline beignet, and this was all a, a legacy. My mom, we wanted to continue it, and she took two things that were so New Orleans, right. and she mashed them together. You have the Pauline filling, Pauline icing, and then we have the nerve to do powdered sugar on top. Oh, yes. It's yeah. so amazing. Look, you know, one of my favorite things is sweet potato cookies. Oh, yes. Yes, and we have that out here. We also have our shoe sole, our proline cookie, and our original proline. I will tell you this. Now that you guys are moving forward, I know that you're very busy, staying really busy. Any major changes that are happening right now? Something new you introduced to the menu that we'll see at French Quarter Fest? So we also have our proline shoe sole, which is a flat pastry made of cinnamon sugar, a little bit of pecans and cinnamon on it. We also bought out our world famous, pictured here, Ooh. stuffed crab meat beignet okay and we do that with lump jumbo crab meat a uh -huh. little bit of awesome sauce okay and we just throw the holy trinity in there it's just you know so what? awesome you make sure you stop by and you get you some robert thank you so much thank for you. joining us and taking a picture over at the wwl yes, love louisiana yes, yes. say tell everybody to come on out oh please come on out first quarter fest 2024 right. on the wwl tv app Breaking news. We're following break Jefferson Parish. Local weather. We are expecting an active weather day, so make certain weather aware. Original stories. It's a story you'll only see on Dev TV. Impactful investigations. Changes are happening after a WW investigation. The latest from the field. We are live in Covington with oh. And it was a high drama day in the Superdome. Download the WLTV app. Many know him as Roger Dickerson. I'm a good 34 year <laughs> playing these songs and trying to pe make, make people shake their butts. But most is DJ Raj Smooth. As a part of the French Quarter Fest board, he's played a major role in bringing DJ stage to life. I definitely think it's going to be a great addition to the French lineup just because, you know, it's, it's a party and what's the party without it's an idea that was easy to get behind for the stage sponsor, Postagen Solar. Hearing Raj Smoove and his, how he's curating this was really inspiring. And for DJs like Jessica But you can call her DJ Jess. Performing as a solo act was a dream that she's now living. It's just, it doesn't seem that long to me compared to some of the other DJs that I know. So I'm excited to just be um, considered for it. For both these putting
And welcome back to French Quarter Fest 2024, yeah. coming to you live from the WWL Love Louisiana stage right here in Spanish Plaza. Now, whether you're here for the culture, whether you're here for the music, which is going on behind us right now at the Jack Daniel stage, or you come for the art, it's uh, the food that a lot of folks really come out and want to try experience some new things, maybe get some of the old favorites. We're going to really highlight three of them now with three beautiful women, all part of a nonprofit organization that really helps entrepreneurs capitalize on their talents here at the festival. So I want to start with you and tell me a little bit about the organization, introduce yourself and how it came to be. Yeah, so my name is Sinedra Taylor. I'm the founder and executive director of Friends of Cody's NOLA. We support food entrepreneurs in three ways, offer opportunities to access affordable commercial kitchen space. We also provide technical assistance, so courses to support their growth, and then access to revenue generating opportunities like shared tents at a festival. Yeah. Yeah. And you actually have your own your own um, food here as well. So tell me a little bit about yes. this bubble waffle that I just learned about today. So I own Crazy Waffle Bar as well. That's what got me into, uh -huh. into the food incubation space. So Crazy Waffle Bar is under the Friends of Cody tent, and we are producing a bubble waffle stuffed with yeah. patents, hot sausage, and then we deep fry it for added crunch. It sounds like a lot, but trust me, it's very delicious. I have seen so many people walking around with these, and I was talking to you a little bit earlier about this, and I'm thinking to myself, what is this? I didn't know if it was like a dessert of like an ice cream, but now I'm so intrigued with what you've done with this. Well, listen, we always invite individuals to reimagine their waffle yeah. experience. So it can be dessert, it can be breakfast, we do sweet, savory. I mean, we run the gambit of waffle experiences. So today, we're giving you a little bit of both. So do you want it for breakfast, you want it for lunch, it's up to you. We got a taste of everything in there for you. Right now, we all want it for French Quarter Fest. So uh, exactly. Move, down to the, uh, the <laughs> okay. uh, crawfish roll yes. here. I mean, crawfish, of course, a staple. How have you reimagined it, Chef? Um, so Normally we think of crawfish, we think of fried, we think of at the bay, we think of boiled. Yeah. But I wanted to do something different, and um, crawfish is us. It's very New Orleans. So I wanted to do something that was naturally New Orleans, but that just a little different. So if you think of a lobster roll, it's a cold dish served on a toasted bun. I wanted to do the same thing, but make it, as you said, better with crawfish. The so that's version. what we did. And how have you seen folks react to it? Uh, oh, we have finished? video footage. They love it. <laughs> At first, like, this guy was like, oh, wait, it's cold? I'm not going to like that. And then he bit it. He was like, never mind. I think it's going to be my I question. How people react back. to the coldness yes. of the, the At first, roll. they're like, oh, no, I want hot food. I'm like, you just got to try it. Trust me. And then they're like, you were right. So, so it works. <laughs> and it's hot. So you get a warm toasted bun and you get the cool, refreshing crawfish on the inside. I think it's the best of both worlds. And then you come back for seconds. Is yes, works, another right? one. Somebody did order one while he was eating one before. And of course, anybody who's uh, from New Orleans or heard anything about New Orleans knows all about yakimi. Of course, we have different versions of it from you guys as well. You have a vegetable one and the, uh, the normal lamb, right? Lamb. Is that what it is? Yes. So yes. kind of first for people who may not be familiar with yakimi, I don't know who those people are. But tell me a little bit about what it is and the recipe behind it. Okay, so... Yakimin is like a New Orleans style, a or Asian New Orleans style <laughs> soup, yeah. ramen, if I could call it that. Um, Sinatra called me and gave me the opportunity to do the lamb yeah. yakimin, and I was able to do it, and the people enjoying it, and I'm grateful. I'm sure a lot of folks will walk up and say, oh my gosh, they have yakimin. Yes. Yeah. How has that been like for you, knowing you helped craft it and create it and put it out there? I'm grateful. Yeah. That's all I have. I'm grateful. And to be a part of this this organization, this nonprofit, to kind of put you in that spotlight and giving you this platform. Thank you. Because <laughs> I can tell you're passionate about it. So I'll take it. Yeah, you go can ahead. Gather. Um, I've wanted French Quarter Festival since my first time coming as just to the festival. But, you know, there are certain restrictions, and I wouldn't be able to do it alone. So thanks to the kitchen and Sinedra, I'm able to be dream festival and what's it like seeing all these different culinary artists come together and making this happen with the uh, the food out here it's amazing we are all leaders in our own right you know we all have our own businesses so it takes a lot of like juggling to see like how can we make each other shine we have to sell each yeah. other's products right Build each we other have up. to love on each other we get up in the morning we brainstorm together you know we send in text messages at night it really builds community um, and it, it just gives you another dimension of like insight on staffing even just all of the experience systems at a festival how is that different from a storefront or a pop-up I mean, capacity across the board is a, is, is a new view of capacity, and I just love
love it. I just love seeing all of the bodies and all of the staff working under the boot. I love it. And when the food is good, like what you guys have, it's even better. Yeah, that's my favorite part. When people eat the food and they enjoy it, you can just see the reaction. And like, oh, I saw this on Instagram. I had to come have it. Yeah. That's like the best part. Well, keep posting. Get out there. Indian ladies, we appreciate all three of you being Thank with us. You Thank you for, for what us. you bring here to French Quarter Fest 2024. We, of course, will have plenty more coverage for you, so stick around. We are live from the WWL Love Louisiana stage right here in Spanish Plaza. Come out and see us if you can. If not, thank you for joining us from wherever you are. Many know him as Roger Dick. I'm a good 34 years in playing these songs and trying to peep, make, shake the butt. But most know him as DJ Raj Smooth. As a part of the French Quarter Fest, Bo played a major role in bringing the brand new DJ stage to life. I think it be a great addition to the French Quarter Fest lineup just because, you know, it's a party and what's a party without a DJ. idea that was easy to get behind for the stage sponsor, Possible Alert. Hearing Raj Smoove and his plans for how he's curious is really inspiring. And for DJs like Jessica Simmons but you can call her DJ Jess. Perform a little act was a dream that she's now living. Seven years is even that long to me compared to some of the other DJs that I know. So I it to just be um, considered for it. For both these DJs, this corner of New Orleans culture center stage is huge. The culture now, so you know, it's, yeah, it's different people that you can, can, you can highlight. Get a, a spot in a festival like that where additionally hip-hop hasn't necessarily been accepted or ended. I think it's just to a, a testament to the art form itself. Through New Orleans fashion, you can expect nothing less than a party. Just come prepared to dance and sing and have a good time. A party was that will undoubtedly be made for all parties involved. Leah McNeil, WWL, Louisiana. Hi, I'm John Bucci, here with my friend Bo from Chevron and Mia X. We're getting ready for French Water Festival, which features over 300 musical performances on more than 20 stages. Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of New Orleans music, culture, and cuisine. It all takes place April 11th through 14th. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app today. Don't miss French Quarter Festival from WWF. With the legendary Irma Thomas, your form tonight. We are having a beautiful day for this French Quarter Fest. Right, my well. life, every day I wake up is a beautiful day. I love that outlook. <laughs> I love it. Wait, what can people expect from your set tonight? What are we? What are you going to perform tonight? They're going to get her. They're going to get her. Yeah, okay. I don't. I don't work from a set list. My audience is my set list. Tell me about that. Are you speeding <laughs> off the energy? What do you mean? My audience is my set list. Okay. I come on stage, I sing a few songs, my audience yell out in here, and that's what I sing. Wow. So that's my set list. I feel like not too many <laughs> do that. You, I mean, you've been doing this a long time. I've been so doing just... it that way for years and years. Wow. Because I used to, I, I've never worked from a set list. Most of the time, my audience is a folk who've been around me for years, hear their favorite song. Since I can't read their mind, I sing what they want to hear. I love that. <laughs> we were talking a little bit about uh, you know, things have changed a little bit since the pandemic. How have things changed for you in years? What, well, what we haven't you? done Mother's Day since the pandemic yeah. originally. And so, other than that, I've gotten older and I've slowed down. I don't take as much work as I should. And I just finished doing a gospel CD. And so, today I was in the studio till 8 o'clock last night. So, <laughs> wow. And we used to photo shoots and all that good stuff. So, and I just completed an album with Galactic, and it's going to be uh, Audience with the Queen is the name of the album. So, so two anyway. new albums we can expect from you soon? Huh? You said two new albums then that we can yeah, expect one, from you soon. Yeah, one, one gospel and one... <laughs> wow. Because I've covered the, covered so the game. What, what, why do both at once? Or what's, what's the answer? It, How was, do you do it, both it just once? worked out that way. The people who involved were are from Europe, and they wanted to come while the French Quarter Festival went on and, and be able to do two things. So mm -hmm. that's how it worked out. <laughs> so when, are, when can we hear them? When, when's the gospel Well, this one, out? the one that I finished last night, probably won't be out until somewhere this summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You just performed at the Dew Drop-In, the reopening of the Dew Drop-In. I Dew did Drop the reopening, 
Can yes. you tell that what that was like for you? Well, yeah, it was. It brought back a lot of memories. I did a lot of the songs that I used to do when I worked at Dewdrop. Yeah. We had working 60 some years ago. <laughs> wow. What flashback like? It was fun. Yeah. It was fun. Are things, obviously, the world is so much different, but are things at the Dewdrop in? You're glad to see it back. I think they, they did a beautiful job modeling it, and I think a lot of the younger people who will be playing there will appreciate what Dewdrop was all about. Yeah. yeah. So hoping they bring a little bit of a younger crowd. Well, yeah, because most, most of us old ones are gone. <laughs> They're going to have to bring in a lot of the younger ones. But you're keeping that memory alive, and you're going to perform I'm tonight. <laughs> I'm trying. Um, what, what is that like for the younger, the younger generation and see some new faces out in the crowd? It's uh, a lot of them have done their homework and they've they've listened to some of my music. They yell out what they want to hear, and I'm honest enough with them to sit, tell them because I carry an eye with all of my lyrics in it, and I'm I'm smart enough and wise enough that it's something I haven't done in a while. I let them know that I haven't done it in a while, and if it's my cheat iPad, I'll look it up and sing it. <laughs> That's so smart. <laughs> so smart. I want to talk about French Quarter Fest because there are so many local acts here yeah. and new people on the scene. Yeah. Who are you listening to right now or who are you hoping to see? I'm a game show network. A game show network? <laughs> well. <laughs> I mean, what about French Quarter Fest or any I, local I artists? I don't have time to listen to any French Quarter Fest because when no? I come out here, I'm on my way to go to work. Okay. And I post this interview with you guys and of course, by the time I get back, it'll be almost time for me to go on. So. Yes. <laughs> I don't get a chance to hear anybody. That's fair. Fair. <laughs> All right, so you're gearing up to perform in just about 15 minutes yeah. here. Um, Her first French Quarter Fest was played with Ron Nicole. What? And what, when was that? Oh, 100 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even, at that time, there wasn't even a, a, a stage. We, we played platform, so. Yeah. Isn't that amazing how much it's grown? Oh, in that yeah, time? it has grown endlessly. Wow. Yes. Wonderful. All right, well, Miss, thank you so much. It My was pleasure. wonderful speaking with you. My and I, I, I know there's a lot of people very excited to watch you perform tonight, so we're going to let you go. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Hey there, it's Devin Bartolotta. Thank you for joining us. I'm here with musician George Porter Jr. You just stepped the stage. Yes. How did it go? It um, went very well. It was a very good evening. Um, it was a beautiful day to be out. Sun was out, nice breeze. You know, and, and the crowd was very beautiful. It was great. Yeah, it's nice out. I mean, the, the weather could not be more perfect, but the crowds are also so energetic. A lot of people out here. Did you have a pretty good showing? A lot of people out there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not good at counting out numbers, but <laughs> I would think there was a few thousand people there. For oh, sure. yeah? That's pretty good. So uh, you told me you're done for the night, but you're going to pack. So yeah, you bro. stay busy. Tell me where you're headed. Yeah, uh, it's, I guess that, you know, at 76, either stay busy or you're going to be lazy, you know? So I, I think I stay busy. <laughs> I, a lot of people would slow down around that time, but you you have gigs and trips and all kinds of stuff. What, you know, what, what keeps you going? I, I have a really good band, you know, I have a really great band to be with, um, um, and, you know, and, and I think, I think the important thing is that, um, the, the, the guys we with, you know, are, are, are great musicians and they, they're wonderful people that hang out with. So, you know, climb into my, into my, um, and my transit van and drive thousands of miles and, and not kill each other, you know, because we all have, we have fun and joking. And not killing and each other is very important <laughs> when you're on a trip. <laughs> Well, so you, leave the driver alone. That is, yeah, and they control the radio. That's the rule, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you're headed to Mexico for a for a performance yes, this weekend. Um, Tell them. It's called Panic on a Playa. It's widespread panics. Um, I guess they could a somewhat of a picnic, but it's not really a picnic. It's just a, a concert at a hotel at the Hard Rock Cafe, cool. and uh, you know, and it's, they sell it every year. You know, and, and I, I've done this will be my seventh year. Wow. Of, and I've, I've played with an all-star all, um, all outfit, you know. Oh, that's, I mean, you've played with so many, so many musicians throughout your years. When you're out at French Quarter Fest, you see all these local artists. Who are you listening to? Who are you excited to see at French Quarter Fest? I don't get to see one. You no? Know? Usually, um, the only time, in fact, festival season is, is uh, I go.
go out and play my performance. And, and I well, like today, I might see, I'll see some of her matomatas. You know, I, you know, really. She gave me my first out of town gig when I was 17 years old. Oh, wow. So, um, so yeah, I will, I will stay for Irma and see her. Mm -hmm. You know, and usually I'll see the band that plays before me. I'll see what they'll say. But most of the time, once I'm done, yeah. uh, you know, I go home. You know, I'm done. You know, yeah. I go have some food and go home looking for television. You know, it's funny because we talked to Irma an hour ago, and she said something very similar. She doesn't really get to see a lot of acts. I said, well, well, who are you watching? And she said, the Game Show Network. Yeah. So <laughs> it sounds like she was going to go home and relax after a yeah. long day, too. So yeah. Well, you know, great. it wasn't, wasn't really a long day for us. You know, um, I think we left the house around, uh, it must have been around 1.30. And we got out here about close to 2. And um, you know, when we took the stage at um, 3.30, the 4.30. Yeah. And then, um, you know, I got in the cart and moved here. Well, well, we're glad to have you here. I, I must ask you what you know, this is such a busy time of year for you it sounds like but what is what is the best part for you about spring in New Orleans oh uh, well I don't know I don't know I don't have a real answer for that no? you know, spring for me you know uh, um, for me is I like I like the fact that well I like the the warm days and the cool nights you know uh, um, and then right now as situated at home I have to um, I still haven't I haven't made my, my home a, a bachelor yet, you know. <laughs> I mean I, I lost my wife was going on seven years now. And uh, and so my daughter tells me all the time, she said, Dad, you need you know, you need to turn into a bachelor pad, you know. I, but I haven't done that, you know. No. It's still so much of her still there, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well thank you so much for sitting down and talking with us after your performance. You need to go home and pack. Yes, so we'll I'll let go you go. <laughs> George Porter Neer, thank you so much. And I hope you enjoyed your French Fest day. Yes. And I hope you enjoy Mexico. It's going to be good. It's, gonna, right. it's been nice and it's going to be good. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think that in our crime cover, way that we're approaching crime now, we look at it on the surface level. And when you look at things on the surface level, you tend to, well, if we just need, if we arrested the carjacker, then, you know, the crime would, if we would simply put people in jail or give stiffities, then crime will go down. Well, obviously that has happened in the parallels and crime did go down for some time, but again, it shot right again. So at some point, our responses to things have to be super, we have to ask the question, what is the root cause of this? What's the nucleus of the problem? What's the thing that's right at the rub it that we are just missing? You know, we have to take a look back at what we're doing wrong, at why communities were distant from, at statistically why more crimes happen in a particular community versus that one. Um, we have to take a look at is pushing people to do crime, is the poverty rate you know, is it income? How do we level the field so no one would want to commit a robbery? There are so different answers we can give to this. And I think that we've tried all of the ways, or at least law enforcement has tried ways that give you an immediate response, which is let's arrest our weights, let's lock people up, let's put them um, away, or harder penalties or charging teenagers as adults. I think WWL and our crime focuses and while this is happening and while we do understand why some of these are issued, we ask why it's happening and why particularly is it happening to or with rather one demographic. Let's take a look at the overall issue and not just what are, you know, quick concerns. Well, first of all, Mike and I have a combined 90 years of reporting experience. So we know what it is to be in New Orleans. We know what to cover this town. And we have the most experience of nation in this area. As I've worked at WWL over the years, one of the most proud of in the investigative unit is the fact that my stories have been able to change. 
That comes in the form of changing laws. That comes in the form of being elected officials that ended up in jail because of the story that we did. Um, that goes for myself, David Hammer, Mike Perlstein. Many of us have done stories that have really made an impact in the community. And I think that that is the things that WWL's legacy is a big part of. Being a part of the community, it's making a difference. It's being a voice for people who can't use theirs or don't have one. Trust me, uh, the stories that appear on TV when it really has deep personal impact. We stick people, those families, those institutions, some for years, and in my case, I can honestly say a life in New Orleans. Well, I'm from New Orleans. I grew up in New Orleans. I want to see this community do better. I want it to always be thing. So that's what motivates me at the end of the day. That's what me going every day to try to expose the inequities in our community expose the problems with our government and hopefully fix them. That is a backstop for so many things that could be going wrong. Sure, some things slip our attention momentarily, but there's a track record and we're the ones who follow those tracks. We really want to make sure, first of all, of course, that we're act huge for us as meteorologists. We want to do a really good job with that. Um, of course, we want to get the information to viewers in a way that's really clear and able, and in a way that can really help you decide what to do. What we do here as a team at WWL, we try to make all that uncertainty so you can make the decision to uh, or do what you need to do for approaching storms or whatever the active weather may be. There are folks out there that have that instilled fear of severe, the unknown of um, pop-up thunderstorms, tornadoes, as well probably one of the biggest events in Southeast Louisiana being hurricanes. So I try and quell those fears by answering all of the questions the public may have about these events. The, you know, there's there's no way them usually, but if I can kind of answer those questions and put folks' mind that I've done my job. Really what motivates me to get up every single day, people are safe and they know exactly what to do when the weather's strong. Everything has a story. My father once shared a recipe with me. And outside of the actual recipe, it was for stuffed bell peppers. He shares the story of being taught how to make stuffed bell peppers, talking about the family that connects back to St. John the Baptist Parish, you know, to my grandmother growing up in Edgar, Louisiana my grandfather growing up in the seventh ward and, and just think that everything connects us back to family and it connects us back to community that's through the music you know whether that connects us back to church that's through the food that's through the architecture and that is even through the clothing that we wear i was slaying where you at you know um you know, being able to share all of those New Orleans colloquialisms, those things that we say, the fact that we for Gundy and not Burgundy, you know, if you give you words like Chapatulas, we can connect all of those things to community and back to family. So I think that in celebrating like the Black Masking Indians and braiding food and culture, it is also honoring those that came before us, I mean, the people who gave us these things either out of necessity or gave us these things because they were just, there was, they wanted to give something great. Which is because there's some cosmetic differences. Yeah, it's the bun. The bun, right? Yeah, it's yeah. The bun. And the glasses. 
Yep. That's the biggest difference between us. Exactly. Like societally. I was in the bun too. But um, yes. Yeah, so you guys are performing today. What time? Where? Uh, two o'clock at the Jack Daniels stage. It's gonna be right super, there. super. If you dope. can see that behind us, there's a band up there right now on the Jack Daniels stage. That's where we'll be at two ten. Yeah. So yeah. If you're on the couch right now, watching this on your Facebook, on your IG or whatever, come on for two ten. Yes. And Spanish Plaza. This is where we're at. Just left of the French Quarter, Jackson Square. Now tell me about how you guys got together. Indeed. Good. We were, we were on the road, right? We were on the road. Specifically, Detroit is a city that I remember really like kind of locked in and started chopping game. Um, he was formerly in a Tank of the Bangers. I opened one of those tours, got to got to know my man. We started like chopping. I actually have the very first picture we ever took together. Aww. Um, and after that, just kind of started talking and we got in the studio, made some music, started laughing and Big Sav was born. You just hit it off. So you guys met on tour, two yes. separate tours. Yeah, and we were like together. We were like made the same jokes, kind of like enjoyed the same stuff and just kind of gravitated towards her. For sure. And then uh, our manager, Tavia, was like, y'all should get together in the studio. So we get together in the studio and we make one song for like three hours, but we also laughed for like two and a half hours. True indeed. And made like 30 music. So it was really cool and it was a good fit. The manager obviously saw the chemist between you two. Now we've had you both on the morning show before. Yes. What makes your shindig unique? You go. What makes shindig unique? Sh uh, unique shindig. Um, hmm, Can I have one. an alternate pronunciation for hey, shindig? Uh, Language of origin. Whoa. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Our duo. It's actually really. I don't know, man. I think uh, since it's very important to us, but we take our music extremely serious. You know what I mean? Like we're, we're musicians first, and uh, we kind of use sense of humor as a way to kind of like translate it. Um, and so I think that's what kind of differentiates us from a lot of different bands. And uh, I mean, I'll just say it, we're like really, really good. High level of craft. Alfred is one of the best rappers in the city and the world. And I'm a very good instrument, so we bring that together in a way that is like, you know, a lot of hip hop right now is very programmed, it's very excellent, and it's actually probably never been better because more excel can share this stuff because of the Dude. democratization of distributing music on the end. Um, but like, we have something unique to contribute because we have combined like 40 years of live performance Pretty much. experience. <laughs> so we just have like a unique with being funny, but also we're like, hey, let's be funny, but kind of with a point, an elite level of craft and just like goofing around and it's like maybe we say um and you know what entertainment at all costs that's what it's about and what's that because you guys are so unique and if, for those who have not watched and perform before do because they are not like any other band and you have original music as well oh yeah yeah and i actually saw your saxophone videos in my facebook feed i'm like how do we become friends this came on the morning show we actually were in a saxophone workshop years ago at Tapatina's and snug harbor and met somebody else and then what 15 years later yes i was like this kind of looks familiar how do we know mutual friend and then we just met at the studio are. yeah we were yeah. At, we were at w and i was like that's colleen yeah. yeah i think you hit me up on facebook afterwards and i was like the last one like 2012. <laughs> it's a different timeline man oh yeah <laughs> uh, so with tank and the bangas have you been with her too or was um you did that was albert oh Together? yeah i was in okay. that band for uh, almost 10 years like nine years yeah that's where we met. We were he was over and we were on the road and that's where we all met. Exactly. Okay, got you. And I heard that you got mixed up with her saxophone players. He's so funny. My good buddy ATN to play like uh, you know, he's he's uh he's got his own thing going on now and he's uh, uh you know, I don't want to put him on blast or make any statements he's about He's putting you on blast. about relationship status, but back in the day when he was uh, a young buck, wild and free, so to speak. Uh, he would be on the dating app, get confused with me for whatever reason. And this actually led to a hilarious incident where somebody messaged him. He was like talking on Tinder or somebody. And then they went to my profile and I have a girlfriend and, and make it known and have for a long time, like six years. Are you still together? Yeah, not like six years. It is six years. <laughs> Love you, babe. And he got hit up because they went saw his they saw my profile on his Tinder profile and they were like, why are you lying to me? Why do you have a girlfriend? He told me you were single and they was like, and he was just like, ha ha ha, that's a different person. And no, bro, why are you, why are you trying to run game on me? And he was like, this is ridiculous. Like, so I don't know how we get mixed up, but it's happened a lot. He would walk out on stage um, when I wasn't on tour with the band and people would be like, Albert, what's up? I don't look anything it's alike. It's so funny. We don't look anything alike. Beautiful man. We don't Great look guy. anything alike. You know? So that's how he figured it out was, okay, I'm associate him because you two were intertwined together. Oh, I, that's how I must be 
mixed up with. I like to think maybe I helped him sometimes, not just, but it sounds like I mostly hurt his prospects. Yeah, it's, just a little, it's a little crazy <laughs> from this angle. What? Hey, man, you hate. Yeah, I know. I saw, I'm really no hate, just to relate facts, okay? That's what it's, it's called facts kicks out. Facts kicks right? out. We're going from facts, facts to facts. We're, yes, we're changing. And speaking of. April 15th, facts kicks out. All right. Oh, well, <laughs> like we all know that. So how did you get involved in the music industry? Did you grow up singing, perform? Yeah, um, for me personally, uh, I started rhyming around six years old. My oldest brother, Alandis Bangs, rest in peace, he um, started rhyming and kind of had a little bit of a buzz around the city. So he inspired me to kind of rhyme. My middle brother, James, he also freestyled a lot. So that's kind of where I got both skills from. You flash forward a few years, I started writing, kind of creating my own style. And uh, June 6, 2009, at the age of 17, I performed at the Dragons Den for the very first time. And uh, it was addictive. That live aspect is just one of my favorite things. You flash forward a few years, and we are on the cover of Offbeat. Oh! All sooky, sooky now. This is incredible, yeah. guys. And I had the laminate printed myself because Offbeat isn't physical anymore. Offbeat's fully digital. Spanx went to a print shop oh, himself. Yeah, you best believe. Took screenshots, yes, and we I didn't did. bring the collate he made as if it was a master's thesis. Yeah, that's incredible. But he did binder. make his own magazine. He said, no, no, print media. I'm bringing you back. 100%. This is a very, very big honor, right? It's super cool. Absolutely. Was that a dream of yours to be on yes. Print Mac? This is why it's a big deal to yeah. go get it laminated and be like, I'm going to be of course, on the day cover. Of course, of course. Is, this is our first cover together. And so I'm super excited about it. We've been working very hard for the past like year um, specifically to kind of get that going. And some of the love and energy we've been getting is just so cool. So to see it kind of reverberate city and start to really make a uh, make an impact, it's beautiful, man. Because me and this man work hard on our music and on our craft. So this is really, really cool. Was it your dream to be made face? No. On, I will say on, when I first saw the picture, I was like, what? But I love it, man. Can you make man. that face for us? <laughs> yeah. I yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's and actually how you look at your videos that I've watched from the music videos that you guys do. So we have we have a weird dynamic. It's like he's the guy that will go there, and I'm more the straight guy that's like. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to drag him along. Most of our relationship, maybe what makes us unique, back to the earlier question, is um, me testing Alfred's boundaries and him resisting them. <laughs> Push pull balance. Yeah, it's Big a tension. Facts. There's Big a narrative facts. built in. Take us for relax, people. All right, so at what point do you feel you really became successful that you're like baking it? Um, has that happened yet? <laughs> I mean, we're, I, we're, in the low, WWL we're in the WWL. I mean, I feel like right yeah. now, we made it right here because we're in French Quarter Fest, baby. On, man. on Friday, on the Jack Daniels Day, 210 at Spanish Plaza with Colleen on, in the man. WWL tent. On the, so, so we made it. And it's stuck. It's stuck and it won't come down. Yeah, and we're I feel like we made it. I've arrived now. Yeah. So tell us about what instruments you play. You're just with I your play hand. saxophone and flute and piano and bass and drums and guitar. Tuba in the eighth grade. I play bassoon in the ninth grade. And uh, I've stuck a clarinet before. Okay. All Any, right. That, you, what? No, I didn't hear anything. I mean, did you actually? I tried. It didn't sound good. Okay. No. <laughs> you said what I play, not what I was good at. Ah. Uh, what are you actually good at? Saxophone All of the above. and flute. Okay, just yeah. No, the other ones are pretty. Good. Make it till you make it, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And I saw what? a montage that you posted recently too, where you actually incorporated multiple instruments when playing. Yeah, I learned how to. Um, I learned how to edit myself in, so I was playing like bass, drums, and piano, and sax, and flute. Yeah. It's amazing. It, it was really, really cool. And I've been like really practicing the instruments. That's what I love to do. I've learned a lot about myself, especially the past year, um, doing this project with Alfred about what's actually sustainable for me as an artist. What do I actually like? And it's instruments. Like I live and breathe to just like play along to records with people, love, learn stuff, and then compose music and record it in. My, I just love that, and it's like it's what makes me happy, and it's it's what I do. Like I don't know. I just I can't even describe it. It's kind of new to me to feel like I was so focused on like. Honestly, like, when I was in sixth grade, I saw a great saxophonist named Kirk Whalen play for the first time. And I was like, I just want to play saxophone or something and, like, tour the world. And, and, I, and I did that at 23. And then after that, it, oh, shit, like, what do I do? Oh, crap, what do I do now? And then I, like, I just was like, well, I got to focus on the instruments. I got to double down on what makes me happy. And that's the instruments. And, uh, you know, not using profanity on uh, W. <laughs> Thank you for that's that. That's what makes me happy. That's what makes me happy, you know? Yeah. I, I, yep. 
where are some of the places that both of you have traveled separately together in Man, the world? Um, we recently just started kind of touring, so things kind of changed for us this August of 2023 is when the social media kind of started making some noise, uh, going viral, as it were. And uh, so we just started touring. We just did our first run together. I mean, you know, let's sum sum. We're 30-year-olds talking about virality on media. It's pretty normal. Uh, but we for, did our first uh, just run. Uh, Dallas, I'm sorry, Fort Worth, uh, Austin, Houston, all those really cool. We had the Midwest. We did uh, Chicago, Milwaukee, and Grand Rapids again. Those shows are incredible. Uh, we did Charlotte, North Carolina on a Wednesday night. It was really, really cool. Um, an experience I'm sure me and you both would get uh, as it pertains to some of the people in the crowd. It was fun. Uh, we're really starting to hit the road together, and, but separately, I mean, this man is Roman, right? Well, going all over the world. and we're putting out a song every month. Every single month. That's yeah. going to actually increase us to be able to go out on the road. And you, maybe you can just make a lot of rotations around the world. We are so looking forward to both of your success, sir. We appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. And check them out, 2 o'clock, Doc Daniel stage. Zach's kick stab, baby. Thank you, Colleen. I'm John Butte. Here with my friends, Greg Rowe from Chevron and Mia X. We're getting ready for French Quarter Festival, which features over 300 musical performances on more than 20 stages. Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of New Orleans music, culture, and cuisine. It all takes place April 11 through 14. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app today. Don't miss French Quarter Festival from WWL. And welcome back to French Quarter Quest for French Quarter Fest 24. We at the Love Louisiana stage right here, sponsored by WWLT. We're speaking with Troy Sawyer and the Elements. The Elements are, I guess, are on a break right now. Yeah, they're trying to get some food. Now. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. You guys opened the festival today on yes, this third day on the stage behind us here. Kind of run us through what it was like being out here on this gorgeous day. I just think the sunny weather makes the music sound better. It does. I don't like to play when it's cold because I'm a trumpet player and it turns my trumpet into ice. And it's hard to play a cold trumpet. So this is perfect weather. It's so beautiful. But by us being out here early yeah. to open up the fest, it's an honor um, to open up the fest and set the tone for the rest of the day. You know, I got to listen to the last part of y'all set. I mean, it, it's this big fusion of yes. you, have, you have funk, you have soul, you right. have rock in there. Yeah. And I just saw the crowd gra started gravitating towards the stage, especially when you guys did the encore. Right. Where did this sound come from? It comes from New Orleans, being born and raised in New Orleans, and um, traveling around the world. Yeah. So, like any type of genre of music that I'm attracted to, that I like, if it's good music, good music. <laughs> so I fuse it all together. I don't say I'm gonna, I'm gonna write or compose music for this particular genre. I just create. So whatever comes out is what comes out. So it's a gumbo and a fusion of all these different elements and styles and influences. Um, growing up in New Orleans. And it's really a long journey for you, especially as the leader now, but you yeah. didn't start that way. I did not. I did not. So I was playing with different bands before, but after Hurricane Katrina, I came back to New Orleans and I decided to start my own band, step out as a band leader. So it was a Troy Sawyer Trio, <laughs> which we were performing at the King Bowdens. It was called King Bowdens on Rampart Street, now it's Bartonic. And so that was my first uh, consistent gig every Wednesday night as a band leader. You know, one thing I didn't know about you is, of course, we know you as a trumpeter, but you didn't start out that way either. Like, you were initially in strings. Yeah, so I picked up the violin when I was in pre-K kindergarten. I played that for a couple of years, yeah. and I told my mama, I said, Ma, she said, what, boy? I said, I'm not feeling the violin. <laughs> so she said, okay, which instrument are you feeling? Well, do you want, you want to play another instrument? And I was like, yeah, I do, but I don't know which one. But I heard this band marching down the streets of New Orleans, the St. Augustine Marching 100, and I heard this instrument, and then my mom took me to a jazz concert to hear the great Winton Marcellus play, and I said, man, that's the instrument I want to play. So I picked up the trumpet in fourth grade, and I've been playing it ever did, since. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Do you think you did strings because your grandfather had that yeah, whole interaction great, with Yeah, my great-grandfather played all of the strings, and he wrote songs with the great Buddy Bowden, played around time with Louis Armstrong, played at Preservation Hall. And so I, have, I, come, from, I come from a musical family. Yeah. And I think that's in my blood to pick up the strings and um, play around with it. But I love the cello, so I'm going to pick up the cello one day. Yeah, I think you can do it. But when you talk about you weren't feeling the, the strings, that just goes to show you how much music is a feeling more than just a sound. Right, yeah. Why is that so important in New Orleans culture for you guys? The feeling, it comes from, you know, our ancestors, of the things that they have gone through. And I, I feel like everywhere I travel all over the world, 
it's nothing like a New Orleans musician because we have gone through a lot. Our ancestors have gone through a lot and that pain, and we turn that pain into purpose. And so I feel like we coming from that place <laughs> of feeling of soul and your soul is your energy. So our energy is really connected to the universe and people can feel it. I tell you, we can feel it from all the way over here while you're playing oh, on yeah, the stage. Oh yeah, you were rocking with us? You, you rocking guys your had, soul? Oh yeah, we, you say, <laughs> we rock, we roll, we rock, we rock your soul, yeah. right? Yeah, oh man. And that's man. something you guys did with Doopsy. Yeah, so um, I met Rock Doopsy in Paris a couple of years back and he said, yeah, little brother, when we get yeah. back to the States, we're gonna work together. And then we finally uh, worked together. I sat in with his band and then um, when I started working on my album, I was at the Ellis Marcet Center mm -hmm. for music because I live in the Musician's Village. And I said, hey, Rockin, I'm over here at the Ellis Marcet Center. I'm hearing you on this, this track, this song. He's like, okay, where you at? I said, Ellis Marcet Center. He said, all right, I'm on my way. So he came through and put his <laughs> verse down. He's like James Brown in the booth giving you that energy. And that's what I love about him. He has a good energy. He, he's a good person. And he's all about helping the next generation out. You know, you're, not, you're no stranger to festivals. You're no stranger to music venues across right. the city. When you come to places like French Quarter Fest and you see the different stages, you see the different artists of all different genres, what is it like to see that as a New Orleanian and an artist who is true to the music? It's beautiful to see people that I grew up with when we were kids, mm -hmm. going to the Satchmo Jazz Camp, playing music as kids, but we still playing. It was refreshing actually to see some of my, um, even the, the older musicians still playing, you know, like um, Wendell Bruni yeah. is and all the rest of them. I saw them Thursday for the kickoff ceremony and it just, it's just refreshing. It's inspirational to keep this going because we're the ones that gotta pass it down to the next generation. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, it, it just makes me feel awesome and it makes me, uh, feel more inspired to keep doing what I'm doing. You know, part of what you're doing when you talk about passing things down is your, your educational components right. that you really work on. How have you seen that really transform lives in the kids that you work with? Uh, so I, I started teaching in the school system after Hurricane Katrina mm -hmm. um, through this organization called Artist Corps New Orleans, which is an organization that would get professional musicians that have degrees to teach at a school that didn't have enough money in the budget to pay for a full-time music teacher. and. I started teaching, and I'm all about self-expression, and then I felt like it was my responsibility to be there because those kids are looking at me, and they want something from me that I have to give. And I just kept on doing it to become a better teacher, and then I decided to step out of the system to create my own system, which is called Girls Play Trumpets 2. It's my nonprofit called Girls Play Trumpets 2. I know too. a lot of folks look up to you for doing that. So, okay, so you just did the set. Yeah. How do you guys decompress after a set like that? Because that was a lot of energy. Oh, a lot of energy. And I mean, uh, you're almost right in the sun. You have a little shade there, but yeah. the crowd was rocking with you. So, yeah, you know, drinking lots of water. Gotta stay <laughs> hydrated. And then, you know, and there's a lot of energy. I have to like, come down from this high. So now I'm calm now because it's a high when you're performing and uh, you gotta bring that energy, give the people your all, and I always give my, mm -hmm. the people my all, because you never know that might be my last time performing. So you always gotta perform like it's your last time performing. All right, so let's talk about the fest. What are you looking forward to, food, other artists? Yeah, so um, they have a bunch, of, oh, Tidra Moses is closing out the Jack Daniel stage, and that's a friend of, um, of mine, and we go way back, mm -hmm. and like, we're gonna start working on um, some music together, so I'm, I'm gonna just check her out later on. There's a lot of people. Water Seed is performing on um, Sunday. I'm looking forward for my nonprofit to perform too because the girls been practicing and rehearsing uh, for a minute to prepare for this moment. So they perform tomorrow on the okay. kids stage from 12.15 to 1.15. Is that the one in front of the aquarium? Is that where that is? I think that's the one on Decatur around like HM where it splits off. That's right, okay. Yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm excited even if I'm to go out there and check out the food see what they have to offer you know I, I like to eat good food. I mean we can smell it from down here I'm <laughs> sure you guys could smell it on the stage the oh whole yeah. time when I came out I was like oh yeah I smell that food I can't wait to eat I can't wait and to I get off the stage I don't eat before I play because I blew that food straight through the trumpet and my band <laughs> members they know Troy doesn't eat before he eats but you know what after he's done he's gonna oh, be hitting up I'm all going the food in. I'm going in I can't wait all right so when's your next performance for folks who may have missed you out here today so my next performance is um we're working on something at the Columns Hotel. We got some other private gigs coming up. Um, Jazz Fest is coming up, doing a lot mm -hmm. of cameos. Um, Girls Play Trumpets 2 is performing at Jazz Fest also. So yeah, just we, rock, we actually lining up the, the world tour for my album, Rock Your Soul. 
So that's our folks to really travel around the world promoting the good news, which is the album. All right, Troy Sawyer, we have you. We appreciate everything you've done, especially for the younger generations with the Thank music. You. Troy Sawyer and Elements performing, already performed on Jack Daniels stage. Mm -hmm. Stick around with us. We have a whole lot more for you coming up on French Quarter Fest 2024 right here at the Love Louisiana Festival. Thanks for watching no matter where you're from. If you can get out here, come out and see us. Happy Friday, everybody. Lee Seeley here out at French Quarter Fest here at Spanish Plot, the WWL Love Louisiana stage here with Sax Kicks. What's up? Yes, sir. All right, tell everybody your name. What's happening, man? You go first. Albert? I'm, I'm Alfred. And Alfred. Yeah. It's easy to get mixed up, people. Yeah, people right? like it. My dad cool. does it, which is weird because there's some cosmetics. It's, it. it's the bun. The bun, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's just the bun. Yeah, and the glasses. Yep. <laughs> difference between us. Exactly. Like societally. And I would say the bun too. But um, you guys are performing today. What time? Where? Uh, two o'clock at the Jets. Be right super, there. Super if you dope. can see that behind us, there's a band up there right now. In the Jets. That's where we'll be at two ten. Yup. 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 If you're on the couch right now, watching this on your on your IG or whatever, come on out here for two ten. Yes. And Spanish Plaza. This is where left of the French Quarter, looking at Jackson Square. Now tell me about how you guys got. There. Indeed. Good. Where were we? We were on the road, right? We were on the road. Specifically Detroit. I remember what we really like kind of locked in and started chopping game. Um, you know, Tank of the Bangers. I opened one of those tours, got to got to know started, like chopping game. I actually have the very first picture we ever took together. Um, and after that, you know, we just kind of started talking and we got in the studio, made some music, started laughing. Sax Kick Sav was born. You just hit it off. So you guys met on tour. Yeah, yeah, and we were like cool together. We were like made the same jokes, kind of like enjoyed the same kind of gravitated towards each other. For sure. And then uh, our manager, Tavia, was all shit get together in the studio. So we get together in the studio and we made Kong for like three hours, but we also laughed for like two and a half hours. True indeed. And made like music. So it was really cool and it was a good fit. The manager obviously saw the chemistry they do. Now we've had you both on the morning show before. Yes. What makes Shindig unique? You go. Oh, what makes it unique? Sh uh, unique Shindig. Um, an alternate pronunciation for hey, Shindig. Yo. Uh, Language of origin. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Our duo. It's actually really. I don't know, man. I think uh, since it's important to us, but we take our music extremely serious. You know what I mean? Like we're we're, we're first, and uh, we kind of use sense of humor as a way to kind of like translate. Um, and so I think that's what kind of differentiates us from a lot of different. And uh, I mean, I'll just say it, we're like really, really good. Hi, and Alfred is one of the best rappers in the city and the world. And I'm a very good so we bring that together in a way that is like, you know, a lot of hip hop right now program and it's very excellent. And it's actually probably never been better because more ex hair this stuff because of the democratization of distributing music. Um, but like we have something unique to contribute because we have what a combined pretty years of live performance. Pretty much experience. <laughs> So we just have like a unique thing with money, but also we're like, hey, let's be funny but kinda of with a point and with this like elite raft and just like goofing around and it's like maybe we say something um, you know what entertainment at all costs that's what it's about yeah, and what's funny is that it's so unique and if, for those who have not watched the perform before do so because not like any other band and you have original music as well what that's oh yeah yeah all your saxophone videos in my facebook feed i'm like how do we become friends this is before they go we actually were in a saxophone jazz workshop at patinas and snug harbor and we met mutually through somebody young years later. Yes. I was like, this kind of looks familiar. How do we know this? This is a mutual fan. We just met at the studio. Are. Yeah. We were, yeah. At, we were at WWO and I was like, that's kind of, I think you hit me up on Facebook afterwards and I was like, the last message was from like 2000. <laughs> it's a different timeline, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, with Tank and the Bangas, have you performed with her too or was you did? 
that was Albert. Oh Together? yeah, yeah. I was in okay. that band for uh, almost ten years. Yeah. That's where we met. We were he was opening for us, and we were on the road, and that's where we all met. Heard that you got mixed up with one of her saxophone players. My good buddy, Atien's Duple, like uh, you know, he's he's uh, his own thing going on now, and he's uh, he's uh, uh, you know, I don't want to or make any statements he's about, putting you on blast. about his relationship status, but hey. When he was uh, a young buck, roaming wild and free, uh, he would be on the dating apps and get confused with me. And, and this actually led to a hilarious incident where him, he was like talking to somebody on Tinder, somebody, and then they went to, and I have a girlfriend and, and make it known and have for a long time. Are you still together? Yeah, N not like six years, it is six years. <laughs> and he got hit up because they went saw they saw my profile based on his Tinder profile, and they were like, "Why are you lying? You have a girlfriend. You told me you were single." And they was like, and he was just like, "Ha ha ha!" That and they were like, "No, bro. Why are you Why are you trying to run game on me?" And he was like, "This like so I don't know how we get mixed up, but it's happened a lot." He would walk out on um when I wasn't on tour with the band, and people would be like, "Albert, I don't look anything it's alike." It's so funny. We don't look anything alike. Beautiful man, yeah. anything alike, you know? So that's how he figured it out was, okay, I'm associated with him. You two are intertwined together. Oh, I, that's who I must be getting mixed. I like to think maybe I helped him sometimes, not just hurt him, but it sounds like a most Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little crazy. <laughs> From this angle, it's like, what? <laughs> yeah, I know. I saw, I'm really no hate. Just just trying to relate facts, okay? Well, facts kicks ass. Facts kicks right? ass. Facts. We're about From facts. facts. We're, yes. Speaking of. April 15th, it's tax kicks out. <laughs> all right? Oh, well, like we all know that. Okay, so how did you get involved in the music industry? Singing, performing? Yeah, um, for me personally, uh, I started around with my oldest brother, uh, Landis Banks, rest in peace. He uh, started rhyming and comes around the city. And so he inspired me to kind of rhyme my middle brother, James. He also freestyled where I got both of those skills from. He flash forward a few years, I started writing style. And uh, June 6, 2009, at the age of 17, I performed the very first time. And uh, it was addictive, that live ass favorite things. And you flash forward a few years, and we are on the cover of oh! All Sooky Sooky Now. This is incredible. Yeah, laminated and printed myself because Offbeat isn't physical anymore. Offbeat's fully digital. Thanks. Went to a print shop oh, himself. Yeah, you best believe. Took screenshots yes, and we I did the booklet he made as if it was a master's thesis. That is incredible. But he binding. did make his own mag. No, no. Print media. I'm bringing you back. 100 was very, very big honor, right? It's super cool. Absolutely. Was that a dream of yours to be on This Is Why It's a Big Deal to yeah. get it laminated and be like, I'm going to be of course, on the day of course. This is our first cover together. And so I'm super excited about that because we've been working the past like, year uh, specifically to kind of get things going. The energy we've been getting is just so cool. So to see it kind of reverberate through the city, really make, a, uh, make an impact, it's beautiful, man, because me and this man work very hard on craft. So this is really, really cool. Was it your dream to be making this on? I will say, on. when I first saw the picture, I was like, what? But, For us? yeah, I... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's and, actually how you look in some of your videos that I've watched <laughs> guys do. So we have, we have a weird dynamic. It's like, he's the guy that will go there, straight guy that's like, uh, I don't really want to I'm trying to drag him along. Most of our relics makes us unique, back to the earlier question, is um, me testing Alfred's and him resisting them. <laughs> a good push-pull balance. Yeah, it's Facts. fiction. There's Big a narrative Facts. built in. Take us for rela relationships, people. All right, so at what point do you feel you really became successful, that you're like, I'm making it? Um, Has that happened yet? <laughs> I mean, we're here. I mean, we're in the WWL. We're in the WWL. I feel like right yeah. now, we made it right here because we're at French Quarter Fest, baby. Come on, man. Talk on Friday, on the Jack Dang stage at 210 Spanish Plaza with Colleen come on, in the man. WWL tent on it's the river. Up. We made it. And it's stuck. It's stuck and it won't come down. Yeah. And we're I feel like we made it. I feel like I've arrived now. Yeah. So tell us about what instruments you play. You're diverse with I your play hand. saxophone and flute and piano and bass, drums and guitar. I played tuba in the eighth grade. I played bassoon in the ninth grade. And uh, I've stuck a cornet in my mouth before. Okay. Any, All right. That, but not, I, didn't, I didn't hear anything. I mean, did you actually 
tried. Notes. It didn't sound good. Okay. No. <laughs> you said what I play, not what I was good at. Ah, uh, so what are you actually good at? Saxophone All of the above. and flute. Okay, just saxophone. Yeah. No, the other ones are pretty bad. But Basically, you make it, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And I saw what? a montage that you posted recently, too, where you actually incorporated multiple instruments but it was all you playing yeah i learned how to um i learned how to edit elfin so i was playing like bass and drums and piano and sax and flute yeah. it's amazing it was it's really, really cool amazing. and i've been loving i've been like really practicing the instruments that's what i love to do i've learned a lot about myself especially over the past year um doing this project with alfred uh, what's actually sustainable for me as an artist what do i actually like it's playing the instruments like i live and breathe to just like play along to record people i love learn stuff and then compose music and record in myself i just love that and it's like it's what makes me happy and it's it's what i do and so like i don't know i just i can't even describe it it's kind of new to me to feel like i was so focused on like honestly like when i was in sixth grade i saw a great saxophonist named kirk whalem play for the first time and i was like i just want to play saxophone or something and like tour the world and stuff and i and i did that at 23 and then after that it was like oh shit like what do i do oh crap what do i do now and then i like i just was like well i gotta focus on the instruments i gotta double down on what makes me happy and that's the instruments and uh you know not using profanity on uh wwl <laughs> thank you for that that makes me happy that's what makes me happy you know yeah. I, I, yep where are some of the places that both of you have traveled separately together oh man the world? um we recently just kind of touring so things kind of changed for us this past august of 2023 is when the social media kind of started making some noise uh going viral as it were and uh so we just started touring we just did our first texas run together i mean you know this is um we're, we're 30 year olds talking about virality on social media it's pretty normal <laughs> uh but we for, did our first uh texas run uh, Dallas, I'm sorry, Fort Worth, Austin, Houston, all those shows are really cool. We had the Midwest, we did uh, Chicago, Milwaukee, and Grand Rapids, Michigan. Those shows are incredible. Uh, we did Charlotte, North Carolina on a Wednesday night, and it was really, really cool. Um, an experience I'm sure me and you both would never forget uh, as it pertains to some of the people that it was fun. Uh, but now we're really starting to hit the road together, and but separately, I mean, this man is mania right well going all over the world. and we're putting out a song every month every single month and that's yeah. going to actually increase us to be able to go out on the road and you maybe just make a lot of rotations around the world we are so looking forward to your success together we appreciate you taking the time to be with us today and check them out two o'clock jack daniel stage sax kick stab baby thank you colleen to say it's the first year, Lu Fu Indian Restaurant will be a food at French Quarter Fest. Being there is a really big honor. They're coming out the gate swinging. This is going to be the Kima. This is Indian Chinese influence to our cuisine. This is something we are doing out of the box, which is our regular menu. This is our Kima Samosa. This is the goat, is what gave us our trademark. This is the bucket. We have fed a lot of people around the city. So I think. This is going to be a different experience, but we are definitely strong. We are definitely ready for this, yeah. It's it's insane. It's the fourth year festival for Southern, so they already know what to expect. Like, we literally have a line the entire time we're open, and that's the award-winning chicken sandwich. That chicken sandwich is top of mind for many, but they're bringing back crowd favorite, too. And that is our fish sandwich. We select cucumbers ourselves, marinate them, everything made from scratch. We made more than pies or anybody who wants to enjoy our family's century old feed. Seasoned French Quarter Fest veterans, Mrs. Wheat's Meat Pies will begin for the 40th year in a row. They'll have some the exclusives too. Crab and artichoke. And then the shrimp and I are doing like a Cajun gumbo roux. Food is at the heart of everything too, but it's the people that keep them going. Seeing that fam, uh, fest family and friends that I've built relations with. It's kind of like a reunion every time we do this. To meet more new people, you know, that is the most biggest excitement for me. Leo, WWL, Louisiana. Hi, I'm John Luce, here with my friend Ro from Chevron and Mia X. We're getting ready for French Quarter, which features over 300 musical performances on more than 20 stages. Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of New Orleans music and cuisine. It all takes place April 11 through 14th. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the app today. Don't miss French Quarter Festival. 
from WWL. Hey, welcome back to French Quarter Fest. We are at Spanish Plaza. This is the WWL of Louisiana tent, and we are so happy to be here. We were bon bon vivant. Yay! Abigo, Abigail Excosio and Jeremy Kelly, of course, right. with us. Thank you guys so much for being here. Yeah. Because I know it's a busy day. You play later this afternoon on Esplanade. Yep. On night, which is an amazing stage. Kind of take me through your day leave a big uh, festival performance because it's such like a build up. It is, it's a lot of fun. Today was kind of fun because we got a chance to walk all the way across. We live just outside of Esplanade. Perfect. And so just through here and seeing everybody like sparking up and having fun. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, it's really, there's a great crowd out there today and the weather's awesome. I mean, the traffic getting here, incredible. Was I was like, ah, oh, it's a pain for people trying to get around the city. I mean, it's great news. That's I think good. last year almost 900,000 people came out for the four days. This is 100% local talent. How important to you guys? Yeah, that's a big deal for us, especially the local and the, it's, it's kind of a really beautifully curated uh, love of bands that live and work in New Orleans, yeah. in the French Quarter, all around here. So we, I love that. And so many people come from out of town to see this homegrown talent and remember, and then they kind of follow you guys around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We have a lot of people who say, last time I saw you was at French Quarter Fest, and it's been years that we've been playing, maybe about 10 years. And so that's, that's awesome. I mean, you can't beat that. 10 years? Yeah, wow. So, yeah, we started at the little stage by the boat, and you know, we ping pong around different stages every year, so. What's your favorite thing in 10 years? First of all, it's just been incredible to see the attendance grow, but what's your favorite part of this festival? I think just, just, uh, a lot of festivals change over time, mm -hmm. and we play a lot of festivals and watch that happen. And I love that the festival is staying kind of homegrown. Yeah. And you know, it's like little indie bands that we play with on Friday night at BJ's or whatever. Yeah, are the stages. Yeah, and next to Legends and Big and the Hot Eight, and all of these people are wow. Thomas. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's a really good collection of mus New Orleans musicians. I think. It really is and cool to see how many artists are in different bands too. I'm like, what are you on yeah. that stage? Now you're over here and they're kind of bouncing around so yeah. you can see them in all of us. That's I, true. We, uh, we, we play a little bit with Charlie Halloran, the Trappas, and or Tropicals, and looking at his schedule, yeah. he played in like 10 bands, I think, over the next <laughs> time. He's never We're gonna working. Put that We're working. Down. Yeah, it's just amazing. good. Everybody's working. When you walk to and from stages, you see your friends on all the stages. It's yeah. very, very local in that way. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask. Do you get along with most other bands? Oh, and yeah. Musicians? We oh, yeah. all kind of, um, you know, share bears and it's a really, uh, it's actually a very small community when you get down to it, especially yeah. we're a Frenchman Street band, the last night, and you know, you know each other and you see each other across the street at TBA, Spotted Cat, you think, oh, hi guys. So, nice. yeah. Let's start from the beginning of people haven't you play here for 10 years. So how you got the name? Well, I, I knew the word bon vivant, French. It means to live well, and it kind of uh, refers to a person who like enjoy a luxurious lifestyle. They like to drink and eat and dance and marry. And I thought for an ethos, that's a really good idea. And it's essentially just living well. And uh, we added to bon, it means good, good time. So <laughs> double down. <Perfect>. Commitment. Yeah. <laughs> And you guys are actually married. How does that work out? Great. It's a wild time. It's a wild time. <laughs> we, we get, we got, we've gotten really good at lots of time in small places. That's it. Yeah. 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 Tell me about your other mates that are already out there getting the sound check and ready. Yes, we got D. Mark Quinn is an incredible drummer. He's going to be on the drum kit today. We call him our little Buddha. He's very, you know, quiet, soft-spoken. Yeah, just like look to Bo look to Deacon to see what's on. And we got Jason Jerzok on the sousaphone and electric bass. A lot of energy from that guy. He's Kid Kaboom. And on a trombone to Ellis Cyberling, just a lovely tall drink of water. Great dude. <laughs> <laughs> and you're the saxophonist. Yeah, yes. I, I, I play saxophone. And we're going to have a guest uh, out, uh, an MC called uh, Black Hole that's coming to, up for yeah. a couple of tunes, which we're really excited about. Yeah. Can you give us any more than that? or? We've been kind of playing with him for years at Negril. Uh, he, he steps up and does these incredible off rhymes that are just, I have to 
try not to stare him while he does it because I gotta look cool, but <laughs> he's just screaming. Act like you've been there before, yeah. but you're really like, oh my god. And I think I sat down at this, but he's just going off the cuff, and it's just an incredible art to watch on stage. Yeah, we were playing, we were playing with him, Alyssa jamming with us a little bit last night, and so we were like, we should come tomorrow. Yeah. We'll do the, do the end. So, See, I love so how he's coming and hanging out with us. That yeah. is so amazing. Yeah. You, of course, write the songs, yeah, but you yeah. kind of explain to me the process. You write it, but then you come together as a band to put it all together. That's right. It's kind of like bare, bare bones. Sort of think of it like I, I put the bones together of a skeleton, and then as a band, we sort of put the skin and the hair and the whole, we build it up there. As a, We're definitely a, a little democracy of shit, so it's yeah. It's so cool, though. It's really fun because uh, Abby with an idea, uh, the chords and lyrics and kind of a story, you know, something that you wanted to express. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes it comes out of the music room as a ballad. Mm. And it's this beautiful ballad. And then we start to play through it. And it becomes this up-tempo dance song. Yeah. Still, all the words and the yeah. melodies are, are ballad-like. I don't know. It's really fun, it's the fun to see how, what they end up to yeah, be. Yeah, I mean, that's collaboration. Is it, And I like to, to think I know what the song is and then give it over to the band and watch it become an entirely different thing. Oh. So it's, sometimes you could probably get two songs out of it. Yeah. Though. You're like, yeah. this is what I really meant and this is turned into and they're both beautiful. And we actually, <laughs> over the years, we play some of these songs entirely differently. Huh. Uh, we'll say, oh, tonight is this version. Tonight's going to be this version of that song. So it's it's, a, it's really a, a joy. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, uh, you know, I'm sure you get that from like, oh, this is going to be a big hit. Is it normally as you're feeling normally? It's, Hmm. I've been wrong every time. <laughs> no, that's every like when time. somebody tries to predict the football game. I'm like, I don't. Yeah. yeah. I mean, sometimes I, you know, I have to say, being that he's my husband, he gets, he hears them all. And sometimes I'll be on the, you know, the living room floor and I'll say, hey, what about this? And one time he did say, that is, that's an incredible song. And then it is one of our headlines, you know, our, our hits. So you're right, baby. We got one <laughs> time. <Right there. laughs> You and this is on tape, so that's fantastic. Oh, yeah, it's proof. Yeah, it's funny. Sometimes um, we'll get in the studio, especially, you get really attached to a song and really excited on it. And then, you know, you kind of, once you record it and release it to the universe, you don't get a say on who likes what and yeah. what people would like to hear and what people respond to. And it's fun. Some, some of the ones that kind of fall off a little in unexpected songs that work for you really well and people yeah. want to hear them. They, I mean, like, man, I didn't see that one coming. On how that resonates with a fan that That's you right. have near, yeah, like yeah. maybe they're going through that. Like, yeah. You have yeah. no idea and it just really hits them. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to us about your genre because you are so unique. You're so, I feel like it's rooted in storytelling. It's so New Orleans, but it's got so many other things. Oh, I love that. Leslie, yeah. The, uh, the, I, I think we kind of early on, I love to write songs. I love to tell stories. And a little bit harder to find um, a song that isn't isn't my narrative necessarily. I'm just, I'm, I'm inspired by a story and I want to tell someone else's iteration of their life. And sure. so then I'll wear the bones is, it's just, what's a good story. And then um, we build it together and sometimes it'll be, you know, Deacon goes, what about fourth floor? And then it goes to a different direction. And so, but genres are one these days. Yeah. Um, I feel like and it's so- And you probably so, don't want to be in one. And that's kind of, as I've grown up, I've been like, you know what? Instead of being able to rattle off my th elevator pitch, I just want people to listen to the music. <laughs> and yeah. instead of telling them a that they might say, I don't like that. Uh -huh. I mean, I think the music speaks for itself, but sure. you know, some of the fun ones we've got is a cabaret, creep cabaret was one. I, I like that. Yeah. So I don't know. What, what do you... Yeah. Um, I think I think with the all the different kinds of instruments that exist here, they pull from like yeah. sousaphone instead of bass guitar, all the horns, uh, accordion, all of these, or, or washboard. Those sounds are normal here. And so when you leave here and go on tour with all things, even though we're kind of just a rock band, I think, folk rock, folk indie, folk rock, whatever those all things are, um, <laughs> with, the, with the cool colors that you can paint with here musically, you just I get to transform into whatever you want. Speaking, and that's fun. Speaking of which, because everybody in Orleans loves you, but you tour all over. What's going on right now? Like, are you coming out with an album or what? Yes, yes we're actually putting uh, some putting singles out we're building up a to, to release a single in the springtime maybe the end of the month maybe yeah, yeah, dare so. i say it on air okay. yeah. and uh we'll be doing that
that every month or so until we release our full album this summer. Okay. So we, uh, it's a new game, it's a new day for music, it's everybody's doing it differently these days and so we thought, well singles are lovely because I like to work on the song right then and there and build it to completion so that instead you're doing a little bit all over. I like to sort of present this song as as its entirety. Say, so here we go. This is that one. So it's yeah. so interesting getting in your brain for. <laughs> to, okay, I know you said you've been doing French Quarter Fest for ten years. How long have you guys been together, and how did this band even form? What? I mean, did was the relationship first, and then? Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, yeah. We we uh, had a musical relationship for two days, and then it became a relationship <laughs> pretty, pretty quickly. Um, I think both of us really affected each other's musicians. I mean, the first time I heard Abby sing her own songs, I was just like, I can't believe what's coming in person. It, it, it's really, so it's really sweet. incredible. And so I ran up there and bought her a drink <laughs> and, fu- and, and fussed. What kind of drink? <laughs> it was a rum and coke. Rum and I was coke. a younger nice lady. classic. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then we started playing music together and writing because we made an album pretty early on. And, yeah. Um, Nearly 20 years. Yeah. Then wow. with this new iteration. You guys look so young. Oh, thank you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with this iteration, it's been fun to just kind of, it went from Americana into funky horn band. Yeah. And now, it, whatever she writes, we play. And yeah. it turns out whatever it is, which is fun. Jason so you like, say, oh, what yeah. genre do you like? Okay, we can do something with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Whatever. yeah she's I mean, like, I want to do a country tune. Cool. Okay. Because to be limited by genre when you're writing songs, I feel like I, I don't necessarily want that that sure. boundary. Oh, yeah, sure. and uh, you know, answering your question, Jason always says, well, it's New Orleans. It's about the lives we're living as New Orleans. A lot of these songs are literally about our lives as New Orleanians, and yeah. then it's got instrumentation that's known locally, a sousaphone, horn, so we say New Orleans music. Yeah. <laughs> we got a boat coming through. I love it. Just. Wow, all kinds of boats. This is just such a great atmosphere. I'm glad we, yeah. uh, Spanish Plaza is the part of the French Quarter Fest. Yeah. So you guys are playing tonight at 4.30 to 5, Esplanade Stage. I do want to talk real quick. You're making your own outfit. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 she up so <laughs> many hats, and you do it all well. True. I, uh, you know, as, as, as New Orleans, we costume, and uh, I started getting better on the sewing machine, so I, nice. I thought, well, of all things, I couldn't find clothes I really loved in the stores necessarily, so I tear them up or make them all, and so yeah, I made a little something for today. What's the color palette? It's silver sparkles, nice. <laughs> some sequins. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be beautiful. I can't wait Thank to see you, it. Liz. Anything else you want people to know? We will see you at 4.30 at the Esplanade in the Definitely. Shade till 5.30, babies. Come out and dance in that grass. Abby and Jeremy, thank you so very thank much. Thank you. you. It's, good. it's all on the WWL-TV app. Breaking news. We're following breaking news out of Jefferson Parish. Local weather. We are expecting an of weather day, so make certain that you are weather aware. Original stories. It's a story you'll all see on WWL-TV. Impactful investigations. Changing after a WWL-TV investigation. The latest from the field. We are live in... And the dome. And it was a high drama day in the... Show. Download the WWL-TV app. Day three of French Quarter Fest is well underway, everybody, and we are so excited bringing you more artists' interviews here from our love Louisiana stage here in Spanish. Joining me now is a girl I have been waiting to interview since I first heard Be Your Girl years ago. Tedra Moses is joining me, everybody. So beautiful. Hey, baby. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Happy French Quarter Fest. Happy French Quarter Fest. And I am so glad that you are performing at French Quarter Fest and sitting down with us here in our love Louisiana State. A little birdie told me this is your first year at French Quarter Fest. You're performing tonight, 6.40 p.m. on Black Daniel stage. Talk to me about this performance. How does it feel to be here for the first time performing? It is awesome. It's awesome. You know, I live right street. I got a house right up the street. So it's like I just come on down here and perform for the people. But more than anything, I love this city. And for a long time, my hard work really get a chance to be shown here. So I feel really good that I'm able to do it in a, um, a great festival, such a massive festival. Absolutely. And you're close to stage tonight. Some people may call that the headliner. All right. Quite okay. <laughs> and I love that you're going to be doing it because 
you're a New Orleans girl. You're from here. You started at Bonneville for a while. Shout out to Jim Parrish. Jefferson Parrish. And I heard your sound check earlier. You sound absolutely great. But let me tell you, everybody, a song I was hearing, not that classic, Be Your Girl. Talk to me about some of the songs you're going to be performing for us tonight. Um, you know, I really just wanted to um, show my uh, influence from the city. You know what I mean? And for me, the influence from the city is so many different things. It's rhythms, it's gospel, it's a lot of different things. Hip, you know what I mean? Which is something I think that sometimes get overlooked for New Orleans. And I learned some of my hip hop being here as a child, you know what I mean? And um, so I'm gonna explore all those different sounds that influence me now. That's that's my goal, is to explore all those sounds. And those that come in the records that I've written. Absolutely, you know, I say all that the crowd at French Quarter Fest is a special crowd. You first time last yes. year as a person who was just checking out all the music and now you're up on stage. What are you hoping for from that crowd tonight who's going to be Tidra Moses? Just reception and energy, you know, because I'm a poor myself. I don't know any other way. If it's two people, if it's 10,000, I pour myself out. So it's the energy. What you give me, I'm going to give you back that 10 million times Absolutely. over. Absolutely. And we're going to give you all the energy. I love it. And I mentioned earlier, but I remember when I first heard Be Your Girl, and I was like, ah, I a minute. <laughs> I'm not even a woman, but I understand what she's saying. You right, know what I'm right. saying? The K Tronada remix came out. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Much. Talk to me a little bit more about that song, Be Your Girl, because if you all don't know, celebrating 20 years this year. Yes, the original 20 years this year, my first debut album, Complex Simplicity, is celebrating years this year. And um, to be honest, Kate Trinata and I came up with that record in 2012. So it was well after the, uh, the song was already yeah. out. And connection, and that's why I love DJs, because DJs can change your life, you know? A record for me that changed everything, and it brought more attention to every side of that record, you know? So yeah, Be A Girl is just a, I think it's one of those Renee's record, or one of those records just is gonna live forever. And I'm just be a vessel for it, because Absolutely. I didn't know that was gonna happen when I when I made it. And that's what the song, because like you mentioned, the original came out in 2004, then yeah. it came out around 2012. 2012 yeah. Talk to me about that 2004 song. Was heard it when you first recorded it. Did you think it was gonna song that it was? I or didn't. that it is? We're getting ready to celebrate festival. Presented by Chevron, it all takes place April 14th. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and the free app today. From WWL, Louisiana. Stage. I'm joined right now with one of the vendors, the many vendors that we've been speaking to at this year's festival. I mean, Mr. Jerry Jones, you are with the Creole, uh, uh, the Creole, it's a lot of seeds, hold on, Creole Country Cafe, there that's a lot of seeds, y'all, and they have a lot of good food. Mr. Jerry, I mean, y'all are no strangers to French Quarter Festival. Tell me about the food. I mean, it's looking good, it's smelling good. Tell me about it. Oh, yeah, we got this, the, we have the uh, Buna Egg Rolls, which is something different, something new, a lot of people. Never had it, tasting it, loving it. You know, we're getting different type of reaction. Like, you know, one guy bit into it yesterday. Here, like, oh, you know, so yeah, you're like, oh, man, let's do this. Yes, yes, yes. And the seafood pasta, of course, we had the uh, crawfish, the penne pasta, crawfish, plenty of shrimp, uh, seasoned with the uh, 
I have a cream, so and get I energy. Yes. I had that one. That was the first time I made, so I can tell y'all it's yeah. very, very, very good. But this right here, the French toast. It's chicken bite. Oh. French toast. It's killing it. It's killing it. It's killing the game out here. <laughs> Everybody's loving it. This is going to going to be one of the biggest things. Uh, people gonna be looking for it. And it's worth. Uh, we had some people came over today. We were looking for y'all yesterday. Couldn't find you guys. Couldn't find you. So you know, yeah, this is if you come here, you have to try. They have the uh, the French toast bites with the uh, chicken, and, and we have the sauce. We have like a hot, uh, a hot sweet sauce that we put on it with the butter. You know, make you just, just want to. Just making sure. Yeah, yeah. Right, you know <laughs> just think about. It. <laughs> now we're over here in Spanish Plaza. We got the music yes. going on. Y'all have a lot of other really good vendors yes. around you. Yes. But y'all are no strangers to this. Tell me, what is it like? I mean, the crowd, they just don't stop. So, what is it like for y'all having to keep that rhythm going and keep the food coming? This is a nice adrenaline rush. It's fun. You know, the people are fun. Everybody's having a good time, and it's kind of, uh, uh, it's kind of new, but it's been steady. But everybody is so used to getting out the ferry when they come from make, make the right. We need y'all to start making a left. Come over here to Spanish Plaza. <laughs> you know, a, a lot of people don't know about it. It's gonna, you know, it's gonna build. It's gonna grow. We're gonna give you time to do that. But we're here. Come to the left. Come in front of the river walk. Come support us. Come give us some play over here. You know, so. <laughs> Absolutely. And like a lot of other people, y'all are local, and that's what yes. French Quarter Fest is really all about. Just showcasing that local food, the local artists, the musicians on stage right now, all local. How is it for you to be a part of a festival that really just takes the time to highlight that local talent and what you all do? Oh, it's great. I mean, just seeing so many people from here, you know, come. This is one of the festivals that, you know, we, the, the locals support. You know, we had Thursday. It was nice turning out a lot of people from here. You know, when some of the bands were playing, they were saying, you know, how many people from here? here? But when they were saying, how many people from here in New Orleans? Everybody, yeah, yeah, you know. So it is is, is, is a good thing. It's, it's fun. It's a good vibe. You know, we having a good time, you know, and um, enjoying it. That's all I said. Nice adrenaline rush and it's, you know, enjoying it. I know it doesn't stop. So no, even in no. your regular business, I mean, you all do catering, so y'all are used to these large volumes of food that you're dishing out, huh? Yes, yes. And the good thing, too, you know, we had a few people, you know, they want the cards, they want um, the uh, Instagram site, you know, so it's kind of like getting business. You know, hey, man, we have to call y'all to come do some of this and, you know, give us, you know, get, come try some of these egg rolls and whatnot. So it works out, you know, it works out here and it works out afterwards. It gets you, I guess, more into the community, doing certain things for certain people. So it works out. Now with the Creole Country Cafe, I mean, this is a family-owned business. Yes. Keeping it in a the family. They have yes. made it known time and time again, y'all. They are from the West Bank. Yes. So the, they best bank. the best bank. Yeah. Okay, now. <laughs> Tell me, how has it been kind of with your family and crafting these recipes together? Oh, man, the best, best thing I can say has been a blessing. You know, it was... Kind of like one of my, one of the things my mother, is, you know, they, they dreamed of. You know, they kind of put it in the air. We used to go out to when I remember we were young. We go out to Franklin's and Fair, and we would be going down the road. And my mom would, you know, say like, I wish we could do that. You know, so, and it just happened to where my younger brother started cooking. I did the military, and you know, I started getting into the cooking, watching him, and it just, we, you know, we we're blessed to get a restaurant in the east and just kept doing it. You know, but it's a, uh, it's, it's like a. Uh, uh, Something we just pass it down with it, you know, just like I say, my niece, my nephew, and them, they starting to do it. Their kids are into it now. Yeah, <laughs> their kids are starting to get into it, watching us. And, you know, it's kind of um, nice, just like I was telling my nephew on Thursday, I was sitting back just watching them, and I was just saying, man, this is nice to see here. This is my nephew, you know, my niece, it's their kids starting to see it grow, you know, so pass it on. Right, time. right, right. And everybody enjoying themselves, yeah. you know, having a good time, laughing and having a good time. Now, I know yeah. family, family can get a little much, huh? <laughs> Family can be a little much. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's, there's rough spots. Trust me, yeah. <laughs> it's not all fun. And, you know, every day is not Friday. Trust me. You know, we have our Mondays. Come together and yes. make some good food that people are loving. I mean, y'all were, when I was over there, just seeing the people walking around, you can see the reaction in the food. I know the Buddha egg rolls. Yes. I haven't had a chance to try those yet, but I know, I know it's your yeah. favorite thing. If you had to pick, I know it's hard to pick. If you had pick one, what would you say? What's your favorite? Uh, I would say, like, Yesterday, Thursday, was the French toast bites. This morning, was the French rolls. So it depends on what, man. You know, then tomorrow I'll probably get some of the pasta. Okay. So, you know, but uh, I, 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 the French toast, the French toast bites. That's my, my number one, my go-to. Absolutely. And I mean, here, I mean, y'all, the weather is beautiful. Yes. We're getting the music going, and it's just, it's just the best time to just eat some good food. And y'all definitely have a little bit of that and then some. What else? I know this is just a snapshot. Of what y'all have, what y'all are offering for the folks out here at French Quarter Fest. What else do y'all whip up on like a regular other day? Oh, man. Uh, 
Uh, uh, uh. I'm trying to think. Uh, you know, we like the yeah, we like the boudin. You know, we have sometimes we do the uh, boudin sausage. Sometimes we do the boudin balls. Um, craw, you know, we do crawfish. Got to brought the crawfish and whatnot. You know, crawfish, uh, 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 jambalaya, etouffee. I mean, basically red beans and rice. Yeah, yeah the, the greens. You know, so. Thank you for having Remember, us. we are out here, Bennett Plaza. Go ahead and get the Creole Country Cafe. Yes. They're here with us and the love of Louisiana taste. I mean, I'm going to let you go because I know y'all are. We have so much more. Charmaine Neville will be joining us in just a few, so be sure to stay with us. Louisiana. What can you say? There's no like it. Brimming with history, overflowing with culture, a melted of beautiful people. Some generations deep, others still getting used humidity. It's waterways bustling with industry. It's streets alive with artistic expression. And the food? Oh, the food. But what makes Louisiana great is its people. It's wonderful people. Still standing, still persevering, still fighting. Because here's the thing. We got problems too. And we own up to them. We're not scared of tough issues. We don't back down from tough questions, and we aren't going to run away when things get hard. Sure, we got problems, but WWL, that's why we're here. We uncover lies and find the truth, expose injustice, and get people what they deserve, keep people informed, and keep them safe. We dig deep, find solutions, solve problems, and get stuff done. <gasps> We tell stories and start conversations. We celebrate the good and try to fix the bad. We support local businesses and help them thrive. We work hard, do good, and have fun doing it. From Laplace to St. Bernard, Homa to Covington, Metairie to New Orleans, WWL-TV is now WWL Louisiana. We love Louisiana and fight for it. Hey there, it's Devin Bartolotta. Thank you so much for joining here with musician George Porter Jr. You just stepped off the stage. Yes. How'd it go? It, um, it went very well. It was a very good evening. Um, it was a beautiful day to be out. Sun was out, nice breeze, you know, and, and the crowd was very beautiful. It was great. Yeah, it's nice out. I mean, the, the weather could not be more perfect, but the crowds are also so energetic there's a lot of people out here did you have a pretty good showing a lot of people out there oh yeah 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 i mean i'm not good at counting out numbers but <laughs> i would think there was a few thousand people there for oh, sure yeah? Yeah. that's pretty good so uh, you told me you're done for the night but you're going home to pack so yeah, you stay busy tell me where you're headed yeah uh you know it's i guess that you know at 76 you gotta either stay busy or you're gonna be lazy you know so I, I think I'd rather stay busy. <laughs> I, a, a lot of people would slow down around that time, but you you've got gigs and trips and all kinds of stuff. What you know? What what keeps you going? I, I have a really good band. You know, I have a really great band to play with, um, um, and you know, and everything. I think the most important thing is that um, the the guys I play with, you know, are, are, are great musicians and they they wonderful people that hang out with. So, you know. We, we can climb into my into my um, and my fans' van, you know, and drive thousands of miles and, and not kill each other, you know, because we all have we're having fun and joking and not killing fun, each know. other is very important when you're on a road fun. trip. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you, leave the drive alone. <laughs> that is, yeah, and they control the radio. That's the rule, right? <laughs> so you're headed to Mexico for a, for a performance yes, this weekend. Um, Tell me about that. It's called Panic on a Playa. It's widespread panics. I guess they call it a, a somewhat of a picnic, but it's not really a picnic. It's just a concert at a hotel at the Hard Rock Cafe, cool. and you know, and it's, they sell it out every year. You know, and, and I, I, this will be my seventh year wow. I've done it, and I've I've played an all-star all, um, all outfit. You know. Oh, that's so cool. I mean, you've played with so many, so many musicians throughout your years. When you look around at French Quarter Fest, you see all these cool artists. Who are you listening to, or who are you? Excited to see at French Quarter Fest. I don't get to see anyone. You no. Know, usually, um, the only time, in fact, festival season for me is, is uh, I go out, I play my performance, and uh, and I, well, like today, I might see, I'll see some of Emma Thomas because you know I, she gave me my first out of town gig when I was 17 years old. Oh wow! Know? So um, 
So yeah, I will I will stay for Irma and see her. Mm -hmm. You know, and usually I will see the band that is before me. I will see some of their stuff. But most of the time, once I'm done, yeah. I, you know, uh, I go home. You know, I'm done. You yeah. know, I go happy wood and go go home looking for television. You know, it's funny because we talked to Irma about an hour ago, and she said something very similar. She doesn't really get to see a lot of acts. And I said, well, well who are you watching? And she said, the Game Show Network. Yeah. So, <laughs> it sounds like she was going to go home and relax after a yeah. long day, too. So, well, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't really a long day for us. You know, um, I think we left the house around, it uh, must have been around 1.30. Yeah. And we got out here about close to 2. And, um, you know, we went we took the stage at um, 3.30, played the 4.30. Yeah. And then, um, you know, I got in the court and came over here. Well, well we're glad to have you here. I, I must ask you what this is such a busy time of year for you it sounds like but what is your what is the best part about spring in New Orleans oh well I don't know and I don't know I have a real answer for that no? you know, spring for me you know uh, um, for, for me is I like the fact that well I like the the, the warm days and the cool nights you know uh, um, and, and right now as situated at home I have to um I still haven't I haven't made my my home a, a bachelor pad yet you know <laughs> I mean I, I lost my wife I was going on seven years ago now and uh, and so my daughter tells me all the time she says, you need to you know you need to turn into a bachelor pad you know and, uh, but I haven't done that yet you know no. it's still so much of her still there you know yeah. yeah well thanks so much for sitting down and talking with us after your performance you need to go home and pack. Yes, so we'll I'll let go you go. <laughs> George Porter Jr., thank you so much. And I, I hope you enjoyed your French Porter Fest day. Yes. And I hope you in Mexico. It's going to be good. Great. It's going right. to be good. It's been nice and it's going to be good. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're right. It's all on the WWLT. Breaking news. We're following breaking news out of Jefferson Parish. Blue weather. We are expecting an active weather day, so make certain that you are weather aware. Original stories. It's a story you'll only see on WWL TV. Impactful investigations. Changes are happening after a WWL TV investigation. The latest from the field. We are live in Covington. With and the Dome. And it was a high drama day in the Superdome. Download the WWL TV app. And welcome back to Quarter Fest 2024, where it is all about the music, it is all about the food, the culture, the entertainment. And with us now is one of the artists coming up at 3.30 over on the Avita State. It's going to be Sweet Crude with us now, one of the members. It is Sam. You know, let's talk about, first of all, how you guys you know, present your You're this indie pop rock group, a lot of percuss on the team. So how do you sell yourselves to folks who don't maybe necessarily know who you are? It's kind of tricky, and we often have to do that where you just do. Yeah. It's like, Oh, you know, there's a drums, we play keyboards, uh, dance around, everybody <laughs> sings. But then uh, the other point is we have to make is that most, you're going to hear a lot of French when we sing, because yeah. we thought, um, you know, we grew up around a lot of Cajun and Zydeco music, and there's so many people who are masterful at that. And so, but, you know, we love the King Heads, and we love, uh, you know, Phoenix, and we love, you know, B-52s, mm -hmm. and a lot, of, a lot of quirky pop music, I guess you could say. And so we decided that we want to take that dialect that we, that feels so home to us and put it in new clothes and put it in a new context. So kind of what it is. There's probably a much shorter way to say that, <laughs> but you could say Cajun indie pop, Louisiana French pop, something like that. We love a long version here because we love a story here in Louisiana. So yeah. that's going to work just fine. So you guys started, what, in 2013? You dropped your first album in 2017. I don't want to say relatively new, but you guys have been around long enough to have a journey. How has that been for you guys? Man, it still feels very new. And we still like it's kind of an experiment because every time we go out on the stage, we're doing this thing that, I don't know, we don't see it very much, which is, mm -hmm. which is Louisiana French typically here in music, yeah. Zydeco music, we're putting it in this pop context, still feels fresh, and every time we write a new song, it's like, is this going to work? Let's try this. Let's try it. And I got to say, it's been pretty well received uh, for the most part, that weird amount of salesmanship. We used to feel like, every I used to like every time I go on the mic, I'm like, everybody, we're sweet, crude, we're from New Orleans, you're going to hear yeah. a little French, a little bit of English, and, uh, you, you, hopefully you'll get used to it. <laughs> but now I feel like that I wouldn't do that anymore. And I feel like when we go places, that story is just embedded in the music. Yeah. And I feel like it's been going pretty well, and we're very fortunate to be invited again to play French Quarter Fest. And sort of like, um, this is a huge point of pride to be able to play on such an awesome stage. And uh, yeah, we're happy to do it, and that still it feels great. 
How do you decide on the set list? <laughs> well, you know, we had a festival. We wanted it to be lively. We wanted yeah. it to be exciting. We, we had actually a lot of brooding, dark stuff, uh, especially through the pandemic. That was a weird time. So with all that, we try not to linger too much on the minor keys, too much on the sad. Um, we, we decide on some upbeat stuff in our catalog. We play some choice cover material. Maybe mm -hmm. we touch a traditional Cajun song that we've uh, updated, brought to new life. Um, but basically, we just want to get the crowd hyped. You know, what is it like as an artist to look around at a festival like this and you see so many different stages, so many different genres of artists coming through this festival, all really celebrating one thing, and that is the culture and the music of this city in Southeast Louisiana. It's awesome. We're so glad to be a part of the context. And we're just telling a, one little sliver of that story, which is the current state of Louisiana French. And so we're so glad to be just like in the same, on the same uh, stage that like yeah. you might see an Irma Thomas or a Dixie Cups or something like that. Um, that's a, a huge honor, huge, um, I don't know, we're humbled by that. And do you draw your inspiration from other artists, like those legendaries? Absolutely, the ones that we absolutely. You know, we try not to do like close to the sun because <laughs> I mean, we don't want to feel like that we're appropriating that. Right. We can't help but be influenced by brass band music by the soul New Orleans, soul music of New Orleans, by jazz and all that and all, and all the above. Uh, can't help but put that in our music in our own way and bring that energy to the I know you guys want you said you want to hype the crowd during yes. your set list. So how do you hype your sub but also on the back end decompress after a set like that? Oh my goodness. So we like to for the set, okay? We all get in a circle. It's very weird. I'd be I'd be uh, embarrassed if I ever got on camera uh, on WWL, but we can make uh, it happen. We can make that happen. We all get in a circle and we all do kind of an improv theater game where we all hoop and holler and make noises mm -hmm. together and just shake out all the nerves and stuff like that because it is leading right up to the yeah. stage and the hustle to get on stage uh, at a festival. So you know, we make our noises, we shake all of our tension out, and then we go on stage and just get. And we try to do, we try to teach the crowd a little bit of French, you know, even if allez or on est paré, which means we're ready. You know, like allez, let's go. You know that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and we can kind of use our identity and use the, and uh, blend that with the Chris energy to kind of make something happen to them. But really, even if you don't know French or Cajun French, you can relate to it because you're the time. I mean, I just I walk around and say "c'est bon," like yes, it's no bon, business. Exactly, exactly. Les c'est les bon temps roulés. You know, we all say "lagna," say "this beaucoup that." So we know these words and these phrases, yeah. even if we think we don't. We have a song about that. It's, we have a sweet crew mm -hmm. featuring Big Frida. That, I was going to ask you guys about that. Yeah, your, your so team we, that. we did a collab with Big Frida, harping and like embracing all of those token words and all yeah. of our vocabularies that way. And so, uh, you know, we want to embrace that, even if it's just those little phrases we have from the, that are just lingering in our vocabulary. Let's lean into that. Let's use as much as we can. And it shows you the uniqueness of the culture when it comes to the music here. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's what makes Louisiana exceptional uh, compared to the rest of uh, what we have around us is that we have this this interesting heritage and want to celebrate that in our own little indie pop kind of way. And uh, we think that Louisiana map that way in a global context because the global French speaking world has Louisiana as, a, as its own uh, little vacation, as its own eye culturally unto itself that they can be like, oh my goodness, how is it still happening? It's working. What, you know, it, so it makes Louisiana fascinating. It, it works here. Yeah. Any artists that you guys are excited to see from your uh, own standpoint? Well, we just saw a Dixie Cup. We're most excited to see today, I think. I think they they really like embrace the soul nuance yeah. that's happening today that we were uh, super excited about. So, yeah, I mean, um, there, there's, there's this, this festival has so much to offer. And so, you know, we're grateful. And also for the food. So uh, we're so looking forward to that every time. It's like we want more time to be able to hang out longer and longer. We do have to be at our stage at a time reporting for duty. So uh, it's just awesome. We're so glad to be here. And for WWL, I mean, you know, uh, we all kind of as a group lean WWL mm -hmm. during Katrina. We lean on WWL now. We go to DaleTV.com, look at that radar. Thank you so much, WWL, for giving us amazing well, The music just sounds better when the weather is good. <laughs> yeah, y'all y'all did that. Uh, you know, in terms of like how we, you know, depend on y'all for disseminating this and helping us decide what to do, what to wear. Uh, so we're so grateful here today. Well, we we're happy to do it. I know you have to report for duty soon, so yes, we'll let sir. you get yes, to sir. it. Same sweet crew, gonna Thank be you, Mike. looking forward to seeing you guys over on the uh, beat stage just a little bit. So uh, get to it. Thank you appreciate so it. much, Mike. We As always, it. we're gonna have so much more for up on WWL Plus uh, coming from the French Quarter Fest 2024 right here in Louisiana's uh, festival. Our stage in Spanish Plaza. Stick around. We're back. in our crime coverage, the way that we're approaching crime.
we look at things on the surface level. And when you look at surface level, you tend to think, oh, well, if we just need, if we arrested the carjacker, you know, the crime would go down. If we would simply put people in jail, give stiffer penalties, then crime will go down. Well, obviously that has happened in the past in New Orleans. And crime did go down for some time and shot right back up again. So at some point, our things have to be superficial and we have to ask the question, what's the root cause of this? What's the nucleus of the problem? What's the th right at the center of it that we're just missing? You know, we have to look back at what we're doing wrong, at why these were disinvested from, at statistically why more crimes in this particular community versus that one. Um, we have to take at what is pushing people to do. Is it a poverty rate? You know, is it income? Have a playing field so no one would want to commit a robbery? There are so many different answers we can give to this. I think that we've tried all of the ways, or at least law enforcement tried all of the ways that give you an immediate response. We just rest our way through this. Let's lock people up. Let's put them um, away or give harder penalties or charging teenage adults. I think WWL and our crime focus on while this is happening and while we do understand penalties are issued, we ask why it's happening. And particularly, is it happening to or with random demographic? Let's take a look at the overall and not just address what are, you know, quick. Well, first, Katie, Mike, and I have a combined 90 years of reporting experience. So we know what it is to be in New Orleans. We know what it is to this town. And we have the most experience of action in this area. As I've worked at WWL over the years, one of the things thought of in the investigative unit is the fact that my stories have been able to make that comes in the form of changing laws, that comes in the form of elected officials that ended up in jail because of the stories that did. Um, that goes for myself, David Hammer, Mike Pearlstein, all have done stories that have really made an impact in the community. And I think that one of the things that WWL's legacy is about, it's being a part of the community, it's making a difference, it's being a voice for people who can't use theirs or don't have one. Trust me. Uh, stories that appear on TV when really has deep personal impact. We with those people, those families, those institutions, times for years, and in my case, I can honestly say lifetime in New Orleans. Well, I'm from New Orleans. I grew up in New Orleans, and I want to see this community do better. I want it to always be improving. So that's what motivates me at the end of the day. That's what gets me going every day to try to expose the in our community, to expose the problems with our government, and hopefully. That presence is a backstop so many things that could be going wrong. Sure, slip our attention momentarily, but there's a record and we're the ones who followed those tracks. We really want to make sure, first of all, of course, that we're at is huge for us as meteorologists. We want to do a really good job with that. Um, and of course, we want to get the information to viewers in a way that's really clear, understandable, and in a way that can really help you decide what to do. What we do here as a team at WWL, we try to make sense of all that uncertainty so you can make the decision to uh, safe or do what you need to do for approaching storms or whatever the active weather may be. There are folks out there that have that instilled fear of storms, the unknown of um, pop-up thunderstorms, tornadoes, as well as probably one of the biggest events in southeast Louisiana being. And so I try and quell those fears by answering all questions that the public may have 
about these events. The, you know, there's no way to avoid them usually, but if I can kind of answer those questions and find at ease, I've done my job. Really what motivates me to get up every day is knowing people are safe and they know exactly what to do with their strengths. Everything has a story. My father once shared a recipe with me. And outside of the actual recipe, it was for stuffed bell peppers. Here is the story of being taught how to make stuffed bell peppers. Talking about the family that connects back to St. John the Baptist, you know, to my grandmother growing up in Edgar, Louisiana, my grandfather growing up in the Seventh Ward, and, and just I, everything connects us back to family and it connects us back to the, that's through the music, you know, whether that connects us back to me, that's through the food, that's through the architecture, and that is even through the clothing that we wear, our slang, that, you know, um, you know, being able to share all of those kind of colloquialisms, those things that we say, the fact that we say Hundy and not Burgundy, you know, the fact that we can get like Chapatulas, we can connect all of those things uh, back to the and back to family. So I think that in, in selling like the Black Masking Indians and celebrating food and her, it is also honoring those that came before us and honoring the people who gave us these things either out of necessity or gave us because they were just there was they just wanted to give something great. And welcome to 2024, where we are rocking and rolling with a lot of artists. Quarterfest, what it is. We are on the Love Louisiana stage, sponsored by. With us now is the Abrams and Psy Academy Brass Band. Have done so much work over the past year. Uh, first, let's in regards to the, uh, to the band. Uh, my name is Mr. John the Band of the Abrams and Psy Academy. Uh, I know what I'm the band captain at Everson Academy and I play trumpet. Trumpet, right? How y'all doing? My name is Cesar Mejia. I play trombone for Everson Academy. You know, when you think about French Quarter Fest, what is it like to know these younger men to the fold of what we're seeing for these, you know, legendary artists here in New York? It's like an amazing, an amazing um, event, an amazing time for them because it's give them an opportunity to like, be like performers. And like this, it, this may be something that they want to do once they get older. They may be the ones that everybody's like legendary yeah. one day. So like this of them, okay, then maybe this is something I can do. And just put it from this point on. And how have you seen that have an impact on kids' lives? A lot of times, like a lot of kids have a lot of different options. A lot of music, thing, especially in our city, that kids like gravitate to. I think that these brass man kids, they see a lot of the second lines, they see a lot of the culture, yeah. culture of New Orleans. So I think with them, they, and they also like get a little, little money every now and then for doing some particular um, gigs. So I open them to them, so them pursuing it will be great, you know. Musician, what, in, what makes you want to do this? Um, it's really about the color. It's like at a young age. You just start doing a the culture, being around the older people that do the culture, and they like pass it down to you so you can learn once you get older generation. It's really just like a trickling effect. And what is a young musician that these older musicians are really a part of? It? They want you guys to take up that legacy. I mean, they care. They not selfish. They like to pass the knowledge down so we can pass it once we get older, and we can do the same thing so we can. And, and you as well, you know, when you think about the musicians around, so many of them, why be a part of that and come into that fold? A, since you're talented, you don't want to go to waste. You know, build up the culture, have fun, just enjoy yourself. So kind of tell me about the practices that you guys did this performance. Practices we got it done is like we going to learn the songs and uh, all that, but it's all hard work. We end up having fun. I was going to add a hard work, especially as young adults. You could be doing so many other things. The passion comes in. Why for you a passion? The passion, it really can help us stay 
are the streets. Uh, he yeah. wants us to become successful young and a passion is really just about having fun. What would you say to other kids who want to dabble in music as well? Uh, just try. If you don't try, you never you never gonna know if you like got talent to do it. You could just pick up a horn and play a note and then boom, you like you might put the horn down again. So kind of talk about the performance that you guys are going to be doing. So what, what can folks expect from the performance? I think they're going to be expecting, like, the energy and, and, and entertainment. One of the things, like, just teaching them, I was big on a performance thing, like, like yeah. seeing a crowd, entertaining them, understanding them from your um, your So everybody wants to come to see a show. Um, come and see anybody boring. They want to see a show. So I just want um, to show that they, it's just basically going to be very entertaining. They're gonna some, most most important. They're gonna have fun with it, and that's what sets New Orleans. You know, are there? Do you guys have some favorite musicians that you look up to? Here is Louis Armstrong. Is it? Yeah, I, Louis Armstrong, cause he played trumpet. And what made you want to pick up trumpet? Did you go to another instrument first? First one. I used to always be at home drumming on the corner. I was like, man, man, I want to get in the band. And then boom, I just picked up a trumpet, but they never put it down again. And why trombone for you? Originally, I was on saxophone, but you know we lost a whole lot of trombone players that year. I decided to put me on trombone. It's like I you have to feel the sense. music. Sometimes you have to direction leads you. What? How have you seen that really work with the musician? I think with them, out, you know, teaching like young musicians, like you got to teach them playing from the soul. You know, a lot of the times it separates a lot of musicians is like playing with that feeling, like playing with like. Yeah. You know, some play, but playing with that feeling that makes people gravitate to which, and that's one of the things, like, I really try to get them to, like, under, you just can't play the instrument. You got to put your heart and soul, if you, if you go on that day, you put your, your, what you're going through into that instrument. Just be amazed how people will just love what you're playing at that particular time. And that's what musicians are all about, mm -hmm. that, that we see it in any stage around here. What is it? not just these young musicians, but also the audiences can take away with them listening to a performance. I just want to just take, you know, just take away doing some positive things in the city. Like, um, I know a lot of the, t sometimes we see a lot of negative, negativity and stuff, but they are really doing some positive things in the city. And I just want, when they leave, like the crowd, the people that see them perform, just say, I can't want to see those kids again. Like, all oh, these kids are going somewhere. I want to see these kids. I don't want them to encourage the kids. Yeah. Be like, when they come on stage, be like, man, y'all did a good job. Just, like, let's like, keep it going. Keep it going. Don't give up. You know what I'm saying? But it's great to all for being with us. You know, best of luck to your futures as musicians. I know you guys are going to appreciate you everything that you've been doing as well. And stick around because we're going to have so much more for you. Come to Quarter Fest 2024 right here on the Lump Louisiana stage. And It's all on the WWL-TV app. Breaking news. We're following breaking news out of Jefferson Parish. Local weather. We are expecting an active weather day, so make sure that you are weather aware. Original stories. It's a story you'll only see on WWL-TV. Impactful investigations. Changes are happening after a WWL-TV investigation. The latest from the field. We are live and coming with... And the Dome. And it was a high drama day in the Superdome. Download the WWL-TV app. 2024, we are on the Love Louisiana stage right here in Spanish. The jacket's going behind us. The artists are already going, but we're going to talk about something a little comes to us, and it's the food and the amazing things you can find out here. Hot. And one of the things that you're going to want to have to get is something to cool off. A towel will do it if you're going to be out here in Spanish Plaza with us. This is the mastermind behind you, Deverney. Appreciate you being with us. So, the first question is what's Italian ice cream? It is a soft, fruity dessert. It has a consistency okay. of ice cream, but it's not. Non-dairy, so mm -hmm. good for everybody. Yes. Six wonderful flavors out here today. And what's so amazing is all of our flavors have fun names. Um, we have Oh My God, that's the big seller. <laughs> we have Kiss My Strawberry, and it takes two to mango. We also have Cotton Candy, Blew My Mind, 
raspberry uh, watermelon blast. So this is your first year as a vendor out here. This is my first vendor. I've been what is it here. like to see all of it happening and coming to fruition? It, it, it was amazing. It was uh, a lot of nervousness, anticipation, a lot of ice making. Uh, we, we made, we've been made for three months for this event. So I'm very elated to have this opera. I've been coming to the uh, French Quarter Festival all my life. Where do you store all that ice? Warehouse. We have a warehouse in Bell Chase where we store the ice. And you have have to bring more over here? We did today. Wow. We did. Uh, we, uh, we sold out a lot yesterday and we had to replenish this month. So kind of tell me a little bit about where this idea came from, where the, where the business came from. Well, um, actually, I've been eating Italian ice uh, for a very long time. Uh, there's a, a company on uh, Carrollton and Canal, okay. and I've always eaten Italian ice. So I lost my son. Some, something comforting for me at night was to eat Italian ice. And I'm, I eat this a lot. Let, let, let me see how to make Italian ice. So I uh, looked it up, re did the research, took a class, went to Florida. Bought the um, all the equipment and stuff. Uh, we started this company in uh, February 2023, and we have gained a lot of. We have done a lot of major festivals last year, and this year we do private and corporate events. Uh, and we've also added a mobile a trailer onto the company. So we. Gain a lot of traction real fast within a year. Just the way to go, and you, yes. your business sense, uh, a piece of that comes from losing your son because you took up his entrepreneurial spirit from yes. his beverage. Yes, um, actually, my son inspired me to uh, actually entrepreneur. My son was Devin Espadron. He was the uh, creator and CEO of Limit Beverage Company. His dad and I, uh, David Espadron, we sent you the company Element Beverages, and just. This is an extent uh, from Elements. You know, for folks who may try this for the first time at best, which one do you recommend they go to first? I would say uh, the mango. The mango. I, I like the, I, well, my favorite is the mango. Um, a lot of uh, customers, they're, you can mix your, so a lot of customers there are actually, <laughs> they're actually doing mango and colada or mango and uh, strawberry. And of course the kids, they're getting cotton. So if you have kids, all the kids have been ordering the cotton candy. What are you getting from folks who try this for the first time? Oh my God, this is so so soft. Oh, this is, I mean, I've had repeat customers. They have, there is one guy, he's the manager out here. He's been having times. In the same day? In the same day. Wow. <laughs> All the same flavor, been mixing. No, it up. he's got all the different. That's the way you gotta do it. You gotta That's try every single one of them. Do it. Yeah. So, and I came up with an Italian because it's Italian with an E. So it's Italian happy. We want you to be happy eating Italian ice. Well, we certainly are. Appreciate you being out here. If you want to come Thank try you. this out, it is right behind us. And actually, you can where we are out here at Spanish Plaza, right by the fountain. We're gonna be back with so much Quarter Fest 2024 from the Love Louisiana stage. Louisiana. What can you say? There's no it. Brimming with history, overflowing with culture, a melting pot of people. Some generations deep, others still getting used. Hi. It's waterways bustling with industry. It's streets alive with our tip. And the food? Oh, the food. But what makes great is its people. It's wonderful people. St still persevering. Still fighting. We got problems too, and we own up to them. We're not vicious. We don't back down from tough questions, and we aren't going to run away hard. Sure, we got problems, but WWL, why we're here. We uncover lies and find the truth and justice and get people what they deserve. Keep people informed from safe. We dig deep, find solutions, solve problem stuff done. <gasps> We tell stories and start. We celebrate the good and try to fix the bad. We support local and help them thrive. We work hard, do good, and doing it. From Laplace to St. Bernard, Homa to Coventry to New Orleans. WWL TV is now WL Louisiana. We love Louisiana and fight for it. 
anniversary of French Quarter Fest is well underway, everybody, and we are so excited to be bringing more artists interviews here from our love Louisiana stage here. And so joining me now is a girl I have been waiting to interview since I heard Be Your Girl years ago. Tidra mows me, everybody. Hello, beautiful. Hey, baby, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you, Quarter Fest? Happy French Quarter Fest. And I am so glad that you are playing at French Quarter Fest and sitting down with us here in our love Louisiana stage. Little Birdie told me this is your first year perform French Quarter Fest. You're performing tonight, 6.40 p.m. at Daniel stage. Talk to me about this performance. How does it feel to be here for the time performing? It is awesome. It's awesome. You know, I live right up the house, right up the street. So it's like I just come on down here and perform for the people. But more than anything, the city, and for a long time, my hard work didn't really get a channel on here. So I feel really good that I'm able to do it in such a um, festival, such a massive festival. Absolutely. And you're closing out the stage. Some people may call that the headliner All right. for tonight, okay? <laughs> and that you're going to be doing it because you're a New Orleans girl. You're from here. You started it before a while. Shout out to Jefferson Parish. Jefferson Parish. And I heard on check earlier you sound absolutely great but let me tell you a song i was hearing was not that classic be your girl talk to me also going to be performing for us tonight um you know i really just wanted to um show my uh influence from the city you know what i mean and for me there be so many different things it's rhythms it's gospel it's a lot of different hip-hop you know what i mean which is something i think that sometimes get overlooked for new orleans and I used to my hip hop being here as a child, you know what I mean? And um, so I'm gonna explore different sounds that influenced me as a child. That's that's my to explore all those sounds. And those that come within the records that I've written. Absolutely, you know, I say all the time, the crowd at French Quarter Fest is a show crowd. You came for the first time last yes. year as in who was just checking out all the music and now you're gonna be up on stage. What are you for from that crowd tonight who's gonna to come see Teacher Moses? Just passion and energy, you know, because I'm gonna pour myself out. I don't know any other way. If it's two people, if it's I pour myself out. So just the energy. What you give me, I'm gonna give you ten million times Absolutely. over. Yeah. And we're gonna give you all the energy. I love it. And I mentioned it earlier, but I remember when I first heard Be Your Girl, and I was, uh-uh, wait a <laughs> minute, I'm not even a woman, but I understand saying, you right, know what I'm right, saying? Right. And then the K Tronada remix came out. Oh my goodness, so much. Talk to me a little bit more about that song, Be Your Girl. You all don't know, it's celebrating 20 years here. Yes, the original is celebrating 20 years this year, my first debut album, Plicity, is celebrating 20 years this year. And um, to be honest, and I came up with that record somewhere around 2012. So it was well, the song was already yeah. out. And you know, it was just a connection. And that's why I love DJ, because DJs can change your life, you know? And he made a record for me that changed everything. And it brought more attention to everything outside of that record. But yeah, Be A Girl is just a, I think it's one of those records, like a maze record. One of those records is just gonna live forever. And I'm just grateful to be a vessel for it. Because that was gonna happen when I, when I made it. And that's what's so great about the song, because you mentioned the original came out in 2004, then yeah. the Nada came out around 2012. Well, yeah. Talk to me about that 2004 song, when you first, when you first recorded it. Did you think it was going to be the song it was? I or didn't. that it is, right? I didn't. I didn't think, you know, when you're a new artist, you know what is going to perform and what's not going to perform. You're just pouring yourself out, right? And I shown this guy, this really massive Didn't we all, baby? Didn't we all? Nailed him. Nailed him. I don't have a crush on him no more. But I shown this guy, and I just wrote it from the perspective of if he was in my neighborhood and how I would feel. And I was so shy. I was such a big crush girl when I was young. And so I was just really, really shy. And I wrote it from a perspective of if I could tell how I felt. And I think that's an 8 to 80 subject matter, you know? Everybody can read. Absolutely. And whether it's 2004 or 2024, that's what's so great about this. It still resonates today. And baby, you are still making music. You had a song that just came out last month in March with my boy. Yeah. Talk to me about this record. Yeah. Come run home. Run home is what it's called. And Pell, first of me all. Too. He's a really, really talented artist that is so diverse mm -hmm. in his way. He's not like stuck to like one way of doing uh, music. And I was interested in him and then 
I would see him out and I'd be like, hey, pal, blah, 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 whatever. We kind of just see each other. And one day he hit me and he was like, yo, I want you to get on the record. And I was in Miami and I said, I can't really get out there. He said, well, I'll just send it to you. And we just worked like that. We collaborated like, really, really wonderful. I really love that record. You know, it's a jam because if you all don't know Pepper, he's a DJ. He's a well-rounded artist. He even sings a bit. He does yeah. as well. I've yeah. interviewed him before and boy, can he do a little. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. And Pell I got appreciate it. that you're still working, that you're still making. Like, what does the future for Teacher Moses look like? It's really cool. You're here 20 years after my debut album and still doing it. And, and able to do it at a nice level you know what I mean and so the future for me is we're putting out a within the next month okay. I want to say it's May May some, yeah, uh, I can't, I'm not good with the dates okay, it's a lot today but I can't remember but in spring. May sometime in spring yes um in May we're going to put out a record um called with all which is a very good beautiful acoustic record but the words aren't stick you know if, I can't really get into it too deep but with all my heart some with all my heart and now I want to express well, with listen, all my heart I how I feel about it. On WWL, Great Day, Louisiana. When that record comes oh, yes. out, you have to come on. Oh and yes. Perform for oh us. yes. So, oh yes. <laughs> this, you know, I have one more question for you. We're at French Quarter Festival. The great. The weather is going to be beautiful yes. this weekend. I know you're going to be serving for already. Sure. But how does Teacher Moses French Quarter Fest when you be on stage? Where can we see you? What you gonna be eating? What you can tell me all of that. Well, you know, first and foremost, she's gonna <laughs> shield her from the sun. Okay, because it's <laughs> And then secondly, I'm gonna have a pair of sneakers on. I'm gonna have me a cute little backpack today. I got my little guitar. And you know, that's how I festival anyway. But then I, I wanna hit, I think, but I think for me, French Quarter Festival, I really love the food. So, so we just spoke about Adiz Snola, and I hadn't had a chance to get over the restaurant every time I come here. But then I'm walking around and I see Adiz Snola searching for food. I'm trying to stay out of the sun. And when I and whenever the uh, artist that I'm really interested in, I'm gonna rush to that stage. Is there somebody you've been seeing? You know, we still have two days, everybody to check out a lot of it. And if not here right now, who's an artist you're listening to? Who's in Tedra Moses's like Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube platform you use? You know, um, as far as the artists here that I'm not exactly sure. There's so many. I have to kind of like narrow it to get out of here. Yeah, <laughs> so many. But uh, as far as who I'm listening to, I love Keon Dixon. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He's a soul singer. He's an independent. I'm pro artist because I'm an independent artist. I love Keon Dixon. Um, there's so many people. Lucky Day, who's also from New Orleans, and I think people don't know he's Anna. Um, uh, who else am I listening to? Cowboy Cut, I haven't heard. Oh, baby, I haven't. You gotta listen to that. We okay. Wrap this up. Okay, all right. There are some jams, but before we listen to all of that Cowboy Carter, listening to T. Dramosis yes. tonight, everybody, 6.40 p.m., right behind at the Jack Daniel stage. She's our girl. She's my girl. You are that girl. <laughs> Teacher, thank you so much for thank being you, here. Thank you, baby. I appreciate um, you. Hi, I'm John Boutte, here with my friends, Bro from Chevron and Mia X. We're getting ready for French Festival, which features over 300 musical performances on more than 20 stages. Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of New Orleans music, culture, and cuisine. It all takes place April 11th through 14th. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app today. Don't miss French Quarter Festival from WWL. With the legendary Irma Thomas, you're getting ready to perform tonight. We are having a beautiful day for this French Quarter Fest, aren't we? In my life, every day I wake up is a beautiful day. I love that outlook. <laughs> I love it. So tell me, what can people expect from your set tonight? What are we? What are you going to perform tonight? They're going to get Irma. They're going to get Irma. Yeah, okay. I don't. I don't work from a set list. My audience is my set list. Tell me about that. Are you speeding <laughs> off the energy? What do you mean? My audience is my set list. Okay. I come on stage. I sing a few songs. My audience yell out what they want to hear, and that's what I sing. Wow. So that's my set list. I feel like not too many people can do that. You, I mean, you've been doing this a long time. I've been so doing just... it that way for years and years and years. Wow. Because I used, to, I, I've never worked from a set list hmm. because most of the time my audiences are folk who've been around me for years and they want to hear their favorite song. Since I can't read their mind, I sing what they want to hear. I love that. <laughs> we were talking a little bit about 
uh, you know, Mother's Day, things have changed a little bit since the pandemic. How have things changed for you in recent years? What, well, what we haven't you? done Mother's Day since the pandemic yeah. originally. And so other than that, I've gotten older and I've slowed down. I don't take as much work as I used to. And I just finished doing a gospel CD. And so yesterday I was in the studio till 8 o'clock last night. So, wow. <laughs> and we still have to do photo shoots and all that good stuff. So, oh and gosh. I just completed an album with Galactic. And it's going to be uh, Audience with the Queen is the name of the, the album. So, so two anyway. new albums we can expect from you soon? Huh? You said two new albums then that we can yeah, expect one, from you soon? Yeah, one, one gospel and one R&B. <laughs> Wow. So I've covered the, covered so the game. What was, why do both at once? Or what's, what's the answer? How it do was, you do it, both it at just once? worked out that way because the people who involved were, are from Europe and they wanted to come while the French Quarter Festival was going on and, and be able to do two things. So mm -hmm. that's how it worked out. <laughs> so when are we going to, when can we hear them? When, when's the gospel? Well, this one, out? the one that I finished last night, probably won't be out until somewhere this summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You just performed at the Dew Drop In, the reopening of the Dew Drop the In. Can yes. you tell me about that? What that was like for you? Well, yeah, it was. It brought back a lot of memories, and I did a lot of the songs that I used to do when I worked the Dew Drop. Yeah. You, we're we're talking sixty some years ago. <laughs> wow. What, what was that flashback like? Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. It was fun. Are, are, are things obviously the world is so much different, but are things at the Dew Drop In different? Are you glad to see it back? I think that they, they did a beautiful job remodeling it, and I think a lot of the younger people who will be playing there will appreciate what the Dew Drop was all about. Yeah. yeah. So hoping they bring a little bit of a younger crowd in and... Uh, well, yeah, because most, most of us old ones are gone. <laughs> so they're going to have to bring in a lot of the younger ones. But you're keeping that memory alive, and, and you're going to perform I'm trying. tonight. <laughs> I'm trying. Um, what, what is that like to appeal to the younger, the younger generation and see some new faces out in the crowd? It's fun. I, a lot of them have done their homework and they've, they've listened to some of my music and they yell out what they want to hear. And I'm honest enough with them to sit, tell them because I carry an iPad with all of my lyrics in it. And I'm, I'm smart enough and wise enough that if there's something I haven't done in a while, I let them know that I haven't done it in a while. And if it's in my cheat iPad, I'll look it up and sing it. <laughs> That's so smart. <laughs> That's so smart. I want to talk about French Quarter Fest because there are so many local acts here yeah. and new people on the scene. Yeah. What are you listening to right now or who are you hoping to see? I'm a game show network. <laughs> the game show network? <laughs> well. I mean, but who at French Quarter Fest or any I, local artist? I don't have time to listen to anybody at French Quarter Fest because oh. I'm coming out here, I'm on my way to go to work. Okay. And, I, and of course, I'm a view with you guys. And of course, by the time I get back, it'll be almost time for me to go on. Yes. <laughs> I don't get a chance to hear anybody. That's fair. <laughs> All right, so you're gearing up to perform in just about 15 minutes yeah. here. My very uh, quarter fest was played with Ronnie Cole. Wow. And what, when? Oh, 100 years ago. <laughs> 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 they didn't even, at that wasn't even a, a, a stage. We, we played from a platform, so. Yeah. Isn't that amazing how much it's grown oh, in that yeah, time? It has grown tremendously. Wow. Yes. Wonderful. All right, well, Miss Irma, thank you so much. It's wonderful speaking with you. My pleasure. And I, I, I know they're very excited to watch you perform tonight, so we're going to let you go. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Louisiana. There's nowhere else like it. Brimming with history, overflowing with culture, and melting pot of beautiful people. Some generations deep are still getting used to the humidity. Hi. It's waterways bustling with industry streets alive with artistic expression. And the food? Oh, oh. But what makes Louisiana great is its people. Its whole people. Still standing. Still persevering. Still fighting. Because here's the thing. We got problems to we own up to them. We're not scared of tough issues. We don't bag the tough questions, and we aren't going to run away when things get hard. Sure, problems. The WWL, that's why we're here. For lies and find the truth. Expose injustice and get people with their earth. Keep people informed and keep them safe. We dig deep. Solutions, solve problems, and get stuff done. We tell stories and start conversations. We celebrate the good, fix the bad. We support local businesses and help them. Through. We work hard, do good, and have fun doing it. From to St. Bernard, Homer to Covington, 
Metairie to New Orleans. WWL TV is now WWL Louisiana. We love Louisiana and fight for it. Before the music yesterday morning, and you can watch all of our coverage on WWL Plus and our Facebook page. And you can come see us out at the festival right now. That's where we find our Devin Water. A lot of Devin having fun out there. Sharice, I really lucked out with the workday assignment today. The weather is beautiful. We're having a great time. The music is great. The people out by our Love Louisiana stage have been so much fun. We've got all the activities here. We have Plinko, we've got Connect Four, we have a photo booth, people loving. And what is French Quarter Fest with the music, without the music, but without the food? And I'm here with Jimmy Set. He is with Creole Cuisine. He's the executive banquet chef there. You brought us some food here, and food is such a big part of enjoying French Quarter Fest. Absolutely. You know, there's great music, obviously, but this is probably one of the best food festivals in the country. Uh, I think there's upwards of 60 food vendors here this year. Um, we're lucky to have three awesome booths, uh, Kingfish being one of them. We're spawned the culinary demo stage, and this is actually what we featured earlier today is our Condolay Cracklin nachos. So what all is in here? Tell me about this. So this is our Cracklin, or like basically fried pork rinds, some slow braised cachalé pork with a mustard barbecue, pimento cheese queso, a poblano pico de gallo, and a little bit of sour cream and Aleppo pepper on top. Oh my gosh. This sounds incredible. And you've got, you said three booths here underneath your, your company. Tell me a little bit about what else you guys have. So we have Kingfish right here at uh, Waldenburg Park. And then in Jackson Square, we've got uh, Boulevard American Bistro and Bruce Star's Restaurant and Courtyard, two of our, uh, you know, two of our, our brand concepts. Uh, and Bruce Star's is serving a crab cake slider and a crawfish remoulade. And Boulevard is doing their Boulevard fried oysters and their smoked salmon dip. Oh my gosh, so I, I have to say that you are not going to find food like this festivals outside of New Orleans very often. Like that, this is this is local and it's delicious. Yeah, absolutely. You're not going to see this anywhere else. It's you know we, we live in New Orleans, right? And we in Louisiana. We love music. It's a great celebration of those. I know at one point French Quarter Fest was being rated as the top food festivals in the country. And if you come down here, you exactly why. There's everything. We've got a Vietnamese food booth right next to us at Fang. We're doing Southern food. There's Ethiopian food. There's, there's, it represents New Orleans. It's amazing. So could you tell us, uh, you're at the demo. So tell us where that is and what kind of things you guys are doing there. Yeah, so the culinary stage is right behind Ottoman Aquarium at the, on the Kohlmeyer lawn. And so there's five cooking demos every day, similar to what you would see at like some of the other festivals. But these are focused on being able to get involved with the crowd. And so Chef Kevin is hosting demos every day. Uh, and so I was lucky enough to do one this afternoon. Him. We've got Bruce Hards is actually doing one tomorrow at two o'clock with him. And Boulevard is doing one Sunday at two o'clock with him. But kind of talking to the guests about what's going on, uh, about the festival and about some of their favorite dishes here that are serving. And how does today compare to yesterday? I'm feeling energy today. It's definitely, it's a lot more energy today. It's definitely a lot better than it was when we loaded in. It was a bit wet, but it is, it is amped up today beautiful and as we get into the weekend it's supposed to be beautiful all weekend i just see it for fun yeah this is gonna be an amazing weekend i feel like we did luck out wednesday we're not not count yeah it was rough but but the weekend's been great awesome all right chef jimmy thank you so much this looks incredible there's lots more of, of this that you can find here at french quarters again we are having an amazing time down here if you want to come down and say we are near the Jack Daniel stage at Spanish Plaza. We will be here weekend long. Lots of familiar faces you will see. Hey, ladies, you're liar. <laughs> all right, we're going to send it, guys, in the studio. Uh, for all of you at home, though, come down and say hello. We'll see you. All right, make sure you guys step out of the Love Louisiana stage. Devin, thank you so much. And you can head on out to that stage all festival long. We'll be set up each day at Plaza, so make sure to stop by and say hello. At the WWL Louisiana stage at Spanish Plaza, which the French Quarter Fest has Spanish Plaza this year. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Oh, wow. And I'm joined by you guys. The first time you came on the morning show, we were like blown away to expect, and then it was like, they are so good. So first of all, introduce yourself, and then we'll talk about how this came about. So, Puma, I'm playing bass and tuba. Awesome. Hey, Phipps. And 
I play trombone for People Museum. <laughs> I'm Aaron playing drums and making my conducting debut. Today. <laughs> Not believe this is your first year for French Quarter Fest. Yeah, excited. What took us to get you guys? <laughs> That's a great question. I wish I knew the answer. <laughs> That's how the industry works sometimes, you know, but we're, but we're here. So, yeah. And you guys are going to find us at the Jack Daniels stage coming up at 3 30. Cannot wait for that. You're so unique. You're so electro pop. And I had never even heard of that, but you and your tracks, like, that is so cool. There's no bands like that, or probably not a ton in the world. So, how did you guys even get into this? Um, I think that we just, I, we kind of like all collectively pop music and then we're just from louisiana so like okay. the things access to are like tubas and trombones and like just like types of influences so okay. that's that's what i think yeah and i mean like a community in this city that makes this type of music for sure but uh, i think just the addition of the horns and like you know yeah. the, especially when tuba and all this stuff i think that that's sort of what solidity in that sort of electro pop with horns jeremy calls it future new orleans okay. like the, you know his coins <laughs> term which i i love i think it's perfect so let's all get together though and how do you i always want to know like where did the name come from oh the, I, I i came up with the name okay no no okay. big deal <laughs> no um once i was in i was living in la okay and then out there they have the vmas mm -hmm. and at the vm um, a bunch of people stand outside the like the stadium window and watch the stars like go from their dress. And it's like a thing out there that I like I'd never seen before. But I I made a joke. And I was like, it's like a people museum because you like <laughs> behind this glass. And, yeah. um, I don't know. I just, just I thought it was funny. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that could be a bad point. But then like years later, we um we started the band. I love it. You guys are you best of friends? Are you kind of like Brothers were all right, dude. I just need the day. Yeah, I hate Should've. these guys. It's the worst. They're the worst. We're we're pretty tight. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, everybody is cool. Look up to everybody in the band. Oh, I feel like nice. I learned from them. Yeah. You know, it just it, it keeps it keeps us all just engaged in me as the elder of the band. <laughs> the elder. Charles is the elder from Boutique. Charles is ageless. Let everybody is, know. Yeah. Charles has no age. That is true. 80 and 14 at the same time. For sure. Yeah. Oh, so you're an old soul. Fun. And I love the glasses, too. I love the blue. Mm. Just hot. you got to tell me about the mustache, too. What is there to so say? Because it's so impressive. I, I'm asking, like, is it like a playoff mustache, or this is all the time? Oh, oh my oh. God. I mean, we're okay, let it <laughs> Let it be playoffs, known. Baby. <laughs> Let it be known. This is I come from a long lineage of proud Mexican men. Okay. This is genetics. This is not this is not a, <laughs> this is my a part of my identity. It's a way of life. I so. love it. And talk a little bit about Claire who's not here right now because she's getting ready for your girls pretty soon. Oh yeah, Claire is the singer. Also she writes all the lyrics and helps produce and she is an amazing singer, amazing person. He's from Monroe, Louisiana. Upstate? Yeah, we're all from <laughs> Louisiana. Somewhere. I'm from New Orleans, Boutte, yeah. Lafayette, respectively. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah. And um, you and Claire actually got really, you were writing together, and then the whole group kind of came about. Yeah, um, okay. it me and Claire, it was like in the Treme neighborhood. We, like, I'm the mind. And like, yeah, we just started writing songs the same day. And then we started the project like immediately. And on as friends, as, as, and then yeah, and all of us doing this really. And at what point, I mean, you guys deal now, like when did that happen? Cause we'll have people on the show um, and they got, we just blew up last night. Like yeah. what was that moment for y'all? You were like, oh, people know who we are now, you know? I, I don't, I mean, it'd be really nice to say that there was like this thing that happened, but no, oh, it's just being a part of a scene, being a part of community and yeah. playing shows with others and sure. kind of sticking to what you do and growing. And, and I mean, Jared had other iterations of this band before we were in it. So they were working and I don't know, it'd be cool if there was like one singular, we were in a Amazon commercial, yeah. but I don't know. We're just we're still growing. And, um, if you stick with something that you believe is is, and you stay true to your heart, then then it's gonna 
eventually people will take note of and we, we're lucky to have a good crowd of people who support us. So. Of course, we're at the French Quarter Fest, but what was it like last year getting that call Jazz Fest for the first time? Oh, that was amazing, because yeah. Jazz Fest Incredible. is like watching Jazz Fest my whole life, so it, it was a fucking thing for me personally. Awesome. Um, yeah, it was cool because we were on a little kind of northeast and west coast tour and Jazz okay. Fest in the middle. So we've been like gone. Perfect. Yeah, we've been gone for weeks and played Jazz Fest and then took off again the next day. Wow. And you're touring again late summer. Tell me a little bit more about Relic. I know this is something you took you've been working on it since after Hurricane Ida. Was that sort of the whole inspiration or it was just like the timing you had some downtime? Yeah, it was definitely a part of um, a, a part of the inspiration because the whole album theme of it is like flood and like rebuilding and Read, read, um, and yeah, so I would say yeah, yeah. I mean, re- yeah, th- that that whole time of being split up and sort of, I mean, ev- everybody went through it. You know, it was crazy. Uh, that was definitely a big inspiration. Claire always says it's kind of a love letter to New Orleans, and we we always talk about New Orleans as being this place that we like love so much, but it's like it's challenging. It's it's like an uncle that you have that's like you love it, but it, shows up to some of the functions maybe maybe it's a little chaotic okay. but you can't help but love you know that's the relationship people out louisiana where they're from because of the weather and yeah. um but yes ida was the big start of, of that whole process and then coming back together and finishing it was really fun and so, you yeah. told me that's the fun writing i mean yeah for making music and performing music is i know that probably sounds obvious i don't know to people who are musicians but well, we know there's so much music yeah. and it's got to be so hard to like turn it on every night because you know everybody but you can't have a bad day like this might be the only time this fan comes to your cup to give it 110 percent every time yeah, thank you for wrong. saying that yeah. <laughs> it must be like physically exhausting but also mentally exhausting you do such a good job though yeah. thank hey, you tell me like give me the who's the class clown who's this person who's figured us all out so fast. You did your research. Yeah. Claire will be, we'll, we will beat the sound engineer at, to the venue, putting in it. So, which by the way sounds. is way better than being late. So <laughs> we, it's not a flaw, that's a feature and we love it and it's, it's great. It's all There's always punctual. I guess I'm a bit of a clown. Charles is the goblin. Charles, we call him, he has goblin energy. When he's in the van on tour, we'll just crazy discussions. Yeah. He's the so awesome image. <laughs> we I do. I really yeah. feel like the genuine care and the feature. I did want to mention you You do some in the relic um, on your album, your father. What is that? Explain that to me. Oh, yeah. So it that was Claire's idea. Okay. Um, but I just recorded my dad. Somebody, and she had a list of questions I asked him. And um, it was just like. It, it was funny because like my my dad we we know that she asked it was stuff that I had never even asked him so it was it was explain to him I was like wow I've never heard you talk about that so it was it was a very interesting like, beautiful experience for me as well um I felt like closer in some ways but then um yeah we we chopped that conversation up and the on it and he's also like a really big people museum supporter oh, um, on all the uh, okay. social media posts. Yeah, but he had, well, and he, I do think we have a reporter position open if Claire's interested. She can do oh, both. Yeah, I mean, I'll she sounds sure. like she really pulled it out of it. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Claire, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a funny story, though, about Jeremy's dad. Oh, with oh yeah, no. So I it, I was like, I'm not going to tell them until we album. And then we released it. And then I was like, Dad, you heard of your album? And he was like, Oh, yeah, I heard it. And I was like, did you notice anything? Like, and I was just like, he was like, wait, what? It was like, that's you talking. And he was like, hmm. And, and like, he, he probably, like, he had never heard his voice. Okay. Yeah, he, he, he has heard no any, clue. like, recordings of his voice. So he didn't even know it was him. And then, so he was like, oh, I got to go listen again. And then, you know, he was like bragging to his um, and stuff. Like, you know, he was like on the album. But yeah, it was funny. I expect that out of all the. We were on tour at a Mexican restaurant in the middle of the sea or something. <laughs> And Jeremy goes on the phone. He was like, "Y'all never believe this." My dad <laughs> knows that was him. He was listening. To. That's so funny. You remember exactly. Yeah. These are those moments when you guys are in the Hall of Fame. You're gonna be like, "Remember that?" Behind.
behind the music, baby. Yeah, there we go. Speaking of which, like, where do you see you, you so fast? Where do you see you guys in a year and ten years? Ooh, that's good question. Actually, it was two. I, I have an answer. <laughs> so, next year this time, uh-huh. we'll still be we'll do Jazz Fest, but maybe we all do Bonnaroo, Coachella. You know, maybe we pop over to Europe, do a couple of those festivals. Okay. You get to, like, in L.A. where we can kind of fill some big rooms and, you know, handpick some cities and grow, sure. grow some communities. It's such a, you, you guys are so talented and it's so unique. I think that would definitely, you need a little time to be doing that for y'all. Oh, we, yeah. have. we have a great team. We do have a great team okay. of people okay. working with, yeah, definitely with UTA, and, and um, our whole crew is really great. Um, but yeah, Los Angeles, those cities, we, we've kind of like built up some audiences outside of Louisiana, and we're going to try to just like cater to those cities, the people who, who showed up on tour and, and awesome. do that. And yeah, Europe's great. I mean, we've always wanted to you know, our take the show over the pond. Former Cutter Sheba's in LA. I'm sure she would have you guys on the morning oh, show. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, we need to set Come it up. On. We need to yeah. set it up. Sheba. But we need you always coming back. Of course. That's one thing. This festival, the French Quarter Press, over 300 performances, 1,800 different artists, all local, 100%. That's insane. That's so awesome that they made it a priority to do that. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. I agree. You know? Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, it's so unique to New Orleans. I mean, we have so much talent. It's like I know. insane. Sometimes when you think about it, it's like, man, it is like. But there's so many venues. I mean, we should have that much talent. There's so many awesome places to play here. What do you want people to know coming out 3.30 this afternoon? Um, Which is pretty quick. Thank you guys so much for your time. I want you to know that we all had coffee. We all <laughs> ate. We are ready to We're ready. give you a show. 1,000%. Yeah. You're at home watching this. You, you got time. You yes, can make it out. definitely have plenty of time. Yep. I think we have we played outdoors since last year, Jasper. Oh, yeah. No, it's been oh, a while. Wait, yeah. I, it's so been sorry a I didn't bit. think to ask you about the challenges of the venue. Oh, no. <laughs> it's, it's, it's such a beautiful day. It's it like is a gorgeous It's pretty much day. indoors. People yeah. can hear the music from afar and come up and sure. discover, you know. Like, You're going to be pulling people from the French Quarter? Yeah. Yeah, everybody coming over here to Spanish Plaza. Just so you know, it has expanded to Spanish Plaza this year. Jack Daniels stage, it's an amazing amazing stage. Thank you guys so much for your yeah, time. Thank People's thank Museum, they are fantastic. If you don't know anything about them, crawl out of that hole you're living in and definitely yeah. stream their music because they are amazing. It's all on the WWL TV app. Breaking news. We're following breaking news out of Jefferson Parish. Local weather. We are expecting an active weather day, so make certain that you are weather aware. Original stories. It's a story you'll only see on WWL TV. Impactful investigations. Inches are happening after a WWL TV investigation. The latest from the field. We are live in Covington. And the Dome. And it was a high drama day in the Superdome. Download the WWL TV app. Seafood pasta, the uh, crawfish, the penne pasta, crawfish, plenty of uh, seasoning with the uh, heavy cream. So, and did I it the one. Yes. I had that one. That was the first time I made, so I can tell y'all it's very, very good. But this right here, the French toast, it's the chicken bites. Oh. French toast, it's killing it. It's killing the game out here. <laughs> Everybody's loving this. This is going to, going to be one of the biggest uh, people going to be looking for. It. And it's worth the. Uh, we had some people came over today. We all just they couldn't find you guys. Couldn't find you. So you know, yeah, this is if you come, you have to try. They have the the, the French toast bites with the dog, uh, and, and we have the sauce. We have like a hot, uh, a hot sauce that we put on it with the butter. You know, make you just, just want to. Sure yeah, yeah, yeah the, the thing about. <laughs> now we're over here in the Spanish Plaza. We got the music. Yes. Y'all have a lot of other really good vendors yes. around you. Yes. But y'all are no strangers to this. Is it like I mean the crowd? They just don't stop. So what is it like to keep that rhythm going and keep the food coming? Is 
this is nice how drink is fun. You know, the people are fun, everybody's having a good time, and it's uh, uh, it's kind of new, but it's been steady, but everybody's used to getting out the ferry when they come from make, make the right. We need y'all to start making a left here to Spanish Plaza. <laughs> you know, a, a lot of people don't know about it. It's gonna, gonna build, it's gonna grow. We're gonna give it time to do that, but we're here. Come out, come in front of the river walk. Come support us, come give us some hill here. You know, so. <laughs> Just seeing so many people from here, you know, come. This is one of the festivals that you know, we, the, the locals support. You know, we had Thursday, we, it was nice. A lot of people from here, you know, when some of the bands were playing, they were saying, you know, how many people from here? But when they were from here in New Orleans, everybody, yeah, 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 you know. So it is is, is, is a good thing. It's a good vibe, you know. we having a good time, you know, and um, enjoying it. That's a nice adrenaline rush, and it's, you know, enjoying it. I know it doesn't stop. So no, even in your no. Rest, I mean, you all do catering. Y'all are used to these large volumes of food that you're dishing. Yes, yes. And the good thing, too, you know, we had a few people, you know, they wanted the cards, they wanted the uh, Instagram site, you know, so it's kind of like getting, you know, hey, man, we got to call y'all to come do some of this and, you know, give them, come across some of these egg rolls and whatnot. So it works out, you know, it works out here, it's out afterwards. It gets you, I guess, more into the community thing for certain people. So it works out. Now, what's the Creole Country Cafe? I mean, The they best man. <laughs> how me? How has it been, kind of, with your crafting these recipes together? Oh man, the best, best thing I can say has been, you know, it was kind of like one of my, one of the things my mother, you know, they dreamed of. You know, they kind of put it in the air. We used to go out to when I remember we got to Franklin's and Fair, and we would be going down the road, and my mom would, you know, say like, I could do that, you know. So, and it just happened to where my younger brother started. I was in the military. And, you know, I started getting into the cooking, watching him, and it just, we, you know, we're blessed to get a restaurant in the East and just kept doing it, you know, but it's, uh, it's uh, uh, something we just passed it down with it, you know. See, my niece, my nephew, and them, they starting to do it. Their kids are into it. Yeah. <laughs> Their kids are starting to get into it, watching us. And kind of um, nice, just like I was telling my nephew on uh, Thursday, I was sitting back just one. And I was just saying, man, this is nice to see here. This is my nephew, you know, my niece. It it's started grow, seeing huh? it grow, you know, so passing it on. It in the right, huh? right. Everybody enjoying themselves, yeah. you know, having a good time, laughing and having a good time. Now, I know family put a little much, huh? huh? Family can be a little much. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, there's rough spots, trust me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not all fun, and it's not Friday, trust me. You know, we have our so Mondays. See, like yesterday, Thursday, was the French toast bites. This morning was a toast. so different. <laughs> so warm, man. You know, then tomorrow I'll probably get some pasta. Okay. So you know, but uh, I, 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 the French toast, the French toast bites. That's my, my number one, my go-to. Absolutely. And I mean, here, I mean, y'all, the weather is cold. Yes. We're getting the music going, and it's just, it's just the best time to come good food. And y'all definitely have a little bit of that, and then some. What else? I know this is just a snapshot. Oh man, oh, oh, oh. I'm trying to think. Uh, you know, we like to, yeah, we like to, you know, we have sometimes we do the uh, boudin sausage, sometimes we do the boudin balls. Um, cro you know, we do crawfish, got a brother crawfish and whatnot. You know, crawfish, uh, 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 jambalaya, etouffee. I mean, basically, rice, yeah. yeah, the, the greens, you know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for Remember, having Remember, we are out here in Spanish Plaza. Go ahead and get the Creole Cafe. Yes. They're here with us and the love of Louisiana taste. I mean, I'm going to let you go know y'all are busy. Y'all yes. are whipping it up. And this food should be still hot, so you oh, get some oh. forks. We brought the forks so y'all are going to do it. Right here, yeah. <laughs> right. Thank you, Leah. Absolutely. Thank y'all for joining us. We have so much more. I mean, that will be joining us in just a few, so be sure to stay with us.
John Bute, here with my friends Greg Rowe from Chevron and Mia. We're getting ready for French Quarter Festival, which features over 300 musical performances on more than 20 stages. She is proud to support the festival, a celebration of New Orleans music, culture, and cuisine. It all takes place April 11th through 14th. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the app today. Don't miss French Quarter Festival from WL. Welcome to WWL. Streaming us, happy French Quarter Fest, the kickoff of French Quarter Fest. You can hear the music here behind us. We're in the Spanish Plaza at the Love Louisiana WWL stage. We're having so much fun today. We've had a ton of people already come out, with prizes, but we get to be the very first of the interview here at the brand new Love Louisiana stage. So I want to welcome Zita here. So much for having Hi guys. us. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. We're really excited to have you. Just go around and just introduce yourselves. Sure. Um, I'm Michael Mullins. I'm the lead singer and trombone player, and I weird things with the trombone, and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I'm Bradford Lewis. I'm lead and only guitar, I guess. I tell Michael plinks away at the guitar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dylan Calluet, I play lead bass, also the loudest guy on stage for Dundee. Nice, nice. Always. Uh, I'm Kai Malanson, I play drums, and I do weird things with my trombone. It's good to know. Thank you for sharing, even oversharing. We're really excited to have you guys here. I want to start for the first question that I asked you earlier, because the way we got named is very interesting. I'm always intrigued when we find out how a band decided to choose what they're going to go by because that's everything. Right? That's your that's your logo, it's your brand, it's how people know you, it's your identity. Very fun. So who wants to share that story? So we started off next gen five with a Roman numeral. Okay, wait, you didn't tell me that part. <laughs> there was a lot of confusion there because everyone <laughs> thought we were next gen V. Okay. We, were look, we were looking for a name change and there was this shop in Mandeville where we were going called Zetas that sold like a bunch of crystals and cool jewelry and stuff really like that. Really earthy and holistic. Yeah, we used okay. to go there all the time and just decided to name the band after that. We eventually got the blessing and now Zeta herself, the owner of the shop, is like renting her one of her houses to me. We've been writing the record there and doing all that stuff. So yeah. Uh, very, very homegrown, very local. Yeah. Grassroots. Roots there. Full yeah. Circle. yeah. Shout I love out that. Next Gen V. Shout out. <laughs> that's the throwback. Yeah. That's that's your throwback <laughs> Thursday. That's cool. <laughs> and so how did it all meet? How did you guys get together? Um, I guess we it kinda everybody kinda trickled in, but it was um I guess Dylan and I are the oldest original members to the Next okay. Gen 5 sort of uh, family there. But uh, we, a friend of mine, I went to NOCA for high school, and a friend of mine from there introduced me to Bradford, and he was like, this guy played Master of Puppets by Metallica at lunch today, and it sounded identical to the record. And I was like, well, I got to hear it. So lunch, we brought him okay. in to jam. Him into jam. <laughs> Dylan's dad met me at a restaurant he was working at, actually, and was like, you know, he was like, yeah, I'm from Japan, and I was like, screw it, yeah, you know. Yeah. And then and then he blew me away the first time I heard yeah. it. Yeah, and then the rest is history. Next gen quality. Next gen quality. Yeah. <laughs> Next gen quality. V. There you go. So we have the the origin stories. I like the dad joke. It was good. We have the origin story here and how you guys met. Your sound is also. We're talking about this homegrown, very local. It's very, very. Uh, almost like throwback New Orleans because it has like deep rock, but also some funk, bluesy. And I would say it's something that a lot of people feel maybe that sound has kind of faded away and you guys are bringing it back in a really cool way. Yeah, yeah, I'd say that. It also helped you have George Porter as a mentor that's uh, been helping you out for years. Yeah, there you go. yeah, yeah. I think people like that, We've been in the scene our whole lives, like all of us have been in the scene. He, Kai mm -hmm. grew up in Japan and he's lived there in Tate but he was coming here for Jazz Fest every year doing stuff like that. Like all of us cool. were bred in this environment of like, like he said, George Porter, you know, I grew up down the street from Mike Lemler, his keyboard player, uh, Ivan Neville, the Neville family, like they've been very nice to us. Like, you also have it in your family. I have it, yeah. yeah. My dad's obviously a New Orleans musician himself and so, and his as well, his, yeah. are, his are New Orleans as well. So it's like, we took those influences, but we grew up listening to classic rock music, all of us, and so that is like unequivocal sound, but all of the influences that span our entire lives to sort of inform that. And so, uh, and then it culminates in whatever the heck we do. So it's well, fun. It's weird too, because like I, I did a lot of stuff with Donald Harrison and you did, so we like have a jazz yeah. background mixed in too a little bit. Yeah, that too, like jazz, blues, I mean, that's kind of where the roots come from. 
Like, I listened to a lot of Alan Tucson when I was younger as well. He's, like, a blues master. Like, Dylan, like he said, like, doing jazz and funk with a lot of people. And then Kai just being in music his whole life. I mean, that's it. Yeah. So it kind of, it spans everybody. And it, all our all of our influence, we wear them on our sleeve. That's really cool. And this is, is this the second you guys are performing at Jazz? Or yes. French yes. Quarter Fest? Second? Okay. Yes. So I'm jumping ahead here in the <laughs> yeah. Festival. So, yeah. Well, I have been up since yeah. so You guys are performing a second year. Um, somebody who we're saying from Japan and then, you know, coming all the way to New Orleans, you attend all these different festivals. What does it mean to be able to then be on the stage performing and doing what you love? Oh, it's definitely a privilege. Uh, well, my dad is orig originally from this area, so I wasn't full foreigner to this land. Military uh, family? No, is actually that? not. My okay. dad just kind of met a Japanese, my mom, in the West Coast, actually, and they moved over there. That's I grew cool. up there, but we would visit him. Uh, every time he would come down, it's usually either jazz festival, like festival season or Saints, like just football season. So just growing up, I was already immersed in this. So just be able to play like French Quarter, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's a great feeling. So. Yeah, and, and to, to come back for year two, it's like the first year is always like really exciting. It's something new, you get the jitters out, you get the excitement, you get to be on the stage, but year two, everybody always wants to come back and do it bigger and better. Yes. And how are you and guys going to do it this year? it's not raining this year. We were on Saturday, oh, yeah. we got oh. rained out, our tent was flooded ankle Today deep. is gorgeous. Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. It's a beautiful day. day. Yeah, and so I mean last year the other thing was like, it was just very nerve-wracking, I think, because this festival means a lot to us. And like like all of us, like this is my first gig ever as a musician. Wow. It was French Quarter Fest. Get out of and, here. Yeah. That's a big first gig. Yeah, it was, I was terrified. I didn't sound very good. But, uh, you know, <laughs> that was my first gig. Honesty. Still don't sound very good. But Nobody we're should ever look up my first airing reel. Yeah, I get it. I <laughs> yeah. get it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just hoping I don't rip my pants this year. Yeah, that did happen last year. That did, man. Wow, last year was eventful. It was eventful. We didn't okay. think it would be, but really and so and so you didn't feel like maybe it was your best ever. Yeah. But yeah. now you've had a ton of gigs and you've had a ton of practice, and I'm sure you guys now feel way more held and ready for this year. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because if you don't, I'm hyping the other way right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now you have to go on and do a good well, job. Hopefully, yeah. we're gonna sound better and have the right amount of holes in all of our pants. There you go. <laughs> how did we? How did you rip your pants? Uh, Are you I, excited? It was. It was full corduroy purple suit that I had, okay. and it was a little too to me to be wearing. And we got off the stage, and I realized that my bright blue underwear was shipped from under the purple. It's rock and roll, baby. It's yeah, like exactly. we're good. I was like, mm, I was getting a nice breeze. I was like wondering where okay. it was coming from. You know? Suddenly, it's <laughs> it was all planned out. <laughs> right. He it says it like it's an accident. Okay. He's it was a publicity out. stunt. Okay. Yeah. Deal. And so are we doing a wardrobe change before you guys hit the stage? A little bit. I think we're kind of, kind of in stage. Mostly, like mostly I'm mostly changing my around. shirt. They were okay. getting on me earlier. Yeah, I'm going to change my shirt, and then we're good to go, I think. Because yeah. yeah. you will sweat to death. In that. I will. Yeah, yeah, I'll have this jacket actually, off for sure. It's not too hot right now, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. actually, I'm a little surprised how cool it turned out to be today. This morning, I was freezing. Right now, the sun, when it comes out and the wind kind of stops, it's great. So yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's... A, Great it's day. festival season. Yep. We'll put up with anything, but it's yep. always nice weather cooperates. Yeah. So what are you guys looking forward to this year being on that stage? Hmm. Ooh. Well, we had Evan on this year. We, yeah. we had Evan on sound last year. We did? Oh, I didn't realize. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, last year was quite a doozy. As a lot of gigs. Right <laughs> <then. laughs> um, I, think, I think this year we're most looking forward to debuting a lot of the new material we've written for this next album. Yeah, let's talk about that because it's a nine track album. Yeah, well, the next, the, the first one was this next one. I don't even, I don't even know. Oh, you guys have a, a new one that I'm not even aware of. We're writing, yeah, yeah. Oh, we're, writing, we're working yeah, on it now. Okay. In the, in the yeah. Too. And there's a live record that we're going to be releasing our first single from on 420. And, Very cool. Uh, from the Maple Leaf. From the Maple Leaf, yeah. We're doing a show there. Wow, so that's right show. around the corner, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so uh, we'll shout that out on stage today and, and sort of uh, make some posts on our Instagram and everything. But like, yeah, that's all the stuff that, all this new material that we've got kind of stockpiled. Because our last record was 2021 at this yeah. point. Wow. So we've been sitting on this stuff for a minute and we've been writing a lot of new stuff very recently as well. So it's like very Is it fresh. collaborative when it comes to writing or does somebody very, sort of take lead? Very, yeah. yeah. We, someone will bring like an idea or something. Uh, it's nine times out of ten it doesn't start with a full song written by no. one person it'll start with yeah. someone's idea then we'll bring it into the room 
and uh, by the end of it, hopefully we walk out with a song. You know, most of the time we do, but then there's sometimes where it's like we keep adding more and more, and then it ends up being like a 15-minute song or something like that. <laughs> Which we do have. And we got to remember it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. And uh, yeah, yeah, you put it well. <laughs> yeah. The one thing I we are probably looking forward to this year is last year because it got rained out, we had a shorter set, so we actually get yeah, to play true. a full set is going to be is going to be very cool. A 70-minute set too. It's Instead last like, year we did 35. We did 35. Yeah. Half wow. minutes, uh, so we could double set. It's a lot of time. Yeah. To, to, and so will you have some of that new music today, or are you guys still in the process of putting that together? Oh, we definitely have A little bit. Of some of it. Yeah. A little bit? Okay. It's a mixture. I think we got two or three brand new ones that, um, yeah. yeah, that aren't released anywhere. And then some old stuff, and then we have some cool covers planned as well. Some blues stuff, some um, classic rock stuff, so it'll be cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Are you guys excited. looking forward to checking anybody else out for French Quarter Fest? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna walk around. Yeah, Rebirth's playing after us, so that'll be a fun one to catch. Ivan's playing. I'm gonna check him out. Yeah, yeah, we're, gonna go, too, right? we're gonna go. We're gonna go check Michael out with his pops band. Yeah. I'll be over at Abita stage with Bonaram at 4:50 right after we finish. So we'll okay. sprint that way. So you gotta run from one to the <laughs> yeah. other. Okay. And um, when it comes to anybody who's trying to connect with you guys or check you out, I know you have another performance tonight too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you can shout that out and then also just you know how people if they want to check out some more of your music or you know connect with you guys what's the best way to do that well everything is stockpiled on zetaband.com <laughs> uh, but you can find us our, our most up. active is probably Instagram which is zeta.band yeah. so zeta if you look up zeta band zeta band New Orleans online you'll find us and uh, yeah like you said the landing page for all our show dates is the website you'll see it on the front page uh, tonight at 8 p.m. is the door time. The doors open at 8 p.m. at Santos Bar on Decatur. Um, that is going to be the after show, the after party for French Quarter Fest tonight. Um, we're going to be doing two sets there, and we're going to be going pretty late. Uh, we'll see. We'll be going yeah. until we, we feel like falling over. So. Go until we drop. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's awesome. Well, thank you, guys. We appreciate you, you taking the time because I know you guys got to get running in yeah, a minute. Yeah, we do got to get running. Going <laughs> cool to check the time now, I got you. So, yeah, so you got a little right. time, but... I know you guys are getting ready to hit the stage. If you guys want to check them out, as they mentioned, check them out on Instagram and, you know, come by WWL in the morning show. We'll have you guys anytime. Wake, wake all of our viewers up. But it was great having you guys in today. Yeah, Break you. a leg. This year is going to be even better than next year, pant ripping and all. It's all on the WWL TV app. Breaking. We're following breaking news out of Jefferson Parish. Local weather. We are expecting an active weather day, so make certain that you are weather aware. Original stories. It's a story you'll only see on WWL TV. Impactful investigations. Changes are happening after a WWL TV investigation. The latest from the field. We are live in Covington. And the Dome. And it was a high drama day in the Superdome. Download the WWL TV app. Happy Friday, everybody. Lincoln Seeley here out at French Quarter Fest here at Spanish Plaza. We are at the WWL Love Louisiana stage here with Sax Kicks M. Yes, what's up? Yes, sir. All right, tell everybody your names. What's happening, man? You go first. I'm Albert. Albert? I'm, I'm Alfred. And Alfred. Yeah. It's easy to get mixed up, people. Yeah, be right? careful. Yeah, we look just alike. My pretty. dad does it, which is weird because there's some cosmetic differences. Between yeah, you two? it's the bun. The bun, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's just the bun. Yeah, and the glasses. <laughs> yep. That's the biggest difference between us. Exactly. Like societally. And I would say the bun too. But um, yeah, so you guys are performing today. What time, where? Uh, two o'clock at the Jack Daniels stage. It's gonna be right super, there. super. If you dope. can see that behind us, there's a band up there right now on the Jack Daniels stage. That's where we'll be at 2:10. So yeah, come on out. Yeah, yeah. If you're on the couch right now, watching this on your Facebook, on your IG, or whatever, come on out here for 2:10. Yes. And Spanish Plaza. This is where we're at. Just left of the French Quarter, looking at Jackson Square. Now, tell me about how you guys got together. Indeed. Good. Where were we? We were on the road, right? We were on the road. Specifically, Detroit is a city that I remember where we really like kind of locked in and started chopping game. Um, he was formerly in uh, Tank of the Bangers. I opened one of those tours, got to got to know my man. We started like chopping game. I actually have the very first picture we ever took together. Aww. Um, and after that, you know, we just kind of started talking and we got in the studio, made some music, started laughing and Sax Kicks Ave was born. You just hit it off. So you guys met on tour, two yes. separate tours. Yeah, and we were like cool together. We were like made the same jokes, kind of like enjoyed the same stuff and just kind of gravitated towards each other. For sure. And then uh, our manager, Tavia, was like, Y'all should get together in the studio. So we get together in the studio, and we make one song 
for like three hours, but we also laughed for like two and a half hours. True indeed. And made like 30 minutes of music, so it was really cool, and it was a good fit. The manager obviously saw the chemistry there between you two. Now, we've had you both on the morning show before. Yes. What makes your shindig unique? You go. Ooh. What makes our shindig unique? Sh uh, unique shindig. Um, hmm, Can I have part. an alternate pronunciation for hey, shindig? Uh, Language yeah. of origin? Your duo. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, okay, our duo. It's actually really, I don't know, man, I think uh, sense of humor is very important to us, but we take our music extremely serious, you know what I mean? Like, we're, we're, we're uh, musicians first, and uh, we kind of use sense of humor as a way to kind of, like, translate it. Um, and so I think that's what kind of differentiates us from a lot of different bands. And, uh, I mean, I'll just say we're, like, really, really good. High level of craft, and Alfred is one of the best rappers in the city and the world, and I'm a very good instrumentalist, so we bring that together in a way that is, like, you know, a lot of hip-hop right now is very programmed, and it's very excellent, and it's actually probably never been better because more excellent people can share this stuff because of Dude. the democratization of distributing music on the Internet. Um, but, like, we have something unique to contribute because we have, what, a combined, like, 40 years of live performance Pretty much. experience. <laughs> so we just have, like, a unique thing with being funny, but also we're like, hey, let's be funny, but kind of with a point and with this, like, elite level of craft and just, like, goofing around and it's like maybe we say something um and you know what entertainment at all costs that's 100%. what it's about yeah, and what's funny is that because you guys are so unique and have, for those who have not watched them perform before do so because they are not like any other band and you have original music as well 100%. oh yeah yeah and i actually saw your saxophone videos in my facebook feed i'm like how do we become friends this is before they came on the morning show we actually were in a saxophone jazz workshop <laughs> years ago at tipatina's and snug harbor and met mutually through somebody else, and then what, 15 years later? Yes. I was like, this guy looks familiar. How do we know this? This is a mutual friend. And then we just met at the studio, are. yeah. We were, yeah. At, we were at WWO, and I was like, that's Colleen. Yeah. yeah. I think you hit me up on Facebook afterwards, and I was like, the last message was from like 2012. <laughs> it's a different timeline, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Indeed, indeed. Uh, so, with Tank and the Bangas, have you performed with her too, or was um, you did? That was Albert. Together? Oh, yeah, yeah. I was in okay. that band for uh, almost 10 years, like nine years, yeah. That's where we met. We were, he was opening for us, and we were on the road, and that's where we all met. Exactly. Okay, gotcha. And I heard that you got mixed up with one of her saxophone players. It's so funny. My good buddy, Etienne Stoufflé, like, uh, you know, he's he's uh, he's got his own thing going on now, and he's, uh, he's uh, uh, you know, I don't want to put him on blast or make any statements he's about, putting you on blast. about his relationship status. But back in the day, when he was uh, a young buck, roaming wild and free, so to speak, uh, he would be on the dating apps and get confused with me for whatever reason. And this actually led to a hilarious incident where somebody messaged him. He was like talking to somebody on Tinder or somebody. And then they went to my profile and I have a girlfriend and, and make it known and have for a long time, like six years. Are you still together? Yeah, N not like six years. It is six years. <laughs> Love you, babe. And he got hit up because they went saw his they saw my profile based on his Tinder profile, and they were like, why are you lying to me? Why do you have a girlfriend? You told me you were single. And they was like, and he was just like, ha, 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 that's a different person. And they were like, no, bro. Why are you, why are you trying to run game on me? And he was like, this is ridiculous. Like, so I don't know how we get mixed up, but it's happened a lot. He would walk out on stage um, when I wasn't on tour with the band, and people would be like, Albert, <laughs> what's up? I don't look anything it's alike. It's so funny. We don't look anything alike. Beautiful man. Yeah. But we don't look guys. anything alike. You know? So that's how he figured it out was, okay, I'm associated with him because you two were intertwined together. Oh, I, that's who I must be getting mixed up with. I like to think maybe I helped him sometimes, not just hurt him, but it sounds like I mostly hurt his prospects. Yeah, it's, just a little, it's a little crazy. <laughs> From this angle, it's like, what? Hey, man, you hate me. Yeah, I know. I saw, I'm really no hate. Just just trying to relate facts, okay? That's what it's, it's called. Facts kicks ass. Facts kicks right? ass. Yeah. We're about from facts. facts to facts. We're, yes, we're changing. And speaking of. April 15th, it's tax kicks ass. All right. Oh, well, <laughs> like we all know that. Okay, so how did you get involved in the music industry? Did you grow up singing, performing? Yeah, um, for me personally, uh, I started rhyming around six years old. My oldest brother, uh, Landis Bangs, rest in peace, he um, started rhyming and kind of had a little bit of a buzz around the city. And so he inspired me to kind of rhyme. My middle brother, James, he also freestyled a lot. So that's kind of where I got both of those skills from. You flash forward a few years, I started writing, kind of created my own style. And uh, at June 6, 2009, at the age of 17, I performed at the Dragons Den for the very first time. And uh, it was addictive. That live aspect is just one of my favorite things. And you flash forward a few years, and we are on the cover of Offbeat. Oh! All sooky, sooky now. This is incredible, yeah. guys. And I had to laminate it and print it myself because Offbeat isn't physical anymore. Offbeat's fully digital. 
So Alfred Banks went to a print shop oh, himself. Yeah, you best believe. Took screenshots, yes, and we I didn't did. bring the collated booklet he made as if it was a master's thesis. Yeah, it's incredible. But he did binding. make his own magazine because he said, no, no, print media. I'm bringing you back. 100%, man. So this is a very, very big honor right here. It's super cool. Absolutely. Was that a dream of yours to be on yes. print magazine? So this is why it's a big deal to go yeah. get it laminated and be like, I'm going to be of course, on the of day course, cover. Of course. The thing is, this is our first cover together. And so I'm super excited about that because we've been working very hard for the past like year uh, specifically to kind of get things going and some of the love and energy we've been getting is just so cool so to see it kind of reverberate through the city and start to really make a uh make an impact it's beautiful man because me and this man work very hard on our music and on our craft so this is really really cool was it your dream to be making this face no on, i will say on. when i first saw the picture i was like what but i love Can you it make man that face for us? <laughs> yeah i <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's actually how you look in some of your videos that I've watched from the music videos that you guys do. So we have we have a weird dynamic. It's like he's the guy that will go there, and I'm more the straight guy that's like, I don't really want to. I'm trying to drag him along. Most of our relationship maybe makes us unique. Back to the earlier question is um, me testing Alfred injuries and him resisting them. <laughs> a good push pull balance. Yeah, it's Big fiction. Facts. There's Big a narrative fact. built in. Take us for rela relationships, people. All right, at what point do you feel you really became successful that you're like, I'm making it? Um, Has that happened yet? <laughs> I mean, we're here. I mean, we're in the WWL. We're in the WWL. I mean, I feel like right yeah. now, we made it right here because Wrench Quarter Fest, baby, Come on, man. on Friday on the Jack Daniels stage at 210 to Spanish Plaza with Colleen Come in on, the man. WWL 10 on it's the river. Up. So, so we made it. And it's stuck and it won't come down. I feel like we made it. I feel like I've arrived now. Yeah. So tell us about what instruments you play. You're diverse with I your play life. saxophone, flute, and piano, and bass, and drums, and guitar. I played tuba in the eighth grade. I played bassoon ninth grade. And uh, I've stuck a clarinet in my mouth before. OK. All Any, right. That, you, what? No, I, right. I didn't hear anything. I mean, did you actually? I tried. Notes, it did not good. OK. No. <laughs> you said what I play, not what I was good at. Ah. So what are you actually good at? Saxophone above. and flute. Okay, saxophone. Yeah. No, the other one pretty bad. But. Make it till you make it, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And I saw what? a montage that you posted recently, too, where you actually incorporated multiple instruments, but it was all you playing. Yeah. I learned how to um, I learned how to edit myself in, so I was playing, like, bass, drums, and piano, and sax, and flute. Yeah. It's amazing. It, it was it's cool. Amazing. And I've been, loving, I've been, like, really practicing the instruments. That's what I love to do. I've learned a lot about myself, especially over the past year, um, in this project with Alfred, about what's actually sustainable for me as an artist, what do I actually like, and it's playing the instruments. Like, I live and breathe to just, like, play along to records with people I love, learn stuff, and then compose music and record it in myself. I, I just love that, and it's, like, it's what makes me happy, and it's it's what I do, and so, like, I don't know. I just, I can't even describe it. It's kind of new to me to feel like I was so focused on, like, Honestly, like, when I was in sixth grade, I saw a great saxophonist named Kirk Whalen play for the first time. And I was like, I just want to play saxophone or something and, like, tour the world and stuff. And I, and I did that at 23. And then after that, it was like, oh, shit, like, what do I do? Oh, crap, what do I do now? And then I, like, I just, like, well, I got to focus on the instruments. I got to double down on what makes me happy, and that's the instruments. And, uh, you know, not using profanity on uh, WWL. <laughs> Thank you for that's that. That's what makes me happy. That's what makes me happy, you know? I, yeah. I, I, so yep. Where are some of the places both of you have traveled separately together around oh, man. the world? Um, we recently just started kind of touring. So things kind of changed for us this past August of 23 is when the social media kind of started making some noise, uh, viral as it were. And uh, so we just started touring. We just did our first Texas run together. You know, let's some, some. We're, we're 30 year olds talking about virality on social media. It's pretty normal. <laughs> uh, but we for, did our first uh, Texas run. Uh, Dallas, I'm sorry, Fort Worth, uh, Austin, Houston, all those shows are really cool. We did the Midwest, we did uh, Chicago, Milwaukee, and Grand Rapids, Michigan. Those shows are incredible. Uh, we did Charlotte, North Carolina on a Wednesday night, and it was really, really cool. Um, an experience I'm sure me and you both would never forget uh, as it pertains to some of the people in the crowd. It was fun. Uh, but now we're really starting the road together, and but separately, I mean, this man is Romania, right? You're going all over the world. And we're putting out a song every month. Every single month. And that's going to actually increase us to be able to go out on the road. And you, maybe you can just make a lot of returns around the world. We are so looking forward to both of your success together. We appreciate you took time to be with us today. And check them out 2 o'clock at the Jack Daniels stage. Sax kicks out, baby. Thank you, Colleen. I think that in our crime coverage, the way that we're approaching crime now, 
we look at things on the surface level. And when you look at things on the surface, you tend to think, oh, well, if we just need, if we arrested the carjacker, then, you know, the crime would go down. If we would simply put people in jail or if stiffer penalties, then crime will go down. Well, obviously, that's happened in the past in New Orleans and crime did go down for some time. But again, it shot right back up again. So at some point, our response is to things to be superficial and we have to ask the question, what is the root cause of this? What's the nucleus of the problem? What's the thing that right at the center of it that we're just missing? You know, we take a look back at what we're doing wrong and why communities were disinvested from. At statistically, more crimes happen in this particular community versus that one. Um, we have to take a look at what is pushing people to do crime. Is it a poverty rate? You know, is it income? How do we level the playing field so no one would want to commit a robbery? There are so many different answers we can give to this. And I think that we've tried all of the ways, or at least law enforcement has tried all of the ways that give you an immediate response, which is let's arrest our way through this, let's lock people up, let's put them um, away or give harder penalties or charging teenagers as adults. I think WWL and our crime focuses on while this is happening and while we do understand why some of those penalties are issued, we ask why it's happening and why particularly is it happening to or with rather one demographic. Let's take a look at the overall issue and not just address what are, you know, quick concerns. Well, first of all, Katie, Mike, and I have a combined 90 years of reporting experience. So we know what it is to be in New Orleans. We know what it is to cover this town. And we have the most experience of any station in this area. As I've worked at WWL over the years, one of the things that I'm most proud of in the investigative unit is the fact that my stories have been able to make a change. That comes in the form of changing laws. That comes in the form of changing elected officials that ended up in jail because of the stories that we did. Um, that goes for myself, David Hammer, Mike Pearlstein. All three of us have done stories that have really made an impact in the community. And I think that that is one of the things that WWL's legacy is a big part of. It's being part of the community. It's making a difference. It's being a voice for people who can't use theirs or don't have one. Trust me. Uh, these stories that appear on TV, when it really has deep personal impact, we stick with those people, those families, those institutions, sometimes for years, and in my case, I can honestly say a lifetime in New Orleans. Well, I'm from New Orleans, I grew up in New Orleans, and I want to see this community do better. I want it to always be improving. So that motivates me at the end of the day. That's what gets me going every day to try to expose the inequities in our community, to expose the problem government and hopefully fix them. That presence is a backstop for so many things that could be wrong. Sure, some things slip our attention, really, but there's a track record and we're the ones who fill those tracks. We really want to, first of all, of course, that we're accurate. That is huge for us as meteorologists. We want to come up with that. Um, and of course, we want to get the information to viewers clear and understandable and in a way that can really help you what to do. What we do here as a team at WWL try to make sense of all that uncertainty so you can make the decision to stay safe or do what you need to do for approaching storms or whatever the act. There are folks out there that have that instilled fear, severe storms, the unknown of um, pop-up thunderstorms, tornadoes, as well as probably one of the biggest events in South Louisiana being hurricanes. And so I try and quell those fears, answering all of the questions that the public may have at these events. The, you know, there's, there's no way to avoid them usually, but if I can kind of answer the questions and put 
folks' mind at ease, I've done my job. The faith for me to get up every single day is knowing people are safe, know exactly what to do when the weather strikes. Everything has a story. My father once shared a recipe with me. And outside of the actual recipe, it was for stuffed bell. He shares the story of being taught to make stuffed bell peppers, talking about the family that connect to St. John the Baptist Parish, you know, to my grand growing up in Edgar, Louisiana my grandfather growing up in the second and just I think that everything connects us back to connects us back to community that's through the music this is back to Jermaine that's through the food that's through the architecture and that is even through the clothing that we wear I mean way yet you know um you know, being able to those kind of New Orleans colloquialisms, those things that we say, the fact that we say Burgundy and not Burton, you know, the fact that we could give you words like Chapatulas, connect all of those things uh, back to community and back to family. I think that and and celebrate. baby we're here at spanish plaza for again the second day of the french quarter festival here now with alex he's the executive chef over at the restaurant for four seasons alex thank you so much for joining me for today uh good afternoon first of all thank you for having me here with you and uh um, this is our first uh, French Quarter Festival as, as a Miss River restaurant at the Four Seasons Hotel. So uh, we just wanted to showcase some very uh, super delicious local pro product to our uh, lovely customers at the booth. And uh, we decided to come up with this, uh, three dishes, which is our uh, part of our menu on a, on a daily basis in a restaurant and uh, in a Miss River restaurant, as well as in a chandelier bar. So um, we decided to bring uh, for you here uh, some uh, crab roll, which is a uh, uh, crab roll, y'all, this food just looks phenomenal. So tell us about the crab roll and what inspired you to create this for the French Quarter Festival. So uh, the crab roll is up. Uh, so uh, we partnered with uh, Chef Alain Shaya in our uh, in our restaurant. And uh, this is his take on, on uh, lobster roll, if you will. But, uh, you know, we don't get the lobsters here in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. And uh, so we decided to go with the crab because uh, we have a huge source of fresh, delicious uh, jumble of crab here. So. Uh, it is a very, very simple dish uh, mixed with some uh, a little bit of sour cream, mayo, some hot sauce, some vinegar, and uh, we top with uh, on our uh, house-made uh, brioche uh, roll, uh, which is cooked in, in a lot of butter and super delicious, super crunchy, has a fresh flavor, and uh, it's, it's delicious. I'm going to tell you, I'm about to tear that up after this interview here, and then maybe you could even do something with crawfish, like crawfish rolls. Uh, yeah, we, 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 we thought about that also, yes, yes, for sure. Okay, yeah. so tell us about this dish we have here. Oh, this is uh, our red beans and rice, which is uh, the part of our uh, lunch and dinner menu. Uh, you know, uh, every restaurant, every home cooks has their own way of cooking a red beans, but uh, uh, we feature uh, Chef Alain's uh, wife, Emily Shaya's recipe. Uh, in our restaurant and uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, uh, ham hocks in it, some pickled pork ribs, some uh, uh, Creole Trinity simmered down together with some red beans and duck stock and uh, in the end we put some andouille sausage and uh, some uh, some uh, hot sauce again and uh, we serve with uh, some jasmine rice which is cooked with uh, uh, aromatic vegetables such as uh, garlic, ginger, extra virgin olive oil, 
It's delicious. <laughs> oh, wow, that sounds so fabulous. And so many people have different variations of the red they beans do. here, they and do. that can start a big controversy as well about what to put in them, what not to put right. in them. This right. sounds great. I'm looking forward to trying that. It okay. definitely has our twist, yes. Yeah. yeah yes. And then the final dish that you have. Uh, the final dish is a mufaleta sandwich. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing right. Some people says mufaleta, some people says mafaleta. I call it mafaleta. So it is a uh, our uh, mafaleta sandwich, which is filled with a lot of morta sliced mortadella, some prosciutto, capicola, ham, salami. Uh, provolone cheese, house-made olive salad, and house-made pickled uh, jardinera vegetables, which has uh, some uh, peppers, uh, carrots, some uh, cauliflower, and uh, uh, and uh, different from every, different from a lot of other restaurants, we serve it very, very, very hot. So it's uh, like cheese is melted on top of the, all the meats and super, super delicious. I'm so ready to try it. So if you're watching us, come out to Spanish Plaza. We're right across from Jack Daniel Sage. And their booth as well is right behind us here. So you can come and taste this for yourself. It's all on the WWL TV app. Breaking. We're following breaking news out of Jefferson Parish. Local weather. We are expecting an active weather day, so make certain that you are weather aware. Original stories. It's a story you'll only see on WWL TV. Impactful investigations. Changes are happening after a WWL TV investigation. The latest from the field. We are live in Covington. With and the Dome. And it was a high drama day in the Superdome. Download the WWL TV app. Welcome back to Porter Fest. We are at Spanish Plaza. This is the WWL Love Louisiana tent, and we are so happy to be here. We were with Bon Bon Vivant, Yay. Abigail, Abigail, excuse me, Cosio, and Jeremy Kelly, of course, right. with us. Thank you guys so much for being here. Because yeah. I know it's such a busy day. You play later this afternoon on Esplanade yep. on that stage, which is an amazing stage. Kind of take me through your day leading up to a big uh, festival performance because it's such like a buildup. It is. It's a lot of fun. Today was kind of fun because we got a chance to walk all the way across. We live just outside of Esplanade. Perfect. And so just walking through here and seeing everybody like sparking up and having fun. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. It's really, there's a great crowd out there today and the weather's awesome. I mean, the traffic getting here was incredible. Was I was like, ah. Oh. It's a pain for people trying to get around the city, but that means great news. That's I think good. last year almost 900,000 people came out for the four days. This is 100% local talent. How important is that to you guys? Yeah, that's a big deal for us, especially the local and the free. It's it's kind of a really beautifully curated uh, lineup of bands that live and work in New Orleans, yeah. in the French Quarter, all around here. So we, I love that. And so many people come from out of town to see this homegrown talent and then they remember and then they kind of follow you guys around yeah yeah, yeah 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 we have a lot of people who say first time i saw you was at french quarter fest and it's been years that we've been playing it maybe about 10 years and so that's that's awesome i mean you can't beat that 10 years yeah wow so yeah we started at the little stage by the boat and kind of you know we ping pong around different stages every year so what's your favorite thing in 10 years first of all it's just been incredible to see the attendance grow but what's your favorite part of this festival I think just just uh, a lot of festivals change over time, mm -hmm. and we go and play a lot of festivals and watch that happen. And I love that this festival is to staying kind of homegrown. Yeah. And you know, it's like local indie bands that we play with on Friday night at BJ's or whatever yeah, are legends. here on the stages. Yeah, next to legends and big and the hot eight. Irma you know, Thomas. all of these people are wow. Thomas. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's a really good collection of mu New Orleans musicians, I think. It really is, and yeah. it's cool to see how many artists are in different bands, too. I'm like, wait, I just saw you on yeah. that stage, now you're over here, and they're kind of bouncing around, so yeah. you can see them in all their elements. That's I, true. We, uh, we, we play a little bit with Charlie Halloran, the Tropicalis, and, or Tropicalis, and looking at his schedule. Oh, yeah. Oh, he played in like 10 bands, I think, over the next <laughs> few days. He, he's never going to put that trombone We're working, down. Yeah, which it's is amazing. good. Everybody's working. When you, when you walk to and from stages, you see your friends on all the stages. It's, yeah. it's very, very local in that way. Yeah. That's what I was gonna ask. Hi, I'm John Boutte, here with my friends, Greg Rose, Ron, and Mia X. We're getting ready for French Quarter Festival, which features over 300 musical performances on more than 20 stages. 
Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of New Orleans music, culture, and cuisine. It all takes place April 11 through 14. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app today. Don't miss French Quarter Festival from WWL. Festival here at Spanish Plaza at the WWL Love Louisiana stage right across the Jack Daniel stage. You can already hear people perform behind us. Lots of energy is exciting. Thank you so much for sitting with, down with me to, for today. Thank you for having me. All right, I feel like I need a beatbox the rest of this interview now. <laughs> so Robin, tell us about when you're performing, what's happening for tomorrow. So I'm so excited. Tomorrow, Sunday, I will be performing in Jackson Square at the New Orleans and Company stage at 2.20. So it's going to be definitely a, a look to be seen. And I have a new headdress I'm debuting this year. So the songbird, her feathers, my headdress, it's going to be fun. You're so classy, spunky, fun, and you bring so much excitement with a twist. So tell people about what type of music that you perform. So I love being born and raised in New Orleans. I feel like anyone can understand that we don't necessarily be in a box. You know, we can do a little bit of jazz, soul, funk, and then tomorrow we're going to add a little bit of Zydeco. I'm going to have um, my cousin, Sunpie Barnes, join me on the accordion. So you're going to get a full show of what it is to be born and raised in New Orleans, Louisiana. That music is just gonna transcend. The melting pot. The music. melting pot, yes. yes. <laughs> and you have such a wide range of vocals, so. You, so I, little... you know what's funny? I'm like a alto two to a soprano one, so I can go. Glass breaks. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Robin. So you're from New Orleans, Louisiana. When did you start performing professionally, and how did you get into that? So my whole family are musicians. Um, I am the baby, and I've been singing since I was six years old. I started in church, and then after there, I started with my dad, my brother's jazz um, jazz band. So I have been performing from church to Frenchman Street to just private parties with my family, and music's in my blood. I knew since I was six years old, I want to sing. Even when I got my master's in business, I was like, Mom, Dad, I love you, but now I'm going to sing. <laughs> At what point did you realize, I'm good? <laughs> I don't think that ever happened yet. What? I just do what I love. I don't, I don't, I, I, I try not to think about how I'm sounding or anything like that. I just, as long as people are enjoying themselves, that's when I know I'm doing a good job. And you're doing it from the soul, and that's what's so unique as well, because I, people, if you have not seen her perform yet, you can actually feel her music and that's what sets her apart from many other musicians that I've watched perform and then sometimes you have some that sound great on just the audio or on the phones that you download the music and some are so so performing on the stages but you have it all the whole package all around and I'm so excited to and looking forward to seeing you for tomorrow as well so it's funny because I was driving down the road in downtown New Orleans oh and I and I looked and this was before the stoplight. I said, is that Robin? <laughs> she has a mural downtown. Tell us about that. So um, I, first of all, everyone texts me about it all the time. Even my fans will Instagram me and they'll go, is this you? And then I'll, I'll send them a photo of me posing. Like, 
yes, there is a mural of me on Rampart Street, and it's so cool because there's a local company that wants to add more murals and more of the local legends, and I'm like, whoa, I'm a local legend? This is insane. But it's a living legend kind of thing, and that homage and that credit and that love is just so... It's really cool. I just, I'm because I'm from here, I, I just take it as a, you know, I'm Robin, you know, little Robin, da da da, and then people are like, no, you're the songbird, and I'm just like, to be given that honor, I mean, even given the name, the songbird of New Orleans by the city, it's just, it's awesome, and I'm very, very grateful, and I'll do you guys proud, don't worry. <laughs> I just have chills for you, and you have a family. Yeah. How do you balance that? Right. I don't sleep. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> She's have, not kidding. I have two little ones, and it's so funny because it really, because I have to perform at nighttime, I really utilize as much time during the day to just be with them. And the fact that their little personalities are coming out and they love music. My little one told me today, we didn't have any music on in the background, and she goes, it's too quiet. We need some music. And I'm like... That is a little musician in the making. I love it. Are you usually singing around the house? I'm like always while you're singing cooking, around the singing, house. We're always, we're always creating, and I sing talk. So no matter what we're doing, like when I'm walking down the street, people are like, hey, Robin, how you doing? I'm like, I'm doing great. How are you? Fabulous. Oh, yes. See, there you go. No one ever sings to me, so I appreciate you, Colleen. <laughs> That's about it for that. <laughs> you know, I don't want to, I got to save my voice for the interviews, Robin. <laughs> Oh my goodness, so tell us about two, have you performed across the nation, globally, where are some of the places that really stick out to you, of like, just the experience collectively? You know, I will say, I am a um, state ambassador, a U.S. culture ambassador, and I get to travel around the world doing what I love and performing my, my music, but there's only so many places that feel like New Orleans. You know, no matter where I am, no matter how the culturally diverse from the food to the music these places are nothing feels like that warmth that you have when you walk off the like plane or walk down the street and somebody says hey how you doing and you're like thank you I'm all right how are you and I and I love traveling I love being able to do more internationally and national things so like keep them coming but I do love that I get to live in such a magical place and perform here as often as I do it really is magical so for those who are tourists perhaps planning on coming to New Orleans or even our locals tell us about where you perform weekly yes so I um, perform in a duo format with my husband the lovebirds we do every Thursday at the peacock room but I am really excited because I am now stepping out into being an independent artist. So I am doing specialty shows like April 30th. I will be doing my first special show with all original music at Hotel Peter and Paul. Very excited about that. Very excited to just start getting who is Robin out to the world. So I may be coming to a city near you, but you can always find me here at home. So stay a part of the website and the Instagram, the things. So what is your Instagram for those that want to follow you, watch your videos, hear you sing? So my Instagram is um, New Orleans Songbird. So at New Orleans, yes, you heard me sing that. It's not a competition. It's not a competition. But no, my uh, Instagram is at New Orleans Songbird. My website is RobinBarnesMusic.com. So come hang out with me. Can people book you for private experiences, parties, weddings? Yes, book me for all the things. It's funny now that I am being a little bit more. Um, you know curated with my shows it gives me a little bit more freedom to be able to do more um, private events and I love weddings but the with the duo we do it it's called the lovebirds it's my husband and I and we've been doing so many weddings and it's funny because people go you guys are so cute and we're like we're married that's why it's called the lovebirds you know but it's so. not always like that for musicians so <laughs> it's not always like that but yes you know I'm trying to do more festivals more private events so yes book me for all the things Girl, take all my money. How did you <laughs> and your husband meet? Oh my gosh, so funny story. Um, I was walking into a rehearsal and he was coming out of rehearsal and we just locked eyes and said hi. And that was it. That's it, that's, that's that all was it, it takes? That was it, but funny enough, the guy that I was walking into the rehearsal with actually had a crush on me and he told me, my husband's name is Pat, and he told me his name was Bob. So for four years I looked for Bob who plays bass. There was never a Bob who played bass. and. My father retired um, playing bass with me. He's been playing with me since I was six years old. 
and I needed to find a replacement bass player. So Pat walks into the, the, the performance and he's like, hey, I'm Pat. And I'm like, oh, it was love at first sight four years ago. Hi, Bob. And he's like, no, no, my name's Pat. <laughs> I hope you call him by the right name now. Yes, for sure. And it's cool because that 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 day, I was looking for a bass player to play with for the rest of my life. So I asked him, I was like, what are you doing for the rest of your life? And he goes, I guess I'm playing bass with you. And then six months, we started dating, and we've been married almost 10 years. So he asked you out? Actually, I asked him out. I know. I know. I never ask anyone out. But I was like, how would you feel if I said I liked you? And he was like, I'd say that's pretty cool. We're opposites. I am all, like, hyper. My husband's very chill. Yeah. That's so beautiful, and <laughs> gosh, y'all, I'm just thinking about the love life situation right here, because <laughs> you hear these great stories, and it really is amazing how just the stars align, and with that, even the upcoming musicians, do you have any advice for those that are younger, older, that want to be in the music industry? I always tell people, it's never too late to start, and you just have to believe in yourself. I feel like with my career, I have been told and continue being told no no you 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 don't deserve that or you can't have that and i keep going you know what if i believe and i try and i work really hard it's gonna work out and i think as long as you believe in yourself it doesn't matter you know be able to figure out your path and learn how to pivot that's my biggest advice if something doesn't work out pivot find a different angle find a different way because i was supposed to be just a jazz singer and i wanted to do more than just jazz and everyone said, "That's there's no way you can just do one genre, you can do more than one genre. And I said, let me try. And now I'm just so happy that people can come see different forms of Robin. If they see the New Orleans Songbird, they can see a little bit more soulful jazz. If they see Robin and the Firebirds that you will see tomorrow, it's high energy, it's soul, it's funk, it's Zydeco. And then if you see the, the Lovebirds, it's more love music, more just happy. And I'm able to cr cultivate that. And that's only because I really just, I knew what my dream was and I went for it. And I just kept going for it. You have so much to offer from all sides of the spectrum and the, and the music world and to, for people's emotions. And thank you so very much. Y'all, come check out the New Orleans Songbird tomorrow. Tell us where and what time. It's going to be the Jackson Square. The Jackson Square. The New Orleans and Company stage at... 220, y'all. Come hang out with me. Are we going to sing? You're going to be box. You ready? All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Thank you. <laughs> it's all on the WWL TV app. Breaking. We're following breaking news out of Jefferson Parish. Local weather. We are expecting an active weather day, so make certain that you are weather aware. Original stories. It's a story you'll only see on WWLT. Impactful investigations. Changes are happening after a WWL TV investigation. The latest from the field. We are live in Covington. With and the Dome. And it was a high drama day in the Superdome. Download the WWL TV app. Welcome back to French Quarter Fest. We are at Spanish Plaza, the WWL Love Louisiana tent, and we are so happy to be here. We were with Bon Bon Vivant, Abigo, Abigail, excuse me, Cosio, and Jeremy Kelly, of course, right. with us. Thank you guys so much for being here. Yeah. Because I know it's such a busy day. You play later this afternoon on Esplanade yep. on that stage, which is an amazing stage. Kind of take me through your day leading up to a big uh, festival performance because it's such like a buildup. It is. It's a lot of fun. Today was kind of fun because we got a chance to walk all the way across. We live just outside of Esplanade. Perfect. And so just walking through here and seeing everybody like sparking up and having fun. And yeah. 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 It's really, there's a great crowd out there today and the weather's awesome. I mean, the traffic getting here was incredible. Was I was like, oh. It's a pain for people trying to get around the city, but that means great news. That's I think good. last year almost 900,000 people came out for the four days. This is 100% local talent. How important is that to you guys? Yeah, that's a big deal for us, especially the local and the free. It's it's kind of a really beautifully curated uh, lineup of bands that live and work in New Orleans, in yeah. the French Quarter, all around here. So we, I love that. And so many people come from out of town to see this homegrown talent and then they remember and then they kind of follow you guys around yeah yeah, yeah 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 we have a lot of people who say I, first time i saw you was at french quarter fest and it's been years that we've been playing it maybe about 10 years and so that's that's awesome i mean you can't beat that 10 years yeah wow so 
Yeah, we started at the little stage by the boat and kind of, you know, we ping pong around different stages every year. So, what's your favorite thing in 10 years? First of all, it's just been incredible to see the attendance grow, but what's your favorite part of this festival? I think just just uh, a lot of festivals change over time mm -hmm. and we go and play a lot of festivals and watch that happen. And I love that this festival is to staying kind of homegrown yeah. and you know, it's like local indie bands that we play with on Friday night at BJ's or whatever, yeah, are legends. here on the stages. Yeah. Next to Legends and Big and the Hot Eight, you know, all of these people, Irma wow. Thomas, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. It's well, a really I, good collection of mu New Orleans musicians, I think. It really is, and yeah. it's cool to see how many artists are in different bands, too. I'm like, wait, I just saw you on yeah. that stage, now you're over here, and they're kind of bouncing around, so yeah. you can see them in all their elements. That's I, true. We, uh, we, we play a little bit with Charlie Halloran, the Tropicalis, and, or Tropicalis, and looking at his schedule. Oh yeah. Oh, he played in like 10 bands, I think, over the next three <laughs> days. He, he's never We're gonna working. Put that We're working, down. Yeah, which is amazing. good. Everybody's working. When you when you walk to and from stages, you see your friends on all the stages. It's, yeah. it's very, very local in that way. Yeah. That's what I was gonna ask. Do you get along with most other bands oh, and yeah. musicians? Oh, we yeah. all kind of, um, you know, share players and it's a really, uh, it's actually a very small community when you when you get down to it. Especially yeah. we're a Frenchman Street band. We played last night, and you know you know each other, and you see each other across the street at TBA, Spotted Cat. You think, oh hi guys. Nice. So yeah. Let's start from the beginning. If people haven't seen you play here for ten years, start with how you got the name. Well, I I knew the word bon vivant. It's French. It means to live well, and it kind of uh, refers to a person who likes to enjoy a luxurious lifestyle. They like to drink and eat and dance and be merry. And I thought for an ethos, that's a really good idea as a band. It's essentially just living well. And uh, we added the extra bone. It means good, good time. So <laughs> double down. Perfect. Commitment. Yeah. <laughs> and you guys are actually married. How does that work out? Great. It's a wild Perfect. time. It's a wild huh, time. <laughs> we, we get, we got, we've gotten really good at spending lots of time in small places. That's it. Yeah. 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 Tell me about your other bandmates that are already out there getting the sound check in and ready. Yes, we got Deacon Marquin is an incredible drummer. He's going to be on the drum kit today. Uh, we call him our little Buddha. He's very, you know, quiet, soft spoken. Unshakable. But yeah. Just like look to Bo look to Deacon to see what's going on. And we got Jason Jerzok on the sousaphone and electric bass. Okay. A lot of energy from that guy. He's a kid kaboom. And on a trombone today, we have Ellis Cyberling, just a lovely tall drink of water. Great and, dude. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> and you're the saxophonist. Yeah, yes. I, I play saxophone. And we're going to have a special guest uh, out, uh, an MC called uh, Black Soul, that's coming to, up oh, for yeah. a couple of tunes, which we're oh, really excited about. Yeah. Any, can you give us any more than that? Or We've been kind of playing with him for years at Negril. Uh, he, si he steps up and does these incredible off-the-cuff rhymes that are just, I have to try not to stare at him while he does it because i got to look cool, but <laughs> he's just riffing. Act like you've been there before, yeah. but you're really like, oh my god. And I think I sat down and wrote this, but he's just going off-the-cuff, and it's just an incredible art form to watch. On stage. Yeah, we were playing. We were playing with him a little. He was jamming with us a little bit last night, and so we were like, "Just come tomorrow. Yeah. We'll do the, do this again." See, so, I love so he's how coming that and hanging out with here. us. That yeah. is so amazing. Yeah. And you, of course, write the songs. Yeah. But yeah. you kind of explain to me the process. Like you write it, but then you come together as a band to put it all together. That's right. It's kind of like bare, bare bones. I sort of think of it like I I put the bones together mm -hmm. of a skeleton. And then as a band, we sort of put the skin and the hair and the whole, we build it up from there. As a, We're definitely a, a little democracy of musicians, so That's yeah. So cool, it's really fun because uh, Abby will come with an idea, uh, the chords and lyrics and kind of a story, you know, something that she's wanted to express. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes it comes out of the music room as a ballad. Hmm. And it's this beautiful ballad. And then we start to kind of play through it. It becomes this up-tempo dance song. Yeah. <laughs> but still, all the words and the yeah. melodies are, are ballad-like. I don't know, it's really fun, it's the fun to of, see how, what they end up to yeah, be. Yeah, I mean, that's collaboration. Is it, And you, I like to, to think I know what the song is and then give it over to the band and watch it become an entirely different thing. Oh. So it's, But sometimes you could probably get two songs out of it. Yeah. Though. You're like, yeah. this is what I really meant and this is what it turned into in the most beautiful. And we actually, <laughs> over the years, we play some of these songs entirely differently. Huh. Uh, we'll say, oh, tonight is this version or tonight's going to be this version of that song. So it's it's a, it's a really a, a joy. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, you know, 
I'm sure you get that feeling like, oh, this is gonna be a big hit. Is it normally, is your feeling normally right? Hmm. I've been wrong every time ah! I get. <laughs> no, that's every like when time. somebody tries to predict the football game. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes, I, you know, I have to say, being that he's my husband, he gets, he hears them all. And sometimes I'll be on the, you know, the living room floor and I'll say, hey, what about this one? And one time he did say, that is, that's an incredible song. And then it is one of our headlines, you know, our, our hits. So you were right, baby. I got one <laughs> time. <laughs> and this is on tape, so that's fantastic. There we go, it's proof. Yeah, it's funny, sometimes um, we'll get, in the sp studio especially, you get really attached to a song and really excited about it. And then, you know, you kind of, once you record it and release it to the universe, you don't get a say on who likes what and yeah. what people would like to hear and what people respond to. And it's fun, some some of the ones that kind of fall off a little bit and then unexpected songs that work for you really well and people yeah. want to hear them and they, I mean, like, man, I didn't see that one coming. On how that resonates with a fan that That's you right. have no idea, like yeah. maybe they're going through that. Like, yeah. You have yeah. no idea and it just really hits them. Yeah. yeah. Talk to us about your genre because you're so unique. Your sound, I feel like it's rooted in storytelling. It's so New Orleans, but it's got so many other things. Oh, I love that. Leslie, yeah, the, uh, I, I think we kind of just early on, I love to write songs. I love to tell stories and it's a little bit harder to find um, a song that isn't isn't my narrative necessarily I'm just I'm, I'm inspired by a story and I want to tell someone else's iteration of their life and sure. so that's kind of where the bones is it's just what's a good story and then um, we build it together and sometimes it'll be you know Deacon goes what about four on the floor and then it goes to a different direction and so but Jean was a hard one these days yeah um, I feel like and it's you probably so, don't want to be in one. And that's kind of, as I've grown up, I've been like, you know what? Instead of being able to rattle off my three-minute elevate pitch, I just want people to listen to the music. <laughs> and yeah. instead of telling them a genre that they might say, I don't like that. Uh -huh. I mean, I think the music speaks for itself. But, sure. you know, some of the fun ones we've got is a cabaret. Creep cabaret was one. <laughs> I, I like that. Yeah. So I don't know. What, I mean, what do you... Yeah, um, I, think, I think with the all the different kinds of instruments that exist here that you can pull from, like yeah. sousaphone instead of bass guitar, all the horns, uh, accordion, all of these, or, or washboard, all of those sounds are normal here. And so when you leave here and go on tour with all those things, even though we're kind of just a rock band, I think, folk rock, folk indie, folk rock, whatever those all things are, um, <laughs> with, the, with the cool colors that you can paint with here musically, yeah. You just I get to transform into whatever you want, speaking, and that's fun. Speaking of which, because everybody in New Orleans loves you, but you tour all over. What's going on right now? Like, are you coming out with an album? Are you yes, touring? What? Yes, we're actually putting uh, some. We're putting singles out right now. We're building up a to, to release a single in the springtime, maybe the end of the month, nice. maybe. Yeah, there yeah, I soon. say okay, it on air, okay. and uh, we'll be doing that every month or so until we release our full album this summer okay so wow. yeah we uh it's a new game it's a new day for music it's everybody's you know doing it differently these days and so we thought well singles are lovely because i like to work on the song right then and there and build it to completion right so that instead you're doing a little bit all over i like to sort of present this song as is its entirety and say here we go this is that one so it's yeah. so interesting getting in your brain for a minute <laughs> okay i know you said you've been doing french quarter fest for 10 years how long have you guys been together and how did this band even form i mean did was the relationship first and then yeah yeah, yeah. okay well, yeah we, we uh had a musical relationship for two days and then it became a regular relationship <laughs> pretty, pretty quickly um i think both of us really respected each other's musicians i mean the first time i heard abby sing her own songs I was just like I can't believe what's coming out of this person it, it's really so it's really sweet. incredible and so I ran up there and bought her a drink <laughs> and, fu and fussed a lot what kind of drink <laughs> it was a rum and coke rum and I was cup. a younger nice. lady classic okay <laughs> yep. okay yeah and then we started playing music together and writing songs we made an album pretty early on and yeah um Nearly 20 years. So. Yeah, then wow. with this new iteration. You guys look so young. Oh, thank you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with this iteration, it's been fun to just kind of, it went from folk Americana into funky horn band. Yeah. And kind of now, it, whatever she writes, we play. And yeah. it turns out whatever it is, which is fun. Jason so you like, say, oh, what yeah. genre do you like? Okay, we can do something with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, she's I mean, like, I want to do a country tune. Cool. 
Because to be limited by genre when you're writing songs, I feel like I I, I don't necessarily want that that Pressure. boundary. Oh, yeah, sure. and uh, you know. Uh, answering your question Jason always says well it's New Orleans music it's about the lives we're living as New Orleans a lot of these songs are literally about our lives as New Orleanians and then it's got instrumentation that's known locally a sousaphone and horn so we say New Orleans music yeah <laughs> we got a boat coming through I love oh wow all kinds of boats this is just such a great atmosphere I'm glad we yeah um, Spanish Plaza is field the part of the French Quarter Fest. Yeah. So you guys are playing tonight at 4.30 to 5, Esplanade Stage. I do want to talk real quick. You're making your own outfit. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 she you know, so <laughs> many hats, and you do it all well. True. I, uh, you know, as, as, as New Orleans, we costume, and uh, I started getting better on the sewing machine, so I, nice. I thought, well, of all things, I couldn't find clothes I really loved in the stores necessarily, so tear them up or make them all and so yeah I made a little something for today what's the color palette it's silver sparkles nice. <laughs> some sequins okay yeah. Yeah. it's gonna be beautiful I can't wait Thank to see you, it Leslie. anything else you want people to know we will see you at 4 30 at the esplanade in the Definitely. shade till 5 30 babies come out and dance in that grass I mean Jeremy thank you so very much thank you, you. Louisiana what can you say there's no what's like it Brimming with history, overflowing with culture, a melting pot of beautiful people. Some generations deep, others still getting used to the humidity. It's waterway bustling with industry, it's streets alive with artistic expression, and the food, oh the food. But what makes Louisiana great is its people, its wonderful people. Still standing, still persevering, still fighting. Because here's the thing, we got problems too, and we own up to them. We're not scared of tough issues. We don't back down from tough questions, and we aren't going to run away when things get hard. Sure, we got problems, but WWL, that's why we're here. We uncover lies and find the truth, expose injustice, and get people what they deserve, keep people informed, and keep them safe. We dig deep, find solutions, solve problems, and get stuff done. <gasps> We tell stories and start conversations. We celebrate the good and try to fix the bad. We support local businesses and help them thrive. We work hard, do good, and have fun doing it. From Laplace to St. Bernard, Homer to Covington, Metairie to New Orleans, WWL-TV is now WWL Louisiana. We love Louisiana and fight for it. Day three of French Quarter Fest is well underway, everybody, and we are so excited. You more artists interviews here from our love Louisiana stage here in Spanish Plaza. Joining me now is a girl I have been wanting to interview since I first heard "Be Your Girl" years ago. Tidra Moses is joining me, everybody. Hello, beautiful. Hey, baby, how you doing? Doing good. How are you? Happy French Quarter Fest. Happy French Quarter Fest. And I am so glad that you are performing at French Quarter Fest and sitting down with us here in our love Louisiana stage. A little birdie told me this is your first year performing at French Quarter Fest. You're performing tonight, 6.40 p.m. on the Jack Daniel stage. Talk to me about this performance. How does it feel to be here for the first time performing? It is awesome. It's awesome. You know, I live right up the street. I got a house right up the street. So it's like I just come on down here and perform for the people. But more than anything, I love this city. And for a long time, my hard work didn't really get a chance to be shown here. So I feel really good that I'm able to do it in such a, um, a great festival, such a massive festival. Absolutely. And you're closing out stage tonight. Some people may call that the headliner All right. for tonight. <laughs> okay. And I love that you're going to be doing it because you're a New Orleans girl. You're from here. You started at Bonneville for a while. Shout out to Jefferson Parish. Jefferson Parish. And I heard your sound check earlier you sound absolutely great but let me tell you everybody a song i was hearing was not that classic be your girl talk to me about some of the songs you're going to be performing for us tonight um you know i really just wanted to um show my uh influence from the city you know what i mean and for me the influence from the city is so many different things it's rhythms it's gospel it's a lot of different things hip-hop you know what I mean? Which is something I think that sometimes get overlooked for New Orleans. And I learned most of my hip hop being here as a child. You know what I mean? And um, so I'm going to explore all those different sounds that influenced me as a child. That That's my goal, is to explore all those sounds. And those that come within the records that I've written. Absolutely. You know, I say all the time, the crowd at 
French Court Fest. It's a special crowd. You came for the first time last yes. year as a person who was just checking out all the music, and now you're going to be up on stage. What are you hoping for from that crowd tonight who's going to come see Mr. Moses? Just reception and energy, you know, because I'm a pour myself out. I don't know any other way. If it's two people, if it's 10,000, I pour myself out. Just the energy. What you give me, I'm going to give you back that 10 million times. Absolutely. Yeah. And we're going to give you all the energy. I love it. And I mentioned it earlier, but I remember when I first heard Be Your Girl, and I was like, uh-uh, wait a <laughs> minute. I'm not even a woman, but I understand what she's saying. You yeah, know what I'm right, saying? Right. And then the Kate Tronada remix came out. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So much. Talk to me a little bit more about that song, Be Your Girl, because if you all don't know, it's celebrating 20 years this year. Yes, the original is celebrating 20 years this year. My first debut album, Complex Simplicity, is celebrating 20 years this year. And um, to be honest, Kate Tronada and I came up with that record somewhere around 2012. So it was well after the, al the song was already yeah. out. And, you know, it was just a connection. And that's why I love DJs, because DJs can change your life, you know. And he made a record for me that changed everything. And it brought more attention to everything outside of that record, you know. So, yeah, Be A Girl is just a... I think it's one of those like a maze record or one of those records just is gonna live forever. And I'm just grateful to be a vessel for it because Absolutely. I didn't know that was gonna happen when I when I made it. And that's what's so great about the song because like you mentioned, the original came out in 2004. Yeah. Kate Shinada came out around 2012. 2012 yeah. Talk to me about that 2004 song. When you first heard it, when you first recorded it, did you think it was gonna be the song that it was? I or didn't, that it is? I didn't, I didn't think, you know, when you're a new artist, you don't think about what is going to perform and what's not going to you just pouring yourself out, right? And I had a crush on this guy, this massive Didn't crush we all, on this guy. baby? Didn't we all? <laughs> still do, still do. I don't have a crush on him no more. But I had a crush on this guy, and I just wrote it from the perspective of if he was in my neighborhood, you know, and how I would feel. And I was so shy. I was such a big crush girl when I was younger, you know. And so I was just really, really shy. And I wrote it from a perspective of if I could tell him how I felt. And I think that's an 8 to 80 subject matter, you know? Everybody can relate to that. Absolutely. Whether it's 2004 or 2024, that's what's so great about the song. It still resonates today. And baby, you are still making music. You actually have a song that just came out last month in March with my boy, Pell. Yes. Talk to me about this record. Yeah. Come, run Home. Run mm -hmm. Home is what it's called. And I love Pell, first of me all. Too. He's a really, really talented artist that is so diverse mm -hmm. in his ways. It's not like stuck to like one way of doing uh, music. And I was interested in working with him and then I would see him out and I'm like, hey, Pell, blah, 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 whatever. We kind of just would see each other. And one day he hit me and he was like, yo, I want you to get on a record. And I was in Miami at the time and I can't really get out there. He said, well, I'll just send it to you. And we just worked like that. We collaborated like that. And it came out really, really wonderful. I really love that record. You know it's a jam because if you don't know Pell, he's a rapper, he's a DJ, he's a well-rounded artist. He even sings a bit. He does yeah. sing as well. I've yeah. interviewed him before and boy can he do a little something. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. Pell and I appreciate it. that you're still working, you're still making music. What does the future for Teacher Moses look like? It's cool, you know, to be here 20 years after my debut album and still doing it and, and still able to do it at a nice level you know what i mean and so the future for me is putting out a new record within the next month okay i want to say it's may may something yeah uh, sometime in may. i'm not good with the dates That's okay, it's a lot today but i can't sometime remember in may we have it sometime in spring yes um in may we're gonna put out a record um called with all my heart which is a very good beautiful acoustic record but words aren't very acoustic you know if you, i can't really get into it too deep but with all my heart someone hurt me with all my heart and now I want to express Listen, all my heart I how I feel about them. show here on WWL, Great Day, Louisiana. When that record comes oh, yes. out, baby, you have to come on oh, and yes. perform for oh, yes. us. So, oh, yes. <laughs> I ask you this. You know, I have one more question for you. We're at French Quarter Festival. The music is great. The weather's going to be beautiful yes. this weekend. I know you're going to be serving us a look for Already. sure. But how does Cedra Moses French Quarter Fest, when you're not going to be on stage, where can we see you? What you gonna be eating? What you gonna be drinking? Tell me all of that. Well, you know, first and foremost, she's gonna have a hat on to shield her from the sun. Okay, because it's everybody. Okay. <laughs> and then secondly, I'm gonna have a pair of sneakers on. I'm having me a cute little backpack today. I got my Louis Vuitton backpack. All right. And you know that's how I festival anyway. But I wanna hit. I love the music, but I think for me, French Quarter Festival, I really love the food. So I try to go and check. So we just spoke about Adiz Nola, and I hadn't had a chance to get over to the restaurant every time I come here. 
But then I'm walking around and I see a D Snola. So I'm searching for food. I'm trying to stay out of the sun. And, when I, and whenever there is a, a artist that I'm really interested in, I'm going to rush to that stage. Is there somebody you're most interested in seeing? You know, we still have two days, everybody, to check out a lot of good music. And if not here right now, who's an artist I'm listening to right now? Who's in Tidra Moses's, like, Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube Music, whatever platform you use? You know, uh, as far as an artist here that I want to see, I'm not exactly sure. There's so many. I have to kind of like narrow it down because oh, yeah. I have to get out of here. There's <laughs> so many. But uh, as far as who I'm listening to, I love Keon Dixon. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He's a soul singer. He's an independent. I'm pro independent artist because I'm an independent artist. I love Keon Dixon. Um, there's so many different people. Lucky Day, who's also from New Orleans, and I think people Lucky don't Day. know he's from Louisiana. Mm -hmm. um, uh, who else am I listening to? Is Cowboy Cut, I haven't heard. Oh, I have to listen to that. We'll okay. Wrap this up okay. All right. There are some jams, but before we listen to all of that, Cowboy Carter, we're listening to Tidra Moses yes. tonight, everybody. 6 40 p.m., right behind us at the Jack Daniel stage. She's my girl. She's my girl. <laughs> and you are that girl. Tidra, thank you so much for thank being you, here. Thank you, baby. I appreciate of you so course. much. It's all on the WWL TV app. Breaking news. Telling breaking news out of Jefferson Parish. Local weather. We are expecting an active other day, so make certain that you are weather aware. Original stories. It's a story you'll only see on WWL TV. Impactful investigation. Changes are happening after a WWL TV investigation. The latest from the field. We are live in Covington. With and the Dome. And it was high drama day in the Superdome. Download the WWL TV app. And welcome back to French Quarter Fest, where it is all about the music, it is all about the food, the culture, the entertainment. And with us now is one of the artists coming up at 3.30 over on the Avita stage. It is going to be Sweet Crude with us now, one of the members. It is Sam Kraft. Now, let's talk about, first of all, how you guys you know, present yourselves. You're this indie pop rock group, a lot of percussionists on the team. So how do you sell yourselves to folks who don't maybe necessarily know who you are? It's kind of tricky, and we often have to do that where you just yeah. do. It's like, oh, you know, there's a lot of drums. We play keyboards, uh, dance around, everybody <laughs> sings. But then uh, the other point is we have to make is that most you're going to hear a lot of French when we sing because we yeah. thought, um, you know, we grew up around a lot of Cajun and Zydeco music, and there's so many people who are masterful at that. So, but. You know, we love the Talking Heads, and we love, uh, you know, Phoenix, and we love, you know, B-52s, mm -hmm. and a lot, of, a lot of quirky pop music, I guess you could say. And so we decided that we want to take that dialect that, we, that feels so home to us and put it in new clothes and put it in a new context. So that's kind of what it is. There's probably a much shorter way to say that, <laughs> but you could say Cajun indie pop, Louisiana French pop, something like that. We love a long version here because we love a story here in Louisiana. Awesome, so yeah. that's going to work just fine. So you guys started in 2013. You dropped your first album in 2017. I don't want to say relatively new, but you guys have been around long enough to have a journey in this. How has that been for you guys? Man, it still feels very new. And we still feel like a kind of an experiment because every time we go out on stage, we're doing this thing that, I don't know, we don't see it very much, which is mm -hmm. which is Louisiana French, typically Cajun music, yeah. Zydeco music. We're putting it in this pop context. Still feels feels very fresh and every time we write a new song it's like is this gonna work let's try this let's try that and I gotta say it's been pretty well received uh, for the most part that weird amount of salesmanship we used to feel like every, I used to, like every time I go on the mic I'm like hey everybody we're sweet crude we're from New Orleans you're gonna hear yeah. a little French a little bit of English uh, uh, you, you, hopefully you'll get used to it <laughs> but now I feel like that I won't have to do that anymore and I feel like when we go places that story is just embedded in the music yeah and I feel like it's been mine pretty well, and we're very fortunate to be invited again to play French Quarter Fest. And sort of like, um, this is a huge point of pride for us to be able to play on such an awesome stage. And uh, yeah, we're happy to do it, and it, yeah, it still it feels great. How do you decide on the set list? <laughs> well, you know, we, we're at a festival, we want it to be lively, we want yeah. it to be exciting. We, we had actually a lot of brooding, dark stuff, uh, especially through the pandemic. That was a weird time. So with all that, we try not to linger too much on the minor keys, too much on the sad. Um, so we, we decide on some upbeat stuff in our catalog, we play some choice cover material. Maybe mm -hmm. we touch a traditional Cajun song that we've uh, updated, brought to new life. Um, but basically, we just want to get the crowd hyped. You know, what is it like as an artist to look around at a festival like this and you see so many different stages, so many different genres of artists coming through this festival, all really celebrating one thing, and that is culture and the music of this city in Southeast Louisiana. It's awesome. We're so glad to be a part of that context. And we're just telling a, one little sliver of that story, mm -hmm. which is the current state of Louisiana French. 
And so we're we're so glad to be just like in the same on the same uh, stage that like yeah. you know you might see an Irma Thomas or a Dixie Cups or something like that. Um, that's a, a huge honor. It's a huge. Um, I don't know. We're humped by that. And do you draw your inspiration from those other artists, like those legendaries? Absolutely. Ones we absolutely. You know, we try not to do like too close to the sun because <laughs> I mean, we don't want to feel like that we're appropriating that. Right. But we can't help but be influenced by brass band music, by the soul of New Orleans, soul music of New Orleans, by jazz and all that and all, and all the above. Uh, we can't help but put that in our music in our own way and bring that energy to the stage. I know you guys want. You said you want to hype the crowd during yes. your list. So how do you hype yourselves up, but also on the back end decompress after? a set like that. Oh my goodness, so we like to, before the set, okay, we all get in a circle, it's pretty weird, I'd be I'd be uh, a little bit embarrassed if I ever got on camera uh, on WWL, but we can make uh, it happen. We can make that happen. We all get in a circle and we all do kind of an improv theater game where we all just like hoop and holler and make mm -hmm. noises together and just shake out all the nerves and stuff like that, because it is tense leading right up to the yeah. stage and the hustle to get on stage uh, at a festival. So. We, uh, we make our noises, we shake all of our tension out, and then we go on stage and just get weird. And we try to do, we try to teach the crowd a little bit of French, you know, even if it's like, allez, or on est paré, which means we're ready. You know, like, allez, let's go, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And we can kind of use our identity and use the, and uh, blend that with the crest energy to kind of make something happen together. But really, even if you don't know French or Cajun French, you can relate to it because you hear it all the time. I just, I walk around and say, c'est bon. Like, yes, it's nobody's bon. business. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Laissez les bons sont roulés. You know, we all say lagnab. We all say this, beaucoup, that. So we know these words and these phrases, yeah. even if we think we don't. Exactly. We have a song about that. It's We have a Sweet Crude mm -hmm. featuring Big Frida. Where we that, just, I was going to ask you guys about that. Yeah, your, your so team we, we that. did a collab with Big Frida, harping on and like embracing all of those token words and all yeah. of our vocabularies that we all say. And so, uh, you know, we want to embrace that, even if it's just those little phrases that we have from the, that are just lingering in our vocabulary. Let's lean into that. Let's use those as much as we can. And it shows you the uniqueness of the culture when it comes to the music here. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's what makes Louisiana exceptional uh, compared to the rest of uh, mm -hmm. what we have around us is that we have this this interesting heritage and so we want to celebrate that in our own little indie pop kind of way and uh, we think that Louisiana can stay on the map that way in a global context because the global French speaking world has Louisiana as, uh, as its own uh, little vacation as its own island uh, culturally unto itself that they can be like oh my goodness how is this still happening how is this working what you know so it makes Louisiana fascinating I think. It, it works here for sure yeah. any artists that you guys are excited to see from your uh, own standpoint well we just saw Dixie Cups and that's what we we're most excited to see today I think I think they they really like embrace the soul of New Orleans yeah. that, that's what's happening today that we were uh, super excited about so yeah I mean um, there, there's there's uh, this this festival has so much to offer and so you know we're grateful and also for the food you know we're so we're so looking forward to that every time it's like we want more time here we want to be able to hang out longer and longer we do have to be at our stage at a certain time reporting for duty so uh, it's just awesome we're so glad to be here and being interviewed for WWL I mean you know uh, we all kind of as a group leaned on WWL mm -hmm. during Katrina we lean on WWL now we go to WWLTV.com look at that <laughs> radar thank you so much WWL for giving us amazing weather I'm telling you the music just sounds better when the weather is good <laughs> yeah y'all y'all did that uh, you know in terms of like how we you know depend on y'all for disseminating this information and helping us decide what to do what to wear uh, so we're so grateful to be here today. Well, we're happy to do it. I know you had a report for duty soon, so yes, we'll let sir. you get yes, to sir. it. Same craft with Sweet Crude. Going to be you, looking forward to seeing you guys over on the uh, B stage here in just a little bit. So awesome. get to it. Sam, appreciate so it. so much, Mike. We As always. It. We're going to have so much more for you coming up on WWL Plus, uh, coming from the French Quarter Fest 2024, right here at the Love Louisiana uh, Festival, our stage in Spanish Plaza. Stick around. Back. And welcome back to French Quarter Fest 2024, coming to you live WWL Love Louisiana stage right here in Spanish Plaza. Now, whether you're here for the culture, whether you're here for the music, which is going on behind us right now at the Jack Daniels stage, or you come for the art, it's uh, the food that a lot of folks really come out and want to try experience some new things, maybe get some of the old favorites. We're going to really highlight three of them now with three beautiful women, all part of a nonprofit organization that really helps entrepreneurs capitalize on their talents here at the festival. So I want to start with you and tell me a little bit about the organization, introduce yourself and how it came to be. Yeah, so my name is Sinedra Taylor. I'm the founder and executive director of Friends of Cody's NOLA. We support food entrepreneurs in three ways, offer opportunities to access affordable commercial kitchen space. We also provide technical assistance, so courses to support their growth, and then access to revenue generating opportunities like shared tents at a festival. Yeah. Yeah. And you actually have your own your own um, food here as well. So tell me a little bit about yes. this 
bubble waffle that I just learned about today. So I own Crazy Waffle Bar as well. That's what got me into, uh -huh. into the food incubation space. So Crazy Waffle Bar is under the Friends of Cody Tent, and we are producing a bubble waffle stuffed with yeah. Patton's hot sausage. And then we deep fry it for added crunch. It sounds like a lot, but trust me, it's very delicious. I have seen so many people walking around with these, and I was talking to you a little bit earlier about this, and I'm thinking to myself, what is this? I didn't know if it was like a dessert of like an ice cream, but now I'm so intrigued with what you've done with this. Well, listen, we always invite individuals to reimagine their waffle yes. experience. So it can be dessert, it can be breakfast, we do sweet, savory. I mean, we run the gambit of waffle experiences. So today, we're giving you a little bit of both. So do you want it for breakfast, you want it for lunch, it's up to you. We got a taste of everything in there for you. Right now, we all want it for French Quarter Fest. So uh, exactly. Move, down to the uh, the okay. uh, crawfish roll yeah. here. I mean, crawfish, of course, a staple. How have you reimagined it, Chef? Um, so normally we think of crawfish, we think of fried, we think of the face, we think of boiled. Yeah. But I wanted to do something different, and um, crawfish is us. It's very New Orleans. So I wanted to do something that was naturally New Orleans, but that just a little different. So if you think of a lobster roll, it's a cold dish served on a toasted bun. I wanted to do the same thing, but make it, as you said, better with crawfish. The so that's what version. we did. And how have you seen folks react to it? Uh, oh, we have video it? footage. They love it. <laughs> At first, like this guy was like, oh, wait, it's cold? I'm not going to like that. And then he bit it. He was like, never mind. I that take it back. That was going to be my I question, how people react to the coldness yeah. of the, the At roll. first, they're like, oh, no, I want hot food. I'm like, you just got to try it. Trust me. And then they're like, you were right. So, so it works. <laughs> and it's hot. So you get a warm toasted bun and you get the cool, refreshing crawfish on the inside. I think it's the best of both worlds. And then you come back for seconds. Yes, another right? one. Somebody did order one while he was eating one before. Of course, anybody who's uh, from New Orleans or heard anything about New Orleans knows all about Yakimi. Of course, we have different versions of it from you guys as well. You have a vegetable one and the uh, the normal lamb, right? Lamb, yes. Yeah. So yeah. kind of first for people who may not be familiar with Yakimi, those people are. But tell me a little bit about what it is and the recipe behind it. Okay, so... Yakimin is like a New Orleans style, a or Asian New Orleans style <laughs> soup, yeah. ramen, if I could call it. Um, Sinatra called me and gave me the opportunity to do the lamb yeah. Yakimin, and I was able to do it, and the people enjoying it, and I'm grateful. I'm sure a lot of folks will walk up and say, oh my God, I have Yakimin. Yes. Yeah. So how's that been like for you, knowing you helped craft it and create it and put it out there? I'm grateful. Yeah. That's all I have. I'm grateful. And to be a part of this organization, this nonprofit, to kind of put you in that spotlight and give this platform. Thank you. Because <laughs> I can tell you're passionate about it. So I'll take it. Yeah, you go can ahead. Gather. Um, I've wanted French Quarter Festival since my first time coming as this food for the festival. But, you know, there are certain restrictions, and I'll be able to do it alone. So thanks to the kitchen and Sinedra, I'm able to be festival. And what's it like seeing all these different culinary artists come together and making happen with the uh, the food out here? It's amazing. We are all leaders in our own right. You know, we all have our own businesses. So it takes a lot like juggling to see like how do we make each other shine? We have to sell yeah. each other's products, right? Build each we other have up. to love on each other. We get up in the morning, we brainstorm together, you know, we send in text messages at night. It really books community. Um, and it, it just gives you another dimension of like insight on staffing even. Just all of the experience systems at a festival. How is that different from a storefront or a pop? I mean, capacity across the board is a, is, is a new view of capacity, and I just love it. I just love seeing all of the bodies and all the staff working under the booth. I love it. And when the food is good, like what you guys have, it's even better. Yeah, that's my favorite part, when people eat the food, enjoy it, and you can just see the reaction. And they're like, oh, I saw this on Instagram. I had to edit. Yeah. That's like the best part. Well, keep posting. Get out there. And ladies, we appreciate all three of you being with us and what you bring here to French Quarter Fest 2024. We, of course, will have plenty more coverage, so stick around. We are live from the WWL Lump, Louisiana stage right here in the plaza. Come out and see us if you can. If not, thank you for joining us from wherever you are. I think that in our crime coverage, the way that we're approaching crime now, we look at things on the surface level. And when you look at things on the surface level, you tend to think, oh, well, if we just need to be arrested, the carjacker, then, 
you know, the crime would go down. If we would simply put people in jail or give stiffer penalties, then crime will go down. Well, obviously that has happened in the past in New Orleans and crime did go down for some time, but again, it shot right back up again. So at some point, our responses to things have to be superficial and we have to ask the question, what is the root cause of this? What's the nucleus of the problem? What's the thing that's right at the center of it that we're just missing? You know, we have to take a look back at what we're doing wrong, at why communities were disinvested from, statistically, why more crimes happen in this particular community versus that one. Um, we have to take a look at what is pushing people to do crime. Is it a poverty rate? You know, is income? How do we level the playing field so no one would want to commit robbery? There are so many different answers we can give to this. And I think that we've tried all of the ways, or at least law enforcement has tried all of the ways that give you an immediate response, which is let's arrest our way through this. Let's lock people up. Let's put them um, away or give harder penalties or charging teenagers as adults. I think WWR crime focuses on while this is happening, while we do understand why some of those penalties are issued, we ask why it's happening and why particularly is it happening to with rather one demographic. Let's take a look at the overall issue and not just address what are, you know, quick concerns. Well, first of all, Katie, Mike, and I have a combined 90 years of reporting experience. So we know what it is to be in New Orleans. We know what it is to cover this town. And we have the most experience of any station in this area. As I've worked at WWL over the years, one of the things that I'm most proud of in the investigative unit is the fact that my stories have been able to make a change. That comes in the form of changing laws, that comes in the form of changing elected officials that ended up in jail because of the stories that we did. Um, that goes for myself, David Hammer, Mike Proline, all three of us have done stories that have really made an impact in the community. And I think that that is one of the things that WWL's legacy is a big part of. It's being a part of the community, it's making a difference, it's being a place for people who can't use theirs or don't have one. Trust me. Uh, these stories that appear on TV, when it really has deep personal impact, we stick with those people, those families, those institutions, sometimes for years, and in my case, I can honestly say a lifetime. In well, I'm from New Orleans. I grew up in New Orleans, and I want to see this community do better. I want it to always be improving. So that's what motivates me at the end of the day. That's what gets me going every day to try to expose the inequities in our community, to expose the problems with our government, and hopefully fix them. That presence is a backstop for so many things that could be going wrong. Sure, some things slip our attention momentarily, but the track record and we're the ones who followed those tracks. We really make sure, first of all, of course, that we're accurate. That is huge for us as meteorologists. We want to do a really good job with that. Um, and of course, we want to get the information to yours in a way that's really clear and understandable and in a way that can really help you decide what to do. What we do here as a team at WL, we try to make sense of all that uncertainty so you can make the decision to uh, stay safe or do what you need to for approaching storms or whatever the active weather may be. There are folks out there that have that instilled fear of severe storms, the unknown of um, pop-up thunderstorms, tornadoes, as well as probably one of the biggest events in Southeast Louisiana being hurricanes. And so I try and quell those fears by answering all of the questions that the public may have about these events. The, you know, there's, there's no way to avoid them usually, but if I can kind of answer those questions and put folks' minds at ease, I've done my job. Really what motivates me to get up every single day is knowing people are safe and they know exactly what to do when the weather strikes.
everything has a story. My mother once shared a recipe with me. And outside of the actual recipe, it was for stuffed bell peppers. He shares the story of being taught how to stuff bell peppers, talking about the family that's back to St. John the Baptist Parish, you know, to my mother growing up in Edgar, Louisiana, to my grandfather up in the seventh ward. And, and just, I think that every connects us back to family and it connects us back to community. That's through music, you know, whether that connects us back to Tremaine, that's through the food, that's through the architecture, and that is even through the clothes we wear, I was slaying, where you at, you know? Um, you know, being a share all of those kind of New Orleans colloquialisms, those things that we, the fact that we say Burgundy and not Burton, you know? The fact that we can give you words like Chapatulas, we can do all of those things uh, back to community and back to family. I think that in, in celebrating like the Black Masking Indians and celebrating food and culture, it is also honoring those that came before us and honoring the people who gave us these things either out of necessity or gave us these things because they were just, there was, they just wanted to do something great. French Quarter Fest 2024. We at the Love Louisiana stage, right? Sponsored by WWL TV. We're speaking with Troy Sawyer and the Elements. The Elements, I guess, are on a break right now. Yeah, they're on a break. They're trying to get some food now. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. You guys opened the ball today on yes, this third day on the stage behind us here. Kind of run us through what that was like being out here on this gorgeous day. I think the sunny weather makes the music sound better. It does. I don't like to play when it's cold because I'm a player and it turns my trumpet into ice. And it's hard to play cold trumpet. So this is perfect weather. It's so beautiful. But by us being out here early yeah. to open up the fest, it's an honor um, to open up the fest and set the tone for the rest of the day. You know, I got to listen to the last part of y'all sets. I mean, it, it's this big fusion of yes. yeah, you, have, you have soul, you right. have rock in there. Yeah. And I just saw the crowd started gravitating towards the stage, especially when you guys did the encore. Right. Where did them come from? It comes from New Orleans, being born and raised in New Orleans, and um, traveling around the world. Yeah. So like any type of genre of music that I'm attracted to, that I like, if it's good music, good music. I'll fuse it all together. I don't say I'm gonna, I'm gonna write a composed music for this particular genre. I just create. So whatever comes out is what comes out. So it's a gumbo and a fusion of all these different elements and styles and influences. Um, growing up in New Orleans. And it's really been a long journey for you, especially the leader now, but you yeah. didn't start that way. I did not. I did not. So I was playing with different bands before, but after Hurricane Katrina, I came back to New Orleans and I just started my own band, stepped out as a band leader. So it was a Troy so your Trio, <laughs> which we were at the King Bowdens. It was called King Bowdens on Rampart Street, Nines Bar Tanique. And first um, consistent gig every Wednesday night as a band leader. One thing I didn't know about you is of course, we know you as a trumpeter, but you didn't that way either. Like, you were initially in strings. Yeah, so I picked up the violin when I was in pre-K kindergarten. I played that for a couple of years, yeah. and I told my mama, I said, Ma, she said, well, boy, I said, I'm not feeling the wind. <laughs> so she said, okay, which instrument are you feeling? Well, do you want to play another instrument? And I was like, yeah, I do, but I don't know which one. But I heard this band marching out of New Orleans, the St. Augustine March 100, and I heard this instrument, and then they took me to a jazz concert to hear the great Winston Marcellus play. I said, man, that's the instrument I want to play. So I picked up the trumpet in fourth grade, and I've been playing it ever did, since. Do you think you did strings because your grandfather had that yeah, whole interaction great, with all Yeah, my grandfather from? played all of the strings, and he wrote songs with the great Buddy Bowden. One time with Louis Armstrong played at Preservation Hall. And so I have, I come, I come from a musical. Yeah. And I think that's in my blood to pick up the strings and um, play around with it. I love the cello, so I'm going to pick up the cello one day. Yeah, I can do it. But when you talk about you weren't feeling the, the strings, that just show you how much music is a feeling more than just a sound. Right, yeah. Is that so important in New Orleans culture for you guys? The feeling comes from, you know, our ancestors of the things they have gone through. And I, I feel like everywhere I travel all over the world, 
nothing like a New Orleans musician because we have gone through a lot. Our ancestors went through a lot, and that pain, and we turn that pain into purpose. So I feel like we coming from that place <laughs> of feeling, oh, and your soul is your energy. So our energy is really connected to the verse and people can feel it. I tell you, we can feel it from all the way around. You're playing on oh, the yeah, stage. Oh yeah, you were rocking with us? You, you guys your had, soul? Oh yeah, we, you said, <laughs> we roll, we rock, we rock your soul, yeah. right? Yeah, oh and that's man. that's something you guys did with Doopsy. Yeah, um, I met Rock and Doopsy in Paris a couple of years back, and he said, yeah, little brother, when we get yeah. back to the States, we're gonna work, and then we finally um, worked together. I sat in with his band, and then um, I started working on my album. I was at the Ellis Marcellus Center mm -hmm. for music, because I was in the village, and I said, hey, Rockin', I'm over here at the Ellis Center. I'm hearing you on this this track, this song. He's like, okay, where you at? It's Marcella Center. He said, all right, I'm on my way. So he came through and put <laughs> his verse, James Brown, in the booth, giving you that energy. And that's what I love about him. He has a good energy. He's a good person. And he's all about helping the next generation out. You know, you're not a stranger to festivals, you know, a stranger to music venues across right. the city. When you come to play French Quarter Fest and you see the different stages, you see the different artists, different genres, what is it like to see that as a New Orleanian and an artist who is true to the It's beautiful to see people that I grew up with when we were kids to the Satchmo Jazz Camp, playing music as kids, where we still playing. It's refreshing actually to see some of my, um, even the, the older musicians still playing, you know, like um, Wendell Bruni is yeah. and all the rest of them. I saw them today for the kickoff ceremony. And it just, it's just refreshing. It's inspiring to keep this going because we're the ones that got to pass it down to the next generation. And um, I just, it, it just makes me feel awesome. It makes me, feel more inspired to keep doing what I'm doing. You know, part of what you're doing when you're passing things down is your, your educational components right. that you really work on. How seen that really transform lives in the kids that you work with? Uh, so I started teaching in the school system after Hurricane Katrina mm -hmm. um, through this organ called Artist Corps of New Orleans, which is an organization that will get professional musicians that have to teach at a school that didn't have enough money in the budget to pay for a full-time music teacher. And I started teaching, and I'm all about self-expression, and then I felt like it was my responsibility to be there because those kids are looking at me, and they want something from me I have to give. And I just kept on doing it to better teacher, and then I decided to step out of the system to create my own system, which is called Girls Play Trumpets too. It's my nonprofit called Girls Play Trumpets. A lot of folks look up to you for doing that. So, okay, so you just did the set. Yeah. How do you guys do after a set like that? Because that was a lot of energy. Oh, a lot of energy. And I mean, uh, you're almost done. You have a little shade there, but yeah. the crowd was rocking with you. So yeah, you know, drinking lots of water, I drained <laughs> it. And then, you know, and there's a lot of energy. I have to like come down from this. So now I'm calm now because it's a high when you're performing. You got to bring that energy, give the people your all, and I always give my mm -hmm. the people my all because you never know that may be my last time performing. So you always got to perform like last time performing. All right, so let's talk about the fest. What are you looking forward to? Food, other art? Yeah, so um, they have a bunch of, oh, Tidra Moses is closing out the stage, and that's a friend of um, of mine, and we go way back, mm -hmm. and like, we're going to start um, some music together. So I'm, I'm eager to check her out later on. There's a lot of people. Water Seed is performing um, Sunday for, for my nonprofit to perform too because the girls been practicing and rehearsing a minute to prepare for this moment. So they perform tomorrow on stage from 12.15 to 1.15. Is that the one in front of Aquarium? Is that where that is? I think that's the one on Decatur around like H&M where it splits off. That's right, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm excited. Even the food, I'm out there and check out the food see what they have to offer, you know, I, I like to eat food. I mean, we can smell it from down here. I'm <laughs> sure you guys could smell it on the stage the oh whole yeah, time. Oh yeah, I came out here, I was like, oh yeah, I smell that food, I can't wait to eat. I can't wait and to I get off the eat stage. Before, I blew that food straight through the trumpet. And my band members <laughs> didn't know, Troy doesn't eat filets. But you know what, after he's done, he's gonna oh, be hitting up all the food. In. I'm going in, I All right, so when's your next performance for folks who may have missed you out here today? So my performance is, um, we're working on something at the Colonel. We got some other private gigs coming up. Um, Jazz Fest is coming up, doing a lot mm -hmm. of kills. Um, Girls Pitch Trumpets 2 is performing at Jazz Fest. Um, so yeah, just we, rock, we actually lining up the, the world tour for Moroccan Soul. 
So that's our focus to really travel around the world promoting the good news album. All right, Troy Sawyer, we had you praise you. Thank, we appreciate everything you've done just for the younger generations of the Thank music. You. Troy Sawyer and Elements performing our right. Rumble and Jack Daniels stage. Mm -hmm. Stick around with us. We have a whole lot more for you on, from French Quarter Fest 2024 right here at the Love Louisiana Festival. Thanks for watching no matter where from. And if you can get out here, come out and see us. We're getting ready to celebrate French Quarter Festival. Presented by Chevron, it all takes place April 11th through 14th. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app today. From WWL Louisiana. For from the Love Louisiana stage, we are live coming to you. Fish Plaza. There is art, there is culture, there is plenty of music as you can hear on the Daniel stage behind us. And another thing, is the food. The food out here is absolutely incredible. You can smell it no matter where you are. And one of the vendors with us now is Marsalis with Wolf Burger, a food truck, actually. Appreciate you with us. You know, when did you guys start setting up this morning? Uh, we were out here probably about 7.30. That's yeah, kind of early. Yeah, 7.30 till about 8, 39, 5 And you'll just immediately start cooking. Yep, yep. Get in here, start prepping fresh, get in hot, you know, and start rolling from there. So can I tell me a little bit, little bit about Wolf Burger, where you guys came and how the concept started? Um, we've been around for about four years. Uh, it's all, we do all fresh patties. We do all fresh fries, you know, mm -hmm. no frozen. Um, just trying to get a good burger out there. There's a lot of people that have always told me that, uh, you didn't have a, a quality burger. You can't find that anywhere. So that was our goal. That was our aim. So we came out with. So what is it that make y your burger that quality one? Um, it's fresh ingredients, really. You know, I really think the fact that we prep daily. You know, yeah. uh, we get in in the morning and we prep. We, you know, twist it up about 60 pounds worth of ground beef to just go through lunch today. You know? And you guys have more than burgers too at the truck too? Yeah, we actually do. Uh, sometimes we do chicken, sometimes we do grilled and fried chicken, offer that along with our burgers. Or uh, mm -hmm. for like we were going off with our catfish sandwiches and stuff. First time vendor? First time vendor for French Quarter Fest. So what's yes. it been like to be out here? Uh, it's been awesome. It's been edu very educational <laughs> and uh, it's been fun to be a part of it and look forward to doing it some more. So you guys are set up right between basically the Four Seasons and the Aquarium at the end of yes, the canal, sir. right? Absolutely. And what, what are the price points here for the burgers? Uh, we're going, uh, our burgers start at 11, or just our regular yeah. cheeseburger. And then we have our uh, our barbecue burger, a black and blue burger, and a mushroom and Swiss burger. And those are going at 13. We also have cheese fries, loaded cheese fries, flip fries, stuff like that. And one of the cool things that you guys do is burgers don't have to be that generic burger when you think of bun and a, a meat patty. Right. You can go so far beyond that, especially when you fuse it with you know, New Orleans culture. Why yeah. is that so important for you guys to do? Um, just being in a part of the city, it's like yeah. our black and blue. Um, it's kind of uh, inspired for me from uh, Emerald recipe for a salad uh -huh. steak, you know. But it, it makes sense to me. But there's a lot, of, a lot of love in the city we find, and trying to just spread our, you know, what we do. Which work and preparations did you guys have to do before you even started on the first day of French Quarter Fest? Uh, about four. Hey. Four days just getting everything done. Well, you know, we're in a truck, so we had to dismantle a little Space bit of it. Is limited. Get it out here, you know, uh, set it all up and everything. So, yeah. What type of reaction do you get from guests who buy your food for the first time? Oh, uh, well, it, it's always the same thing. Uh, people, they, they look back at me and they're, they're surprised because they thought it was going to be a regular burger. <laughs> and then when they come back later in the day and the next day and the next day. That, that's my response. You guess. know, you, you, you guys are first or first time here at the festival, but you're not new to New Orleans. You guys go around your breweries, your different mm -hmm. spots for lunch. Kind of, where can people find you if they can't make it out to the festival today or tomorrow? Yeah, if you can't come out, uh, we're on. We're, we park on Poydras, uh, right in front of PJs in the Superdome on Mondays and Fridays. We do Tulane uh, Tropical Health and or public health and tropical medicine on Canal every Wednesday. Every Wednesday night we're at uh, at Second Line Brewery uh, in Midsit. How have you seen the food truck culture really shift and change the culinary landscape here? Uh, it's fun. It's it's really nice to be able to, to, to do it. I think it's growing down here. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got bigger regions around the country that, that it's really hitting. Uh, but I think it's starting to be something down here. Um, Pre-COVID, it was a little bit bigger. Yeah. Uh, COVID kind of took a little bit of that noise out. We're all trying to get it going again, you know? And you know,
know, what would be your folk or your your take on the future of that scene here? Um, I always see it. The sky's the limit. You know, yeah. there's more to come. There's there's more to come from us. There's more to come. I know a lot of people that are wanting to get into the business, and do the same thing. So, I think I think a lot of people are. You know, you got you got a lot of cooks and chefs that have been working in restaurants, doing things for other people, rightfully so, and the rest start doing things for themselves. Just a testament, you can get good quality food right from a truck. Yep, for every morning, every right. day. Rosales with Wolf Burger, appreciate you being with us. I know there are a lot of food vendors out here. Come out and try one of the burgers. You won't be disappointed because it is not just your generic burger out here, especially a French Quarter. Stick around because we're going to be back with so much more from French Quarter Fest 2024. At French Quarter Quest, the French Quarter Fest 2024, we at the Love Louisiana stage right here, sponsored by WWL TV. We're speaking with Troy Sawyer and the Elements. The Elements are, I guess, they're on a break right now. Yeah, they're on a break. They're trying to get some food now. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. You guys opened the festival today on yes, this third day on the stage behind us here. Kind of run us through what that was like being out here on this gorgeous day. I just think the sunny weather makes the music sound better. It does. I don't like to play when it's cold because I'm a trumpet player and it turns my trumpet into ice. And it's hard to play a cold trumpet. So this is perfect weather, it's so beautiful. But by us being out here early yes. to open up the fest is an honor um, to open up the fest and set the tone for the rest of the day. You know, I got to listen to the last part of y'all sets. I mean, it, it's this fusion of, yes. you, have, you have funk, you have soul, you right. have rock in there. Yeah. And I just saw the crowd gra started gravitating towards the stage, especially when you guys did the encore. Right. Where did this sound come from? It comes from New Orleans, being born and raised in New Orleans and um, traveling around the world. Yeah. So like any type of genre of music I'm attracted to that I like, if it's good music, good music. <laughs> and so I'll fuse it all together and say I'm going I'm to write or compose music for this particular genre. I just create. So whatever comes out is what comes out. So it's a gumbo and a fusion of all these different elements and styles and influences. Um, growing up in New Orleans. And it's really been a long journey for you, especially as the leader now, but you yeah. didn't start that way. I did not. I did not. So I was playing with different bands before, but after Hurricane Katrina, I came back to New Orleans and I decided to start my own band, step out as a band leader. So it was a Troy Sawyer Trio, <laughs> which we were performing at the King Bowdens. It was called King Bowdens on Rampart Street, Nice Bar Tiny. And so that was my first um, consistent gig every Wednesday night as a leader. You know, one thing I didn't know about you is, of course, we know you as a trumpeter, but you didn't start out that way either. Like, you were initially in strings. Yes, picked up the violin when I was in pre-K kindergarten. I played that for a couple of years, yeah. and I told my mama, I said, Ma, she said, what, boy? I said, I'm not feeling the violin. <laughs> so she said, okay, which instrument are you feeling? Well, do you want, you want to play another instrument? And I was like, yeah, I do, but I don't know which one. But I heard this band marching down the streets of New Orleans, the St. Augustine March 100. And I heard this instrument, and then my mommy took a jazz concert to hear the great Winston Marcellus play. And I said, that's the instrument I want to play. So I picked up the trumpet in fourth grade, and I've been do playing it ever did, since. I mean, you did strings because your grandfather had that yeah, whole interaction great, with our Yeah, Uncle my great-grandfather loved the strings, and he wrote songs with the great Buddy Bowden, played around time Louis Armstrong, played at Preservation Hall. And so I have I come I come from a little family. Yeah. And I think that's in my blood to pick up the strings and um, play around with it. But I love the cello, so I'm gonna pick up the cello one day. Yeah, I think you can do it. But when you talk about you weren't feeling the that just goes to show you how much music is a feeling more than just a sound. Right. I mean, why is that so important in New Orleans culture for you guys? feeling it comes from you know our ancestors that they have gone through and I, I feel like everywhere I travel all over the world it's nothing like a New Orleans musician because we have gone through a lot our ancestors have gone through a lot and that pain and we turn that pain into purpose and so I feel like from that place <laughs> of feeling of soul and your soul is your soul, our energy is really connected to the universe and people can feel it. Yeah, we can feel it from all the way over here while you're playing on oh, the yeah, stage. Yeah, you were rocking with us. You, you guys your have, soul. You, know, you say <laughs> we rock, we roll, we rock, we rock your soul. Yeah, right? oh man. And that's man. something you guys do see. Yeah, so um, I met Rock and Doobsy in Paris a couple of back, and he said, "Yeah, little brother, back to the states, we're gonna work together." And then we finally uh, worked together. I sat in with his band, and um, when I started working on my album, I was at the Ellis Marcellus Center, mm -hmm. I live in the Musicians Village. And I said, hey, rocking. I'm over here at the Ellis Marcellus on this, this track, this song. He's like, okay, what yet? I said, Ellis Marcellus Center. He said, all right, I'm on my way. 
So he came through and put his verse down. He was like James Brown in the beginning of that energy. And that's what I love about him. He has a good energy. He he's a good person. He's all about helping the next generation out. You know, you're not you're no stranger to festivals, stranger to music venues across right. the city. When you come to places like French Quarter Fest and you see the stages, you see the different artists of all different genres. What is it like that as a New Orleanian and an artist who is true to the music? It's beautiful. It's people that I grew up with when we were kids mm -hmm. going to the Satchmo Jazz Camp. Music as kids, but we still playing. It was refreshing actually to see my um, even the the older musicians still playing. You know, um, Wendell Bruni yeah. is and all the rest of them. I saw them Thursday for the kick morning, and it just it's just refreshing. It's inspirational to keep on because we're the ones that gotta pass it down to the next generation, mm -hmm. and uh, I just it, it just makes me feel awesome and it makes me uh, feel more to keep doing what I'm doing. You know, part of what you're doing when you talk about passing things down is your educational components right. that you really work on. How have you seen that really transform lives in the kids that you work with? Uh, so I, I started teaching in the system after Hurricane Katrina mm -hmm. um, through this organization called Artist Corps New Orleans, which is an organization that will get professional musicians that have degrees to teach at a school that didn't have it in the budget to pay for a full-time music teacher. and. I started teaching I'm all about self-expression, and then I felt like it was my responsibility to be there. Those kids are looking at me, and they want something from me that I have to give. And I just kept on doing it to become a better teacher. And then I decided to step out of the system to create a system, which is called Girls Play Trumpets 2. It's my nonprofit called Girls Play Trumpets I know a lot of folks look up to you for doing that. So, okay, so you just did the set. Yeah. How do you guys do after a set like that? Because that was a lot of energy. Oh, a lot of energy. And I mean, uh, you're almost done. You have a little shade there, but yeah. the crowd was rocking with you. So, yeah, you know, drinking lots. I stay <laughs> hydrated. And then, you know, and there's a lot of energy. I have to lay down from this high. So now I'm calm now because it's a high when you're playing and uh, you gotta bring that energy, give the people your all, and I always give my the people my all, because you never know that might be my last time performing. You always gotta perform like it's your last time performing. All right, so let's talk about the fest. What are you looking forward to, food, their artists? Yeah, so um, they have a bunch, of, oh, Tidra Moses is close at Daniel stage, and that's a friend of, um, of mine, and we go way back, mm -hmm. and like, we're gonna spin on um, some music together, so I'm, I'm eager to check her out later on. A lot of people, Walter C. is performing um, Sunday. I'm looking forward for my Nafi to perform too because the girls have been practicing and rehearsing uh, for it to prepare for this moment. So they perform tomorrow on the okay. kids' stage from 12.15 to 1.15. Is that the one in front of the aquarium? Is that what? I think that's the one on Decatur around like H&M. Where it's the that's right, okay. Yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm excited even in the food. I'm about to go out there and check out the food see what they have to offer, you know. I, I like to eat good food. I mean, we can smell it here. I'm <laughs> sure you guys could smell it on the stage the oh, whole yeah. time. When I came out here, I was like, oh yeah, that's cool. I can't wait to eat. I can't wait and to I get off the stage. I don't eat before I play because I blew that food straight through the trumpet. My band was there, no. <laughs> Troy doesn't eat before he plays. But you know what? After he's going to oh, be up all the food. In. I'm going in. I can't wait. All right, so when's your next performance? may have missed you out here today. So my next performance is... Um, we were on something at the Columns Hotel. We got some other private gigs coming up. Um, Jazz Fest is coming up, doing a lot mm -hmm. of cameos. Um, Girls Play Trumpets 2 is coming at Jazz Fest also. So yeah, just we rock, we're lining up the, the world tour for my album, Rock Your Soul. So a focus to really travel around the world promoting the good news, which is the album. All right, Troy Sawyer, do you think we appreciate everything you've done, especially for the younger generations of the music? Troy Sawyer and Elements performing, already performed on Jack Daniels stage. Mm -hmm. Stick around with a whole lot more for you coming up on, from French Quarter Fest 2024 right here at the Louisiana Festival. Thanks for watching no matter where you're from. And if you can get out here, come out and see us. Hi, I'm John Lucci here with my friends Greg Rolfman and Mia Evans. We're getting ready for French Quarter Festival, which features over 100 musical performances on more than 20 stages. Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of New Orleans music and cuisine. It all takes place April 11th through 14th. Get to you at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app day. Don't miss French Quarter Festival from WW. Many know him as Roger. I'm a good 34 <laughs> years in playing these songs and trying to peep make the butt. But most know him as DJ Raj Smooth. 
as a part of the French Quarter Fest board, a major role in bringing the brand new DJ stage to life. I definitely be a great addition to the French Quarter Fest lineup, just because, you know, it's a party, and what's the party without a DJ? It's an idea that was easy to get behind for the stage sponsor, Jen Solar. Hearing Raj Smoove and his plans for how hitting this was really inspiring. And for DJs like Jessica Simmons. But you can call her DJ Jess. But for the solo act was a dream that she's now living. It doesn't seem that long to me compared to some of the other DJs that I know. So I'm excited to just be um, considered for it. For both these, putting this corner of New Orleans culture center stage is huge. There's more to the culture now. So, you know, it's, yeah, it's different people that you can, can you can. To get a, a spot in a festival where traditionally hip hop hasn't necessarily been accepted or invited, I think it's just to a, a testament to the art form itself. In New Orleans fashion, you can expect nothing less than a party. Just come prepared to dance and sing and have a good time. A part memories that will undoubtedly be made for all involved. Leah McNeil, WWL, Louisiana. All right, thank you very much, Brandon. And yeah, we did. And, and uh, we're thinking about the folks in, in Slidell, but we're also here ready to start off one of the biggest free fests in the country, French Quarter Fest. Emily Madero, the, the, the CEO of, of uh, French Quarter Fest. Uh, you must have had some tense moments yesterday. We sure did. We were just really grateful that it was the day before the festival opened. We were able to anticipate, make arrangements to batten down the hatches, make all the stages safe. Did you have any damage or anything? You know, we had some minor damage just because the amount of water that the sites took in, but we had done a lot of preparation and we were most concerned about personal safety and yeah. crew members and staff members being out here. So um, we just pivoted everything a little bit later in the day and, and we're really grateful that we were able to load in on time. Speaking yeah. of those crew, crew members definitely had to put in some overtime and I know that sort of shifted when they were setting up it pushed it back. Also, you had some earlier setup. So for them, I'm sure they were putting in a lot of hours. Oh, yes. There's been a lot of moving chess pieces behind the scenes. Late night, early morning. Our food vendors have, have done a lot of work late night and early morning. You know, same with all of the vendors that we have here on site, whether it's sound equipment, stages, putting mm -hmm. signs up. So we're doing everything we can to welcome everybody at 11 mm -hmm. o'clock when the music starts. And where we are here on the riverfront in Spanish Plaza, this is all new this year. This is something you're adding for the first time. Uh, at French Quarter Fest. I mean, we're thrilled. It's such a beautiful site. As you can see, it's a gorgeous site right on the riverfront. We've got, you know, the fountain behind us. I think this is going to be one of the most energized, activated sites that we have at French Quarter Festival. And the lineup at the French, at the Jack Daniels stage is just incredible Which is, this year. Yeah, to our left over by the river walk, to, uh, to our right, rather. I don't know why I left from my right. <laughs> uh, and then to the left of us is going to be the new food stage, which is really something new and, and kind of neat. Yeah, we have two new stages this year. So we're expanding musical genres for the first time. We're bringing uh, DJ talent. So New Orleans has such a wealth of talent here and diversity of talent. So you can go to the PosiGen stage right over here in front of the aquarium. And then on the other side of the aquarium, showcasing our culinary talent. So Love Chef that. Kevin Belton will be interviewing. <laughs> yeah. I know should, that guy. You should know Kevin. <laughs> That's a, it's good to be great. I mean, the food talent here is part of the reason of this festival so much. It's everything from street food to fine dining. Go and you can learn about the chefs, their culinary journey, the rest, and all the dishes that you can try here at the festival. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. There's even more food this year. I know. Always more food. Always a good thing. Calories don't count great. at festival. Absolutely. <laughs> there you go. I know. And, you know, when we're talking about the schedule stands so people can still come out and enjoy everything just as it is, um, you know, what do you think? You've been doing this so long. You said since 2017, the festival has a long What do you think is the thing that makes the French Quarter Fest so special? I mean, it has really organically evolved, quite literally, from the streets of New Orleans. It's a big block party. It's a family reunion. It's very authentically new. It features only Louisiana talent. 
You can take so many found major cities and put them anywhere in the United States, but the only way that you're going to experience Quarter Festival is right here in New Orleans. And for the city, it brings in a lot of tourists, a lot of locals. Mm -hmm. A lot of locals sometimes don't get to come to the quarter that much, or because sometimes it, you know it's kind of hard to, to, to park and things like that. But I think everybody changes their attitude for French Quarter Fest. It's just like a really joyous family reunion. You're going to see friends that you haven't seen for, you know, it's kind of like Mardi Gras. There's so many different ways that you can experience, whether you like being out here on the riverfront, you like the funk bands, you can find really quiet, intimate moments with traditional jazz. You know, we're first time we're producing at the BK house. It's a beautiful historical property in the garden and enjoy some incredible music. And great for New Orleans, great, yeah. a great economic. Emily, yeah. thank you very much. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. And speaking of some of the great that we have, we have some of the students that we are introducing you this morning. Loyola, they're going to be performing on Friday. Let's get to on the Loyola stage. Loyola stage, so it's easy to remember. Let's get to the kissing disease. Take it away. It's all on the WWL TV app. Breaking news. We're following breaking news out of Jefferson Parish. Local weather. We are an active weather day, so make certain that you are weather aware. Original stories. It's a story only see on WWL TV. Impactful investigations. Changes are happening after a WWL TV investigation. The latest from the field. We are live in Covington. And the dome. And it was a high drama day in the dome. Download the WWL TV app. I tell you what, French Quarter Fest, the clouds have moved. It's a beautiful day. Chef Jimmy, it's always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you, sir. It's always a pleasure to be out here. The, now, now, Chef, you're the Creole Concepts, family-run business. I don't think folks realize how many restaurants are involved with Creole Concepts. And you're the executive banquet chef now. Yes, sir. So we've got about 40 locations throughout the city, Metairie, and one in Mississippi. Uh, and then we have four or five facilities that do special events, weddings, banquets, uh, and I run all those ones. And you're representing Kingfish today. Yeah, so Kingfish on Charter Street, 337, uh, this is one of their signature dishes. It's a crackling nacho, and this is actually what we're going to be serving at the festival. Now, now, who came up with this? Because this is something, Paul, are you going to be able to come get a shot of this up close? You have to describe exactly what is in this. I'm not sure who came up with it originally, but I have a feeling it was somebody that might have been drinking because it's a perfect food for something like this today. It's a, a big boat full of crackling, pork rind cracklings with some Creole seasoning on it. And then you have a like a Carolina gold mustard barbecue pork. And then it's smothered in pimento cheese queso. And then it's topped with a, a poblano pico de gallo and some green onions and a little bit of sour cream to finish it off with. But it is just, I mean, it is the perfect food for a festival. It's shareable. It goes great with a good, you know, with a good beer. It goes great hanging out in the afternoon and eating it. And you're doing, besides this, you have something else at the booth, right? Yeah, so we're also going to do our duck, our duck gumbo uh, at, at the booth as well. A duck and andouille gumbo with uh, popcorn rice. I tell you what, this crackling, the slow-cooked pork on it, it's amazing. It, it, I know this is a crazy question. But in preparing, I think everybody has in their mind, oh yeah, I would love to have a booth at a festival. Oh, it's easy to do. But this takes a long time, a lot of preparation, and, and the weather's gonna be good. So you're gonna be doing a lot of pork. Yeah, we've been, uh, we, we cooked several hundred pounds of pork. Uh, we've got about 30 gallons worth of pimento cheese queso. Uh, we've been doing this for, for quite a little while now. I know we've been talking and meeting with French Quarter Fest for several months. I know y'all at French Quarter Fest have been planning it for probably since the end of last year. Uh, but it's, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of fun. Out here, beautiful weather, Louisiana music, local food, local artists. You know, it's it's a really is a fun weekend, especially for locals to come down and see. Are you gonna get a chance to go see any of their music? Or are you, uh, anybody you're looking forward to seeing? I'm hoping to see Big Frida and Tank and the Bangas. Okay, that'll be a nice combination. But I tell you, this is something where you, you got to take credit for this, okay? Since we don't know who exactly came up, but I think you did. Because I, 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 I know you had some influence with this because I know you like sweet and savory. Oh, absolutely. And I know you, because I, I think of you as a satsuma king. <laughs> so to put the mango in the, in the salsa, 
that'll give it that sweet pop with that slow roasted pork. Yeah, it's great. It's, you've got spice, you've got salty, you've got roasty pork, you've got sweetness. Uh, it, it works really well together. Like I said, it's a great afternoon uh, dish. We do it at Kingfish on all day long, but especially at happy hour. So would it be ill of me, and don't talk, don't, don't, don't talk about me at home, what I'm about to say. What about taking some of this crackling and pork and dropping it in the gumbo? Uh, I love that idea. I think actually if you dipped the crackling into the gumbo and kind of used it like a spoon, that's the way to go. Yes, yes, that is the way to go. Gang, we've got a lot more food coming up. We're going to have music coming up for being here at the river. Peyton, tell us how this weather's going to be, please. I think that in our crime coverage, the way that we're approaching crime now, we look at things on the surface level. And when you look at things on the surface level, you tend to think, oh, well, if we just need, if we arrested the carjacker, then, you know, the crime would go down. If we would simply put people in jail or give stiffer penalties, then crime will go down. Well, obviously that has happened in the past in New Orleans and crime did go down for some time, but again, it shot right back up again. So at some point, our responses to things have to be superficial and we have to ask the question, what is the root cause of this? What's the nucleus of the problem? What's the thing that's right at the center of it that we are just missing? You know, we have to take a look back at what we're doing wrong, at why communities were disinvested from, at statistically why more crimes happen in this particular community versus that one. Um, we have to take a look at what is pushing people to do crime. Is it a poverty rate? You know, is it income? How do we level the playing field so no one would want to commit a robbery? There are so many different answers we can give to this. And I think that we've tried all of the ways, or at least law enforcement has tried all of the ways that give you an immediate response, which is let's arrest our way through this, let's lock people up, let's put them um, away or give harder penalties or charging teenagers as adults. I think WWL and our crime focuses on while this is happening and while we do understand why some of those penalties are issued, we ask why it's happening. I tell you what, French Quarter and why particular fest the clouds of is it happening to Closing out day three of the French Quarter Festival. Colleen Seeley here with the Shamar Allen. Shamar just came off the stage from performing. He had to, didn't even break a sweat. He's a professional clearly here. Shamar, how was your experience for today? It was beautiful. Uh, this is my first French Quarter Festival in five years between COVID and touring real hard. This was the first one that I've been able to do. And then last year, my set got rained out, you know, so this is the first one in a while. So it's been amazing. And thankfully, you've had a great comeback with this beautiful weather we've had all weekend. What type of music do you play for those who have not yet heard you? Um, I call it the most New Orleans music you've ever heard in your life. The most New Orleans? Ooh, that might start a controversy. It's, it's not controversial. Uh, we know it's the truth, you know. But it's, uh, it's just feel good music, you know. It's uh, a sound that just feels good. I guess that's what it is, you know. Real feel good music, I write, produce. Trumpet isn't the thing that started it all, though. So, yeah, so I'm just having fun with it, you know. And you're from here. Yes. But you've traveled the nation, the world, with some pretty big names, Patti LaBelle, Lenny Kravitz. 
How did you get into all that? Just, I guess, uh, being in the right place at the right time. You know, um, preparation, being prepared when those opportunities happen. And then when the opportunity happens, you know, grabbing it and actually showing your preparation, which I feel like is what happens for me. Like, I've never signed a record deal or had like a whole crew of managers. It's been just me throughout the whole process of everything. So just the way that things happen and the way that the stars always align for me, you know, God is amazing. <laughs> it absolutely is. Could a record deal be in the works for the future for you? Uh, I've gotten some offers, but uh, I kind of don't want to sign them. It's just based on I do a lot of those numbers on my own already. So I kind of, when the number is right, then I'll think about it. But right now, I mean, the numbers that I'm getting offered are numbers that I've seen on my own already. So I kind of stay away from them. Yeah, this man has money, y'all. All right, so <laughs> look, look, those who are listening now, they're going to regret for not offering you big numbers back then, and then hopefully you'll have that, what you need. Now, the thing is, people are, people are taking it, so I can't even be mad at them, you know? I can't even be mad, mad at them, but it's just understanding, like, the value of independency, you know? Like, doing it on your own and learning, bumping your head, learning the mistakes, learning the mistakes from others before you. Like, I talk to a lot of the elders around, and they told, told me the mistakes that they've made along the way. So I try to avoid them. And then when I bump my head, the guys that are asking me questions and coming after me, I kind of just give them the information the same way. You know, it's just passing it along the same way that I've gotten it, which is the New Orleans way, you know? What an opportunity and a blessing. Now, any advice that you get for upcoming artists or those who are in this industry, even from behind the scenes? Anything that could even help you as an artist? Um. Consistency. A lot of times, life gets in the way, right? And that means uh, you have to get a job, you have kids come along, and you know, real responsibilities, bills, mortgages, all of these things kind of get in the way of a lot of great New Orleans musicians, I think. And if they could just fight through that and make it to the other side of it, then I think there's a lot of winning. A lot of people give up right before they hit that mark. So I just feel like sometimes life gets in the way. So even if you do have to do those things, find time to not go out on a Friday and Saturday and still work on your craft. But some people don't have the discipline to be able to stay that type of focus. So that's really all it is. Thank you for Shamar for that insight. Now where can people hear you for your next upcoming performances? Uh, the next thing I'm doing in the city is uh, Jazz Fest, which is April 26th. And then uh, I released the album True Orleans 2 a few months ago. That's out right now. And then I'm about to release another single for another album that I'm working on with uh, Erica Falls, Big Sam, and Cyril Neville. So uh, we're re releasing that in a couple, maybe like a week and a half or so. Looking forward to it. Look, you've done such an incredible job just being independent, and your work has shown, and people are excited to see you. The energy was phenomenal out there, always performing on the Abita stage. Guys, we have another day of fest, and then the whole season coming up. Like he just said, you can see him at Jazz Fest next. Louisiana, what can you say? There's no one like it. Brimming with history, overflowing with culture, a melting pot of beautiful people. Some generations deep, others still getting used to the humidity. It's waterways bustling with industry. It's streets alive with artistic expression. And the food, oh, the food. But what makes Louisiana great is its people. It's wonderful people. Still standing, still persevering, still fighting. Because here's the thing. We got problems too, and we own up to them. We're not scared of tough issues. We don't back down from tough questions, and we aren't going to run away when things get hard. Sure, we got problems, but WWL, that's why we're here. We uncover lies and find the truth, expose injustice, and get people what they deserve, keep people informed, and keep them safe. We dig deep, find solutions, solve problems, and get stuff done. <gasps> We tell stories and start conversations. We celebrate the good and try to fix the bad. We support local businesses and help them thrive. We work hard, do good, and have fun doing it. From Laplace to St. Bernard, Homer to Covington, Metairie to New Orleans, WWL-TV is now WWL Louisiana. We love Louisiana and fight for it.
Robin Barnes. Y'all, we are on day two. Day two. We made it to day two of the French Quarter Festival here at Spanish Plaza at the WWL Love Louisiana stage, right across the Jack Daniel stage. You can already hear people perform behind us. Lots of energy. It's exciting. Thank you so much for sitting with, down with me to, for today. Thank you for having me. All right, I feel like I need a beatbox for the rest of this interview now. <laughs> So Robin, tell us about when you're performing, what's happening for tomorrow. So I'm so excited. Tomorrow, Sunday, I will be performing in Jackson Square at the New Orleans and Company stage at 2.20. So it's going to be definitely a, a look to be seen, and I have a new headdress I'm debuting this year. So the songbird, her feathers, my headdress, it's going to be fun. You're so classy, spunky, fun, and you bring so much excitement with a twist. So tell people about what type of music that you perform. So I love being born and raised in New Orleans. I feel like anyone can understand that we don't necessarily be in a box. You know, we can do a little bit of jazz, soul, funk, and then tomorrow we're going to add a little bit of Zydeco. I'm going to have um, my cousin, Sun Pie Barnes, join me on the accordion. So you're going to get a whole show of what it is to be born and raised in New Orleans, Louisiana. That music is just going to transcend. The melting pot. The music. melting pot. Yes. <laughs> and you have such a wide range of vocals. So, so I, a little... you know, it's funny. I'm like a alto two to a soprano one. So I can go. <laughs> Glass breaks. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Robin. So you're from New Orleans, Louisiana. When did you start performing professionally, and how did you get into that? So my whole family are musicians. Um, I am the baby, and I've been singing since I was six years old. I started in church, and then after there, I started with my dad, my brother's jazz um, jazz band. So I have been performing from church to Frenchman Street to just private parties with my family, and music's in my blood. I knew since I was six years old, I want to sing. Even when I got my master's in business, I was like, Mom, Dad, I love you, but now I'm going to sing. <laughs> At what point did you realize, I'm good? <laughs> I don't think that ever happened yet. What? I just do what I love. I don't, I don't, I, I, I try not to think about how I'm sounding or anything like that. I just, as long as people are enjoying themselves, that's when I know I'm doing a good job. And you're doing it from the soul, and that's what's so unique as well, because I, people, if you have not seen her perform yet, you can actually feel her music and that's what sets her apart from many other musicians that I've watched perform and then sometimes you have some that sound great on just the audio or on the phones that you download the music and some are so so performing on the stages but you have it all the whole package all around and I'm so excited to and looking forward to seeing you for tomorrow as well so it's funny because I was driving down the road in downtown New Orleans oh and I and I looked and this was before the stoplight I said is that Robin <laughs> She has a mural downtown. Tell us about that. So um, I, first of all, everyone texts me about it all the time. Even my fans will Instagram me and they'll go, is this you? And then I'll, I'll send them a photo of me posing. Like, yes, there is a mural of me on Rampart Street. And it's so cool because there's a local company that wants to add more murals and more of the local legends and I'm like whoa I'm a local legend this is insane but it's a living legend kind of thing and that homage and that credit and that love is just so it's really cool I just I'm because I'm from here I I just take it as a you know I'm Robin you know little Robin da 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 and then people are like no you're the songbird and I'm just like to be given that honor I mean even given the name the songbird in New Orleans by the city it's just, it's awesome. And I'm very, very grateful. And I'll do you guys proud. Don't worry. <laughs> I just have chills for you. And you have a family. Yeah. So how do you balance that? Right? I don't sleep. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> She's I have, not kidding. I have two little ones. And it's so funny because it really, because I have to perform at nighttime, I really utilize as much time during the day to just be with them. And the fact that their little personalities are coming out and they love music. My little one told me today, we didn't have any music on in the background. And she goes, it's too quiet. We need some music. And I'm like, that is a little musician in the making. I love it. Are you usually <laughs> singing around the house? I'm like always while you're singing cooking, around the house. We're always, we're always creating. And I sing talk. So no matter what we're doing, like when I'm walking down the street, people are like, hey, Robin, how are you doing? I'm like, I'm doing great. How are you? Fabulous. Oh, yeah. See, there you go. No one ever sings to me, so I appreciate you, Colleen. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it for that. <laughs> you know, I don't want to, I got to save my voice for the interviews, Robin. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, 
Tell us about, too, have you performed across the nation, globally? Where are some of the places that really stick out to you of, like, just the experience collectively? You know, I will say I am a um, state ambassador, a U.S. culture ambassador, and I get to travel around the world doing what I love and performing my, my music. But there's only so many places that feel like New Orleans. You know, no matter where I am, no matter how the culturally diverse from the food to the music these places are, nothing feels like that warmth that you have when you walk off the like plane or walk down the street and somebody says, hey, how you doing? And you're like, thank you, I'm all right, how are you? And I, and I love traveling, I love being able to do more internationally and national things so like keep them coming but I do love that I get to live in such a magical place and perform here as often as I do. It really is magical so for those who are tourists perhaps planning on coming to New Orleans or even our locals tell us about where you perform weekly. Yes so I um, perform in a duo format with my husband the Lovebirds we do every Thursday at the Peacock Room but I am really excited because I am now stepping out into being an independent artist. So I am doing specialty shows like April 30th. I will be doing my first special show with all original music at Hotel Peter and Paul. Very excited about that. Very excited to just start getting who is Robin out to the world. So I may be coming to a city near you, but you can always find me here at home. So stay a part of the website and the Instagram, the things. So what is your Instagram for those that want to follow yes. you, watch your videos, hear you sing? So my Instagram is um, New Orleans Songbird. So at New Orleans. Yes, you heard me sing that. It's not a competition. It's not a competition. But no, my uh, Instagram is at New Orleans Songbird. My website is RobinBarnesMusic.com. So come hang out with me. Can people book you for private experiences, parties, weddings? Yes, book me for all the things. It's funny now that I am being a little bit more. Um, you know curated with my shows it gives me a little bit more freedom to be able to do more um, private events and I love weddings with the with the duo we do it it's called the lovebirds it's my husband and I and we've been doing so many weddings and it's funny because people go you guys are so cute and we're like we're married that's why it's called the lovebirds you know but it's so. not always like that for the musicians so <laughs> it is not always like that but yes you know I'm trying to do more festivals more private events so yes book me for all the things Girl, take all my money. How did you <laughs> and your husband meet? Oh my gosh, so funny story. Um, I was walking into a rehearsal and he was coming out of rehearsal and we just locked eyes and said hi. And that was it. That's it, that's, that's that all was it, it takes? That was it, but funny enough, the guy that I was walking into the rehearsal with actually had a crush on me and he told me, my husband's name is Pat, and he told me his name was Bob. So for four years I looked for Bob who plays bass. There was never a Bob who played bass. and. My father retired um, playing bass with me. He's been playing with me since I was six years old, and I needed to find a replacement bass player. So Pat walks into the, the, the performance, and he's like, hey, I'm Pat. And I'm like, oh, it was love at first sight four years ago. Hi, Bob. And he's like, no, no, my name's Pat. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you call him by the right name now. Yes, for sure. And it's cool because that, that, that day, I was looking for a bass player to play with for the rest of my life. So I asked him, I was like, what are you doing for the rest of your life? And he goes, I guess I'm playing bass with you. And then six months we started dating and we've been married almost 10 years. Did he ask you out? Actually, I asked him out. I know, I know. I never ask anyone out, but I was like, how would you feel if I said I liked you? And he was like, I'd say that's pretty cool. We're opposites. I am all like hyper. My husband's very chill. Yeah. That's so beautiful. And <laughs> gosh, y'all, I'm just thinking about the love life situation right here. Because <laughs> you hear these great stories and it really is amazing how just the stars align. and. With that, even the upcoming musicians, do you have any advice for those that are younger, older, that want to be in the music industry? I always tell people it's never too late to start, and you just have to believe in yourself. I feel like with my career, I have been told and continue being told, no, no, you, you, you don't deserve that or you can't have that, and I keep going, you know what, if I believe and I try and I work really hard, it's going to work out. And I think as long as you believe in yourself, it doesn't matter. You know, be able to figure out your path and learn how to pivot. That's my biggest advice. If something doesn't work out, pivot. Find a different angle. Find a different way. Because I was supposed to be just a jazz singer. And I wanted to do more than just jazz. And everyone said, "That's there's no way you can just do one genre. You can do more than one genre. And I said, let me try. And now I'm just so happy that 
people can come see different forms of Robin. If they see the New Orleans Songbird, they can see a little bit more soulful jazz. If they see Robin and the Firebirds that you will see tomorrow, it's high energy, it's soul, it's funk, it's Zydeco. And then if you see the, the Lovebirds, it's more love music, more just happy. And I'm able to c cultivate that. And that's only because I really just, I knew what my dream was and I went for it and I just kept going for it. You have so much to offer from all sides of the spectrum and the, and the music world and to, for people's emotions. And thank you so very much. Y'all come check out the New Orleans Songbird tomorrow. Tell us where and what time. It's gonna be the Jackson Square. The Jackson Square. The New Orleans and Company stage at 220, y'all. Come hang out with me. Are we gonna sing? You gonna be box you ready? All right. And welcome back to French Quarter Fest 2024, where it is all music, it is all about the food, the culture, the entertainment. And with us now is one of the artists coming up at 3.30 on the Abita stage. It is going to be Sweet Crude with us now, one of the members. It is Sam Craft. Now, let's talk about, first of all, how you guys present yourselves. You're this indie pop rock group, a lot of percussionists on the team. So how do you sell yourselves to folks who don't maybe necessarily know who you are? It's kind of tricky, and we often have to do that what you just do. Yeah. It's like, I know there's a lot of drums, we play keyboards, uh, dance around, everybody <laughs> sings. But and then uh, the other point is we have to make is that most, you're going to hear a lot of French when we sing because yeah. we thought, um, you know, we grew up around a lot of Cajun side of music, and there's so many people who are masterful at that. And so, you know, we love the Talking Heads, and we love, uh, you know, Phoenix, and we love, you know, B-52s, mm -hmm. and a lot, of, a lot of core pop music, I guess you could say. And so we decided that we wanted that dialect that we that feels so home to us and put it in new clothes, put it in a new context. So that's kind of what it is. There's probably a much shorter way to say that, <laughs> but you could say Cajun indie pop, Louisiana French pop, something like that. We love a long version here because we love a story here in Louisiana. Awesome, so yeah. that's going to work just fine. You guys started, what, in 2013? You dropped your first album in 2017. I don't want to say relatively new, but you guys have been around long enough to have a journey in this. How has it been for you guys? Man, it still feels very new, and we still feel like it's an experiment because every time we go out on the stage, we're doing this thing that, I don't know, we see it very much, which is, mm -hmm. which is Louisiana French typically here in Cajun music, yeah. Zydeco music. We're putting it in this pop context, still feels fresh, and every time we write a new song, it's like, is this going to work? Let's try this, like that. And I got to say, it's been pretty well received uh, for the most part, that weird amount of salesmanship. We used to feel like every, I used to like every time I go on the mic, I'm like, hey, everybody, we're sweet crew we're from New Orleans. You're going to hear yeah. a little French, a little bit of English. Uh, uh, you, you, hopefully, you'll get used to it. <laughs> but now I feel like that we don't have to do that anymore. And I feel like when we go places, that story is embedded in the music. Yeah. And I feel like it's been going pretty well. And we're very fortunate to be invited in to play French Quarter Fest. And sort of like, um, this is a huge point of pride for us to be able to play on such an awesome stage. And uh, yeah, we're happy to do it. Yeah, it's still, it feels great. How do you decide on the set list? <laughs> Well, you know, we, we're at a festival. We want it to be lively. We want yeah. it to be exciting. We, we had actually a lot of brooding stuff, uh, especially through the pandemic. That was a weird time. So with all, try not to linger too much on the minor keys, too much on the sad. Um, we, we decide on some upbeat stuff in our catalog. We play some choice, cover material. Maybe mm -hmm. we touch a traditional Cajun song that we've uh, updated, brought to new life. Um, but ba basically, we just want to get the crowd hyped. What is it like as an artist to look around at a festival like this and you see so many different stages, so different genres of artists coming through this festival, all really celebrating one thing, and that is the culture and the music of this city in southeast Louisiana. It's awesome. We're so glad you're part of that context. And we're just telling a, one little sliver of that story, mm -hmm. which is the current state of Louisiana French. And so we're, we're so glad to be just like in the same, on the same uh, state that like, yeah. you know, you might see an Irma Thomas or a Dixie Cups or something like that. Um, that's a, a huge honor. It's a huge, um, I don't know by that. And do you draw your inspiration from those other artists, like those legendaries? Absolutely. We, absolutely. You know, we try not to do like too close to the sun because <laughs> we don't want to feel like that we're appropriating that. Right. But we can't help but be influenced by brass band music, by the soul of New Orleans, all music of New Orleans, by jazz and all that and all, and all the above. Uh, we can't help but put in our music in our own way and bring that energy to the stage. I know you guys want, you said you want to hype the crowd during yes. your set list. So how do you hype yourselves up, but also back in decompress after a set like that? Oh my goodness. So we like to, before this, okay, 
we all get in a circle. It's very weird. I'd be I'd be uh, a little bit embarrassed if I ever got on uh, on WWL, but we can make uh, it happen. We can make that happen. We all get in a circle. We all do kind of an improv theater game where we all just like hoop and holler and mm -hmm. noises together and just shake out all the nerves and stuff like that because it is leading right up to the yeah. stage and the hustle to get on stage uh, at a festival. So yeah, we make our noises, we shake all of our tension out, and then we go on stage and just get weird. And we try to do, we try to teach the crowd a little bit of French, you know, even if it's like, allez, or on est paré, which means we're ready, you know, like, allez, let's go, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And we can kind of use our identity and use the, and uh, blend that with the crest energy to make something happen together. But really, even if you don't know French or Cajun French, you can relate to it because you hear it all the time. I mean, I just I walk around and say "c'est bon," like yes, it's nobody. Bon, yeah, exactly, exactly. Les c'est les bon temps roulés. You know, we all say "lagnap." We all say "this beaucoup that." So we know these words and these phrases, yeah. even if we think we don't. Exactly. We have a song about that. It's we have a sweet crude mm -hmm. featuring Big Frida. Where we that, just, I was going to ask you guys about that. Yeah, your, your so team we, we did a collab with Big Frida harping on and like embracing all of those token words and all yeah. of our vocabulary that we all say. And so, uh, you know, we want to embrace that, even if it's just those little phrases that we have from the, that are just lingering in our vocabulary. Let's lean into that. Let's use those as much as we can. And it shows you the uniqueness of the culture when it comes to the music here. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's what makes Louisiana exceptional uh, compared to the rest of uh, mm -hmm. what we have around us is that we have Louisiana.